Welcome to the 2023 replay video. What a year. We had lots of RC cars, RC motorbikes, boats, aeroplanes, monster trucks. We had it all. Now this one's a long one. It is over 12 hours long. So make yourself a cup of tea, get yourself some popcorn, cuddle up on the sofa or the couch for you Americans and enjoy the show. By the way, want to win one of my RC cars? See the link in the description. Here we have 100 horsepower and we're going to put it into an RC car to build the fastest RC car in the world. Raz did 196 miles per hour on one of these motors and we're going to use four of them. Tony's got the world record at 208 miles per hour. So we've got the same car and we're going to put these four motors into that car. So no idea what's going to happen. It's either going to be stupidly fast and smash the world record or it's going to be the world's most expensive radio-controlled car crash. Either way, it's going to be absolutely epic. This is the Hobeo VTE2. So the motor is supposed to go there. No chance. And we got to get all four in. With a little bit of modification, we might be able to do it. But we still need to get more stuff into it. Four speed controllers, radio gear, and eight 4S LiPos. Oh my god, guys. All this has to fit into this. So here we've got the speed controllers. I'm gonna be using the Castle XLX2s. Now, I've already had a couple of these catch fire in the past, so hopefully these are gonna be okay. So they're gonna to have to go like here, maybe. And the batteries? Uh, nope. That's what 100 horsepower looks like in this tiny little RC car. Um, uh, we're gonna to have to give it a little bit of thought. I've got an idea. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Some of the world's fastest real cars are long and skinny. So let me present to you. Long and skinny. Oh, still won't go. So motor there, there. Speed controller, another one. Another motor, another motor. Four speed controllers. Batteries, 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 batteries. Do you know what guys? It's going to fit. And lengthwise, we're looking at probably going to be about a metre long. And Rosso rules, where we're going to run it, hopefully for the first time, they say the maximum length of the car can be half a metre. <laughs> this thing is going to rip. <laughs> I'll blow up one of the two. So next up, we need a twin motor mount and another twin motor mount and some custom-made drive shafts and a custom-made chassis. So Scorch Parts, they make a twin motor mount and this beautiful looking carbon fibre chassis. Trouble is, it's too short. Hopefully, they can make me a custom one. Hello! I'm building, hopefully, the world's fastest RC car. Can you help? I need a really long chassis. Yes, thank you. Next up, we need some drive shafts, stock drive shafts at high RPMs. They can flap about and you lose loads of power. My buddy Raz Schifrin, he makes some carbon fiber ones. So hopefully, he can do me some custom made lengths. Razzy! Can you make me some drive shafts, please? Pretty, please. Yes. Thanks, mate. Bye. <laughs> Guys, this build is going to work. You watch. Maybe. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at the size of that. What? That is the biggest carbon fibre chassis I've ever seen. Got all these other parts in here, look, splitter, shock towers, other chassis parts. Massive thank you to David at Scorch Parts for custom making me this chassis. Scorch really do make some of the best RC products there are for speed running, for bashing. I'm going to put a link to Scorch Parts down below. Go and check them out, give them a bit of support, because Scorched are supporting potentially the world's fastest RC car on this channel. So I've got the instructions here. Let's get it fitted. Oh, 
I'll tell you what I really like about this Hobeo is if you look at this differential input cup on the front, it comes out perfectly straight. If you look at an armor one, it's at an angle like that, and that puts severe wear on the diff cups and the drive shafts. So next up, I'm going to temporarily put some wheels on there just so we can mock everything up. So I think we're going to put two motors here, then two speed controllers there, another two motors here, and another two speed controllers here. Man, we got so much space on this chassis, and we've got all this space along here for lipos. Next, we're going to need some motor mounts. So this is a stock one, obviously no good. Scorch parts, they do make a twin motor mount to hold these motors. So if I put one there, another one there, and then a perfect pass drive shaft to go from here to there another one on the back i haven't got any for now but something like that another motor mount and then i can either run it with two motors going to the rear axles two motors going to the front axles or i could tie it all together and have a long shaft joining it all together so it's like all four four wheel drive four motors so this chassis is made to fit an armored diffuser it just needs a couple of little modifications to make it fit around the carbon fiber Splitter wires, a armor limitless one also fits. I'm gonna go with a stock plastic one for now because when I went to Rossa last year, the carbon fiber one, it was scraping on the floor. Every time I touched it, I was getting splinters. So for now, I'm gonna try plastic. Next, we need a body shell. Now, I could make it look like one of those official speed running cars with all the wheels enclosed and, and no little cab thing on top. However, I want it to still look like an RC car. Maybe we could use a body from an Armour Limitless. And another one. Trouble is, open wheeled cars have a lot more wind resistance, so not the best for aerodynamics. So here I've got a body from Delta Plastics. This is a Ford FC100. Obviously, it's way too short. But what about if we use two of them? It's gonna be a bit of a hack job, but I think we can make it work. Next, we're gonna have to completely lose the cab and the front end from the rear one. Ow. Man, this stuff's hard to cut. Jesus. What? Why is it so hard to cut? Jesus, it just won't cut. Man, this is a horrible job. There's no way this is going to be neat and tidy. No way. This is going to be a complete hack job. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to join up that well. The body is quite high up on the back here. On this section here is quite low. I know it's always going to be a hack job, but this doesn't look like it's going to be that great for aerodynamics. So I think what I'm going to have to do is cut the whole entire rear end off of this body off and just get some 2mm Lexan and just make a middle section and just use that and that. And I could have probably just made it out of one body, but now I've ruined two. Trusty eBay. Lovely jubbly. And while we're waiting for that, we might as well see if we can get the servo mount. So I'm going to be using one of these metal geared 56 kilo perfect car servos. So this is how the motors are going to sit. There looks like to be just about enough room to mount the servo there. We're going to have to shorten this servo link though because that comes out there. I think if we just join those two directly together, the grub screw is going to be perfect. Now I need to drill the chassis so I can screw this on however. I want to wait until I get the motor mounts and the drive shafts just to make sure that it's all going to fit. So here we've got some carbon fibre shock towers. Now that we've got this shock tower installed, we can get this armour limitless rear wing and it's all going to bolt up. Oh, postman! Oh, it's Christmas every day. Check this out, guys. More scorched parts. So we got two dual motor mounts. One to go there. Another one to go there. We've got front and rear diff lockers, titanium drive shafts, and this special drill bit kit for drilling carbon fibre. Now, I can't fit these yet because I'm waiting for Raz Schifrin from Perfect Pass to make me some custom-made drive shafts. Then we can fit the motors, put the drive shafts in, make sure it all fits in there perfectly before we draw the chassis. The last thing I want to do is drill holes into the chassis only for it not to line up. Four posts! 
check out all these parts from Perfect Pass. We've got the version 2 Perfect Pass backed wing that goes on the back here. It's really supposed to be for the armor Limitless, but because we've got the Limitless diffuser on there and wing mount and all that, we should be able to get it to fit. Also, we've got some Limitless body mounts. So a Limitless body mount will fit straight onto the front of the Scorch chassis like this. The rear one, we're going to have to get the mount on there somehow. The idea of this is, it's really wide. So hold on, let me show you. Let me show you. So this here is one of my other world speed record attempting cars. This one here is a Armour Limitless. This one here also got a Scorch chassis, perfect pass servo, Scorch dual motor mount with a couple of these massive Hobbywing Max 4 motors. 12S this side and 12S this side. So these body mounts here are designed to go on the back because when the body's on, downforce can start pushing the body down and rubbing on the wheel. So on this one here, look, I've cable tied across a piece of metal, but the perfect pass thing, just bolt it on and your body's nice and secure. Next up, I've got these perfect pass connectors. Absolutely essential when you're running big horsepower and they're compatible with the QS8. Next up, perfect pass springs. These are super hard, super heavy duty. These are supposed to be for the armor limitless. However, I'm going to hope that I can use them on this car here. On a speed car, you want the rear end to be almost solid. If the wind comes along and pushes down the back and the front can go a little bit higher than the back, it's going to backflip. So you need to back super, super hard. And here we've got a piece of Lexan so we can modify the body. So here are the lines where I've got to fold it. I think I've worked it out right. We will see in a minute. So here we've got the old folder. Ready? Yep, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. All right, here we go. High tech here, watch it shatter. Oh, beautiful. Here we've got Barney the technician showing us how it's all done. Grab it all, ready? Oh, look at that. Back to the top and see if it works. So now on the front end, that can slide over the top like this so that the wind flows without going inside it. And then on the rear end, that goes inside it and it all fits perfectly. I'm so glad that Barney helped me use his folder. If I had to try and fold that over the bench like we did that sausage, it'd probably come out like that. So it's all looking pretty good at the moment, but next up, we've got to fit this perfect pass rear wing so I can line up the bodywork and make sure it all perfectly fits. All these lines in here that are supposed to aid with the aerodynamics and keeping the rear end really locked in. Next up, to get the body to fit properly, I need to trim these pits here out and hopefully that's going to sink it down into the body. Trouble is, this one here says two millimetres, so I've bought two millimetre Lexan. But if we measure this body here, we're looking at like 0.77 millimetres. This was hard to cut, so this is going to be impossible. Nope. So next, I think it's best to fit some body mounts. So the front one, that's going to bolt straight onto the chassis. Remember, these are from my Armour Limitless. They're not supposed to be for the whole Bayo. On the rear, uh, there's not really anywhere to bolt it. I think we can make something. So I've got a couple of stock armor mounts here. If we cut this off, that off, and you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> Sorry, Raz. Yes, that is working a treat. Now look, when the wind's pushing down, that's not flexing the body down. It's got loads of support there. Front one's easy. Next, I'm gonna fit the front and the rear body posts, get the front and the rear section of the body fitted, and then we can look at joining the two halves together.
So we're gonna drill some holes, temporarily put some nuts and bolts through the holes, join it all together, make sure it all lines up, trim it, then take it all apart again, spray paint it, and then we can finally put it together with rivets and have it permanent. Next, we can cut the bottom off. So this is just temporary. I'm gonna cut more out of here. Once we get all the weight in there, suspension set, the tires all set, then I'm gonna cut this out after it's do it properly. But you're gonna get an idea of the size of it. Check it out. This one here's a normal size speed car. Check out the extended one. Man, this thing is gonna rip. I mean, it just has to. <laughs> this is the biggest RC mud truck that you can buy. And we're gonna give it more power. Look at this thing. It's got solid live axles, four link suspension, coilover shocks. Look at the size of that shock shaft. That's like 10 millimeters. It's not the same size as my finger almost. And inside here, we have the engine. Trouble is, it's not the fastest. So here, we have a new engine. <laughs> Look at that. Easy on the tumble wumbles. Can't promise anything. So here we have the Primal RC 46cc high output engine. It's got slightly less cc's, but it's got a lot more horsepower. Also, we got a couple of upgraded steering servos from AGF and a double shock conversion. Double the shocks means we can jump it double as high. Yes. So let's get the engine in, get the other upgrades on, then take it out for a rip. Next, let's see how the engine fits. Boom. Next up, we've got to fit the stock exhaust back on. Got it up to one litre of petrol. Next, we've got to put in some of this two-stroke oil. So we've got the 25 to 1. We're going to use this body here because the other body is a shelf queen body. So let's get some of that love in there. Hopefully, she's going to start. Little monster truck. Big monster truck. Yes. Radio on. What does that mean? What's what, babe? Oh, oh wrong radio. Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Uncut. You got the right radio this time. I think so. Plug him in there. Like <gasps> it's alive. See how quick the steering is? Ooh. All right, so next, have you got a pump bow on this one? Yeah, it's going in. Oh, nice. And then choke is that way, isn't it? That's choke. I so I think so. what we do is to pull it till it gives a little pop. Right. Then you turn the choke off and then go. So we've got the carburetor set to the factory settings for running in. Oh, oh, straight away. <laughs> There's no edit in there. <laughs> right, so no now editing. choke off. Look at that! Oh. Up a bit. We'll give it a minute to warm up. Then we've got to run the engine in. We've got a nice engine in here. So we're going to run it in nice and slow. And then we're going to go mudding, jump it, air it out to the moon. Whatever, there we go. I'm no expert here, but the engine does sound like it's running a little bit lean. So I richened up both the high and the low speed needles and it ran a lot better. Look at this, water down there, got some mud over there. You ready? Yep, I had to break some stuff. Oh. What, what? I didn't, I can't have to wedge stuff again. Oh it. man, <laughs> try and get that open. Has your car locked it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to get in. Ah, oh, there we go. So this is Max's masterpiece. Oh look, the exhaust has got suspension. First to get it started. Oh! Oh! We've got a 
I'm here to stay pale. We gotta see if we can make it down there without rolling it. <laughs> running in. Once you start leading it off, it's going to get a lot faster. And if it survives all this, we're going to hit the skate park. We're going crawling with a laminator. Man, those servos have got some power. What? So, you want to go along there, through there, and along the edge, and back out over that side. <laughs> Listen to that engine purr like a kitten. If you wait till it's run in, that's going to rip. So we've got to go through all this mud here, on the old engine that used to bog down. Oh, that sinks. Dude, no. Guys, this is like quicksand. No, but it'll be fine. So you want me to go all the way around there, not through the deep water bit, but like just round the edge bit, if you know what I mean, and then back out there. If you get stuck, you're getting it. Yeah, sure. All right. So we've got to come in across there, across here, across here, across here, across here, and then out there. If it sinks, Max is getting stuck as well. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't using enough power. That's full power. <laughs> That's me. Horsepower, but we're stuck. Go, didn't you go? That was awful. Go get it. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a log oh. in the way, dude. Oh, look at that, he's got it. I don't think that log helped. Power. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, mate. Why is it on my leg? <laughs> Does it smell nice? Oh, look, hang on. Smell of vision. What's that smell like? Not very good. <laughs> Have a little race. Ready, steady, go. You got a head on me. Across here, and get out there. Keep the power on. If you get stuck, you get it. Yeah. Get it, go. I made it, I made it. Yes. Oh no, what's the challenge? Straight up there. Oh, you can't see that on camera. Relax. Can the ramination make it up? for the win!
Oh look! Paddle! Uh, we got uh, uh, I think we're going to try and modify that and get that filter up the top here like a snorkel. Let's try and dry that filter off a little bit and then give it another rip. Definitely got to relocate this filter if we're going to go mudding. I think it's got an easy start. So that's it, you just oh. put it out. You haven't got to do it fast, you just put it slow and it will just do it. The thing with nitro and petrol, they're great when they work. When they don't work, <laughs> not so great. Yeah. Is there petrol in it, are you sure? Yeah. Oh, oh, let's say that plug, it's drenched. I don't know, but that's probably water, petrol, everything. Just pull it over a few more times. Do it a few more times. I'm gonna get zapped now. <laughs> yep, sparking. That's still drenched. I don't know if that's fuel or water. Probably a mixture. <laughs> Cut. Hey, after about half an hour messing about with it, plug in, plug out, drying it all, it's finally alive again. This is it. We're going for the world speed record today. We've got to get over 220 miles per hour. So just to recap, we've got four giant fist-sized motors, 25 horsepower each, so 100 horsepower in total. A custom-made scorched parts stretched carbon fiber chassis. So I've got a couple of jobs to do to finish this car off. Then we're going to head off to Wales, Rossa, the home of the world's fastest RC cars. Also, I put a couple of body posts here and here. Idea is the body sits in there behind it and it's gonna keep it nice and tight. We are ready for action. Let's go. All the stuff loaded up. So just me and Andy this time, no res this year. We tried to persuade him, but didn't want to come. Well, he wanted to come, but he didn't have any cars ready. That is very beautiful out here. Very Isle of Manny. Oh, well, look at this. We've got some little rickety bridge we've got to go over. Look at that, oh, look at this. What a lovely little village. So here's our little Airbnb. Lovely view over there, the seaside. This thing weighs a ton. So we're going to do a quick shakedown run first. I want to make sure it drives straight. I want to make sure we've got range. I want to make sure that we can turn it around on the runway. Then we're going to get it back. I've got some old tires on it in a minute. Put the real tires on, and then we're going to charge it up. And let it go rip. This is a test run, yes? Yeah, yeah. What, we're going to go for 100 miles an hour? Yeah, well, just anything. It might be 100. Nothing too spectacular. Quick little, just nice little, get the trim right. See how far it can go. Little range check. <laughs> Quarter throttle. Quarter, yeah. 139 on both traps. 139 at quarter throttle. You're doing something weird. 139 on both traps. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't bad for not trying. Yeah, that was absolutely flying. I don't know what it was doing though. It looked like it started going funny. So the cars come back. What, 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 what? Is this going to be bad? You're worrying me. Oh. Oh, oh. So that wheel's gone. So all the foam has come off, but they were wet. 
So we're going to put the gone bananas on there. I don't know if the thin tyres is good or not, but that's what we're experimenting. Yeah, man, to the boot. Look at that, all come off. Hopefully these skimmed down tyres are going to last. Otherwise, we have to leave more rubber on there and then it might blow off. What are you doing, James? I'm uh, just going to take the jet car out for the first yeah. attempt at the record. Oh, you're actually going for a record? Yeah. How fast? Is that the world record? Yeah. Hey, well done, mate. Here we go. We're gonna see how it feels. If it feels good, we're gonna get on the power. World record, maybe. Who knows? We'll give it a go. Here we go. 225 mile an hour. All right. Probably not. Probably big crash. Yeah! 1.7.32 I think you might need to take a bit more run up. Oh! Yeah, they've all gone again. Oh my god. Yeah, look, all the foam's done on it. We need a perfect pass on it. So all the foams are completely off. I've got some more tyres that are like with not much foam on them. Another problem, this car's got no perfect pass on it. So I'm trying to pull the trigger really smoothly to get the power in. But then you, you get to the end of the run and you're like nowhere near full. So I haven't got any perfect passes, but Chris, all the way over there somewhere, lent me this, which is a Flyscar Noble, but this has got a servo delay built into it. So we can make the servo delay up to 20 seconds. So we set it to about eight seconds, 10 seconds. We can get to the end of the runway, full power, just hold it there. And it will progressively smoothly put the power in until we get flat out at the end. So out with the Futaba, in with the Fly Sky. Boom! All right up to this now. We've got the new radio on there. We've got a 10 second delay. So we can literally get on it, pin it full speed. Just let the thing rip. See what happens. If tyres hold, great. Maybe world record. If they don't, might be no more sausage. Chassis. So what was the speed? Uh, 158 I think it was. Oh, it? oh my god look, the remains of the tyre is inside here. Well this is actually the wheel. I think that was 158 mile an hour. It blew before it got to the traps. Somehow kept it together to not crash into the traps. So we're going to try another set of tyres and more foam on it this time and see if they last. But trouble is more foam, more to pull the foam off. Day number three and check it out, sunshine. I'm trying up some tyres but this time I'm going to leave a little bit more rubber on there. On the front, man, I still want to try and make him a little bit narrower. Yeah, Standard width and narrowed. My idea to narrow is, is because you see where it's got all this here, where it hasn't got any strengthening, it's really flexy. So having it like that, it's a lot more rigid. And also, because these are the front ones, the air gets under it and tries to make the car backflip. So the narrower, the less likely to backflip. So it might work, it might not. We'll see in a minute. Cut! Here we go, heap out of the way everyone. Oh, oh. oh, I completely ate these. 
193 on the GPS. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I'm happy with that, I'll take that. We're gonna come up with a new tire idea. We've got a couple of tricks up our sleeves. I've got something at the workshop already, but I haven't seen it yet. So we're gonna take it somewhere else soon and give it another go, hopefully. Get that record at some point. All right, let's have a look. What yeah. happened? What happened? So what's interesting is that these tires here, we slimmed them right down and they survived. The back ones were wider and they're gone. So maybe we want something with slimmer, maybe. But look at this in there, look at that. <laughs> Done some gardening. Everything else is all right, isn't it? I thought I'd visions of the whole thing just toast, like three week build out the, down the pan. Yay! You hungry? <laughs> this track says X Max, it's got a funny clicky noise inside of it. No idea why. We took it apart, had a look at it, couldn't find it. So we're just going to give it hell, let it completely give up, and then hopefully find out why it's clicking. Also, we get told off. That's weird, because I've had to find a different part in the live stream and it's it was perfect. We're just gonna go nuts with it till it stops moving. <laughs> oh no! Oh what? Get it now! Steve, you hungry? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh! Hey, back to the studio. Ready, steady, go! Oh! What happened? <laughs> so last location was zombie fired so we are at our next location oh, oh no <laughs> Everyone do a backflip up here at the same time. Oh! oh I didn't want to do it. Oh. Ready for forward flip? Watch out, Steve. I don't know where it's going to go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Off. What happened? My stuff came off. Did we break the... Oh! There's a bit! What, what, what even is that? That's a bit hard. What? <laughs> what? Where? It's cut your arm broken half. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear! It's fine. What did you do? Max, you need some of your cable ties. Oh yeah. <laughs> Max! <laughs> what? Um. He's got ready in his pocket, ready, hasn't he? I think that's yours. Kev, yeah, as I fixed your car, Oh, um, Can we do it? It's like it's getting it now. <laughs> Is that orange off of there? To be honest, it's, it like it got it. it's done, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Oh. 
So we've got my second monster truck competition. In my first monster truck competition, I come second in freestyle. In this competition, I want to win. So in the last event, we suffered with slow rear steering. So I fitted a more powerful and faster rear steering pump. I fitted longer limit straps, so we got more suspension travel. More suspension travel means we can jump it higher. And in this event, they're going to put in a bigger jump so we can actually try and get a little bit of air under it. But before we can go, I've got to do a couple of quick jobs on the truck. We've got a leaking rear steering cylinder. And we've got to cut these corners off of the tyres because apparently if you leave them as they are stock, when you corner, it can dig in and make the truck roll over. And in this box here, I've got a complete brand new front steering system. The same system that Monster Jam use. It's got more power and it's faster. And it works when the truck's upside down, but we're not going to have time to fit that. So let's get cracking on with the truck, head off to the show and try and win this freestyle competition. So first of all, we've got to get the big wheels off and the small wheels on, but we can't get the big, big wheels off in here. So we've got to do it half in and half out because it won't even fit out the door with the big wheels on. Oh, he's touching the wall over there. So he's got to go back. Edge over that way so we can get it off. Got an apprentice on the job, go on, put the nuts <laughs> out. Challenge, you gotta roll it and then stand on top of it. So we got it all back in the shop with the little wheels on there. Next up, we've got to cut the corners off of the tyres. Apparently, when you're sliding around corners, these can dig in and make you roll over. So I've got this foam spacer here. And then I'm just going to mark around it like this. And then Tony from Swamp Thing reckons I can just cut it off with one of these. Boom! Now just another 174 to go. So that's half of one done. So now only that side. And all that lot down there. There we go, all done. Here, yeah, all the parts that came off. That actually kill it make some really good door stops. Last show we done, I had no spares at all. So I had to be really careful not to break the truck. This year, I've got almost every spare part for the whole entire truck. So we haven't got to worry too much about breaking it. Got spare planetaries, spare shocks, more spares down there. A whole load of spares that just turned up. So we're gonna unbox that in a second. Spindle, diff, drive shaft, CV joints, falling bars, prop shafts. All right, see what we got in here. Got spare oil filters and spark plugs, distributor, points box, starter motor, supercharger belt, head gaskets, spark plug leads, fuel pump, some other engine parts in here. Let's get it all packed. Boom! All boxed up. Let's get this bar off here, see if we can straighten it. I've got some brand new bars up here. But I've got some longer bolts ordered so I can run two bars. So I don't really want to put one new one on and then bend it. I'm going to save these for when we run double bars. Now, let's straighten this one. Here we are in Millsy's Muscle Shop. Man, you've got some toys in here, dude. What you got? I'm building a 1500 horsepower drag car for the street. If you want to see more of that, Millsy's channel. Oh, look at that. We've got a giant RC car. So there we've got a press, and somehow that has got to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did I hit you in the face? No. Boom, look at that, almost perfect. We got a high lux durability test video coming up as well soon. Next up, let's take this ram apart and see if we can find out where it's leaking from. Next, we've got to open the cylinder and that's going to make a complete mess because all the oil's going to come out. So I can't get this out at the end. That's probably because it's hydraulic locking. So if I slacken off these unions here, I should let me pull that out and suck some air in. Hopefully, anyway. I don't know what I'm doing with these things, just making it up as I go along. Hopefully now, this is gonna come out. Hey, there we go. Come on, ah, here you come. So I think the culprit for it leaking is this O-ring in here. Where it's been pinched when it got put together. That's what Tony reckoned. So that's where it's leaking. So in this bag here, I've got some spare ones. They are a slightly different design. So hopefully they're gonna be all right and not leak. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in there to hopefully help it seal a little bit. Now we've got to try and get all this back into there. Oh, 
Jesus. It won't go back in. So if you look on here, it's got this little lip sticking out and that's not making it go past this piece. I'm thinking maybe we can get one of these round it just to compress that down a bit, then slide it in. Please work. Hmm. Well, it's going to be easier to take the whole thing off. Oh, man. Who put all this in the way? I'm running out of time. The show's tomorrow. Let's see if Millsy can help us. Back in Millsy's shop. Next project. Let's have a go. Hey. Yes. Cheers, boys. Back in the shop. Let's get it all back together. Almost got it all back together again. We just need to jack it up so that we can move the wheels left and right because otherwise we can't get these long bolts back through all this lot. Next up, I've got to make sure that all the wheels are aligned and the tracking's done and all that stuff. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try and do it with a bit of string. At the moment, you can see that the rear wheels are facing this way. So this here is a self-centering system. So basically, we want to get this to where the wheels are straight and then tighten it up. So now we can keep adjusting things until the string touches on both sides of the wheel. Now it does on this one, but the wheels turn this way. So I'm going to turn it this way, this way, this way, just until we start to see a gap. Then that's that wheel set. And then to adjust the other wheel, we need to adjust the length of this bar here. So on the rear, that side's out. If we come over to the front, this side's out as well. So let's see if we can steer it while the engine's off. Get in there. Just about there, I think. Tiny little gap. Same on this side. So we are towing out slightly. On the rear, we can see that wheel is definitely that way. So now I'm just going to adjust this until we get it perfectly straight. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to nip it up. So now if we look over on the other side, we can see that this side here is towing in a little bit more than the other side. So by shortening this link a little bit, that should pull it a bit straighter. I want a little bit of tow in, but not too much. On the RC cars, if you do tow in on the back, it makes it a little bit more stable. So hopefully on the real one, it's gonna do the same. So first of all, we've got to loosen off these lock nuts. Then jack it up to take a little bit of weight off of the tires. And then we can turn the bar to adjust the tracking. So we've got a tiny bit of toe in on this side, tiny bit on that side. Just lock these off and then good to go. So all I've got to do now is move the rear steering left and right a few times just to bleed all the air out of the system. See where we worked on it and all the air got inside the cylinders and the lines and everything. Once we steer it a few times, that should fill it all back up with the oil. So here we've got the rear steer switch, left and right. Right, let's go. But before we go, I want to have one last practice on my monster truck simulator. This thing is super realistic. It's even got the game over monster truck. So just like on the real one, we've got steering, rear steering, exactly the same shifter, and go and stop on the pedals. So now sat in the real one, steering, rear steering, exactly the same shifter, go and stop. It's even got the same 1500 horsepower Chevy V8 big block supercharged and methanol injected. This will do zero to 60 mile an hour in three seconds. Anyway, quick blast on this, then go. So this simulator is super realistic. It drives almost exactly the same like the real monster truck. I actually did a video on building this simulator. I'm gonna put a link to that video down below. And it's a very similar setup to what the Monster Jam drivers actually use to learn to drive their trucks. Just spending a few hours on this, really practicing. This year, I wanna win this freestyle. This is all great for muscle memory. The more you do the steering, the more you do the rear steering, the more you do these gears, the more it's gonna feel natural doing it on the real truck. And I'm definitely noticing, if you go back and watch the video where I built this simulator, 
you can definitely see that I'm feeling a lot more confident now driving the truck on the simulator. Hopefully, once I get to driving the real truck, whoa, that's not gonna happen. Right, <laughs> let's go and set the truck up at Santa Pod. There we go, all loaded up, ready to go. Shout out to CMG Transport for transporting it. Here we are on location, oh look, we got Tony already in the house. Got the rest of the crew in the house. So we got me in and the apprentice putting the tires on. Got Blast over there making it back here. So here we are again at Santa Pod for the UK Monster Truck Nationals. The same show we did this time last year. We're repping the best merch in the game. Look at the size of that beast. Hats. So I suppose we'd best have a look at the Swamp Thing Monster truck. Yeah, yeah. 20th anniversary. Look at that shine. Oh man, look at that on the camera, how good that looks. Yeah. Apart from the bit at the back where I've done a wheelie and scratched it. <laughs> oh no. And all I've got to do now is an oil change on it and then we're ready for tomorrow. So I've got to beat you in the freestyle. What do you reckon? Have I got a chance? Of course have you, of course you've got a chance. <laughs> You've only got one show to do. I've got another one to do on Tuesday. So what's what's your tactic to, to make let me not win? So we, Beat you in racing, see what you're doing freestyle. Oh, right. ah. <laughs> because then if you go if you go last, you get to see what everybody else has done. Yeah. And then if like, all you got to do is do better than them. Right. So that's that's my tactic. This track is quite tricky because it's quite narrow. Yeah. And you've got the widest track here, so you've got a really bad, really bad disadvantage. I've got disadvantage on the corner. <laughs> well, and, and down the lanes, because you're not if you hit a lane marker. You've got, got five second penalty. Yeah. You can do the whole thing in 20 seconds. It's game, game over. over. Yeah, it, literally, it's literally game, game over. over. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Terry Grant's stunts here as well. What are you doing, Terry? New hub. As you can see, I've only got three stunts. Oh! Two wheeling on three studs is probably not good. So, so you're going to drive this on two wheels tomorrow? Yeah. And you're going to be running these as well? Yeah. And we'll be using this one, this one, and them three over there. So six cars. I love these things. Here we've got Podzilla, Santa Pod's very own monster truck. Driver of that is Gary Anderson. And he's all the way over there waffling to Tony. There he is. Here we've got Blaster, Ian Jones's truck. So this one here is actually a 10 year old truck, but it still looks brand new. I think the engine's pretty much the same as mine, but it's a lot louder because it exhausts. I'm really sure. So this is Big Pete, one of the original monster trucks. It weighs seven and a half tons and has leaf sprung suspension. And here we have Russ, the man who puts on the show and the man behind the microphone. So this is Kev, going to have his first ride in Big Pete. I hope he's ready because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Kev, best of luck, you're a braver man than I am. Alright, let's you. go, let's do this. So this is Chris, CJ. Hello, oh, the suspension on this is so small and so little. If you spin round, it's on leaf spring suspension and eight inches of damp. So that is the only shock travel you got? Yes. Oh. So, where is it? may not look as spectacular as what Kev does in Game Over. You'll feel it when you're in there. It's a lot harder on the body, believe it or not. So, I'm going to take him out and show him what an old school monster truck is like. Yes. At the bottom base was a truck called Kodiak. It was a three-year 
saturation of Kodiak and then we put the Peterbilt body on top. Should we do it? Yes. Yes, let's do it. How do you get in this one? Right. We use the plates as a ladder. Right. Oh, check this out. So this is actually still the original dashboard. Yes. So if there's no, any American fans out there that likes Peterbilt's or know what they look like on the inside, original dash, original door cards. Right. In, in. Right. Ready when you are. All right. V8. Yeah, V8. Uh, basically the uh, normally aspirated, untouched version of what you run, and we've got a horn. So you built this whole truck yourself? Yeah, I built it. Uh, I started to build the first version in 1990. Oh, that's the smaller wheels? Yeah, smaller wheels and everything. So in this shape here, uh, with the big wheels, uh, these big wheels I have for the last 10 years. Did you build all the housings? I built the housings, uh, axles, chassis. Everything? Uh, everything you can see except the yeah. engine and uh, transmission. So on my truck, I assembled it. Put up, built it. You've got a little bit more horsepower than me, haven't you? Yeah, maybe. So, same engine. Hey, look, we've got subscribers over there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Game over. Game over, fans over there. <laughs> same engine as mine. Yeah, Richard Midget built the engine. Bigger uh, supercharger. Yes. And so, a little bit more overdrive on the supercharger also. Yeah, so by putting a bigger supercharger on there and overdrive, Bit more horsepower yeah so when you see this truck go it's a little bit more spicy than some of the other ones maybe i've got to put that supercharger on mine what do you reckon you feel the difference i feel, felt the big difference when i changed uh, yeah. the on it all right we might do that in future video so this one's using king coil over shocks right. yep S subscribe yeah, subscribe yep <laughs> so here we've got the joker monster truck this one also from sweden over there somewhere Yunus. Yeah. <laughs> this is. I'm good, thank you. So, this is your beast. Yeah. Are you still guard it all? God, tour of the beast. So, this yeah. is your first show in England. Yeah, this is my first show. First show on cars. Yeah. So, first what are you thinking? I reckon I'm going to go Yeah. It's a little bit nervous, but. Uh, yeah. Just go out there and have some fun. So, Joker then, this did this used to be John Deere one? John Deere one. Yeah, and yeah. you've upgraded it loads. Yeah. So what have you done to change it? I've done a lot of changes this winter actually, because we had a YouTuber <laughs> who actually <laughs> broke it. Yeah. 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 Who broke it? Uh, Marcus Dubois broke it. Oh I think I saw that video. You did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw that. <laughs> wasn't his fault because the, the straps 
they were a little bit old, so we, we had a lot of sand and dust going in here and and, and, just wore out. and we're wearing. So when you just landed on the back tires, you just snapped. So you've built the housings yourself? Yeah. From from that side and forward, yeah. we, we changed all the tubes because they, they were too small to compete. So we changed all the tubes to bigger tubes and stronger tubes. A little bit of a different setup. Top secret though, so we're not going to show secret. too much. Oh, no. oh, because otherwise, otherwise all the other drivers are going to want the same setup. <laughs> we can, have a, can we have a little sneak? Yeah. A little quick sneak. Know. A little quick sneak, you ready? There. That's all you get in. That's all you get in, no more. Tony beat me last year. Yeah. My first show ever, I come second. So I want to try and come first this time. I'll beat you to it. Yeah, <laughs> and you want to come first as well. Well, good yeah. luck. <laughs> Here we go, pit party, say hello to all you fans, and then we're going to get racing. So Blast is having a problem getting his engine fired up, but the pit party is starting, so we got to start. Hopefully, we'll get it working. Who likes these things? I think we're going to trash that later. So we cut these off of the tyres. We've got 174 of them, and you guys can have them. Yeah, got it working, yes! <laughs> Here we got Russ in the house. The guy that puts this show on. We're so excited. We're just getting ready for the pit party, Kev. You're going to have to meet thousands of fans here. So yes. I hope you've got a good pen to sign all <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah, we've got the pens. Uh, they've been queuing up for an hour to come and yeah. meet you. So uh, we're just about ready. Two minutes time. They're all coming in to say hello. So uh, And if you miss tickets like this time round, get them early for next time. Absolutely. UK yeah. Monster Truck Nationals, link down below, innit? God bless you. Yes, it is. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Oh, nice one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good luck, I have to show as usual so first of all we've got racing and then next up we've got freestyle where he who wows the crowd the most wins so here's how racing works every truck gets two qualifying rounds where he races just against the clock we're starting off in the left hand lane so we've got to hit a stack of cars here go over them then hit a second stack of cars and then you have to make it around this really really tight turn tire then back the other way again and then cross the line now if you hit one of the lane markers or the turn tire then that is a five second penalty my truck has a bit of a disadvantage here because it is a lot wider than all the other trucks and also it has locked up different Differentials. On an open differential, the wheels can turn independently, makes it easier to turn. On my truck, the front differential is completely locked solid. The trouble is with that, when you're trying to make a really tight turn, rather than the truck going round the turn, it tries to push forward. So you'll see me playing with the throttle and brakes to try and skid the back end around. And then once all the trucks have done the left-hand lane, then they're all going to do the right-hand lane, but in reverse order to keep it fair. Then the two times from the two lanes are added together, and that dictates your starting order. After that, we've got side-by-side -side racing. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Here we go, Podzilla up first. Oh, 
Oh no, he hits two markers. That is 10 second penalty. Next up, Grim Reaper. Here we got Lambo. Now we got Joker's turn. It's his first time hitting cars. He's only ever hit mud before, so good luck. See how he does. Here we go, Joker. First time ever hitting cars over in Sweden. They just do mud racing. Amazing, probably the quickest time yet. Here we got Big Pete, the heaviest monster truck of them all. This one is one of the original monster trucks and it's still competing today. Here we got Blaster up next. And you'll notice that this is even wider than the other truck. It really sits down low. Here we go, my go in game over. Oh no, I hit the tyre. Five second penalty. Five seconds of time penalty for Pentalba. And the man that wins almost every time, Tony in swap fee. <laughs> That was the quickest time yet, 23 seconds. So now all the trucks have got to do the same again, but in the right hand lane. And then both times are added together. The quickest time wins. And he falls off the cars and somehow manages to avoid the markers. So that was 30 seconds, plus 23 seconds from the last run, 53 seconds. Here's my second run. I completely messed it up. I went the wrong way around the turn tire. Remembered last minute, reversed, and then went around the right way. If you go the wrong way, it's a five second penalty. So that's 73 seconds for me, putting me in second place for now. A little burnout there from last day, he falls off the cars and narrowly misses the marker. So 61 second total run for Blaster, putting him up to second place for now. No! And we have 90 seconds for Big Pete. No! And that was the quickest time so far, 48 seconds for Joker. So here we have the final qualifying position with Joker up first, Swamp Thing second. So now all the trucks have to race for position. Up first we have me and Big Pete and we are racing for seventh position. So we both start side by side. Once the flag drops, we go. We go over the cars, round the turn tire at the end and race back to the finish line. Whoever crosses the line first wins that round. So here we have Game Over versus Big Pete. So 
So I got a bit excited there, crossing the line, landed a little bit crooked, a little bit of a bounce, clipped the hay bale, and they shut the engine off for safety. Oh, no. Did you switch him off? Yeah. <laughs> you were trying. I'm you really good. put your foot down. I'm you look good. Yeah. You look all right. Yeah, it looks all right. Yeah. yeah. Like you hit you the done, the, done the right stuff though. Get on the brake. So I won that one, which puts me up into seventh. Now these two are going to race for fifth, these two for third, and then these two for the overall winner. Grim Reaper versus Podzilla. <laughs> Star versus Lambo. <laughs> and now for the final race, and racing for first position is Tony Dixon in Swamp Thing and Jonos in Joker. Oh no, Joker has a problem. <laughs> Something crosses the line for the 2023 UK Monster Truck National Racing Champion. Here is Tony Dixon! What are you doing, Ian? Putting more go go juice in. Hey! So that's how much fuel we use so far. So I think one more of them should be more than enough. So Joker caused a bit of damage. How he's got his hydraulic lines, he's got them sort of on the front there, so he must have clipped a car. Look, burst of hose, what a mess, it's gone everywhere, all up there, the whole thing is dripping. Hopefully he's going to find a hose. He's got one hose, but he's damaged two. My fingers crossed, he'll get it fixed. Thank Thank you. Thank you. I think they're back in action. Now we got the freestyle, the moment that I've been waiting for, and many of you guys have been waiting for too. To win the freestyle, you have to impress the audience. So there's four sets of audience, and every audience has to come up with a number from one to 10, 10 being the best. So 40 would be a top score. Now we've got a similar track that we had to the racing, however now we have a bus in the middle that we can drive over and also a kicker ramp. Now I was hoping that the kicker ramp was going to be a little bit bigger because I really want to send game over to the moon, so a little bit smaller, but we'll make the most of it and see what we can do. Alright, let's go freestyle, yes! Here we go, first up, Big Pete is not the fastest, but he's the heaviest and the oldest. Let's see what he can do. Here we can see Big Pete doing his freestyle from the camera inside my truck whilst Ian is helping me buckle up. I actually got to have a ride in this truck and it is so bouncy. Go back to the last video and you'll see it go there. Here we go, my go!
good families, and we love it to bits. We just love it. That was just sensational. Give me your scores. We have a nine. Score crew number two. We have an eight. That's seventeen. Ten. So that's a total score of 35 for me from the fan judges. First bit of damage. And look, look. Oh dear. Oh! Oh, Bendy Wendy. <laughs> and... <laughs> Did you have a good time? Oh, that's so much fun. I thought you won't. I've got something special coming up for this one. Have we? Yes. Watch the end of the video. Tony's last. Good luck. I want you to win, but I want to win as well. <laughs> Next up, we have the Grim Reaper. And he gets a score of 21. Next up, Podzilla. And oh no, he lawn darts it and breaks the truck. I think the trouble is with this truck, it's got a rev limiter set quite low. Oh, oh dear, oh no. So that prop shaft's broken, it's hitting on the outside, it's jabbing the whole thing up. What happened, mate? Uh, we got a bleep machine. Uh, yeah, we got a bleep machine. Oh, it right, sir. Ah, oh, no. Who likes speed camera vans? We still got Tony coming up. We got Blaster. We got engine troubles earlier, and don't want to start again. Hopefully, we'll get it going. Go on. My one's gone a little bit wonky. I think we must have spent one of these play bars. Here we go, And we have a score of 38 for Blaster. Next up, Lambo. Lambeau also gets a score of 38. Here we have Joker. Humble, Wumble. Bots the Nationals for the, only the second time have we got. Is he good? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh! it's Woohoo! I don't know about you, but my heart's pumping. Hey, guess what? Guess what? Tumble, Wumble. Tumble, Wumble. Game over. Yeah, that's, that's, that's gone. Oh, dear. What happened? I'm not sure I want this job anymore. I need to get the footage. I think I got the footage. <laughs> Over there. Down the hill while uh, I was running. Anyway, while we got him, massive shout out for Claire for helping film. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That was so cool. That is massive shout out to Ian for helping Reg. Don't worry, I'll just look off the back. Camera over there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh, no. What have we done to your truck? Yeah. I thought I might help you out a little bit, Kevin. Oh, <laughs> Poor truck. <laughs> 
poor track. But well, it looks kind of great this way as well. That's a good picture. Yeah, it good is. Video, yeah. good footage. Yeah, all for the crowd. Yeah, crowd are happy. Poor Claire was terrified. Okay, you were? <laughs> I can't run very fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm getting this shot, I'm getting this shot. <laughs> yeah. But it is good anyway. It looks good. It looks good, yeah. I hope the crowd enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll yeah. better that next time anyway. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> There we go, next up we got Tony from Spring, see what he can do. And that was a perfect score of 40 for Swamp Thing. Ah, oh, Tony won. I've come like last or something. I don't know. You weren't last. You're not far off for last. I wanted to win. I thought I was the last time. Oh, well, we've got next year. So here we've got the final position. So Tony and Swamp Thing first, Blaster and Lambo in tied second, and me in fourth position. There he is with his trophies. Poor truck. Oh. So let's see how they clean this mess up, then we're going to congratulate Tony and then I want to have a look back at my freestyle and see how I can improve in future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well we've got Max here, cheers for helping mention it's no oh. problem. <laughs> Max has got Tano as well, check him out. Mad Max Arty. Yes. Not far off last. Oh, right. Well done, mate, dude. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice one, mate. Had a really good time here. Great to great to compete against Kevin again. Yeah, man. <laughs> Even though he was been practicing on his simulator. Not enough. I need to practice more on the simulator. <laughs> next year. Next year. Always next year. Check this out. I've got a radio-controlled go-kart. It's got a real engine. So you can't buy these anymore. This one, I managed to get it from eBay. But check out how realistic it is. Engine, exhaust, drive going down to a solid rear axle. So this is exactly how it came. It doesn't look like it's really been used that much at all. So we're going to give it a quick service. We need a radio because we've got no radio with it. So I'm going to put in a Dumbo. And then we're going to see if we can get the engine to run. So first of all, we're going to take it apart, fit the receiver, make sure that it all works. And then we're going to take it out for a rip. Here we go, moment of truth. Oh, so we got steering, throttle, brakes. Got it. Yeah. Brakes? Yeah. Oh, yes. So it came with this little homemade plate here, but I think we're not going to bother with it. The only trouble is, if this pops off and the battery comes out. Haha, <laughs> you know what's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to be laughing at you with a runaway. <laughs> runaway! Hopefully. Runaways are funny when it's someone else's, but not when it's yours. <laughs> Cover back on. That's not going to come out, is it? No, who cares? <laughs> You're not in it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, not in it, am I? So next, I'm going to replace these fuel lines because they look like they're a bit gummed up. And we've got some brand new stuff here. And it's yellow. <laughs> this is the car. Did a bit of Kevin there. Billy's learning the YouTube voice. Yep, so you make your one. Winnie's gonna get his one on there. While he's doing that, I'm gonna go get some nitro. Some nitro. <laughs> so there we go, 25% for optimum power. Oh look, monster truck. <laughs> Oh look, Lamborghini, we get the monster <laughs> I said to Vinny, would you take that or that? And he chose that. You can use that every day. <laughs> I could use that, I can't use that every day. 
Yeah, but that's like adrenaline overload. Get me somewhere to use that every day. I'll have that, but <laughs> Lambo for me at the moment. Comment down below, what would you have, that or that? <laughs> Gotta be that, innit? Next, we give it a bit of thrustle. Put your finger on the exhaust and tug. Should prime the fuel in. No idea how old this thing is. If any of you guys know the history of these and the age, let me know in the comments. Like glow on, foot all closed, and oh, felt like it wanted to go. As if when you fast forward it and say it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Leaky loads of oil. Did, did it go plug up? Yeah. Oh, where's the Kev? Where's the Kev? Ah, oh, there he is. There's the tool. That was loose, Vinny. It's a little bit loose. It don't hurt. Oh, oh, oh nice. Oh, nice. Driver. Who's going to drive it? Not Trump. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> Trump lost me so many subscribers. Maybe the head's a bit loose-ish. No. No. I think it's a glow plug. Maybe there's a bit of dirt in there or something. Oh, look at that. Put a new glow plug in, just to be sure. Oh, I don't know. I reckon it's probably the washer. Well, a little trick you can do on a real car. You take it off on the sump plug and you turn it round. Filter-wise, we're just going to buy one from here for now. I think this is even the same engine. This is a Force 18. This one's a 15. So if we do blow this engine up, we can get one of those in there. And it'll go faster. Faster runaway as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably clean it, but eh, not in it. And next, we got, we got a driver, <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> uh, Mind her legs. Oh, I don't want to get demonetized here. I'm going to cover that up. Buckle up, Barbie. You're going for a ride. She's not going anywhere, is she? Guaranteed to crash like she's a bird. Nah, she won't crash. She's a woman driver. <laughs> <laughs> Even drivers don't crash, do they? <laughs> I don't know. Never. <laughs> Random hand doing just there, though. Doing car better settings. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> so we got the steering trim centered. Throttle. Why is it cheering? My servo is not liking lipo power. Oh no, our servo just died. That's doing it. That's not me. Oh yeah. You might get your money away here. <laughs> another servo here. Pull that servo out, put that servo in. If this behaves, we know it's the servo, not the radio. So our new servo is working perfectly. So that means that the old servo is faulty and we're going to fit a new one. <laughs> Next battery in, centre off the servo and hopefully it's going to work. Full fault. Brakes, yes. Barbie, you are going for a ride of your life. <laughs> this thing's got no grip. Let's try and warm the tyres up. Controlled nitro power drift car. Look at that, we've got a real engine in there. So, here we've got the nitro fuel that it runs on. So, we're going to try and start it for the first time and then we're going to take it out for a rip. So, it's got a real working engine, a disc brake. Metal chassis, double wishbone suspension, front and rear. 
one in fast, it'll be fast. Next, we need to add some batteries for the servos. So I'm not a fan of these AA battery holders, so I'm gonna go ahead and fit a LiPo. Steering, plenty of speed and power. Throttle, brakes. So this comes with rubber tyres, which is great for handling, but not so great at drifting. RC drift cars usually come with these hard sort of plasticky tyres. So I've got a set of drift tyres here, and these ones have got flints in there that should make them spark. Boom! Oh, check this out. Here we've got this Subaru Impreza body from Killer Bodies. So later on, we're going to mount this and put the rubber tyres back on. And do some rally driving. Yes! If you're wondering what this is, I've built my own monster truck. And there's a full build series on this channel. I'm going to put a link to that down below. Look at that V8 engine goodness. 66 inch tall tyres. And the axles weigh a ton each. Check out the size of all these components. Look, that's a knuckle. Anyway, let's go drifting. <laughs> Perfect for drifting. Check out the weather. It's winter, but it's like summer. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> you gotta jump it. It's a drift car. Oh, get your body on it. <laughs> So we had a little bit of fun, but the engine did soon blow up. Oh. <laughs> What have you done now, Kev? Uh, pull it. Yeah, I, can't. I think we've seized the engine. Run it in fast, it'll be seized. <laughs> You're running really good, though. No, Does that look like metal to you? What? Take this off. Where? Does that look like a piece of metal at the end? Oh! Da, da, da. Oh, oh. oh, where's that? What? Where's that from? <laughs> what? These? They're bits of metal. Where could that have come from? I reckon we put it back together again, it'll work, wouldn't it? It's not bad. Look at that, back in action. Get it back on, boy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Max is go. <laughs> Tight again. I don't know. Oh, he's gone tight again. No. Is it? Yeah. Oh, head off again. Where's all this coming oh, from? There's more of it. Oh, see, solid. Oh, Won't even turn. I'm gonna push that piston back down. Bang that on there. That's, that's, bollop, that's bollop what I'm gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's everywhere. Back in it. Oh my God! Look what's onto that. It's shot blasted the head. Oh, game over. Look, the glow plug's done. Is it? Yeah. Oh, where's that gone? Gone. Game over for now. Back to the shop. I think probably new engine. Subaru body, and then do some rally driving with it. Let's take this engine apart and see what's going on. Here we go. Well, that don't look too bad in there. Oh, there we go, look. 
Bottom end. That bottom end bush there, look. Chunks missing. These force engines are normally really good. And I think the problem here wasn't even due to not running it in properly. It's probably because we've got drift tyres and we're just over revving it. There we go. eBay. Lovely jubbly. Wee! We got the spare conrod turned up. However, I've just noticed on the piston we have a chunk missing. Not sure if that's going to matter. Guess we'll see in a minute. So if we look in here, look, it's got this tiny little clip. I'm not sure how you're supposed to get it out. We'll give that a quick clean up with some brake cleaner. I can't see this thing going back in. That's going to fly across the room and be gone forever. Yeah, guess that's in. Better give that a quick clean in there as well. What's that bit for? Why won't that go in there? Came out of there. We've got a brand new glow plug. So I reckon that spring must go in there, then the pin, and that must locate in there. There we go, full engine rebuild. Oh. What is going on? Easy to just buy a new one. Hey, it works. No idea if it's gonna run though, we'll see in a minute. So I wanna change the exhaust position. I had to put a hole in the body here. I didn't line up properly. It wasn't even sticking out properly. So you mess everywhere. So I think I'm gonna try and turn it round so it's facing down. And that way we don't need to ruin this nice body. Boom! Next up, let's see if we get the Subaru body to fit. Check out the detail of that. Please fit. Do you know what? A slight adjustment of the body posts. I think we're going to be good to go. So a broken body post off and a new one on. This one here is also a little bit short. I think the front ones are going to be all right. I am not very good at lining this up, so I'm probably going to make an absolute mess of it. So the back was quite easy because we can see through the window, but the front, where it's painted, we can't. So I think we've got to kind of guess where those posts come out. Maybe we can scratch it. Oh, look, we can see the line. So all we've got to do now is measure these posts and then transfer it onto here. All right, here goes nothing. Here we go, is it gonna fit? Please, we only get one shot at this. Yes! We've got the arches lined up pretty well. It's all in the middle. I don't think we could have actually done it much better. However, these tyres are too wide and they're going to rub on the body. So I've got a set of tyres here. They look to have less offset. Hopefully, they're going to fit on and be inside the body a little bit. Yes! Yeah, it's better. It's still catching a little bit. I've got an idea. If you look here, look, we've got adjustable camber links. If we adjust the wheels in a little bit, might clear it. <laughs> look at it. Is this what the boy racers call stance? Next up, let's see if the engine runs and then we're going to take it out for a rip. So the engine was so tight, I had to loosen off the glow plug, get the engine started, and then tighten it back up. <laughs> Next up, servo upgrade. Now, this is a AGF Premium Servos. Check out those specifications. That is one of the fastest servos I've ever seen. If you want all the techno babble, link down below. Let's get it in. So a plastic case on this one to keep the weight down, I presume. Metal gears. Next up, we've got to plug in the battery, turn the radio on, make sure the servo is centred and fit the servo arm. Whoa, check out how fast that is. Check out that speed, that's mad. That's one of the fastest servos I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Right, let's go rip. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 
it? So here we're attempting to tune it. There you are. Oh! <laughs> that might have been <laughs> game have, over. Have we seized it? <laughs> Should we have a little go? Yeah, give it a pull. Oh, <laughs> oh yank it. What, properly or? Just, just, just try and unseize it. We put my foot there, yeah? Oh! <laughs> no, that's not. You, really? You've you murdered it. Oh, what? Get the head yeah. off, have a look. Two engine seizures in one video. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, first of all, the engine, you must have bought the whole car. Really? Yeah, there's not much in it. Oh, dear. What were we expecting to see? Oh, or oh, maybe the bearing. I seized it in there. How to unseize a nitro engine by Mr. Talbot. <laughs> if you get that unseized, oh man. That is, I reckon there's something more to it. Jesus. If you get that piston down. Oh, oops. There goes the. Uh... Oh, there, it's moving. Is it? I need a hammer. Oh man. Do you want to run again? No, look, it's down now. It's turning. Doing now. Oh, we freed it. Look. No. Oh yes. No. Oh, give it, give it all, give it, give it maximum. Maximum. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll saddle it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Who remembers this really expensive Banggood special from a few videos ago? The idea was to unbox it, give it a little drive around, give it a little bash and just to see if that price was just a fireball. Trouble is, we got a little bit carried away too soon and this happened. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, that went high. Oh, oh! No! Oh, we bent the hinge pin block and ripped the wishbone off. So in this video, we're gonna fix it, then take it out for another bash and see if it's worth the money. So we got a broken arm, bent pin, bent hinge pin block. On location, same location where we wrecked it last time. So this time, we're just gonna use it normally. Servo's a bit on the slow side. Next, I think, I think you hit Pikachu. Or oh no. So run up across there. This has got a lip here. Probably can't see it on camera. So you can't go too fast. Then you got to hit that. You've got to clear Pikachu. If you miss, it's like slamming it straight into a wall. Nice knowing ya. Oh, easy. <laughs> so next one is drop it in here. Try to land that lamppost. No. We're supposed to normal bash it. Yeah. It is normal. Go on in. Oh, so I've got to land it on that lamppost. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! It's not looking good. Oh, oh. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Told you it wouldn't last five minutes. It's supposed to be a gentle bash. Oh. It looks like quite a chunky diff you got down there. Oh, diff's in there. This is the world's biggest Grave Digger radio controlled monster truck. And in this video, we're going to fit a great big racing engine and then take it out for a rip. In here, we have the world's biggest RC car and it comes in two boxes. Oh my God, check out the size of this. So this is a normal sized RC car tyre. This is a Gravedigger tyre! Check out the size difference! What? It's bigger than my head! Here we got a shock, and here it is, compared to a normal sized RC car shock. Look at the size of this axle, man! Normal sized RC car, Gravedigger axle! And now, for the big boy! So here it is, the Primal Grave Digger. We've got all the stickers here. This one is actually the limited edition, collector's edition. So it's 169 out of 200, and it comes with a special plaque here, signed by the man himself, the legendary Dennis Anderson. Being the collector's edition, it does come with a few upgrades. More on that later. So we're gonna put it all together, and then we're gonna take it out for a rip. But also, I've got a few more upgrades. So, we've got a long wheelbase kit to make it longer. In here, check this out guys here we have the taylor rc 50 cc engine check this out guys this thing has got some horsepower and 
we have a servo upgrade. So let's stop waffling, get all this stuff fitted, and then take it out for a rip. So to start off with, let's get the body off and then let's try and fit the engine. So it's already got a 50cc engine in there, however, they're not really that powerful. They're great for a beginner, but they are a little bit boggy and a little bit underwhelming. So the tailor, that is really going to wake this bad boy up. So here I'm removing the four link bars because it makes it easier to get the engine out and we need to take them off anyway to fit the long wheelbase kit. So to get the engine out we need to remove this cover, take out some sprockets, take these screws out here and then hope for the best. Found more screws, under here look, the engine is mounted to this cross beam here. We've still got the exhaust pipe holding it in and also I think we're going to have to remove this side plate. So now with the exhaust pipe off, all we need to do is disconnect the throttle cable then the engine can come out. Here we go, Taylor 50cc engine time! So this here is the Taylor 50cc engine. If we have a look at my primal raminator down here, this one's got the 80cc version. Now this thing has got so much horsepower. Trouble is, it does chew up the transmission sometimes. Now Thunder RC, he's got exactly the same truck with the same engine. And that's the fastest I've ever seen one of these primal monster trucks go. He's got the high speed gearing in it too, so I'm going to do the same. And he's also got lighter clutch springs on there to make it all a little bit easier on the transmission mission so I've kind of copied the same setup. No idea how fast it's gonna actually go but I've got a GPS here so we can check it. The Taylor kit also comes with everything that you need to mount this engine. Well I hope you do anyway but let's check out this tuned pipe. So before we fit the engine it's probably a good idea to fit the high speed gearing while it's easier to get to. So this is very similar to a real monster truck. So here's a real one that we built on this channel a little while ago and if you look in here look you can see the transfer case. You take that cover off and just the same on the raminator you can swap out the gears so we've got to pull these gears out and included with the kit comes this high speed gearing so if you put them in this way around that's going to give it the highest speed however if you flip them over that's going to give you like a crawling gear Also, you get medium speed gearing. That's what I've got in the 80cc Raminator. And I reckon with this and the high speed gearing, this is actually going to go a lot faster. Engine in time. But before that, we've got to take off a couple of brackets off the old engine and put them onto the new one. Oh no! Tea everywhere! Oh! Here I'm fitting an extra engine mount that comes with the Taylor engine. So next up, let's get the actuals on, but before that, I just want to fit these new servos. So these are the 100 kilo servos from AGF. Here's the techno babble. They're all metal cased, all metal gears, some of the best quality servos that I've ever seen. Next, we've got to screw the servo arm back on. However, this is an M3 and the AGF servos have an M3.5. No big deal, but we just got to faff a little bit to get it to fit. Now, the AGF servo does come with a screw. However, it doesn't quite fit into here. So first, we've got to drill out the arm to a 3.5 millimeter hole, and then we've got to shave the head down a little bit too.
And before we can fit the servo arms, we need to plug the servos in, make sure they're centered, then we can go ahead and fit the arms. The servo arms are on these adjuster things so you can sync both servos perfectly together so they're not fighting each other. Do you know what? This is actually a really nice radio. It's got model memories, endpoints, dual rates, expo, pretty much everything that you're going to want in a radio. Next up, long wheelbase conversion kit. And here I'm just putting a bit of blue Loctite into all the threads to stop it all from coming loose. Boom! So on the top links here, I'll put this bigger spacer on the outside. If you put it on the inside, I have bent the bolt before. Next, we've got to fit the rear axle. Boom! Now this truck here, I'm going to leave it with no rear steering for now. These two primal laminators here are both giving them the rear steering conversion. However, sometimes if you're going fast and you're hitting bumps, the rear steering can kick out and it can make it really uncontrollable, make the truck roll over. Now you can tighten up the servo saver, but then you can kill servos like I've already killed loads. So this one, I want to be able to bash it a little bit harder, a little bit more confident in the rear end, so we're just going to leave it straight axle. On a real monster truck, we got rear wheel steering, but the hydraulics are so powerful, you don't really have a problem with the back wheels sort of kicking out. Next up, we've got to fit the shocks. Now, I need to make a few adjustments to these. The same adjustments that I made to those ruminators down there. I'm not going to bother filming it, because I've already filmed it a couple of times and put it on those two videos there. But basically, some of the Primal Monster trucks, they come with leaking shocks, or they might start leaking after a little while. So, if you get in contact with Primal, they will supply you with some of these new O-rings to stop the leaks. Alternatively, and this is the fix that I did to those two. I've got some of these O-rings here. The size is that there, R07. And there's all the sizes there, so you can just eBay that and put some of them in. I only put one of them in. I'll take the bottom cap off, pull the O-ring out, push that one in, job done. If you put the primal ones in, then you've got to pull the whole shaft out, do that O-ring, and you've also got to do the other O-ring on the inside. A little bit more work. Also, the stock shocks, if you're doing hard bashing, if you land really, really hard, the suspension locks up solid, and you can end up blowing out pistons, snapping off standoffs. So I'll just drill them out with a 3.5mm drill bit. If you're running single shocks in a 3.5 mil drill bit is going to be way too soft it's going to bottom out and you're also going to be snapping off standoffs so i'm going to do all that and then we're going to bolt them on there we go all done next we have to fit them next we need to make a couple of adjustments so these shock standoffs here they're at the same level if you look at the axle this side here is higher than this one so if you want to utilize the full travel of your shocks you need to take this mount here and move it up to here Next up, we've got to take all this stuff off because you cannot get that bottom bolt through. You can't get it this way, also can't get it in that way. So even with this removed, you still cannot quite get that bolt in there. Now you can remove all of this, but that's a big hassle. I've got an easier way. 5mm drill bit and just run it through at a slight angle. Put your goggles on, there's a good chance that drill bit's going to shatter doing that. Now, we can put the shock in and slide the bolt through at a slight angle. I know some of you guys are going to say, ah, it's a bodge, it's, you're not doing it right, but, ah. I don't care, not in it, am I? Boom! And there we go, we've got this bar back in. If you look here, look, it is very close, but there is a slight gap there. You do want to put it back in, because otherwise you might bend the chassis if you're doing big jumps. Right, rest of them. Boom! Next up, we've got to fit the sway bars. Next up, we've got to fit the disc brakes and the centre drive shafts. And brake calipers. So if you look here, look, I ground a little bit of that pin off there because it's rubbing on the brake disc. Next up, I've got to get the kill switch to work. So here's the original on-off switch. The Taylor engine has a button. In here is a kill switch that you can use from the remote. I'm guessing it's probably this button here. The wires for all that is going through here somewhere. I've got to figure out a way of wiring that into that. Also, this is a new receiver box. You've got the battery in there, all the radio gear, all the wires. Lovely, neat and tidy. One simple on-off switch. You can charge it up from on here. However, However, I like to run these ramulators on a 2S LiPo. So I'm going to go back to the old school way of doing it. We've got one little receiver box and the battery goes there. I'm not going to bother filming the whole process because it's super fiddly and it's going to be really boring for you guys. I'm just going to shove it on and then show you what I've done afterwards. And when it comes to all this kill switch stuff, I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's going to be a big faff. 
Alright, so I've been messing about with it for about an hour and I've got it all wired up now. So we got rid of this box, put this one on. Not quite as neat as the original one, but it's just easier if we want to run an external battery. I've taken off all the shielding off the wires, it just makes it a little bit easier to route it and work on it if anything goes wrong in the future. Got rid of that kill switch because I've already got one on the engine. And then the two wires that went to that switch, I just soldered them onto that switch there. So if any of you guys are wondering how to do it, that is how I did it. So on here, where the aerial hole used to be, I put a little bit of Lexan as a little inspection window. So when that light's green that means the engine can start so if you pull this pull starter you can see that sparking uh, you can if the lights are off anyway lights are on you can't so then you hit the kill switch on there lights off red lights blinking that means the engine's going to cut out and we can still turn it off with this button here so steering's all working so here's the brake servo and then down here we have the throttle servo this here is forward and reverse and there's that servo there next up we've got to fit the brake cables Boom! There we go, got them all on there. Now I've just burnt out the brake servo, so I replaced it with one of these servos that come from the steering. Next up, we've got to fit the air filter. However, if you look under here, the fuel tank's in the way. Can't quite get that filter on there. So remember this bar that we took off the top here? I just cut 20 millimeters off of that. Perfect spaces for the tank. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna put some air filter oil onto the filter. And that just helps a little bit of catching the dust particles. Next up, we can get the tank back in. Next up, we've gotta fit the exhaust. Oh my god, check that out guys, it only just fits on the bench, what a unit! So next up, to get this body to fit, we have to take out the driver. Because if you look in there, look, it hits on the exhaust and it's going to hit on the engine too. So to get this piece here out, you have to remove the whole Lexan body panels. I'm lazy. I don't know what you're thinking, Kev, how could you? I'm never gonna put that back in again, am I? Look at that, still got to cut more out. It's hitting on here now. Oh man, still got to cut more out. Gotta go now, surely. It's still catching just on that bit there, look. Oh, when well, I find somewhere else where it's catching, look. The shock's up there, look. So we still got to come down that far on the body mount. Shocks are hitting up there on the cage. So me putting the shocks down was probably a bad idea. So I've got to put it back. I'm going to deal with that off camera. I'm not going to bore you guys with all these little details. I'll show you when it's all done. Then it'll be time to take it out for a rip. Yes. Right, there we go. Put the shocks back how it came out of the factory. Put the bar back up there again. Should have just left it, but I wasn't snow, was I? So I've left the rear set up how I left it. So that is giving me the extra suspension travel on the front. We have slightly less travel but that's the same as on a real monster truck anyway on the front we have 26 inches of travel on the rear 30 inches so we just made it a little bit more realistic right body i've had to cut out even more let me show you so here's all the stuff that i cut out of it so this piece gone this piece gone this piece here gone i've taken this bar off here See, it's on that side there, and I have to move it over to that side. The exhaust pipe is still slightly rubbing here. So I'm going to have to find some sort of heat shielding or something to put there, otherwise we might hurt that beautiful body. All right, let's see if it fits. Boom! Check it out, guys. I can't wait to get the stickers on. I was going to get a professional to put these on. However, I'm impatient. Last time I tried to put some wrap onto something, this happened. Luckily, Primal RC have a video how to do it. You know what guys, it's actually 
come out pretty good for a beginner. So first of all, we've got to take these screws out. The next up, I've got some water with a little bit of dish soap in there. One little drop. This is not how to, by the way. This is just how I did it. And the idea of the water is so that you can sort of chuck it on and then still slide it around afterwards. So we've got to position it where we want it. Next up, I've got a card and now you've got to sort of scratch it along to get all the water out of it. I think, first off, you want to do this join along here. You want to squeeze the water out of that. Doing it wrong, you guys let me know in the comments. Probably am doing it wrong. So the idea here is that we just push all the water, what's in there, just push it right to the edge and push it all out. It's gonna take a few goes, but we'll get there. See, look here, look. We've got to stretch it quite a lot. So I'm just gonna heat it up, and hopefully that will stretch enough to go in. If not, I'll just put a little slit in there, and uh, yeah, whatever. Doesn't quite want to go to the corner. I was going to put a little slit in there. You know what? That's not too bad. So a little slit there, but the rest of it, no bubbles, lines up perfectly, guys. I reckon I did quite a good job of that. Man, this thing just looks unreal. It just does not do it justice on camera. You just have to see it in real life. The realism of this thing is just on another level. So here we've got a real monster truck. I built this on this channel, by the way. If you haven't seen it, there's a full build series. It's got the same chassis that the proper grave digger uses. It's pretty much the same spec. It's got a few little minor changes. We've got the same shocks, same engine, same gearbox. I've got these custom axle housings on here to make it a little bit wider than a normal monster truck. But anyway, look at that, double shocks. Real one, double shocks. Solid live axle, but on both of them. We've got the four link suspension. It's just exactly the same as the real one. Center drive shaft, transfer case in the middle, just like on the real one. Bead lock wheels. So here we've got all the upgrades that the collector's edition has got over the standard version. So I'm just going to put a link down below so you can have a look through that in a bit more detail. Also, this is where I got the engine from, Taylor RC. And this is where I got the steering servos from. So there's going to be a link to all of that down below. So let's get some fuel in it and then go rip. So we've got it up to one litre of petrol, gasoline for you Americans. Next, we've got to put in some of this two-stroke oil because you guys just tell me off about me putting cheap stuff in. So we've got some proper stuff. Proper engine, proper oil. So we've got the 25 to one. So that's got to go there somewhere, isn't it? Octane boost, I've got no idea how much I'm supposed to put in. So I'm just going to just tip a bit in. We've got a Tetra boost. Ooh. More power. A bit of loveness in there. So next, let's get some fuel in there and see if it runs. Where on earth is that dribbling down from, man? Oh, I don't bloody know. Maybe you find it too quickly, I don't know. Radio on. See so this engine, there's no float bowl. It's a little pumpy thingy -ma jig. So I think all you've got to do is put it and hope for the best. But what we have to do is give it full choke. Green means it's going to start. Cool. All right, so we're going to pull it. Once we get a little pop, let choke off. Hopefully it's going to go. We can take a few to get the, get the fuel in. There's no pump, which is annoying. Oh, oh went quite easy actually. It's got automatic choke off when you give it a little blip on there. Broken. 
I was flat out on the power trying to get the front to come down again and landed on the power. That kills them. You've got to treat him like a real monster truck. He can't have to wheel spinning crazy and then slam it down into like a dead stop. That happens. So let's fix it, then take, out, take it out for proper whip. I reckon we should go on a little tour. Yes, mate. And just see if we like this island. So far, I'm loving it. I'm pretty much sold on the idea. We're going to be getting a place here. Oh, look at this place. Beautiful. We've got Eddie's like Chris in the house as well. Great. Oh, so Eddie's like Chris. It's actually got a narrow boat, and this is my this sort of cup of tea, isn't it, all this? Yeah. <laughs> this is my cup of tea, is it? Yeah, this is where it is, Chris's little zone here. Nice. Yeah, I like this. Man, this this place is beautiful. Why has no one told me about this place like years ago? I'd tell anyone to come and live here. I just can't see anything bad about it. There's no litter. The crime's the one of the lowest places in the world. Apparently, you've got like, the world's cleanest beaches as well. They're pretty clean. Port Erin, what I'll take you to in a minute, you wait till you see it. You'd think you're on some tropical island square, so they lock it off in the oh, summer, nice. and you can sit in here, and you can basically get a tea, coffee, you can sit down, play some table tennis and stuff. I'll take you to one of my favourite places down here on the island, which is called Scarlet. Did we go to see crawling down there? This is where we go, man. This yeah. is the place to go for crawling on the Isle of Man. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Off the edge, get down there. Oh, no, no. This is Andy the Landy territory, not the transit territory. Oh, I'm, I'm alright. Yeah, I'm good. You've got more RCs in there, look at that. Look at this, RC crawler heaven. Over there, apparently, that is where Jeremy Clarkson used to live. Check out this place. What's this place called, Rob? Coffer Man. Oh, wow, so the Isle of Man train network is steam trains. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in the old school, we are. Oh no, look, Greta's gonna have a heart attack. Blah, blah, blah. RC times, we can take the hoss. How many RCs are going to be out? There'll be about mm, eight of us, I reckon. Uh, how many are going to last? None of them. Oh, all right, all right let's go. go. Big bashing. Oh, by the way, later on, we're going to give you a little guided tour of our Airbnb. All right, let's go. <laughs> We got the XRT, we got the Typhoon. Oh, that's not going to last on these heavy wheels. Yeah, it's come on. Look, you ready? It's going to last. Check it out. Uh, yeah, definitely not lasting. <laughs> with, that, with that behemoth, look, that's, that's a fist sized motor. Yeah, that XRT is not lasting. <laughs> this is the actual TT course. Yeah, so this is the grandstand. Uh, this is where basically the bikes start from. There's normally the scoreboards on the left hand side. Yeah. And you'll see there's the big grandstand where everyone sits. Oh, nice. So that's that is the actual TT official arena. Yeah, this is where they fill up with the fuel. So here we are on location. We've got the Isle of Man RC crew in the house. These are the, are they the yes mates? Yes mates! Yes mates! Yes, mate. yes, mate. <laughs> 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 that didn't work. <laughs> Hello, here comes XRT. Oh my god, oh no, he's not right. Nice. Oh, diff, diff's already gone. Uh oh. Hey, MT10. That looks like a Clayton, nose planted. A little slash over there. And we've got the first victim. First victim. <laughs> X Max. Nice. Oh, tumble wumble. <laughs> That was painful. Oh, oh my god. These are the man people are mad. Those diffs are not sounding good in there, dude. Oh. <laughs> not in it. Hoss time. Oh no. Bob, I've got a challenge. Hey. you got to take off from that one, and then you've got to land here. Oh, nearly. Uh. <laughs> you got the slash attacking the hoss. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Driving. What's your favourite YouTube channel? Kevin Talbot. What have you got to do? Subscribe and smash the bell. Yes. Oh, here they go. Oh! Oh no. 
Oh, look. The, um... Get it now. By like Rob's XRT, oh dear. What? Could be worse, could be mine. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> Get it now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are, dude. Tumble, one ball. Are we done to it? Oh, everything. Cable out of the ESC. Oh. Batteries had better days, look. Next victim. Oh, no. <laughs> Here comes the horse. Oh, no cold. Nice. Front flip. <laughs> Poor horse. Oh. oh, them concrete landings are nasty. What are we doing? Well, I guess send them all off the spine as hard as we can get them. Oh my god. Oh. Typhoon to the moon. Oh. oh. It's done everything. They just shut both oh, to be a shock off. Nose. Oh man. XRT. Oh no, you're coming. Oh my god. X Max's XRTs everywhere. Bridge. I got to your present. Oh dear. Another one. Well, they all got to go for the space. RC man. Check out Rob's website, RC Man. There's a whole load of aftermarket high performance crawler upgrades and a whole load of other stuff too. <laughs> what the hell is going on over there? These boys are not happy until like, everything is dead. Well, the castle works, <laughs> she's getting it. <laughs> Demolition Derby. Ooh. Last one of funny wins. Yeah. Last one wins. It's growing! Ah. She said. <laughs> oh, see it, we're done. Is that the winner? MT10 for the win. <laughs> What's Spike? Oh, it's us coming out, I think. What do you want the viewers to do? Subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, what is your YouTube channel? H1118. There you go. <laughs>
so here we've got our Airbnb. Let's have a look. So we've got a kitchen in here, another kitchen. It's a nice little outdoor seating area. Got a little outdoor little log burner thingamajig. Toilet, bedroom down there, dining room, living room, bathroom, little bedroom, little bedroom, another bedroom in there. Bathroom here. Yes, I'm a messy sod. Don't worry about that. And bedroom there. And check out this garden. All this land here. Oh, look, there's Editor Chris down there. Look. Look at this place. Absolutely beautiful. Little conservatory there. Nice long drive coming all the way up there. All private, lovely little stream here. Check this out. Sometimes there's ducks along here, but maybe not any today. Got all this field here. Oh, down here. Check this out, guys. There is a dream house. I think the owner of all this stuff here owns the house down the end here. So I've been told. There you go. Check this out. That is what you call a pad. You look at this on Google Earth. The thing is ginormous. There we go. Life goals, work hard. You can have anything. Dude over there proved it. That's our little house over there. Here we've got to rescue a little bird that got stuck in the blinds. Well done, dude. That's it. Oh, well, oh that's it. Come on. Come on. Oh, look. Oh. Got Rob in the house again, and we're off crawling. <laughs> Got the scary bit again. Uh, we go down there, we've had it. <laughs> Steep drop. Oh no. Rob's driving is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it was that really. So here's all the toys. Here we are on location. Check this out. I've never been anywhere like this before for RC crawling. It's pretty good. And yeah. this is on your doorstep. Oh mate, this is just this is paradise. Best place in the world for crawling. Look at it. Come on, look at it. So this could soon be my place as well, couldn't it? Yeah, mate, that'd be epic. Do you know one thing that's crazy about this place? Is everything's so safe. People just leave their phones laid around, wallets laid around. Well, I've left the car open. We went into an accountant's to see how, how it is of me moving over. He left his wallet on the seat, keys in the ignition, phone on the seat, goes in for half an hour, comes back because we're still there. Window down. So we've got all these toys here. What are they? Got the bully, the MOA bully. Done up with some of the RC man bits, but also some new wheels that I've got off one of my friends who I'm trying out for the first time today. So all these RC man bits, that's all on your website, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did the RC man wheels, stuff like that. I've got some weights as well. Um, coming out very soon. We're gonna have some uh, a new car, a whole new car, building a whole new car behind the scenes. So, so link down below to all that stuff. So what's this one? Uh, G3, is it a G3 or G5? It's a G something. Yellow jacket, which is a something brother, uh, out, like outrigger. Something. Something. And then Sidewinder, ESC in there. This thing here is just running two brushed motors. Oh, so rear, only front steering, this one both steering. Yeah, correct. So, motor on axle, competition crawler, and this G, what's it called? A G, G something, I don't know, it's G speed, that's it's it. G, G speed. speed. But that's we, a shafty. We want to see which one's going to be more capable. I'm driving this one, and Rob's driving that one there. Man, I've never seen anything like really this low centre of gravity. This here is steep. Look at that, straight up. What? How can it be so easy? How? I don't know. Well, I've never seen anything that's capable. That's mad. So can you get up there? I reckon if you take to the left. Yeah, that's it. And then if you hook up. Nice. Yeah, man. What? How? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh god, I forget one of these. I'm impressed. So you've got this piece here, which is like completely vertical. Rob reckons that that's going to get up it. Oh, he's got tricks up his sleeve. Oh, what? What? How? <laughs> See if you can do it with that. Oh, 
Oh, I like gearbox. <laughs> I'm not in it. <laughs> no. Oh! Isn't that a challenge? Do you reckon you can make it up there? Uh, yes. Come on, let's do this. If that tumble wumbles, it's death. I'm so glad we're not in it. That's got to be like 60 degrees. <laughs> you do it, it's your corner, you do it. Uh-oh, trying to get the grip. Oh, 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 oh. I'm scared, I'm not even in it. It's doing it though. Oh, we get up to the death bit. Got a little ridge up there. Zoom in on that. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Today. Just released by Traxxas the Ford F-150 High Lift. And I want to give it loads of horsepower. So let's head over to my local hobby store, Redfin Models, pick one up and see what fast motors they've got. Jason in the house. Jason's crew in the house. Hello. Hello, have you got the new TRX4 High Lift F whatever 50 is? Oh, yeah. Fine. Have you got one? Oh, yeah. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Oh. Is it really that heavy for you? <laughs> <laughs> have you got a stupidly fast motor? Like complete overkill. It's just going to make it just go nuts. Yes. It's got to be that one, hasn't it? Like go in it. 1,600 for 6S. 6S? Sold. Go on, Finley. Crack him open, lads. So this here is a normal size TRX4. This one is the high lift version. So it's got a suspension lift, bigger tires, longer wheelbase, and it's an inch wider. All right, let's see this. <laughs> How do, where's the clips? Uh, sorry, what? Uh, yeah. It's a clipless one, they're under the arches. Oh, and we're off. So there's the clipless body system. Oh, and it comes with the inner fenders. Keep it all mud free. Anything else, Finley? It is 2.2 inch tires. If you want to know where you can get one from, Redfin Models. They've got all this other cool stuff in here. Planes, cars, boats, aeroplanes, anything like that. So if you want to come down here, check any of it out. Check out these two cool dudes. Oh. Then that is where you've got to come to. Well, well, let's get it back to the shop. Get the motor in there and then take it out for a rip. <laughs> Cheers, dude. Cheers, buddy. Take care. So let's give it a quick run first. As it comes, stock out of the box. Then we're going to upgrade it and take it out for a proper rip. Here we've got the steering. Plenty of power, but not really the fastest. This switch here does front and rear diff locks. So differentials unlocked. Then lock up the diffs. That locks all the wheels together. And then here, we have high and low transmission. So here we have it in low gear. And high gear. Turning cycle, really good. And obstacle ability. Oh, that was too easy. And that's where the differential's unlocked. See, there we go, look, open differential. This wheel is not spinning. Then you come around to this side, this wheel is spinning. So diff locks on. Oh, look at that, now we've got drive. Man, this just goes over everything. And now for the staircase of doom. Will it make it down in one piece alive? Plenty of control on the throttle at the moment. Oh, easy. Make it easy work of that. Oh, poor body. Oh yes, recovered. Real monster truck crawling. <laughs> Saved it. 
And now, let's fit the Mamba X Racing Edition. So this motor can do 100,000 RPM and the speed controller can do 6S LiPos. This is brushed and can only do 3S LiPos. And double the S means double the volts. So let's do the waffle and get it in there. So here, I'm unplugging the stock speed controller from the receiver and removing the stock motor mount and pinion from the old motor and fitting it to the new motor. Whenever you're doing stuff up with the ugga dugger, always do it only half the way and then do the last little bit by hand. Otherwise, you can run the risk of stripping out the plastic threads. Next up, we're gonna mount the speed controller and then plug the motor into it. We've got a solder on the connector and then we can test it out. So we're gonna start it off with 3S LiPo first. Oh, it's going the wrong way. But no big deal, we just plug it into the laptop and change the motor direction. The good thing with this is because it's censored, that's gonna give us loads of low down motor control. Still plenty of control when it comes to slow crawling. And now high gear. Oh my God, Jesus. That's only on 3S. You wait till we try 6S. I know, I know. You wanna see what it can do on 6S. Here we go. 6S, baby. Here we go. Whoa. Oh. Oh my God. Look, it blew out the center drive shaft. Whoopsie. Oh, we got a spare. Here we go. Back in action. Oh my God. So here's how slow it's supposed to go. This is how fast it goes now. <laughs> that was only about quarter power. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Nearly hit your car. Backflip. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we don't want to be hitting that. Oh dear, we might have did a little bit, look. So in a minute, we're going to take this out into its natural habitat. Here we are, next location. So in here, it looks like more of a natural habitat. Max has got a crawler as well. So this one, oh, you got some alloy on it. A bit of on up. No breaking it today. People in the comments will be moaning that you'd wreck everything on purpose. Do I? <laughs> right, today's challenge, not break anything. be able to crawl over this lump here. This one here is the high lift, so we should have an advantage. And we did it. Now Max got the advantage of lower center of gravity, weight down low, but less ground clearance. Can you do it? Oh, he done it. <laughs> so wind these right down, make it a bit lower. Oh yeah, lower it. That's a good idea. Get it right down to minimum. Do it all the way to minimum. So you've got adjustable coilover shocks on here stock. How high up it is. Yeah, get him, get him wound down, all the way down, low is setting. There we go, a lot lower now. Hopefully the center of gravity will now be better. Oh, that feels loads better. Oh. <laughs> Speak too soon. It is better, it is better. All right, next challenge. So we have to go in there. And we've got to go all the way along here on this really sloppy mud through this bit of water, which I have no idea how deep it is. Hopefully not too deep. And then out there. Here's the first piece down there. Max definitely an advantage here with the lower central gravity. Oh, that nearly fell over. This bit here is easy. Now we got this swamp. We have no idea how deep it is. Oh, easy, 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 easy. 
That wasn't even a challenge. No. Oh no! Oh no, we're sinking! Ah, this is quicksand, I'm sinking. Right, you two. No, you're done. <laughs> right, so next challenge, same hole again. We're going to come in there. We've got to see if we can make it across here and out that side. The challenge is who can get through it the furthest, and this is the one that counts. Okay. Oh, no. Is that it, as far as it will go? I don't want to go any further. <laughs> All right, my go. All I've got to do is get further than that. All right, here we go, you ready? Yep. Flat out. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm more worried, because I've got to get to that. Go on, then. All right, I'm going to pull this out by hand. I don't want to drown it too much. All right, let's make this thing look like it's brand new again. So there we go, back in the shop and looking almost as good as new. Here we go, you ready? Oh my God, what? Guys, in this video, we're gonna over vault and overpower this RC car. It's supposed to run on a 8.4 volt battery, but we're gonna run it on a 22 volt battery. So in the last video, we pulled out the stock brushed power system and fitted this Castle Mamba X system that can take 6S LiPos. Well, the speed controller can do 6S, the motor, Nah. Anyway, in the last video, we ran it on this LiPo. This is a 3S at 11 volts. And that was enough power to blow out the center transmission. So in this video, we're going to upgrade it so we can hopefully take the extra power. Right, let's get the bigger power in. Oh, look, the spur gear has completely stripped. So we're going to replace it with this. This is out of one of the brushless versions. This one here is actually a dual slipper clutch. If you look at the original one, it's just a single slipper clutch. Also, the motor mount in here is fully plastic. We're going to fit a metal one from the brushless car. The bearings in here look a little bit nasty. So we're going to replace it with some new ones. There we go, one fully upgraded power module. Boom, there we go, ready for action. Now this Onyx LiPo here, loads and loads of power, but it's just a little bit too big to get it in there. So I've got this slightly smaller one here, still 6S, still the same voltage, just a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. But let's try it on the 3S first. You have geared it up inside, so it's gonna be faster on the 3S anyway than what it was before. Here we go. <laughs> That's on 3S! Man, this 6S is gonna be insane! <laughs> oh no! Poor carpet! Stay face off Doom! Don't try and not kill it because one of your viewers are gonna get this car! Oh! Fridge! I reckon it can do a bunny hop! Maybe not. Let's get the GPS on there, see how fast it goes on 3S. There we go, all zeroed off, the floor is wet. Hopefully we're not gonna crash. Oh, slippery. Oh my God. Oh. Right, here we go. There we go, flat out. Just made it flat out. Man, this thing's lively. Oh. This thing's going to be mad on 6S. 44 mile an hour on 3S. Look at the state of that. Who does that? There we go, 6S time. Right, listen for the 6S sound. 6S, baby. Going to need some health and safety for this. It's probably going to end up blowing the tyres off. Ugh. 
Right, here we go, you ready? Success way too much. Run it on 3S, maybe 4S maximum. Oh my god. Success is way too much. Oh. Let's try another speed run on 6S. It's gonna be completely uncontrollable. No idea what speed it's gonna do, but let's give it a go anyway. There we go, all zeroed off. Sun's been out, the road's drying out a little bit. Please don't crash. Man, that is lively. Here we go. Oh, that's pulling power wheelies. <laughs> that's, no, oh, that's about half power, they're just wheelies. See how fast it's done before we kill it. 56 on half throttle. The HBI Savage has for many years been the best radio control basher that money could buy until the X-Max came along anyway. And it's still to this day, in my opinion, the best internal combustion engine powered RC car that you can buy. The one that you can buy today comes with a nitro engine. This one, however, discontinued many years ago, comes with a petrol engine. I've been like a massive RC car fan ever since I was like three years old. The only trouble is back then, I couldn't really afford any of these toys. So now with eBay and YouTube money, I can make some of my dream RC cars become a reality. A lot of my dream RC cars, you can no longer buy them. So I'm kind of finding them on eBay, restoring them and getting them working again. This is a Thunder Tiger EK4. This one has a 70 size helicopter engine. Very troublesome, they go wrong a lot, but I'm going to try and get it running well. This is a Kyosho Inferno 30th anniversary. I built this, no expense spared. We will take it racing in the summer, and it's kind of based on the original Inferno, which I had up on the wall when I was a kid in my bedroom. Picture of it, not the real one. The Manta Ray was one of my dream RC cars and was actually my first hobby grade RC car. This one's re-released. This one here is my original Manta Ray with a load of upgrades that I thought were upgrades when I was a kid anyway. Anyway, waffle, waffle, waffle. This one here, the HBR Savage Octane. I've already done a video on it, but it did have some problems. We never got a proper run out of it. So in this video, we're going to try and get it running properly and take it out for a proper run. So the main problem was the engine kept cutting out and sometimes the spark plug sparked and sometimes it didn't. So I got a new ignition module from eBay. Also, a lot of you guys gave me some tips and apparently there's a flywheel sensor on the flywheel and you need to move it a bit closer. The radio system had loads of interference. It was glitchy. It was unresponsive. It felt like it's going to do a runaway at any time. Apparently, having the receiver too close to the ignition module causes it. So we've got to try and separate them a little bit. And for some reason, it started locking up a little bit. So we've got to see what's going on there too. I've also got a few upgrades, so more on that later. So I'm going to start off with by taking the wheels off to make it easier to work on and then take out the engine. Yesterday I told you I think that we made a mistake. You and I will that one is an easier way. That's strange. Transmission's freed up. Clutch on the engine's free. That's one problem solved. So here we can see the crank sensor. So let's get this cover off and see what we're dealing with. Someone in the comments said about shaving a tiny little piece off of here to get it closer to the sensor. Okay. No rubbish, beautiful. Boom! So next up, I'm gonna replace the servos and put in a couple of these JX Eco Boosts.
next up we can put the fuel tank and the engine back in. I want to relocate this ignition module. I'm going to try and relocate it. I was going to put it behind here, but there's not enough space. So the only place that I can really find is on top of here. And that can go around there. Fire that in there. So there we go. Kind of got it hooked up now. And if we pull this, we should see a spark. Yes. So this is the best way that I could find to route the wire. I don't know if it's going to be a bad idea in case it gets hot. I don't know. If anybody else has got any better ideas, let me know. But I've tried all different ways. That's the only way that I can find that it works. So one of my biggest hates with all savages are these stupid little wheel nuts. So these are supposed to be 17 mil hectares and they're not really these stupid little nuts you can never get them on tight enough and you forever have troubles with these hexes rounding off finally after like 20 years you can get an upgrade and put some proper hexes onto it and luckily the new savage comes with them too so if you look at these they're actually 17 millimeters So here's the old system that HBI have been punishing us with for years. Here's the new system. I don't even know why they ever made it like this, because this looks more difficult to make than this. I wanted to keep it as original as possible, really. But when certain things annoy you and take fun away from the hobby, then you kind of have to upgrade it. So now, with the new servos, the new axles, and the new ignition box location, hopefully it's going to work properly. Right, let's get some fuel in there, start it up. If it all works, then we're going to take it out for a rip. So here, I'm hitting the primer pump, a little bit of choke. Hopefully, it's going to go. Choke off. Yes, it works. So now all we got to do is get the wheels on there, we've got to do a quick repair on the body, and then we can take it out for a blast. And the best way that I've found to repair bodies is to put some drywall tape on there and then cover it in shoe glue. Here we go, ready to rip. Come out to meet you under the brightness. Here we are on location. Hopefully, it's gonna work. Carburetor, quick pumpage. Didn't need any choke last time. It's quite warm. Sun's out. I'll give it a bit of choke. Oh, all right, choke off. Engine warm up a little bit, then try and tune it, get a bit more speed out of it. That is. Oh. Oh. Switching up the bottom end a bit and lean off the top end a bit. It's too lean down the top, isn't it? We're going to miss about with the tuning a little bit off cam and then put you back on when it's running properly. So we've got it all tuned up now. Hopefully, well, tuned as best as we can. It's going to run all right with the body on. We're a wonder body, dude. There you go. <laughs>
think it's got a little bit warm. We'll let it cool down for a minute and then we'll carry on. We'll give it a 10 minutes. It does feel cooler. It feels like the compression's going. It's got... Oh. Compression's not there anymore. Man, that was so much fun. That is, I've not had this much fun with an RC car in a long while. HBI, please make this car again, but make it reliable. It's going to be like, so much fun. It's be like the ultimate. <sighs> Done. Give it a go. If you guys want to see any more of this car, let me know in the comments. We'll strip it down, we'll have a look at it, we'll see if we can get it running properly. We're going to put this giant overpowered racing engine into my Lossy 5T RC car. So this is the engine that's in there now, and this is the engine that we're going to replace it with. Oh my god, check out the size difference. That is going to absolutely rip. Let's get the old engine out and the new engine in, and then we'll take it out for a rip. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Oh no, I broke that off of there. No big deal now, because we put it in the new engine, but this engine is gonna go into this, a DBXLE, whatever it's called, petrol gas. Now that the engine is out, we can really see the size difference. My God, that is a monster. So this being a much bigger engine means it's got a lot more power, which means we can gear up and put on a bigger pinion gear and a smaller spur gear. What that's gonna do is over gear the car and spin the wheels even faster. <laughs> Next up, we need to get the centre transmission out so we can change the spur gear. And now that we've got the engine and the gearbox out, check out this beautiful Taylor RC chassis and gearbox shock tower set. I've got an AGF steering servo in there as well, loads of speed and power. If you want to know where you can get the car from, the engine, the servo, the alloy chassis, all the other upgrades and all the techno babble, I'm going to put a link to all of that down below. Right, let's get this spur gear changed. So this centre diff file is a little bit runny for my liking, so I'm going to drain it out and put something in a little bit thicker. So here I'm putting in some thicker diff fluid and it should make the centre diff a lot more stiffer. What was happening before was the front wheels were just ballooning, all the power transferring through the diff and going to the front wheels. Now we should get a more even drive. Oh, so now with his new gearing, look, this cover is too small. We're going to have to run it without it. Sorry, Lossy. Oh look, and it's still catching on this piece here. Beautiful! She's in, guys. All we need to do now is mount the exhaust, hook up the throttle linkage, fuel pipe. Then we can start it up for the first time and take it out for a rip. But guys, check out this exhaust. What a work of art. It's even got a little silencer on the end of it. So let's get the linkage on first while it's all nice and easy to get to, get it all finished off, and then take it out for a rip. Oh, it doesn't fit, but no big deal. We have drill bits. Up, we've got to get the exhaust pipe on. All that is left to do now is to put some air filter oil onto the filter, fit the filter, and then we can get some fuel into the engine, see if it will run. There we go, and ready to rip! Uh, 
And look at that with a body on. It all only just fits perfectly inside. This thing is just too nice to want to use. The only thing it lets it down really is his tatty old body. Here we are on location. Max has got his one out again. So this is the, that's the stock engine, isn't it? That's yeah, stock engine. So it'll be interesting to see. This is still running in. Well, I haven't even started it yet. It'll be interesting to see speed difference. Oh. oh. First start up. Come on, pull it. What have you done there? I broke my leg. Oh man, British weather's absolutely started tipping it down. We've got to wait for the rain to pass. Then we'll try again. All right, sun's come back out. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, oh. oh, we're on, we're on. Oh. oh my god, it's getting me from here. I put the body on it, innit? Idle up, body That's on. Go like flipping billy, Max has got his one going there. Are we going to put a tick over up a little bit? Using the right tool for the job here, as you can see. Ready, steady, go! Ready, steady, go! Man, once we start leading that off, that's going to get a lot faster. <laughs> Expert, but it does sound definitely lean. I think what happened here, the engine got so hot that it's running even with the kill switch activated. We cannot kill the engine. It's just running off of pre-ignition or something. Wouldn't turn off. What? That smoke pouring out of it. That's going on with it, guys. I mean, you guys will probably tell me in the comments, all the experts. But the kill switch wouldn't work. Even the kill off button wouldn't work. No, I couldn't get the clips out because I think so it would go mad. Stinks. I think it's definitely lean, definitely, without a doubt lean. I don't know which ones are high and low, but I think both of them are lean. So we're doing both. We'll give them a quarter of a turn each. To cool down a little bit, I've just put more fuel in there because the fuel was actually gone, so that probably didn't help. A little bit richer on the carb. Kill switch still doesn't work though. I don't know why it shouldn't work, it's working on there. Look, you hit the button there, the light's going off. Max Max is on it anyway. Go on, turn it on. We've got loads more smoke now. It's sounding more happy. There is a funny metallic sound coming out of it. No idea what it is. If you know, let me know in the comments. Lovely jubbly. Oh, it's got one away. Is that mine or yours? Yours. 
Oh sh! Mine's on a runaway. It is on a runaway. I don't know where the hell it's gone. It's all the way to the other side of this field. We did get the kill switch working again. I think with the engine overheated, it just got so hot, it just carried on running. After we started it again, the kill switch worked. It did shoot off over here. I don't know where it's gone. Hopefully not in someone's garden. Oh, there it is. I'm glad it didn't go in someone's garden. I hit the kill switch. It's right over the other side of this field. And it's off, so I guess the kill switch works. I didn't know if it was my car or Max's car that was going. I knew it was mine running away. I would have killed it earlier. So there's the kill switch there, look. Hit the button, it turns off, so it does work. I don't know why it just ran away though. Why would that run away? I think the throttle's working. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you know what caused it. I've got no idea. Kill switch works, the throttle's all working. Why would it do a runaway? Anyway, next video, we're gonna put some different tires on it. We're gonna keep running it in. I wanna really bash it properly, take it skate park, jump it get it running nicely with better wheels so let me know what you want to see next video of this car that's what we're going to do i've just noticed we've bent the chassis a little bit i think that was when we hit that mound it landed right on the back oh. Oh. it's also bent the drive shaft look in the middle i've just seen this epic looking body shell check this out so all we need now is a car to put it on. I know, oh. I know, I know. What you got, what you got, what you got? Look at that, Nissan Skyline R34, the new FTX Super Forza. GT. Six. GT. Ooh, that's quite Mustang-esque. It's a bit, isn't it? So, will that. And... What do you reckon, is it gonna fit? I reckon it will, you know. So just like the infraction, we got a 6S motor and speed controller. We got a handbrake module. It's four wheel drive, double wishbone suspension, front and rear with coilover shocks. Hopefully it's gonna rip. Underneath, check out this diffusion. And Jason's just had an idea. We got? I've got a little red light. So you plug in that into the lipo. Yep. Red lightage, red lightage in there. So we've got a balance lead connector on the lightage. So all we've got to do is plug that into a balance lead to the lipo and we got lightage. Him glued in there. So we go all in and boom. So if any of you guys want to check one of these out, then head over to Redfin Models. Here's the location. And then you can meet all these lovely crew in here. Hello. So now let's fit and paint the body and then take it out for a rip. So that looks like it should fit. So this body is supposed to be for an infraction, really. So if you look on the back, look, it's got a couple of dimples on the body to mark out the body post, which is perfect for the FTX. However, on the front, they're a little bit off, no big deal. But the bigger deal is, though, is that these body posts are not adjustable. We need to make them go down. Rear ones, we can adjust. Front ones, not. So we're going to have to improvise. <laughs> is fitting pretty good. <laughs> Boom! So the rear tires on this are actually wider than the front and they're a little bit too wide for the body. They're gonna end up rubbing. But I've got these hoons here. What are my infraction? That's better. I think these hoons even look nicer than the original ones too. What do you reckon? So next up, we're going to paint the body. So first of all, we're going to decrease it. Next, we're going to apply the window masks. Then we're going to key up the surface so the paint's got somewhere to stick to. And then we're going to paint it red and then back it with some white. After that, we're going to peel off all the window masks and give the windows a nice tint. And to finish it off, we're going to paint the wing black. I'm going to be running it on these Onyx Lipos. I've been using Onyx in that speed car there. They got a ton of power. So these in here should be perfect. So controller on, plug the batteries in, car on. Success, baby. Now that is on the stock gearing, which is more for car park bashing. Also comes with a high speed pinion. So we'll take it out for a burn in a minute. But first, let's get the body finished. Next, we've got to fit the stickers. I think it needs the same livery as the monster truck. Hello? Can you make me some stickers for my RC car? Yes, 
Thanks, mate. Bye. And just like that, stickers have turned up. I get quite a few comments with some of you guys saying you want stickers. So I'm going to put a link down below where you can get some stickers from and other merch as well. Oh, check it out. pretty good but the steering is really slow look how slow that is but no big deal i've got a perfect pass servo here for red shift ring so this servo has 56 kilos of torque it's all metal cased all metal gears really fast boom here we are on location, got Max and Andy in the house. They've got their tyres, what have you got Max? I've got an infraction with the GTR body I guess. Ah, same body as mine. What's Andy got? Felony with the protocol Corvette shell. It is nice, keep them away from Max otherwise it won't stay looking nice. This one, we're going to keep it perfect. <laughs> Here we go, ready, steady, go. Man! The minute Max gets involved, game over. Oh, what's going on here? It pulls the body under. Oh, hold on, that'll clip back in. Oh, look at the poor road rat. Right, no more drag racing. Okay. Right, let's take your GPS on there and see how fast it goes. Dude! There we go, all zeroed off. What we got, we got 52. We're gonna put a bigger pin in on it in a minute and see how fast we can get it to go. But first, let's have a nice little drive while it's still looking nice. So I've got the high speed gearing there. Let's quickly change it over, see how fast it goes. And then we've got all these gears here. So we'll probably make it even faster. So that's the stock pinion. Here's the high speed one. Boom! All zeroed off again. There we go. That was 58 miles per hour. We can do better than that. So that's the pinion we just took off of it. This one's one going on. Boom! Right, there we go. Back on zero. It's getting quicker. How fast do you lot reckon that was? 63, 61, 65, 67. Wow. Look at that. 67 mile an hour. That's nearly at motorway speed limit. Let's go faster. 19 tooth neck. Boom. Still not cutting. That'll go more. So we can keep putting on bigger pinion gears until the speed controller starts cutting out. Then we know that we've reached the limit. 71 mile an hour. Big opinion. Now we can go to 23. That's going. What speed we get? 79 mile an hour. All right, we've got more pinions. We can keep going bigger. Go big or go home. So now we're going to go from the 23 to a, no idea what it is, but it's a bit bigger. Here we go. Will it cut out or will it do it? It's still not cutting. 82 mile an hour. We've got 30, we're putting on here next. 
So the speed controller just started to cut out there towards the ends. So I think we're reaching our limit. I reckon 85. Well, the brakes are non-existent now. It's so overgeared. The brakes don't work anymore. I reckon 85. 86. Let's keep going. <laughs> Go on then, big opinion. So we're going from a 30 to a 34. I can't see it going much more now. I was cutting out, that's it, that's it, we're done. Stop, stop, that's all bikes on that pinion. 62 mile an hour. So 86 mile an hour, that's not bad. Oh dear. Who had this silly idea? So my idea is, all three of us, all three of the trigger flat out, shut this door, let the whole burn out, smoke the place out. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> what happened? What's the tyres looking like? <laughs> oh, Alright, actually. They're sticky. Oh, they're oh, sticky. Oh my god, look at my tacky. Oh! oh my. Oh! Oh no, we got a slight little dentage. Car chase! This oh, is so This is the world's biggest radio controlled monster truck! We're going to be taking it out for its first proper run. In the last video, we built it and fitted this great big petrol racing engine and broke it. <laughs> now, this one is a limited collector's edition signed by the main man, Dennis Anderson. So we really got to try and not harm this beautiful body. So what happened? I got this truck into a funny position. I tried to pull it out and save it because I didn't want to hurt this beautiful body. It came down on the wheels, on power. And look, it lost drive. Normally what happens is you break a diff cup. Let's open it up and have a look. Look at this man, it's bigger than my head. So I put a little mark on here so I remember which side the crown wheel goes on. If you put this diff in the wrong way around, the truck's gonna drive the wrong way. Oh look, there we go, look, just as expected, broken drive cup. That has snapped off from in there. All that torque and power going through these great big wheels onto this tiny little shaft. Yeah, that does happen if you land on power. Exactly the same thing happens to the real monster trucks. When you land jumps, you gotta try and match the speed of the tires to the speed of the ground. If there's a big difference, then you're gonna start snapping shafts and stuff in there too. So I've got these Taylor RC ones here, they're made from a much higher grade steel. However, if you land jumps on full power, they're still going to break. So I want to put a differential back together again with these silicon earplugs. What that does, it makes the diff a lot, lot tighter, makes it behave more like a locked up differential. But first, we've got to clean all the parts and some brake cleaner, then we can put it all back together. Next, this piece here is so fiddly, I'm probably gonna run out of film if I try and film it all, so easier way. Thank God for that. Next, earplug time. I'm gonna try and cram as many of these in here as I possibly can. Try to work it all the way. Don't come out again. No, that took me ages. So these four screws here always come loose. I'm gonna use this heavy duty green lock tights. Hopefully they're gonna stay in. I've seen on one of the Facebook groups what people do. They grind a little piece out of here, put a longer screw in and put a nylock on the end. If this comes loose, I'll probably try the same. The front end has broken as well. So quick way to put it in. Boom, and back in action. Here we are on location. Look at the size of that in the back of Andy the Sandy. We're gonna fill that with some juice and then we'll give it a little run. So we'll give it a little run over the field. We've still got to run the engine in. We've got to, got to give it a bit of running in, then a bit of a tune up. If it survives, we're gonna hit the skate park. We reckon it will start easy? Yeah, it'll start. Power on? Yeah. Did it work? Yep, yeah, cool. So I think we've got to pull it till it pops. Once we get a pop, we turn the choke off. I forgot to bring tools with me. If something goes wrong, we can't fix it.
Ah, oh, look, this is what happened. The cable come out of there. It's supposed to have been like that. Now it's gonna work. I really hope you don't need any tools because I can't tune it, I can't do idle, I can't do anything. Body on, and then we can give it a little whip. Man, look at this thing. Hopefully it's still gonna look like this later on today. Hey. <laughs> Oh no, if you look here, I did it again. I landed on power. Man, that is mental. Taking it easy on it today and running it in nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can buy him a spare body. Oh, you landed on power, didn't you? Oh, I think we lost drive. It's alright. Must have landed on power again. I have to play the video back. Yep, landed on power. Yeah, diffs are fine. Probably a shaft inside the transmission. We have to take the cover off, change the shaft, and back in action. Let's fix it, then take this thing to the skate park and send it to the moon in true gravedigger fashion. I landed that jump with the power on. I've got to get out of the habit of doing it. That's just what rips these transmissions apart. When you land, you've got to be neutral throttle. No throttle, no brakes. Oh no, I wanted to keep this body nice. Now look. I'm going to get a spare one, then I've got one for bashing and one for a shelf queen. Taking these wheels off, it just makes it a lot easier to work on. So I'm going to open up the centre transmission. Here we go, got the screws out and... Yep, that shaft snap just there, look. New shaft here, I get it all back in there and back in action. Boom! All back together again. Also, if you look at the throttle linkage, it kept popping out of here and then going all flat out. So I put a little zip tie around there, so hopefully it won't happen again. Skate park over there is absolutely full of skaters. We've got to find another location. <laughs> so that skate park was full, so off to the next one. Next location over there, skate park we've never been to before, there's no one on it. Never been here before, it's really local. But look, they've got all this stuff over there. There's some stuff there. Let's rip!
remember not to land on power. So much fun. We've still got all that lot over there to play with. I might try and get it over that railing as well in a minute. Right, definitely, I think. <laughs> so anyway, the screws come out, so all we've got to do, screw that back in. Back in action. I know a quick way of doing it, ready? Boom, sort of got it done. However, these screws are on there so tight I couldn't get them out. So I had to try and do these up with a pair of pliers so they're quite loose. They're probably gonna come out again. But before that, we'll get a few more jumps out of it. Man, this RC car is so much fun. This is like the ultimate RC car. It's like nothing more fun. <laughs> It. I was filming on that camera, but I wasn't filming on the main camera. So what I tried to do is slowly limp it back and drive it up there and just park it there to work on it. But instead it landed onto all of Max's stuff, knocked it all on the floor, knocked the lipo on the floor, a big puddle of petrol, done that to his noble. He always break my stuff. I suppose we're a bit more even now. <laughs> <laughs> got it back on there. This is what we've got to do it up with. Look, I can't get in there to do it up with a wrench. So I'm doing it up with this thing. It's not very tight at all, but we have a silly idea. That jump there, I don't know if that's going to make it over it. Yeah, we'll do it. You reckon it will do it? Yeah, we'll do it. If that goes wrong, it's going to be really expensive, maybe, potentially. No. If that goes wrong, you've got a bigger issue. The land goes all the way over there. Yeah, there's Andy and Andy. Look, all the way over there. That means I've got to carry it. Max's got broken legs, so he can't carry it. Yeah, I meant to have a boot on. Not in it, am I? <laughs> really wanted to give it a bit of throttle there to pull it out, but I was scared of blowing out the diffs again. Oh, a GoPro. And this. Oh. What? This is that. <laughs> what have I got to do? So you need to go flat out across there and hit that. Oh, Doing it off of there is a little buoy jump. Anyone can do that. Oh, man. This is going to... Oh, oh I'm not in it. Play Max when it goes wrong. Oh man, this is going to be so bad. We're going to take a run up all the way from over there, all the way flat out to there. This is going to go so wrong. No, I broke a sway bar. Alright, one more, that's it, I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> No, that is it. I'm not doing it again. Oh, really going to give us a proper service now. What did they say about bashing on metal bead locks? Oh, yeah, they said don't bash on metal bead locks. Oh, look at that curbage. They bent them. Oh. So this came off of somewhere. We're going to get another body, make a nice body. Broke the sway bar, so now it's flapping around. Which I think it's done a diff cup again. Look at that, all that carnage is still running. Oh, oh. 
poor thing. Let's get it home. No more. Last year, I built my dream monster truck. We took it to the first show, came third in racing. Second in freestyle. This year, same show again, but I want to try and do better. So, I need to get some practice in. Trouble is, I've got nowhere really to run it, and these things cost a fortune to run, so you can't really afford just to run them around all over the place everywhere just to practice. So, I'm going to try and build myself a simulator. A lot of the pro monster truck drivers actually use simulators to practice, so that's the goal of this video. So you can get this simulator called Beam NG Drive, which is super realistic. And then someone made a monster truck plugin that's got all the trucks on there and all the monster truck tracks. And this is what I've got installed on my computer. And they've also made a game over monster truck, just like the real one. Now I can play it on like an Xbox controller but you're not really getting the full simulation training that way. So let's get into the real one and I will show you. So here we've got front steering. Here we have a toggle switch for rear steering. And here we've got the shifter. So we've got first, second, neutral and reverse. And down there we've got the pedals. So we need something similar for the simulator. So I've got a Logitech steering wheel and pedals. Not the most realistic looking, but we can do that later. I just want to make sure it all works first. For the shifter, I've bought another monster truck shifter so this is the exact same one that we got in the monster truck and then here I've got these ball valve switches basically it's just a button with a roller on there and then on the shifter it's got a roller there so if we get this switch and mount it there that should hopefully know what gear we're in we've got three switches one for first second and reverse next up I've got a rear steer handle and rear steer switch the next problem we've got to figure out a way of attaching this to the computer so I've got an idea. So on the simulator, you can program what key on the keyboard does what function. So you could have rear steer as say J and K, and then you could have your gear shifting as like one, two, three, four, or whatever you want. So my idea is, is to find the two prongs on here, which does it makes it go left, and then have a wire coming out of that into the keyboard, so that when this is plugged into the computer, the computer thinks if we're steering left, we hit in left on the keyboard, and hopefully it's gonna work. And the same with the gears. So I've got this voltmeter here, and if we put it into this position here, when it makes a circuit, it should make a noise. So if we put this onto this ball switch, once we press, it should make a noise. Yes. So now we've got to figure out which two terminals are for left and which two terminals are for right. I'm going to hold the steer switch over one way and hopefully one of these is going to make it beep. Hmm, nothing. It must be a combo that makes it beep. It has to be a combo that makes it beep. Ah. Right, so that beeps if I let go. Yes. So these two here are for one way. So now for the other way... That one and that one is for the other way. So now, let's get this keyboard cracked open, see if we can hot wire it. Guys, I've got a feeling this is going to be really easy. What am I supposed to do with that? I was kind of hoping that each button was going to be like a little switch and I could just solder to it, but it doesn't look like we can solder to it at all. Right, got another one here. Let's have a look in that one. That really does not look workable with. Each button's got multiple wires going to it. Each one's going to all these other places. I just don't know what we can do with it. We could have a look inside a mouse, but there's only two buttons. So, over on Amazon, they've got these game controllers. So, let's order that up. So, while we're waiting for that to turn up, I can now go ahead and make up some sort of a contraption so I can mount the rear steering and also the shifter. I want to make some sort of a clamp so I can just clamp it onto the table the same way that the steering wheel's clamped on and then we can just fit it onto whatever table. So, back in the real monster truck, I've got to try and get all this stuff in exactly the same place. So, I'm just going to take a few measurements so here we have my very professional diagram so now I've got to try and mount all this in exactly the same place so that is about perfect positioning now we just got to find a way of mounting it
every day. Man, what a waste of packaging all that just for this. So this looks like it could be promising. If you have a look at the buttons, they have all have two terminals that hopefully we can solder to. So I'm going to try and solder a wire onto the circuit board. Oh, it fell off. So now I just need to put a couple of terminals on the end and then we can wire it to the switch and see if it works. So I've got the wheel all plugged into the computer and it works. Look, we've got steering, pedals work. So now let's plug this in and see if we can get the rear steering to work. Oh, so it's come up with this, looking good. Now if we hit this switch, that should come up on there if we've done it right. Oh, boom, check it out, it's worked. Check this out. This is gonna work, yes! So plan is to get it all working on here and then once it's all working, I wanna move it over here and have it on this big TV that we got on the wall. I can put the switch in here, the shifter down here, and everything is in exactly the same place as on the real monster truck. So back in the real monster truck, we accelerate with the right foot and then we brake with the left foot. So back on the simulator, this is the accelerator, this is the brakes for Americans gas and brake. However, because we're left foot braking, I've moved over my brake pedal to this pedal here, which is really supposed to be the clutch. But it makes the driving position a lot more realistic to the real monster truck. So to set it up, we go into controls and vehicle. And over where it says brake, you just simply hit on the little plus button there. It comes up with detecting a new button or something like that. Hit the brake, that is it detected. So I just got a message from my viewer, Ian Haynes and he put me onto this. So this is called a button box interface and it's pretty much something like this where it's got 32 buttons that you can have and all you do is shove your wires in the hole and you haven't got a solder. Now the gamepad does work perfectly but this is going to be a much nicer setup and if you want to later on add more switches and stuff we don't have to every time get out the soldering iron. Boom! And just like that it's arrived! So instead of soldering all you do is push this little button get your wire, shove it in the hole, let go of the button, and we're in there. But now let's plug the other end into the computer and screw it onto the switch. So now we go back on controls, vehicle specific, and then we have independent rear steering left. So we click on add, detecting new bind. So we move this whichever way we want it to go for that way. Apply, same again for the right, apply. And now look, we hit the switch and the rear steering works. Now some people like it that when you hit the switch left, the truck goes left. Other people like it the opposite way around. So when you hit left, the back end of the truck goes left. So it's a bit more like a drift button. So everyone's different. So what you want to do is just set it up. See if you like it. If it feels all a bit backwards, just turn the switch around or change it in the program and just put it whichever way it feels comfortable for you. All right, let's see if it works. Well, so temporarily I've put the gears here. So we can put it into first, second, Guys, that is really realistic. Right, we need in car view. In cab, in cab. Right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> so temporarily I've put reverse here. We're gonna wire this all into the shifter once we get properly going. But guys, this is gonna be so good for learning how to drive. This feels exactly the same as a real one. Oh, game over. So if we have a look at all the vehicles that are in here, when you go to Beam Monsters, you get the CRD plug-in. That's what's got most of the monster trucks on there. We've got all the big names on there. Bigfoot, Bad Company, Bad Habits, more Bigfoots. And look, check it out, there's my one. We've got the Grave Diggers, even Mikey's Overkill Evolution from V2 Vids. So we're gonna have a go on my game over truck a little bit later. Also try some of the other monster trucks. We're gonna get it fitted onto the big screen in this video. Now I've had a few people say to me I should get a direct drive steering wheel because it's a lot more realistic. However, a real monster truck has no force feedback and there's no self-centering on the front steering. Wherever you leave the wheel, 
it kind of stays there because it's full hydraulic, there's no mechanical link. So the steering on this is pretty much the same as driving a forklift. Wherever you leave that steering, it's gonna stay there. You've got to center it up yourself. So I've gone into my controls, vehicle, you go down to steering axis, which is your wheel. When you click on there, you go all the way down to force feedback and I'll just turn all of it down, all the way down to zero. So now look, wherever I leave that wheel, it stays. See, so on a normal car, if you was to steer like this and go forward, it would automatically go back into center. On the monster truck, it doesn't. And it does actually take quite a lot of getting used to is to know where to put that wheel back into the middle. So it just takes a little bit of practice and that is what the simulator is perfect for. Just get another backflip in. Nailed it! So next we've got to get the shifter to work. So we need to get these ball switches there, there and there. So welding to this is going to be a bit of a pig. So we're just going to take it off, bit of flat bar, hopefully it's going to work. So I reckon we get a couple of bits of this, that in there like that. So next we've got to tap a thread into it. <laughs> Not like that. The right bloody... I've used the wrong drill bit, <laughs> haven't I? Five millimetre for M6. Right, try again. That's better. It sort of half goes in the hole now. So now hopefully we get our screw and... Yes! So I've just made these little nut things here. We get the sensor, we screw it in, and then we have to try and weld that onto there. So we go, got them all fitted, didn't bother filming it because it was so fiddly. Now with this gadget, we can see if each gear works. So we've got assistant Tom in the house. Right, put it in reverse, Tom. Reverse. Yeah, it's working. A second, yeah. So, second. Yep, and take it out a second. Put it in first. First. All right, and now we've got first here. Take yeah. it out first. Yes! yes <laughs> it all works! <laughs> all right, let's hook it back up to the sim. So we've got all the wires hanging out of it now. Next, we've got to get these wires and just wire them up into this box here, and then it should work. So now we go into the computer. Options, controls, vehicle, and then we've got the gears down here. Hit first gear, and then we move that into first. We have a problem. This simulator will not let you select first, second, and whatever gears in an automatic vehicle, which this is. It only lets you go up and down gears. So reverse gear works. For some reason, if you set up sixth gear as this switch here, where first is, it puts it into first on there. So sixth gear on here puts this into first, but we cannot get second to work. Every time we put this into second, it doesn't work at all. It just goes, in, well, it works, but it goes into drive. So my buddy Ash, who's an expert with these simulators, he's actually the guy that done the graphics on the real monster truck. He's an expert at setting up simulators. He's given me this little software here. So I don't really know how it all works. This is like a macro or something. And I have absolutely no idea what you're supposed to do with it. Uh, Stamp! There he is. What's going on? Where have you been hiding? Oh, under the rock, mate. Stem's been all loved up. So here's the instructions that Ash has given her. Stem is a lot more computer literate than what I am, so Stem's gonna try and make it work. Guys, we got it to work. So now look, if we go to first, first gear on there, second gear, and we got neutral and reverse. So if you guys wanna make it work on yours, you need this little program here, X better, download it somewhere, God knows where, and then here, are the instructions of how to get it to work on yours. So now that we've got it working on this computer, we have to see if we can get it working on the big screen. So I've got this monitor plugged into my PC, which is under there. So next we've got to get all these wheels and switches and everything else, move it over there. But for that, we need some extension leads. So I've got these ones here, USB extension leads. They are really long, so I don't know if they're gonna work over that length. But what I really wanna do, I wanna run it all the way around the outside of the room, through there, through there, through there, so it comes out there, so we haven't got all wires everywhere. So this one here is the wheel. So we plug that into the extension lead and then the extension lead into the PC. Yes, it's working. We are getting there, so all we got to do now is hook up this to the computer with the extension lead. Ready? Boom! There we go, all wired up. Steering works. Rear steer works. Shifter works! 
We've got my truck on there. So let's take it for a rip. All right, so I've got to learn a little bit. I've been playing this on the old Xbox controller. I'm doing it on the big screen. With the real control, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. So just like on a real monster truck, there's no centering on the front steering. So you've got to centre it yourself. Rear steer's got self-centre, so that's all right. Man, look at those graphics. Ash really done an epic job of getting those graphics made. This is the one that we're going to be practicing on because this is the realistic way. It's harder to drive like this, but it's realistic. So this is how I've got to learn to drive like this. We've got to win that freestyle in August, so I'll be practicing on this. Without no centering on the front steering, that is taking some getting used to. Just like a forklift, there is no self-centering. But the more I play on this, the better I'm gonna get. Oh, too much. Oh, have we overcooked it? No, we've got it. This is so realistic, guys. So just like on a real monster truck, and also like on an RC car, is when you, oh, oh. Well. When you jump it, to get the nose down, you hit the brakes. To get the nose up, you accelerate. So you've got to get the nose down, brakes. So you can control the angle of the truck in the air. And just like on the real one, we have to try and match the speed of the wheels and tyres to the ground. So that's why you hear monster truck drivers, they blip it in the air to try and match the speed. But otherwise, if there's a big difference, that's when you can start blowing out transmissions and drive shafts and stuff. Right, let's try a backflip. Try a backflip. Oh, we haven't got it very straight. Can we get into a moonwalk? Oh, nearly. Oh, into a wheelie. Something's not right. I think I've broken something. Right, let's go to a different view. Ah, oh, I've got a flat tyre coming on with the front look. Front tyre's going down. Let's find some different cars. So I reckon we should go with the most famous one, the Grave Digger. There we go, Grave Digger. Here we go! Each truck on here handles a little bit differently. Ah. So each time we pick a different truck, it takes a little bit of time to get used to it again. Let's go in cab. Try my keys overkill evolution. Oh my god, what's going on with his light? I thought he turned that off. Right, try that on the back flip. Ah, 
I got into a moonwalk. Like, this is what V2 Bits does, and this is what I want to learn on the real monster truck. Can we save it? Can we save it? Come on! Ah. So Mikey doesn't run a locker in the front, so trying to do saves makes it a bit harder. So I'm going to keep practicing on this and then maybe I'll give you an update in a few weeks when I've gotten better to show you what I've done. I've got a few bits to do on the monster truck actually before the next show. So I might actually make a video of that and then give you an update on my driving skills too. There is a completely new front steering system that Monster Jam use now. So I want to get the same system on this. Apparently it makes the steering more consistent. It makes it a little bit easier to turn and gives the steering more power. I tried to build the world's best monster truck so we've got to have all the best parts. There's a small leak coming out of this rear steering cylinder. At last show, it was dripping a little bit, but now we've got a faster rear steer pump, it's made it even worse. So I've got some spare seals, I'm gonna have to figure out how to take all this apart, change the seal, and then put it back together again. And I think I'm gonna run double these bars here. I tried to straighten this one, and it's not really that straight. So I might take it over to a buddy's house that's got a press, stick it in the press and straighten it a bit more. But really, I wanna run two on there. Oh, it's Christmas every day. This is the brand new Team Associated MT-10. And this is, in my opinion, the best budget performance RC car. Inside, we have a hairnet to keep all the dirt out. 3S brushless motor ESC combo. Yep, that means lots of power. It's got double wishbone suspension, front and rear with coilover shocks. Plastic chassis to keep things durable and lightweight. The durability of this car is something else. It's got to be one of the strongest RC cars that you can buy. This one here is the older version and we actually tried to kill it to show you guys the durability and that is coming up later on in this video. Now the old one and the new one they do look exactly the same the only difference that I can see are the body shells. Here's some more techno babble, more techno babble, more techno babble. But I'm not going to bore you with all that so I'm just going to put a link down below where you can get one from and we can get all the specifications from. Alright I suppose we better get battery in there and see what this thing can do. Now the steering servo on the new one actually seems pretty alright on the old one. It was really, really slow and I upgraded it with an eco boost. This one, I think we're going to leave it for now, see how it goes. And power. <laughs> Guys, these cars are lively. You watch. Oh! <laughs> Here we are on location. Look at all the crew. AS got all that lot. AS Steve has rebuilt this Banggood Special and it is now Mitchell's, isn't it? Yep, 12 hours. 12 hour rebuild? Oh dear. Let's see if it lasts longer this time. So we are up at this location again where the Raminator got a bit slaughtered. Oh, oh Mitchell's already off. Oh. I should have sent it one for the back. It's crunched. It, 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 it Gotta be the, one of the toughest little beaters I've ever had. <laughs> oh, side hit! I just loves it. I just don't die. It. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! On the head. It seems to be taking a kicking though at the minute. Yeah, I'm impressed. 70, 75 chassis, staying straight. I'm going to try and get a double backflip. Double backflip. Yep. Now these Bangles specials are actually really expensive. One. Two and oh, and he lands it. Well done, mate. Shin backflip. <laughs> <That's not it. laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you don't need that bit. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he's fixed it. Like action. Like me. Boom. <laughs> that didn't work. Oh. 
Ain't got that YouTube magic? No. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> that can't be alive. It just can't be. That was terrifying. <laughs> the whole thing shakes. Is that still going? Yeah, kind of. I'm a funny shell. What do you reckon that for, Bang Good? That's pretty good, isn't it? It was, it was 60 again. quid for the parts to repair it. After the carnage. Really? It. Yeah. So in that last video, we got completely slaughtered. Oh, there we go again. Oh! So all that carnage from the skate park last time. Oh my God! It cost him £60, like $80 to fix it. And it's taking all that abuse. So I don't know, what do you guys reckon? Is the price justifiable? It dug holes. Oh! So that and that is that and that. And that. <laughs> that was on 6S, now 8S Steve's giving him 8S. All right, there we go, on 8S. Oh, the thing's mad, look at that. One, two, three. Oh, and it's head. Oh. How is it taking it? I don't know. Is it? Is it all right? I'm really impressed with this bang good. Yeah, really awesome. I mean, the chassis is still straight. Look at that. I've got a challenge. Oh no. So you've got to go flat across that field, heading this direction. I've done it, so you've got to go. Oh, no. Well, yes. Hitting that and then put it up the tree. Yeah. This is going to go so wrong. When Max did it, Max's car went all the way to the top of that tree and landed in the middle. Oh, oh, that's gone. That's gone. Oh, it came down. <laughs> Somehow it came down. This time it might not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, quick release. It's broken the rear arm. Oh, you just popped off. It's broken it? the rear oh. arm there. Oh. <laughs> oh, and the drive cup. It was a horrific landing. I think mean, it did very well. For Banggood <laughs> Special, <laughs> pretty impressed. Man, these little cars take a beating. You watch until later. When we do ability test the older version, you are going to be amazed of how much abuse it can actually take. Oh, dear. So, is that your little car, Claire? Why is it up there? It identified as a bird. Oh, well, that's what happens when you identify things that are not. It goes wrong. That happens when you listen to me. That's a controversial statement. <laughs> oh, is that the recovery vehicle? Yeah. Oh, I got it back. Quick speed test. Thing moves. So now for the full-on durability test of the older model, you're not going to believe this. A lot of you guys always say I'm doing expensive stuff, you want to see cheaper stuff. This, in my opinion, is the best budget-ish RC car. Stempy couldn't kill it, I couldn't kill it, no one else could kill it. But we've got Max in the house, so maybe Max can kill it. <laughs> Anyone can kill it? Yeah, okay, okay. So I'm not really sure why this thing's so durable, it's all plastic. The only upgrade I've done is RPM arm. We've got an EcoBoost servo in there, other than that, fully stock. Lovely for a little thing. So Max has got his Mini Max, but he's running it on 6S. So give us a little demo. <laughs> so we're going to start off with a couple of challenges. 3S versus 6S. <laughs> Man, yours is crazy. Challenge number one. You can choose. Off of there and clear that. Okay. Oh, on concrete. Next. Next challenge, front flip, anywhere you like. Oh! Oh! What boat was that? It's 2,200 feet. 6S live in there. Probably wing your seat. What's the challenge? So you've got to come off of there, try and land in the front. Oh! Short off. Oh, you win. Flat out, all the way along there, to the moon up there. Here we go, flat out. Oh, elevation. Oh, that went a lot higher. Right, what's the next challenge? Pikachu. So we've got to take a run up across there, hit this, and then clear Pikachu. Someone said it's not Pikachu. That one's Pikachu, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, easy. Easy. Here we go. Flat out. <laughs> oh, worst landing possible. Still going? Oh, oh making a noise. So next, Max is going to have a go. Hopefully, it will survive. Maybe not. Give it your best shot. 
Oh dear. Oh, a shock cap's come off. Put it back on, you're back in action. That bit. Next one is go off of there and clear that. Oh, so you're going to hit this yeah. and land over there? Yeah, I've done it. Go on then. Oh! Oh, that's just like hitting a wall. Jump through here and land flat on your wheels down here. Go on then. I mean, obviously, people in the comments are going to say, I bet I could kill it. I mean, if you just slammed it flat out into a wall, of course you're going to kill it. But I'm just like, you know, hitting, hitting jumps, maximum speed and stuff. I'm taking it. Oh, oh I've got number right there. How, yeah, yeah, what's how that? How fast is it back to I don't know. <laughs> oh, 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 and it's going still. Oh, bridge. So what are you saying, Max? You can't kill it. Five more minutes. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Elevation! <laughs> we got an RC that no one can kill. Come on, just give it your best. Give it your best. Minus ramming it smack flat out his like a wall or something, just do it, just do anything. So the only rule is he can't smash it straight into something. Other than that, free reign, do what you want. <laughs> oh! Oh! Footage. Are you impressed with it? I'm embarrassed that I'm not breaking it. Everyone said give it the stem, so we gave it the stem, the stem couldn't kill it. Everyone else had a go on it, no one can kill it. <laughs> oh! Oh, what on the edge! I would say hands down, this is the best budget RC car. Like, it's still got performance. <laughs> oh! <Oof. laughs> How's it going? Do picture again. Oh! It's still going! How? How is it still going? Oh! It's alright, isn't it? Stupid car. Why? Don't break. Ooh! <laughs> Body's coming off, that's about it. Ooh! Oh, we're losing body mounts. So it's not broken, we just lost the body mount. Oh! It's definitely failing. Associated one, max zero. Whoa, Jesus! Oh! Durability of this car is absolutely unreal. It just does not want to die. It took it and you cheated. You done a dead stop. I've got a challenge for you. Take off from there and land the chassis on that edge. Maybe the battery's just gone flat. No, you didn't. <laughs> He's cheating and it's still not dying. Yes, I cracked the chassis. Have you? Oh, and I broke this front bit. Oh, yeah, we have got a little crack there. It's in the runaway. What? It's in the runaway. It's not a runaway on me, either. 
Oh! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you purposely landed it upside down. <laughs> You're crash landing it on purpose. <laughs> Car wins, dude. You have to launch it by hand. <laughs> Oh, gears are gone. Oh, hey! <laughs> oh, <hey. laughs> oh <I'm done. laughs> I mean, the car still wins, though. Is that the strongest RC car you've ever had? That is by far the strongest RC let's car. Have a look, let's have a look at that. Oh, I reckon that's the world's strongest RC car and also the best for budget ones. If you want a beginner RC car, they're still fast. That took some abuse. What are you doing now? Loading the flat out of the max and smacking something. Oh, dear. Come on in. <laughs> Oh, dude! Really? Today we're off to Silverstone for the Lamborghini 60th anniversary. I think we're going to break a world record where there's like the most amount of Lamborghinis in one spot at one time ever. All right, let's go. Hopefully it's going to start. It's not been on for a while. The last time it was on, it was completely flat and we're running late. Oh, oh no. No, flat. Oh dear. Let's get the charger out. Please work. Proper cold starts not been started in weeks. Oh. Nah. oh. We're running late because of Vinny. Oh, don't give me that. So first of all, we're heading off to the dealership. Then we're going to meet everyone and then drive down to Silverstone in convoy. Park your dirty old thing next to one of these. Oh man, this is a bit posh for us. I'm tempted to get one of these, but a being rear wheel drive put me off because I would die. Now we've got the same one as my one, but without a lid. So now we're off to the world famous Silverstone race circuit in Convoy. Man, I do like these STOs. When they first come out, that little goldfish lip at the front put me off. They're growing on me. The only thing put me off now, rear wheel drive. If I had one of them, it would be in a ditch. It's a rear wheel drive, you can't handle it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think my favourite has got to be the SVJ though. Maybe one day. There's supposed to be about 300 cars here. So we've got all those ones. Over there's even more. Oh, some classic ones over there. Look at this Countach over here. I don't even know what some of these old ones are called. But that's one of them. That's what it is. We've got a Land Rover Defender part there. Diablo, even though I think I do prefer the Countach. We've got an Aston Martin. 400 GT. All right, expert. Nice race car there. Yeah, everyone's being obnoxious. So now everybody's making it onto the race track. I think there's like 386 cars. That is a world record for the most amount of Lamborghinis ever, all in one place. Look at that turbo upper Ventador. I suppose we better join in with the obnoxiousness. Here we go, heading onto the track, I believe. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely just to smash that on the apex there? Oh, yeah. So here we are, all 386, I believe, Lamborghinis all lined up onto the straight and spilling back onto the earlier corners to set the world record. And here's us. So now with the world record set, we can make our way around, have another lap of the circuit, and then park up and have a look at the brand new Lamborghini Revelto, I don't know how you say it, being unwheeled, so we can see it for the first time. I love the colour of that STO, look at that. You want to go past him? Go on. Coming back into the pit lane. Look at these twin turb skis in there. So out of all the 386 cars, mine was the only silver one that I could see. Of all the ones here, that is the only silver one. 
So here's a gearbox with a load of cutouts in it so you can see how the actual gearbox works. This is for the brand new Revelto. And over here we've got a car with all the body panels removed so you can see the engine and all the other mechanics. In the middle here you can see the battery pack because this car is actually a hybrid. Up there I think they're going to reveal the actual new car. Again, a naturally aspirated V12 engine into this car. Oh no, look, they're desperately trying to keep Greta happy. Look at that, a zombie apocalypse. I would show you guys what it looks like, but, um, yeah. I'll show you again. I'll get anywhere close. A few moments later. The zombies have slightly dispersed. The white version. This is a new off-road hurricane. This is a jacked up hurricane, it's got all this armoured stuff all over it. All drain looking tyres. Is there anything you want to add to that, Vinny? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, it looks like a Land Rover, doesn't it? <laughs> so here we've got the new Countach. I still reckon I prefer the old one. That one's a Revington. 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 I've got a radio controlled Formula One car. And this thing is super realistic. We've got double wishbone suspension, front and rear, super realistic tyres, and look at that, a real engine, and the exhaust comes out the back just like on a real one. We've got a two-speed transmission and a disc brake, just like on a real one. Also like a real one, it's rear-wheel drive, and check out all this aerodynamics. We're going to take it out for a spin in a minute, but this is one of those Diagostini magazine cars where you get like a few parts every month, so this must have cost thousands to build. I got it used from eBay, so hopefully we can get it to work. It doesn't really look like it's had that much use. We've got a few scrapes under there. Tires look pretty newish and have suppleness. It's nice. The shocks do feel like they've lost all of their fluid. And look, it's all wet around here, so they probably have. So to get it to run, we've got to fit a receiver and a battery pack. I'm not really sure where it's meant to go. I mean, this could maybe go there, and then we've got to find somewhere for this to go. The engine looks really, really new. It's made by Kyosho. It even says Kyosho down there, look. It's got plenty of compression. The throttle closed again. Glow starter on and hopefully it's going to start. <laughs> Look at that first pull and it fires right up and it's running perfectly. Idled a little bit high but apart from that, it's running good. Guys, that was first tug. No editing, first tug, it fired straight up. Amazing, right, let's go rip. All right, here we are on location. Oh, look at that. This thing flies like a dream. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, it wanted to do a little runaway there, but it appears to be working now. I think we'll take it back, charge the battery up. So we're gonna fit a new servo to give it faster steering. We're gonna have a look inside the shock absorbers to try and give it a bit more damping. So these servos are super fast, metal cased, metal geared. Here's all the techno babble. If you wanna see all the specifications and techno babble, we can get one from, link to that down below. Also link down below is we can get this brand new merch from. Anyway, we're going to sort those bits out, then we're going to take it out again in this video and hopefully it's going to handle better and not keep spinning out all the time. Oh, where are you supposed to get that out of there? Oh man, look at that. That looks to be like a complete mission. To get that servo out of there, we've got to get this top deck off. But to get this top deck off, we've got to take everything off. Man, what have I let myself in for? Luckily, I know a quicker way. Boom! That's better. Check out the speed of that now. All right, let's have a look at these shocks. 
So these shocks work with an internal spring to keep it realistic looking. There's not much oil in there. So I'm not really sure how you're supposed to get the O-rings out of there. So I'm just going to be a little bit lazy, put some thick shock oil in there. That's going to make it less likely to seep past the O-rings. And also, a stiff damping should maybe make it handle better. Maybe. We will see. Now for the other side. Boom! And now the back. Oh. It didn't work. Anyway, as you can see, I've taken out all the O-rings. I've never seen O-rings held in like that. You basically get an O-ring there. And the O-ring looks to be in good condition, actually. Another O-ring. So they sit in there. And then we've got this little metal retainer that just pushes in. So that is the worst design ever. Oh, guys, those O-rings must have popped out again from the bottom. Oh, look at that, all leaking. Oh, it's all come out again. That is the worst design I've ever seen. That is such a bad design. You're just relying on this little washer thing here to wedge into the plastic to hold them in. It doesn't hold. See how that's just wedged in there? Did it hold? I'll try it one more. If it doesn't hold, we're just going to do it without any oil in there. Well, it appears to be working. Next up, we've got to sort out the runaway problem, and I reckon all it needs is new batteries in the controller. Well, it appears to be working now. Let's go try it out. Yes. Here we are on location. We've got crew in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. <laughs> Look at it go! Look at it whip! Oh man, massive improvement! Yeah, we're liking this! What's happening? What happened? <laughs> What did you do? Who hit it? I forgot it. Video. We got a brand new engine and this time we're going to run it in properly. We got an aluminium tuned pipe and also a two speed transmission. So let's get it all fitted and then we're going to run the engine in properly this time. That's why we killed it the last time. We just ran it in quick and it blew up. And then we're going to get the two speed transmission working and take it out for a proper little run. Hopefully, this time it's going to be reliable, but I'm not really that much of an expert when it comes to tuning engines, so it might end up in tears again. All right, let's get wrenching. So out with the old engine and transmission, and in with the new engine and two-speed transmission. So here I'm just stripping off all the old parts off of the old engine, and moving them over to the new engine. It's all turning, it's unseized itself. You can lock it up again though, shove that in there. And now, crank on there, and that bolt's gonna come off. New engine, nuttage, Loctite. This time I'm gonna hold the flywheel to not damage the engine. Here we've got the new two-speed clutch bell. Yeah. <laughs> 
Here we are on location. So we've got to try and run it in a little bit better this time. <laughs> I still can't get over the speed of that snowboard. Watch this. I'm pushing down on that, by the way. Yeah. That is one of the fastest servos I've ever seen. Full throttle, finger on the exhaust. We give it a couple of pulls on here to prime it. Oh, nice. Cheers. Get the old compression down slightly. Resist that temptation of flooring it. Right, so I'm going to carry on with this for about 10 minutes, then we'll put it back on. Tank number two. So next, back to the shop, get some new tyres on there, and then we'll take it out for a proper run. All right, we are in Redfin Models, and over here, hopefully, we can find some new tyres. Oh, boss has arrived. <laughs> have you got any suitable tyres for this jalopy? I have, but are you off the drift or normal ones? Normal, but I want something that's gonna be fitting with the Subaru body. No, different tread. They're more blocky. These are more sort of all terrain. Oh, and different make. Can we bolt a set on and see? Because the offset's yeah, quite sure. particular on it. Because if it's too wide, it'll rub on the body. Yeah, definitely, mate. Should we just do two on this so we can get a look first. Oh, yeah, well, do that side and then the other side. Try <laughs> those. So these might actually last. Yeah. I'm liking the look of these. Oh, we've got rubbish on there. Oh. Ah, I mean, that's not ideal. Try it on anyway, we can shave. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm no quicker way, you're just messing around, ready? Boom! Get your body on there, lads. So this side, we've got the black jet coes, and then on the other side, we've got the cheaper Fast Tracks ones. So, so, what do you reckon? I think the black ones look cooler, but they do rub a little bit, don't they? Can we try another black one on this side? Because that one's rubbing on the battery box. Yeah, oh yeah. Boom! So we're still rubbing on this radio box. Do you know what? This is the worst radio box I've ever had on any RC car ever. It completely, absolutely sucks. To get it off, you've got to get this screw out here that you can't get to. It's just awful in every way. Oh no, they've just found some other ones. We have good rich Traxxas ones, so they could be good. So these ones have got a little bit more clearance. Oh, these do look nice though. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, well, I think we're going to go with these. I can't make my mind up which looks better, but these have got more space here for the radio box. Just got a little bit there. That means we can just run it as it is. Anyway, if any of you guys want any RC stuff, then head over to Redfin Models and the boss man here will sort you out. All right, here we are on location. Hopefully it's not going to break because I forgot to bring the tools. We was going to run the Formula 1 kind of different video and I left the plug loose, can't run it. Hopefully this one's going to run good. Also, we've got us a rally car. We've got some rally car terrain as well. Prime the engine. The low plug on. Hopefully it's going to run. Come on. Ready, start. Come on. It feels like I've flooded it a bit. I can't take the plug out. I haven't got the plug tool. Come on. Yes. We can't even tune the engine, we've left the screwdriver at home, but hopefully it's going to run good.
decided to say I'm not too happy. I don't know what's going on with it. And we've got no screwdriver, so we can't tune it. Right, I think back to the shop. We'll get a screwdriver, we'll tune it up, and we'll go again. Look at all that dust it sucked in. I wonder if that's why it's stalled. Oh. We need to be able to hit second gear. So hopefully, it's going to start again. We'll give the engine a little tune up. We've got all our tools now. I think it's all right. Got the screwdriver now. We're going to lean it off a little bit. Hopefully, get a little bit more RPM and hit that second gear. Then we we'll get the body on it. Hopefully, give it a proper little miss. Oh, that's not opened it up. running absolutely perfectly but we're not hitting second gear so I think we're gonna leave that for another video <laughs> here we got the world's best RC car and this is the latest version this is the Traxxas X-Max ATS this one here is the version 1X Max and this is the RC car that started this YouTube channel. And also the RC car that got my channel first noticed. This one ran on 6S LiPos and it did have a few problems. So they came out with this, the version 2 8S. So this one here is the most featured RC car on this channel and probably the world's most famous X Max. So the version 2 came with 8S motor and speed controller, stronger differentials, centre differential, but it still had a few problems. So they quietly came out with another version, the version 3 maybe, I don't know. And this one had thicker threads on the bottom of the shock shafts because these used to break off. This one, which I think is probably now on like version 4. I've lost count because the versions kind of came out quietly. This one has added protection on the body, bigger bearings, front and rear. And I don't know, if there's anything else, let me know in the comments. So we're going to take it out for a rip in a minute, but first I want to show you a few features and do a couple of minor upgrades. We've got double wishbone suspension, front and rear with massive coilover shocks. It's four-wheel drive and it's made almost entirely from plastic which is good because it keeps weight down it keeps cost down and durability up a lot of these cars with metal chassis need expensive aftermarket upgrades like m2c racing to make them durable i would say that x max is the most durable rc car of its size that you can buy but we can make a few minor improvements. Let's have a look at old trusty. We've got a max six speed controller for added performance and reliability. Steel gears, RPM rear hub carriers, send hinge pins, upgraded servo. So that's what we're gonna fit onto the new one. And then we're gonna take it out for a rip. Now I would say that these upgrades here are essential for extreme bashing. And these ones here optional for a little bit more reliability and a bit more performance. Now you could push the boat out and go extreme with upgrades with all the M2C parts and big block motors however that does add quite a lot of weight and the extra power puts a lot more stress on the whole entire drivetrain so this for me offers the best compromise between reliability and performance all right that's enough waffle let's get it on there and take it out for a burn so i'm going to start off with taking the wheels off to make it all easier to work on so on the stock pin system, as the hub sits in there, if you was to crash, all the load is transferred to only one half of the arm. On these new send pins, these ones here are actually made by RPM. Different companies like M2C make them as well. These ones are RPM. They bolt straight through with a nut on the end that shares the load over both sides, making it double as strong. You just gotta open the back side of the hole up to four millimeters. I 
I've also put a send pin up there and on the front here as well. I don't bother there and there because there gets in the way of the steering and I've never really had a problem there anyway. Next up, I'm going to get rid of these training wheels because I find when you're back flipping and doing other stunts, they just get in the way. In the box, you also get this little rubber spacer thing to replace it. So these are the pins that line up the mesh and we are going to be running a 46 tooth spur gear and a 19 tooth pinion. A lot of people have problems with these pinions coming off so I'll get a bit of brake cleaner and make sure I clean all the thread inside and clean the thread on the grub screw. Look at all that dirt coming off of there. Next, super strong stud lock and I'm also using a grub screw with a flat bottom. And I'm not going to fully lock this screw up until we got all the spur gear in and line it up properly. So I'll do all the screws up only part of the way with the Ugga Dugga, then do the rest of it by hand to save all the threads. And now we can align the pinion and do it up really tight. Next up, underneath the steering, there is a post and it snaps off relatively easily. So we just get a screw, a bit of hot glue, hot glue in the hole, screw in the hole, job done. So these are the only mods that you need for maximum durability. The next couple of mods are going to give it a little bit more reliability and a little bit more performance. So I'm going to be fitting a perfect pass servo, one of the best servos that I've used in many of my RC cars. These are waterproof, loads of torque, loads of speed, Metal gear, metal case. Next, I've got to drill a new hole into the servo horn to make sure that we keep with the standard X-Max steering geometry. Next up, we're going to make a couple of adjustments to the steering assembly. So this here is a servo saver assembly. This is a standard spring, however, it's a little bit soft. Here I've got some welding wire that I wrapped around into a circle. And I've turned it into a spacer, so you put it back together again with a spring and it's going to stiffen up that servo saver. And then I'm going to put it back together again with a longer screw so you can get a nut on the bottom to stop it all from coming loose in future. So now that's going to give us a lot stronger and more positive steering. Normally when X-Max steering goes bad, it's because something's binding, something's gone stiff. So you want to take it all apart, make sure that all the joints move freely, and then put it back together. Do again. All we gotta do now is fit the Max 6 ESC and then we can go rip. Now some people like to fit the bigger Max 5 ESC, however the Max 6, it fits in the stock location perfectly and it keeps the weight of the truck down. Heavy X Maxes mean more damages, so I like to keep the X Max weight down as low as possible. Next I've got to solder on some connectors, I'm going to use these ones here from Onyx. They're compatible with IC5s and EC5s, they just hold together a lot better. So that's the chassis complete, all we've got to do now is paint up a body shell to replicate the most famous X-Max in the world. But before that, let's see if it works. So I'm going to be running it on these Onyx Lipos because they give loads of power and they fit inside the X-Max perfectly. A test baby! Check out the power of that perfect pass servo, especially on carpets. And power? Whoa! Now Trax has claimed that this truck can do 50 mile an hour, but with a Max 6, I reckon it's going to go faster. And we're going to check it with a GPS. And let's get this body painted, then we can take it out for a blast. So first of all, we're going to degrease the body, then we're going to fit all the window masks, then key up all the surface so the paint's got somewhere to stick to, then paint it with my favourite colour, legendary red, back it with white to make the colour pop, then tint the windows, fit the roll cage, and then finish it off with our custom stickers. 
Now we could put these stickers on it to make it look like the legendary X Max. But I reckon it'll look better if we make it look like the monster truck. And here I've got some stickers, so we can. Well, I'll put some smaller ones in there. Later on, if there's a demand, I might start adding some bigger ones. Here we are on location. I'm gonna give it a little run around here. Max over there has got a really stupid idea. It's gonna be really, really expensive, and um, we'll we'll get back to that in a minute. Here we go. First run with the X Max. smooth oh look at that two wheels straight up on two wheels you've got the power of that perfect pass servo look at that straight on two wheels look at that does it easily let's get it back up on two wheels again there we go look at that easy Oh no, new body. Footage. So Max has got a daft idea. We kind of both got a daft idea. So Max reckons if you just go flat out without across the field, it's probably gonna do about 50, 60 mile an hour and try and get through this gap. Max reckons it will make it through somehow, it'll, but in pieces. I reckon it'll take the arms off and just be in tons and tons of pieces. I reckon it will just get caught on there, not make it through. So Max is gonna give it a go. If it makes it through, like the diff, if the front diff, the crown wheel makes it through, I've got to pay for the damage. If it doesn't make it through, Max has got to pay for the damage. Sounds so, fair to me. So let's play a little bit more with the X Max, <laughs> and then we're going to give that a go. <laughs> I would do it with the X Max, but one of you guys are going to win it in this competition, so I don't want to ruin it for you. Anyway, if you want to win this car, link to that is down below in the description. Next, we're going to give it a quick speed run. Max has got this special app thing that reads the speed. Go on there. I reckon it'll do 45 on grass and 50, 55 on concrete, maybe. What do you reckon? I reckon about 40, 45. I reckon we get 50 on grass. It's wheeling. Or maybe you do the thing first. Read 50. 50. That's got more in it. So Max has got his sledge. Uh, let's have a look underneath quickly. What have you done to it? So oh, it's got M2C motor mount. M2C chassis, power HC servo, and the new Hobby Wing Max 8 combo. All right, let it whip. <laughs> okay, most importantly. 59. 59. <laughs> One more. All right, here we go. If the front diff makes it through, I've got to pay for the damage. If it doesn't make its way through, Max has got to pay for the damage. You ready? Yeah, ready. <laughs> I reckon if he hits it there, the arms will just break off and the, and the whole body will go through. If he misses and hits it like that, that's just going to be XRT completely toast. The diff's probably Wait, going to Max stay in it, splits. but you're going to have to pay for it. Oh, it might go in half. Comment down below what you reckon is going to happen. Oh no, here we go. We've got a GoPro there, GoPro there, phone recording there, drone up there. The faster you go, the more likely you are for that front diff to make it through. Oh my god, you're doing it now. Are you actually going to stand there? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. 
Oh, he's blown out the tyre. We're going to borrow a tyre off for that one. But this is the giveaway one, so we don't want to really damage the tyre. So we're going to put that one on the back and hopefully it survives. If it doesn't survive, whoever wins the car is going to get new tyres, so don't worry. Don't break that wheel. <laughs> this is going to be expensive for one of us. Yeah. We've got someone coming to watch. So he's got to go quick. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> completely missed. <laughs> uh, oh, it's it's um you completely missed, dude. At the moment, you're paying for the damage. <laughs> no, they just made it no, 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 you got to hit this bit. What's broken? You just broken these bits. Yeah, and that sh snapped the chassis. Oh, you got to make it through now. <laughs> Look. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> Does it still move? Oh, that sent the drive off then. Look at that! Oh my god! Oh, the whole thing's shaking! Is that it? Da -da 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 -da. What's the problem? The bullet has now come out. Oh, it's all melted in there. Oh, where'd you know, innit? <laughs> That's in. Get your drone back it's up. Still fast enough, I reckon. Right, attempt number three. All right, here we go. What happened now? Well, another one came out this time. Yeah, the other side. It's a shaking of it, isn't it? Making it come out. You need something over the top of that to hold them in, That's dude. Do, yeah. Tape on there. Hold it all in. Attempt number four. Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Number four. My wallet stays safe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could fix it and go for it again, but then you could cause more damage. I don't think that's fixable today. So what's, what's this? Oh! <laughs> so chassis done, bulkhead arms done. There's a nice ESC here. Hub's done. Drive shaft. Do you know what? It held together really well. I yeah. thought it'd be a lot worse. Traxxas, I don't like your product. It's too strong. Oh, where's my diff? Wait. Oh! Wait. Oh! Oh, where that diff is depends. If that diff's made it through, I've got to pay. Where's the diff? What happens if you can't find a diff? You've got to pay. No. <laughs> oh, you stupid diff. Ah, it's that side. Diff's on that side. <laughs> Dude, that was so close. That diff could have made it through. Dude, I thought I had some going then. And I thought the diff was going my wallet's still all right. We're good. We're good. Oh, look at the mess of that, man. Poor look XRT. Look at that. Oh. It's like crimps. If you guys want to see the extra camera angles and you want to see him trying to repair it, you have to check out Max's channel. What's your channel? Uh, Mad Max RC. There you go. Check him out. Link down below. Everything gets everything gets wrecked. <laughs> Luckily, my wheel survived. <laughs> Oh no. Oh. Oh, Game over. This is one of the best RC cars that you can get. The trouble is, it's really expensive. So here we have a similar one, but at a fraction of the cost. This is the 30 degree north short course truck. And it looks very similar to the lossy. But is it as good? And in this video, we're going to find out. So this is the roller, so no engine and electronics, but it comes with all the engine mounting stuff, a tuned pipe, indestructible body panels, instructions, and a she wing. This lossy now has a Taylor 50cc engine in it. So the original engine can go into the 30 degree north, an AGF steering servo, a throttle servo out of a Raminator, and my trusty Dumbo radio. So I'm going to get all that fitted, then take it out for a rip. 
Yes. So I've already fitted the filter. Next, I've got to fit the kill switch. This is just in case the battery goes flat or anything happens. It turns the engine off, stops the runaway. For some reason, one of these do not line up. I think it's the engine because I've had troubles lining this engine up before in a different car. So we've got these little spacers here that lock the engine mesh in. So I'm just going to put one in there just to hold it. Next up, I'm going to mount the servos. And now we've got to fit the receiver and the fail safe. And now we can plug the battery in, get the servos all centered off. On the AGF servo, it actually comes with an M3.5 millimeter screw. So we either have to use the horn that comes with the servo or drill out the stock servo arm. Man, these AGF servos have got some power. But for some reason, the receiver is cussing out. You do that a few times. Oh, uh, look. It's starting to... Mm. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if the servos are drawing too much power and the receiver can't cope. No idea. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But first, let's get the exhaust on and the body panels. So that's the mechanics all done. Next, let's get the body panels on. Boom, and there we go, ready to rip. So I'm going to run it on this engine for now, and then later on, we're going to spice it up and put this Taylor 35cc racing engine into it. So we've got double wishbone suspension, front and rear, with coilover shocks, a 7075T6 aluminium chassis. Usually only really high-end RC cars come with 7075T6 chassis. It's four-wheel drive, we've got dual disc brakes, and a virtually indestructible body shell. Now there are a load more technical specifications, but I'm not going to bother with the techno babble so i'm just going to put a link down below we can get the car from and we can get all the specifications from i got this one here from rc models if you scroll down you can also get all the other bits you need to get this car to run and the price is a lot lot cheaper than the lossy equivalent so i'm interested to see how it's going to stack up against the lossy sometimes buy cheap buy twice but not always in a minute we're going to see and off camera i'm going to sort out this glitchingness in here no idea what's causing it i'd let you know in a minute it. Boom! Sorted it. So I took out the Dumbo receiver and I just fitted a Spectrum one. And now look, it's working perfectly. Here we are on location. So Max has got his lossy version. Get a bit of juice in there. This is already pre mixed. 25 to 1 we got in here. But this is my old engine out of my old lossy, so it should work. Pump him up. I think we've got to pull it till we hear a pop and then we can turn the choke off and then it should run. Oh, right. Choke off. Yeah. Easy. So here's Max's one, the official lossy one. It's got the Taylor RC chassis on there. Stock engine, 30 degree north pipe. So it should have about the same power. What uh, fuel ratio are you running? It's probably about 40 to one, I'd say. So yours should be faster. And what about gearing wise? Are you stock gearing? Yeah, stock gearing. All right, starts. we'll have a little race in a minute. So get him going. Time, you ready? Yeah. They should, in theory, be the same. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. What happened? How do they both die? <laughs> Chassis perfect. Your seventy seventy five. 
Take yeah. body off and have an investigation. What? Where? Right there, it's crispy. <laughs> oh, it's a poop. Oh, did you nail in it? No, I didn't nail it. My car was over it. Oh, people that let dogs poo, they shouldn't be allowed dogs. Just clear it up, man. How can you leave that in a playground? Tore the battery in, dude. Oh, could be worse. Shut up. It could be mine. <laughs> anyway, oh, it is mine actually. Right, let's get the body off and have a look. So far, super impressed with that. It handles good. I think it jumps better than Max's one as well. I don't know why it cut out, but that's not really the car's fault. So have a little look, get it going again, and then we'll do something else with it in this video. So I found my problem, I think. That's just come off, so we get that back on there. It should, in theory, go again now. So Max, what's your problem? It's ripped out there. Oh, the receiver power. So yeah. that's come off and the fail safe kicked in. So yeah. somehow you've got to... And duct tape it on there? Wait, unless I clamp it under there and then duct tape that. That's asking for a runaway. <laughs> getting told off. <laughs> So this is the Sky RC GPS. Everyone always asks in the comments what you use, but you've got to buy that. Get the app you on go. your phone. Yep. Ready? Yep. We're going to build a Porsche GT3 radio controlled race car. Then we're going to take it racing for the YouTuber racing match round two. Red, then back it with white to make the red pop more. Then we can peel off the protective film from the body and apply all the stickers. That's fitting pretty good. <laughs> Look at that. So now let's turn his arms round. Boom! Right. Let's go racing and kick some butt. Here we are, on location. Yeah. Got all these tubers here. More tubers, more tubers. Oh, more cheaters. More tubers over there. Vinny's BLGQY car, whatever you call it. Oh look, now it's just turned up as well. Got hello. <laughs> look at that, Charlie's sporting the merch. Yeah. Finals about to start. So we've got Vinny in pole position, the two popalongs in second and third, and me in fourth. Here we go. I was fully loaded with excuses and the first pump being too much grip and I kept rolling over. Next excuse, 
my steering. The servo kept locking up. It kept steering me into the wall, making me crash. I got to the end of the straight and it wouldn't steer. Sometimes it steered, sometimes it didn't. It didn't send her off. I know, excuses, but that with the car keeping rolling over, I had no hope of keeping up with Vinny and the Popalongs. So this is actually the first out of two finals, a second final still to come, and I did not actually know that at this point, but I do find out in a minute. So we've got a win for Vinny, second Mark Popalong and Phil Tomley RC come in third place. Me, second from last. So we come second from last. I think that was the battle of survival, wasn't it? <laughs> I think we lost the drive shaft. We found the drive shaft and we do have two finals. I didn't know that, we've got another go. But I think this time, this was going way too hot. Oh, Jesus, that's hot. So we're going to go back to 2S now. There we go, 2S in. And drive shaft back in. one last chance to see if we can win. The other problem I've got with mine, it falls over really easy. And I reckon it might actually be a disadvantage running this body. So for the final, we're gonna put a clear body on there. It's the professional touring car drivers. This looks like the grid walk from the F1. So here we go, final two of two. Vinny in pole position again. The same lineup as in the first final. The winner will be deemed from the best of the both finals. Anyway, here we go. A bit of contact there from Gavin RC Kicks and Ian from Claire's RCs. And also Noah and Tom Lee. So my car with a Volvo body is definitely handling a lot better. It's not rolling over as easily, but we still have that dreaded servo problem. Oh, spoke too soon. Tumble humble. But somehow I've managed to move myself up to third position with Noah in fourth, Tom Lee in fifth. So there's a battle with me and Noah at the minute, with Vinny coming round to lap us. So Vinny gets round the outside of Noah nice and cleanly. And more carnage from me, and more blaming my servos. I somehow managed to move myself back up into third position. We've got Mark Popalong in second and Vinny still in the lead. At the bottom of the field, we have Ian from Claire's RCs. Not sure if it's his poor driving or his wife's shoddy building skills, or maybe a mixture of both. And here we've got drive shafts and diff cups dropping out of cars left, right and centre. End of the straight, my steering just does not steer and crashes straight into the wall, putting me down in fifth position. And now we've got Carl Popalong up in third position, Mark Popalong in second, and Vinny still leading the field in first. It's Gavin and Phil battling it out, and all oh, roll over for Gavin. It's like a destruction derby. Oh! My steering is getting worse and worse. When I was going down the straight, no matter what I did, every single lap, it just automatically steered itself left and into the wall. Even if I steered all the way to right, all it kept wanting to do is just smash into that wall. Nothing I could do, just absolutely nothing. All I could do was complain. So we're coming up to the end of the race now. We've still got Vinny in first, Mark in second, Carl in third, Gavin in fourth, Phil in fifth, me fifth, sixth. No one in seventh, and last but not least, Ian from Claire's RCs. And guys, so many drive shafts have fallen out of these cars. There's drive shafts littered all over the track everywhere. Some cars two wheel drive, some cars three wheel drive. But we had a good laugh, and that's all that counts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, uh, what have you got there then, Ewan? Well, I've got, I had four drive shafts and... <laughs> oh, here we go, the winner. Are you a proud man? Yeah. Massive congratulations to Vinny for winning the YouTube race. Today's video went completely wrong and got really expensive. This is my nitro-powered radio-controlled helicopter and we might have crashed it a little bit. Everything in this video got broken. 
I've got a couple of smart RC helicopters. And apparently any newbie can fly them with ease. This one looks like a stunt helicopter that can fly upside down on its own. And this one is supposed to be a more scale looking, more realistic one. With one button landing and a FPV camera. Now usually learning to fly RC helicopters can be very expensive. These bigger ones here, they can cost two or three thousand dollars to fix when you crash them. You could learn to fly on these smaller ones. However, you're going to crash these even more because they're even harder to fly. Usually the bigger they get, the easier they are to fly, but the more expensive they get to crash. Now you could learn on the simulator but that gets boring pretty quick. So these smart helicopters could be the way forward. And in this video, we're going to find out. Now, I've had a couple of supposedly smart helicopters before. The first one crashed on takeoff. Oh, 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 oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh, 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 He won't turn off! Oh. The second one, although it kind of flew really easily for a no novice and it flew upside down pretty much automatically, it wasn't really that good for stunts. This one is going to be good for stunts and for learning. Hopefully, we'll find out later on in this video. So now let's have a closer look at this scale helicopter. We've got a four blade rotor head. It's collective pitch. That means that the pitch of the blades can change. Single wishbone suspension, because you guys always tell me I've got it wrong. It comes with an FPV camera. So we can pair it up with some FPV goggles, not included. Here's a controller and I labeled up what it all does. So this here is supposed to be auto flight, so you can fly in a circle or heart shape. Motor on and off. Return to home. That one makes it less. And high and low motor RPM and this one is supposed to be automatic upside down. So the battery goes under here. The FPV camera also clips under there. So have a little look at that a bit later. So controller on. So you've got all that lot, whatever that means. Not really sure how you're supposed to make it fly. Wish me luck. This I think is motors on. Come on. Ah, right, start motor. So unlocked, sticks apart. Right, there we go, we're off. Whoa, that sounds scary. How do you turn it off? Uh, I'm gonna open this door just in case so I can run if it goes wrong. Whoa. That feels weird. We gonna have to do that outside. Whoa. Let's land it, let's land it. Stop, stop. That feels completely different to flying a conventional helicopter. So let's get it out into the real world where we've got some more space in this tiny shop here. We're just asking to smash it up. This one as well, too big for in here. Look, this one here is even bigger than that one. So we're going to take it outdoors to the field in a minute and fly it. Also, we're going to fly this one. And my friend has built himself a custom RC Nitro helicopter with loads of extra horsepower. You can't buy it like that. He's converted it himself. So we're going to have a look at that later as well. In this book here is a lot more techno. Babble. I'm not going to bore you with all that, so I'm just going to put a link down below. We can get all the specifications and where you can get the helicopter from. And we can get this helicopter from and everything else that you see in this video. So the FW450 is more of a stunt looking helicopter. The battery goes in here. The body is actually screwed on, so you go unscrew it to get it off. It comes with a battery and that just slides into the front there. Carbon fiber blades that look to be the same sort of design as these on the Sab Goblin. You've got a brushless motor in there. All the servos and everything else is already in there. This one here is also brushless, actually. I forgot to tell you that. Here's the controller, and luckily they've already labeled what it all does. Right, let's go fly. And up here, I've got a big nitro helicopter. I'm going to take that along with me as well. And hopefully, I can get somebody to help me tune up the engine. It's running a bit lean and it keeps blowing glow plugs. So here we are on location. Got toys in the back. Over there, we've got Mark. He's got a few helicopters. We'll have a look at those in a minute. He's done one with like a custom build on it. Yep, he's quite good, old Mark. Might try it with my nitro one in a minute. Try not to break it, but you never know. So this is the heli that Mark just flown. So this one is a, a Lion... No, what is it? Raw 700 Goblin. And what size engine? 120. That one there's the next size down, but he's put a massive engine in it. What's supposed to go into that one? So how do you manage to get that in there? For the brackets. And then you just make an extra hole. And then you, but you have to tap into the engine and then bolt from that side on one side. Yeah, you can't you get, can't get, get on there. that on that side. Yeah. Pretty much all just top ends. 
the same as on the 700, so it just goes straight in. Are we going to get to see it fly later? Yeah. So we'll see how it flies. I'm tempted. Maybe we'll build one. Let me know in the comments. So we're going to fly this little one first. Mark's going to be cameraman. Do that or something. Oh, that's smooth. I'm not touching the controls, look. That's hands off. And it's windy as well. That's sat there. So at the minute, this is like really novice friendly. It's proper windy. Oh, then it's got this here, look, RPM. So let's hit that, see what happens. No, I'll do nothing. Auto, I don't know what that does. It's still the same. But if you press this, it's supposed to do a heart shape. I don't know if it will or not. Does it hold it or, or does it want to go higher? It won't let me go any higher. What about manual? Oh, manual, I can go higher. That button there apparently returned to home. Are you going to land or is it going to crash? Uh, uh. Oh well, <laughs> cut the grass. Mark's go. I don't think you can fly it as a normal heli. I think all of it is sort of like an anti-crash mode, even though it crashed itself. Oh, oh. oh where's he going? Has he got one of his own? Yeah. <laughs> where's he going? It's <laughs> going. Oh no. That's going far. Oh, gold. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's, 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 um, it's. <laughs> Can you do return home? Uh, like that. <laughs> We've lost it. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> what have you done? It's making noises. Right, so we've got it into return to home. That's not coming back. No, I don't think it is coming back, is it? I think that one's gone. <laughs> Next victim. So we're just charging up the battery on this one at the minute, but the voltages are really out on the cells. Should we just fly it anyway? It's been on there for like two hours. Yeah. Get one last little look at it, just in case it might be gone. <laughs> to make it go, we've got... So, we've got the instructions. Ready to fly. We've got a green light on in... Oh, here we right, go. Here, off. here we go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. Stand back. Oh, nice. I think this is an idiot mode because look, I'm not doing anything. If I let go, it just it just sits there. Yes, yeah, so you can fly it around, and if you if you get into trouble, you just let go. And it just stops. Anyone should be able to, in theory, fly this heli with no problems. Auto flying. So let's put it into that and see what happens. Fly it around in circles. You can get it to do a figure eight as well. A figure eight now. I think once I flip that over to 3D, all that autopilot stuff goes away and you're controlling it like a proper helicopter. I've not flown one for a little while now. Mark just has, so I think... Oh no, not again. Yeah, again. <laughs> right, ready? Ready for 3D mode? Yeah, I think some Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Will you get upside down? Want me to try? Yeah, but not too close to us though. <laughs> Ooh. Will it tick tock? So what do you reckon for 3D capabilities? It's, it's very twitchy, but very stable at the same time. It feels hard to, to crack. Can you do a close inverted hover to the floor? Can you cut the grass? Try and cut the grass. Oh yes! Or right, can you cut the runway grass? Oh, oh, he's doing it! He's doing it! Look at that! What? <laughs> that smells good. This is very easy to fly. Is it really? Is it, is it half locked in with gyro or something? It's very locked in. Look at that! He's doing inverted pirouetting loops or circuits, whatever that's called. I wonder what happens if you put it into GPS mode while it's upside down. Three, two, one, GPS mode. Oh wow! There you go. Hands off. So hands off, locked in. Oh, is it? Oh! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Why is smoke coming out? Uh, 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 oh dear. So you've killed uh, two of my helis. Oh, one's gone and one's dead. So next, after destroying both of my helicopters, Mark is going to fly his Sab 
goblin, and then we're going to get my light and throw one out. If I crash that one, which is very likely, I may well get one of these and do the same conversion because then I can take all the servos and everything out of that one and put it into that one. I never thought those goblin roars looked that good, but seeing it in the flesh, it looks well nice. <laughs> Oh, broke a link. <laughs> Did you do upside down with it not in stunt mode? That's what I've done. <laughs> I took it out of um, stunt mode. Gonna fly my 600 next? I'm not flying. <laughs> so Mark has broken every heli today. <laughs> well, one might not be broken, but it's gone. So next, we're gonna fly my 600 helicopter. Opti Mix 25 going in there. So we do need to set the engine up because last time I flew it, it was running lean and it kept blowing glow plugs. So we're going to fly it. Mark's better at tuning than I am. We've got a bit of wire dangling here. Not really sure what it's for, but everything works. So it's probably going to be all right. Stay on, it should have a green and a red. Oh no. So this thing here, you press the button, it does the glow plug. However, it's not really working. So we're going to go old school way. All these just in case. Mark's got one of these things here. We've got new glow plugs. So brand new glow plug oh. in, and we're going to use a traditional old school glow starter. Let's get your one on there. So here Mark's giving the engine a little tune up. Go on, let's fly it. Once it's set up right, then I'll have a go. Mark is going to fly it, hopefully get the engine set up good, and then I'm going to have a go. Uh. Right, it? Yep, engine temperature is good. My go, hopefully he's gonna survive. If he doesn't, we're gonna get a goblin. Actually, I should run. Yeah, I was running a lot faster than before. Last time it never stayed running. Here we go. So this is stunt mode one with a lower head speed. In a minute, you'll hear me flick it over to second stunt mode and that gives it a higher head speed. Now this is the first time that I've flown a heli in around about nine or 10 months. I haven't flown for ages. Don't look like you have Good for me. Oh. Savage. <laughs> Oh, nice. It's not Tarragal Farm today. <laughs> Jesus, Kev. That was only a little baby crash, but don't go anywhere. We're going to fix it and fly it again and then have a big crash. <laughs> Man. Uh, oh, crazy. I think it's all right. It only needs a blade. Oh, that's because a new blaze on it then. <laughs> get it back up. I was kind of a bit jealous actually. Why? I don't know, it was just awesome wasn't it? Yeah, I thought it was not it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well it was awesome while it was, while it, was. Well, it was fun. I think the stick's all right. That's just twisted round a bit. So the blades are done, look. Look at that. Mm, I've got some glue. What's mm. that? Oh, you know what? That's why I crashed it. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> it wasn't nothing to do with my thumbs. Oh, what? Something must have come disconnected because I had no control over that. I couldn't turn the engine off. It's broken now. Well, I don't know now. Maybe I crashed it because the power cut out. That's all right though, only needs blades. Well, I've got 600s on mine, so let's put them on. What, could now? It, yeah, get it back up. But then I might kill your blades. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I've got a pass out. Yeah, all right, we'll do that. I used to fly like that all the time and used to smash them up all the time. It got so expensive. That I thought, I want a monster truck. The amount of money I'm spending on repairing helis, I might as well buy a monster truck. But I've got a monster truck now, so I suppose we can get back to breaking helicopters. I think this boom just needs pushing back in because it's lost drive here. And Mark's going to lend me a set of his blades from that helicopter that you broke earlier. I'll be able to get it flying again today. <laughs> We're in. Can't believe nothing broke. It's amazing. Mm. Mark's brave, he's lending me his blades. I can't believe that nothing on the helicopter broke, but all them little links, everything's perfect. I wonder if he's gonna fly perfect. If I start getting carried away, Mark, you gotta tell me to slow down. Oh, yeah. Once I get the sticks in my hand, and then you get all the red mist and you just stick banging it. <laughs> Why did it just do that? Did you see that? It just reset itself. Well, that's not good. It just reset itself there. I'll, just, I'll click that off and this just went. T -t 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 -t. No, you've got a connection problem. Get rid of that closed start thing. That again. I just done it, didn't it? Yeah. It might have crashed because of that then. I don't know. When that was over there, I couldn't turn the engine off. It was just screaming its head off. Probably was that. And then that's... when I unplugged it and plugged it back in, then it worked. When that went down, you, you would have probably recovered from that if the heady. I think the heady did just fail, didn't Look, it? Stop now. Out. Look, nothing. Oh dear. Completely died. No power to the servos. Oh, no. oh, it's something loose in here. Oh, look, this whole lot is wobbling. I should probably bung a bit of hot glue in that. Was it definitely that? I think so. I think that's what it was. That was half out. So either it went in and came out, or it came out and I couldn't catch it in time. I, mean, I should really put bung a bit of hot glue across there and, and tie everything in. <laughs> Tuned it. I don't want to kill it now because I know your blades are on there. I don't mind, honestly. You're not mind to kill, are they? No, you can have them. You can have them to kill. <laughs> you can have them to kill. <laughs> I don't want to kill them though, you're not mind to kill. Did you kill them? Remember, you gave me an ornament today. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Is the governor working, do you reckon? Uh, the governor ain't working, is it? So the governor is there to keep the engine at a certain set RPM, but it appears to not be working. So now the engine is running at 100% power. Probably not doing the engine the world well again, but having it driven so hard, is it? Still oh. feeling looking nice. Yeah, another minute, isn't it? I buy blades in a minute. Bye bye blazer. Oh. I just knew. No. Oh well. What happened? I've probably done it this time. <laughs> there, all that bit of glue. <laughs> really? Look, the towel survived. Come on, you've done it. You damaged that. <laughs> Your man's back. <laughs> yeah, I'll get the body off. Let's have a look at the damage. Clamp is done. Uh, the servo still at work? Yeah. Nicely, actually. Tail servo. That's good. We've done the tail blades though, look, that's that done. Uh, obviously these are done. The boom's done, look, snapped off there. The rest of it's all right, what about the gears? That's all right. So really, all we need is blades, boom, and a link. Do you know what? I'm really impressed with the durability of this heli. Normally you crash these things, the whole thing's toast. But two crashes and it's not even that bad. If we had another set of blades, 
we probably could get it flying again. I really enjoy this heli. I've had it sitting on the shelf for a couple of years, not been using it. I think I should be able to, I should get it out a bit more often. We're gonna put the world's nastiest tires onto my brand new Traxxas X Max 8S. Then we're gonna try out these slick tires and also these tires from the Ravenator, which are even nastier. Ooh, summer's here. Here we are on location. So I put my old body shell on this one, this is saved a nice one. Because one of you guys is going to win this car. I set up a competition, and if you guys want to win this car, I'll put a link to that in the description box. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what happened? All right, let's have a look and see what the crew have got. So Andy's got, oh look, look at this. What you got here? USA one. Twin brushes, 4,300 KVs. Isn't that nice? So Mitchell's got the bang good special. You fixed it again from last time. Yeah, million weight in the center diff. And 60K in the rear diff. So what's it going to do now? Break probably. <laughs> oh! That boy down there's got a big rock. He's a big got what? A big what? Big what? <laughs> <laughs> we said the same thing. I love you. <laughs> oh look, got more crew. So we've got another right. X-Max there. Is that your X-Max? Yeah, that's my crew. <laughs> more crew coming here. So Mini Craig's bought a Mini Max. <laughs> oh, recovery. It gets dead. <laughs> Anybody hungry? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> Man, this thing with the paddles just goes everywhere. <laughs> Log of Doom! <laughs> Tumble Ah, oh, body's off! I don't care! He don't care! <laughs> Who's racing? Anyone racing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You cheating? How? Well, starting there, you guys are Oh dear, you're gonna get slaughtered. Possibly. So you got Craig's X Max, Mitchell's Bangers Special, we got the Big Rock, my X Max and the XRT, and AS Steve up in the front there that may well get nailed by everybody else. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, you ready, you ready? No. Oh. You look ready, so I'll do the next one. Alright. Ready? over there and is in the lead with the XR2 which is no surprise and we are in second position with the paddle tyres look at that eating the sound oh, tumble wumble but we come in second and is XRT for the win it's nice Oh guys we've had a massive head-on collision oh look at that whose X Max is that is that yours Oh. Mitchell hit it flat out with the Banggood Special. What's the damage on the Banggood Special? Broke the light. So, really oh, no that damage. Happened. That head onto that, that survived and that didn't. That's either lucky or amazing, one of the two. Look at you! I'm sorry! Oh no, 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 we don't want to get it wet. Nope. Oh no. Whoever's going to win this car, we don't want to drown it. Oh, can we recover it? Don't fall in. Yes, 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 yes. Nice. Man, these X Max when they're brand new, they describe it as so nice. <laughs> Who put that there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nailed it! Can Mini Max do it? Oh, what happened? You guys having a go? Yeah, yeah, you guys having a go? 
<laughs> Who was that? At? <laughs> that Banggood special, he's been beating it all day and it's been lasting and lasting and lasting. Oh, oh finally packed up the ghost. Yeah. Slick tyre time, then a bit later, those ones. Check that out. Here we are on the next location. We got the crew back in the house and he's got a new toy. What have you got, mate? Rover RF5. Are we going to see it go? Yes, please. One that was going to be quicker, that. Or that. But that is the smoothest X Max ever. I can drift it as well. Oh, we got noise. Tires as 8S and 4S got. Uh, single Racing, EXO7 and Thunder Tiger. Who knows? We got Hope Bayo. Yeah, Hope 7. Who knows? Race time! Ready, steady, go, 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 go! Alright, oh, right, next race. Found that post and that post. First one to lap, the other one wins. Uh oh. Right. We have a problem. Look at that, it's melted through the body. Oh, no. oh dear, what happened? Oh, it's just come unscrewed from the rod end. I know how to fix it, you ready? Boom! There we go, back on action. That was easy, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now we can have a little circuit pace. We've got that post, that post, and we're going to do it all the way round and round and round. And the first one to lap another one wins. So there we've got the contenders. Joining him, my boy? Yes. Yeah, he's got his big rock. Ready? So it was neck and neck for laps and laps and laps, but eventually I did manage to lap him. Oh, there we go. We lapped him. <laughs> we win. Yes. Oh, oh no! Oh. Was that my fault? I don't know. Oh no! <laughs> I think X Max survived. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The recommendation: don't use the spider. Oh no! Hold on, look, broken shock. Oh, oh, oh! It didn't get away with it. Oh, CD Racing's don't like tracks. It's X Max, do they? You could probably clip him back on temporarily. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> back in action. <laughs> Boom! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> it's still Could be. Oh! I've got no brakes! <laughs> oh, he's on a pinion! I don't know what happened, but he lost drive. So back to the shop, get it fixed, and we'll get the mud truck tyres on it. <laughs> so let's have a look to see why it lost drive. Then we're going to chuck those wheels on it and give those a blast. 
Oh my God, that doesn't want to come off. That's what? In all my years of owning x maxes I've never had that problem. That is wedged on. If you look in here, look at all the filings everywhere. Come on, off with you. Why won't it come off? What is going on there? Oh, oh. Right, oh dear, look, something's been rubbing in there. Oh, look, the teeth have fully come off of the pinion gear. Look at that in there, look. The screw's come out of there as well. So that was the screw rubbing on there. The little upgrade that I like doing on my X Max is you take the short bolts out, put some longer ones in, and then you can get a nut on the end of it. And that will stop it coming loose in the future. The spur gear is still usable, but I have ordered a new one so we can replace that with a fresh one when it comes. Next up, we've got to get all these filings out of here. A few of the filings have made their way under here, look. We've got to trim a little bit off of this piece here to make room for these nuts. Next up, brand new pinion. Next up, a new shock cap. Next up, a revelator wheel. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. Now doing this to your X-Max is really hard on the transmission. Let's go with it. Here we are on location. First location of possible many, depending how long it lasts. Oh, look at that, easy. That's full steering, it doesn't is want to it? steer. Oh, oh. <laughs> how long is it gonna lie? I don't know, I don't think Diff's gonna like it. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear, look, completely stripped. So let's fix it and carry on. Boom! Let's see if we get better luck this time. Here we go, back in action. Oh, that's really so easy. Here we got eight S Steve and four S Mitchell just turned up. You know, I smashed into your car the other day. Yeah. And destroyed it. Yeah. I've got a new one for you. Oh, bless you. Thank you oh, very much. much. You didn't have to do that. Exactly the same car, ready to go. Yeah. Only run one old. Stevie likes his on motors. I've got to go really easy on the throttle here because if you give it too much, it's going to smash drive shafts, smash diffs, smash everything. We're going to try and make it last a little while at least. <laughs> Wonder how fast it goes. Well, it moves. It's just really on demand. Like, no effort, it just tries to really. That's like quarter power. Oh. Durability test time. Can't last long, can it? <laughs> nice, that landed so good. Oh. Oh, camera's off. We're good, no damage. What do you reckon? Do you reckon we can hit that and then clear that railing? Oh, I'll never do it, will it? Man, that goes hard in tyres. Oh, man! <laughs> That was so easy! That's self right, it's just easy. <laughs> that was the worst landing ever! So you put loads of play in it? That's alright, not in it! Oh, I've got an idea. Back flip to front flip. Oh, it's done! Oh, gears are done. Game over. 
Yep, Spurge opinions on again. Do not put giant tyres on your X Max if you don't want to kill it. This is the Traxxas XRT, the hottest and most talked about RC car this year. And in this video, we're going to make it even hotter. And for that, we're going to fit this giant motor. And to handle all that extra horsepower, we have all these upgrades here. So let's start off with removing all the old stuff so that we can fit all the new stuff. And then we're going to see if we can make it go faster than the standard 60 mile an hour. M2C also make a motor support system, however on this gearing I can't use it. Ooh, look at the beautiful weather! Here we are, on location. Oh look, we got proper crew. Yeah, oh, other XRT, X-Max, <laughs> more crew. Here we go, first run ever. <laughs> Man, it's lively. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that. Challenge number one. First one to get to the top of the staircase. Oh, look at that, straight up. That got there easier than the X-Maxes. <laughs> We're going to get confused here. So this one here is Mike's XRT, and this one is fairly stock, isn't it? Yeah. So viewers are not going to know which is which. I know how they're going to tell, though. We can do a ready, steady, go. Ready, Max. <laughs> ready, steady, go. Oh, <laughs> Using about quarter power, the thing's unreal. Too much power. What's Vinny got? Crate and four. So here we got the legendary backflip tree that always kills everything for some reason. Oh, Max is already on it. Next victim. No. Next. Nailed it. Is that Andy? Oh, yes, please. Well done, mate. Next. No, the four. I don't get it. Oh come on. No way. <laughs> yep. That's me. Sweet. Blah, 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 weird. Kev, what's happened? That was just so uh, I, I stepped in a poo poo and then I touched it and now it's on my hand. Why do people let their dogs poo everywhere? People that let their dogs poo pit on your faces <laughs> should be banned from having a dog or fine. It's just disgusting. Why <laughs> would you let a dog do it? <laughs> you having fun there? No. It's bad enough when your finger goes through the toilet paper. This soup. is 10 times worse. Oh, <laughs> come on. Why? Luckily, the XRT's poolus. I can't go flat out. Jesus, that moves. So me and Mike are going to have a race. Me with the 1100kb Max 5 combo and Mike Sock. Ready, steady, go. Way quicker. And that was only half power. Oh, tumble one before Mike. This thing's just a wheelie machine. Look at it. Man, that's got some power! I'm beginning to really like it now and don't want to give it away. But if any of you guys want a chance of winning it, link down below. Any of you viewers can win this car. Over there, we're now all going to race all at the same time. Go, 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 go! We're off and we win. Oh, we win easy. Look at all these bash sacks everywhere. <laughs> Absolute beast. So here's a challenge that we used to do. Take a run up across here, and then you've got to hit that, and then you've got to thread it through the trees. Trouble is, it's all overgrown, so it might not work. So run up across there, hit that, and then you've got to land in there. This isn't even my XRT. One of you guys are going to win it. Oh, oh! That slows down too much for the weeds. No hope. Oh, no! Oh, you broke that. Oh, this is putting back in. There we go. Back in action. Are you having a go? Yeah, I'll have a go. So now we're racing from there all the way up to that post over there. Ready, steady, go! I don't know which is my XRT. I must, oh, look at the wrong one. I'm looking at Mike's one. Oh, no, we lost. Well, that thing's quick, and I've lost it. And he's got a new trick. Do moonwalk. Let's do the monster jam. Look at that. In reverse. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! 
Nailed it! Backflip! <laughs> Carnage! Challenge! Run up, hit this, and then we've got to land on that one. Oh, easy! Oh, just. Next challenge, little run up there, clear this whole lot, and land on the down slope for that. No way. Oh, 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 wheels. Can Andy do it? Nope. <laughs> so this is Max's car. Yeah. The motor has come off. Look, that's the inside of the motor there. It's actually come off. Look, there's the magnets. There's the magnets come out the middle, so the motor is not attached. Look, this is the can. Look, look at that. It's just fully off. But somehow, God. Up. You're gonna kill it here, see if you keep going. Dude. Look at that. Next up, we're gonna take it for a speed run, and also I want to try it out on these slicks. I had these slicks on this X Max a little while ago, and it was so much fun in the car park. When you went around the corner, it was almost like a stadium super truck lifting one of the front wheels up. There we go, all zeroed off. How fast do you lot reckon it's gonna go? 65, 63, 52. I'm gonna say 75. <laughs> I cannot go anywhere near full power. Every time I try, it just wheelies. Oh, I'm live. Oh, 60? Oh, that's what I'm supposed to do, stock. We've got to go more than that. Oh, I just want to lift. I don't think you can do more. It just lifts up. Oh, to blow the tyre. Oh, there it is. Oh, dear. Still 60 mile an hour. Slick time. Here we are, next location. being a dick. In the last video of this car, this happened. So in this video, we're gonna fix it, modify it, and give it more power, yes! So here we've got all the parts that we need to fix it. Get in and drill the new holes and hopefully it's all gonna line up. And there we go, ready to rip. Look, look, look. To me, it looks like a zip tile fit really good on there. No, you've done that before. Yeah, this was that exact one. The exact car, yeah. It's just been rebuilt. It's leaking too good. Why is it leaking already? Is that the standard tank? It's pouring out. I was actually pouring out. It's not leaking again from the same place, is it? Some power. Listen to that. Man, that is lively. So the stock gearing for this engine really is a little bit on the low side. This engine with all the torque really needs to be geared up a little bit. But that's all that we got. So top end isn't really improved much, but we got a lot of low end grunts. Maybe in a future video we'll try to find some taller gearing. Do you know what? I reckon that could clear the picnic bench. You reckon that could clear? Well, yours did. Mine hit it. No, sorry, mine cleared it. Man, if that lands there, that's going to go through there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Kev, I've 
I've got you a challenge. Oh no, what now? See this gap here? Yes. I want you to go flat out across this field, hit that mound, kick up there, and try and make it through the gap. Okay. Brand new tank's leaking. Oh, look, it's actually got a hole in it. Where? Look, there. Oh, no. Oh, I've got a hole in the tank. Guys, loads of RC action in this video in loads of different new locations. But first, I'm leaving. This country's been getting worse and worse, like many other Western countries. Taxes are going through the roof. Crime's going through the roof. I just feel like it's time to leave. It, without boring you guys, it works out that I'm paying around about 65% of my earnings are gone in taxes. I'm trying to save up for a bigger property so we can have a bigger shop, a little bit of land for doing videos. The amount of money they take away from us in this country is making it so difficult to try and find somewhere. So, I've got to leave. Question is where to? I've got a predicament. I've got friends and family. Friends and family mean the world to me. They're worth more than money than anything else, so I can't be too far away from my friends and family. So... There's a little island in between Ireland and England called the Isle of Man. It's a little gem. I've never been there, but from everyone I know that's been there or lives there, they absolutely love it. Really low taxes, really low crime, really clean place. Some of the cleanest beaches in the world. You're never more than 10 minutes away from the seaside. And it's one of the safest countries in the world. The government are business friendly because they realise that you need entrepreneurs to set up businesses uh, to employ people and, and help the whole country. It's got a blazing RC community out there. It's got loads of different countryside and different RC places. We're gonna go over there, I'm gonna take my tracks as Hoss, and if I like it, I'm gonna buy a house there. Now, to come back here and see my family regularly, it's still gonna be like an eight to nine hour trip of driving and ferry. I've come out with a brainwave to learn how to fly, like, like a real plane. So, for the amount of taxes that I'm gonna save in like just a few months, I can buy myself a little four-seater Cessna plane, just a, just a cheap one, a stunt plane, like an extra 300, like a decent one, and learn how to fly, and still have money left over that I could use for like hiring people to help, help make videos, help film, help edit. And then, I can just come back here and fly in like an extra 300 stunt plane. It would take me about an hour to get back. So literally any time I want to come back and see my friends and family, I can. I could come back once a week. I think I'm really going to like it. And if I do like it, I'm going to buy a house over there. And then I can save up for my dream house whilst I'm saving all that tax money and make new content and make content here and make content in Isle of Man. And hopefully it's going to be the, the best of everything. So I'm going to take you guys along for the holiday. We're going to go RC and we're going to check out different places. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. Or even if you can think of some other places where I can move to where it's tax friendly, safe and still sort of near to England so I can see my family regularly. So give me some comments down below, let me know what you think. And enough waffle, <laughs> let's grab this hoss, head over to the Isle of Man and see what it's all about. Right, we're on our way to the Isle of Man. That is what we're going on. Oh no, poor Greta. How dare you? There we go, we're off, boy England. First RC location, we got Isle of Man, RC man, Rob in the house. Yes, mate. And we're doing a joint little RC project. Look, let me show you. So this car here was the Project Dirt Cheap 100 mile an hour RC car. I failed, so Rob has done something to it. What have you done? Oh, everything, mate. Diffs, Mod 1 gearing. We've had to put an MM2 because we need a rev uh, no reverse for Rossa. We've got a couple of other bits in there. I'll tell you what, I made a little wing for it. We've got the RC Man wing on there. Check out Rob's channel, RC Man. Link in description. We've locked the shocks out, of course. Made that a nice, sexy body. So we're still success? Still success. I think we should run it four. However, you can see the gearing's pretty big and pretty tall on it. So. Oh, only done the centre shaft. Yeah, that was a bodge before gone. when I'd done it. Yeah. yeah. Competition crawler, SEX6, TRX6. Which one's going to be more capable? So we're going to run them as they are first, and then we're going to make some minor adjustments to see if we can improve them. Challenge number one, whose is the fastest? Ready, steady, go, 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 go! Oh, whoa, 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 and we're off, we win! TRX6, one point. 
So here we are back on the Isle of Man doing some house hunting and playing more RCs. Next challenge, small rocks. Go! Max for the SCX6 for the win on that one. SCX6. Oh no, hold on. How much is that car worth? Quite a lot. It's about three grand, isn't it? Three grand? <laughs> okay. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Next challenge, we're going to get up that. That vertical ledge here. Yes. Go on in, show us how it's done. That's literally vertical. What? <laughs> I think this is going to be a fail for this one. Yeah, fail. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Next victim. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go, there we go. So this is Max's SCX6 honcho. Yeah. So what have you done to it, dude? So that's got a bit of on portal axles front and rear. A normal axle comes out in the center line. Portal is higher. So check out all this diff clearance. Sod fingers. This is whole hand. This is fist, actually. You can get a whole fist under there. <laughs> Some Eva two wheels. A bit of on shock towers. In a minute, we're going to have a look at that one and that one. Next challenge. Got this little slick piece of rock here that is really bad side angle. And go on, Rob. Show us how it's done. Let's do it. Oh. Next, can TRX6 do it? Oh, oh! Come on, come on, Kev! Come on, Kev! It's on the edge, oh! Yes! yes. <laughs> no. no, no. You guys, you keep a little note and you write in the comments what the total score is at the end. We've forgotten already. Oh, he's making it up. I think this one's going to do better. He's got more ground clearance, bigger wheels. Oh, oh, saved oh. it. Yes. So my one, the TRX6 has got a few upgrades. So underneath, we've got all the trill aluminium axles all the way through. We've got the trill brass portal covers and we've got Hobby Wing Axe brushless motor. If you want to know all the techno babble, the specifications, we can get it from link down below. And in a minute, we're going to go and have a look at Rob's competition corner over there. Next challenge, really steep cliff face climb. First of the top wins. You ready? Yeah. Ready, steady, go. I want to get my car in to save it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to win this one, boys. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no.
put that back in. Back in action. I think we've got a bit of a problem. The body's not lining up. We've got the front post lined up here. The back ones don't want to go on. We might have bent the chassis. Hopefully not. Oh, wow, look at that. The body hole is like a centimetre out. Next, let's have a look at Rob's motor on axle car. Got the bully, the MOA bully. Done up with some of the RC man bits, but also some new wheels that I've got off one of my friends who I'm trying out for the first time today. He's just running two brushed motors. Here you are in Rob's shop. Yum, yum. All three of us have to modify our cars and we can take them back out on the rocks and see who can perform best. So problems with mine was just this is just too much sticking out. Same on the back, so we've got to do something with that. Also, let's see if we can do something with tires. Get something a bit bigger on there. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I'm bolting it. Got an easier way. What tools has he got? There must be something here that we can use somewhere. Oh, here, 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 here. out the way, out the way. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, you got power tools. Get the big boy out. <laughs> My turn. <Woo>! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Well, you've got to finish it off. Wow! <laughs> oh, you got Next up, bigger tyres. Yeah. Just like it rubs a bit. It's alright. Poor oh, body. Right, it looks like this one rubs as well. You know what to do, Max. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like the wheel's never going to go there. <laughs> you have to cut that off now, come on. Oh yeah, you will have to actually. Yeah, All right, good call. This is like a pit stop. Easy, easy on his workbench, man. You look at Rob's bench, everything is pristine and immaculate. We've got five seconds of Max and everything's just completely clean. And he's even infected Rob, look. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's learning how to do maintenance. Is <laughs> that going to work on your corners from now on? No, no, mate. Yes, mate. Yes, no, mate. <laughs> 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 Here we are, next location. So Max has got the SCX6 out again. What have you done to modify yours? I've just taken the spare tire out and lost the weight in the little cubby hole. And what cars have you bought today? I bought my, uh, the G Speed again and the Ravine four wheel steer. So this one should maybe be better than the other one because you've got four steer. That's correct. We've got a small problem though, what happened? Um, I, I left the batteries all the way at home. Ah. So we've drove like half an hour and I've forgot the batteries. All right, so it'll be me and Max today. Rob can have a go as well. Yeah. And then tomorrow we'll go out again. But in this video, we've all of them. Yeah, sweet. So what's this? Challenge number one. Challenge number one. Oh, hold on. No. Oh, what? That one's for the win for Max. Right. The pro show. Oh, the pro show. There you go. Just like that, mate. Challenge whoever can get the furthest all the way down there. With the least amount of hands of God. Is the new approach angle going to help? Yes. How many hands of God you had, Max? Zero. Rob? Zero. That's the steering nut. Oh. The links are breaking off the bottom. You got a hot glue gun? Yes, mate. So we can fix it. What? No <laughs> oh, oh. First of the top. Ready, steady, go. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, Max is all the way up there. Oh. Oh. Who can make it up the furthest? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going high on that. Oh, 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 uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Give it here, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh! What happened? The steering's gone. Oh no! Oh, it's oh look, it snapped! Uh, I've got cable ties. Can I fix something? Run back to the car and get some cable ties. It's Kevin! He's been for a walk. Get some cable ties. Got the pair job. You've got them. Yep. Gonna fix it. Gonna send it again. What are you? Cable tie god. <laughs> the there cable you go. tie god. Oh yeah. There you go. It's down to you now, Max. You loving the Isle of Man, mate? Oh, loving it. <laughs> He's loving it. We got house almost bought. Oh, so we're gonna be here. Yes. Sorry. 
<laughs> oh no, I'm getting rocked! <laughs> there we go, back in action. Look at that, steering now. So over there, we've got an even steeper hill. Ready? Uh, it's, it's, it's come off. <laughs> Revenge! <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to fix it. <laughs> Next challenge. What are we doing? All the way to the top. Whoever gets to the top first. Boom. Oh, Kev's at the top. Max at the bottom. Do a backflip. Do a backflip, can you? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he turned it around, though. <laughs> Oh, oh, watch out! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke it! What's up with it? Oh, you broke the drive shaft. What is it with you two? You're animals! You've broken the drive shaft and done Oh, will that go back in? Why is your axle like that? Oh, hold on. Oh, no, I broke another link there. <laughs> so here's mine, the back axle's all cocked over. Front drive shaft snapped off of it as well. Back flip at the top. No! Max always makes everybody do the craziest of things. No, but look, Max! Go to the top and backflip it. Come on. Yeah, he, do it. Come on. He made me do it. Come on. Yeah, yeah you'll go. Send it. Come on. Oh. 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 <laughs> wow. Game over. One more for the team. Game over now. Yeah. <laughs> Back in Rob's shop, what are you fixing? The links, because this one is too weak. All right, metal link there. And what are you going to do about this? A bodge. Bodgery. Are you going to get batteries for I'm next time? I remember the batteries. Here we've got to somehow sort out all this mess. So we've got to replace this here. And we're going to put the stock wheels back on because I think they went better. So quickest way. Boom! New link on there. Loads of hot glue on there. Stock wheels back on. Yeah. Back in action. Working. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Boom! Whoa! <laughs> there you are, have your wheels back. Go on. Boom! There you go. <laughs> We're going to see that on your channel? Yes, mate. And what is your channel? RC Man. Woo! Subscribe. Next location, we've got them all fixed again. Which one is going to be the most capable? Look at that, we got steering again. <laughs> What's happening here, Rob? So the challenge is we've got to get up there, work our way all the way to the top. Oh, oh, oh. oh really? We've got a spare tire off the back. There's a low. Oh, nice, nice. Three speed next. If you want to see inside that one, that was in the last video that we done about me leaving. Oh, we've got another victim. What car's this one? It's a homemade. There we go. There we go. We're going to see how this one does in a minute. Go on. Go on. Yeah. Nice! Conquered! What's the next challenge? We're gonna get star at the bottom here. We've gotta go all the way to the top. First one to touch the fern and back down. Ready? Steady! Steady. Go! Be back to get there. Oh! <laughs> oh, touched it! No! Oh, yeah. He's done it! Done it! Oh! <laughs> oh. Tumble one ball. Oh, that's that body mount done. Look. Challenge. If we have a little play on this a minute ago, no one can do it. You've got to go up this, along there, along there, along there, and then across this gap and onto here. Nobody that can do it. it. So what car is this one? Is this a four wheel steer one? Yeah, four wheel steer ravine. Is that made by FPX? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. What? Ah! Boom. The one I think might do it is Frankenstein over there. That is a, what car is that one? TRX6. Six wheel steer. So much flex going on. Can you do it? Can you do it? Oh, 
Oh, no, lipo's out. If I try and crawl it, that, look at that, where we cut the front off, perfect approach angle now, look at that. Straight up, but this little bit here is just that little bit too steep for it. <laughs> so next down here, apparently, we have another beautiful location. Whoa, check this out. <laughs> oh, hold on. Uh, uh. Next challenge. Down this little bit here. And that bit there, let me come down. Really steep. Who can make it down without crashing? Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's down there. It's down there. Next. Can we do it without rolling? I didn't roll. Oh, that fell over. Come on, TRX6, you can do it. Boom! Did Frankenstein do it. Oh, 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 oh! Turtled! Next, Rob. With a D3 shafty, I think we've got a clear win for the TRX6. <laughs> So this is the biggest motor ever fitted to an RC speed car. Just check out the size of it compared to a soda can. In this video, we're gonna fit two of them. Let me go go over it all and repair some damage that we did from that crash. And then in this video, we're gonna take it out, give it a speed run and see how fast this thing can go with two motors and double the power. Now I'm aiming for to, to go over 205 mile an hour to beat the world record. Hopefully guys, hopefully in this video, we've got it. Or it might be a big crash. Right, let's get wrenching, then take it out for a whip. So we are going to put two of these motors in there. The reason for using two brand new ones is because this motor here has already had a bit of use and I just want to have two brand new, exactly the same, the same amount of wear so they both work the same. Guys, check it out. This is about 60 horsepower we have sitting there. Look at the size of it. So we've got 12S LiPos here. This one can take 12S, 24S, 60 horsepower. Hopefully it's all going to fit. <laughs> Guys, it's gonna work! Look at that, two motors there, two ESCs there, enough room for 12S LiPos on each side, 24S! Guys, this car is gonna rip! Well, at least it's gonna do something. In this video, we're gonna find out. So next, we need to find out a way of mounting it, and for that, we have this Scorch Parts dual motor mount. It's the same mount we already got here, but with another one on that side. And then, we've got these custom Perfect Pass carbon fibre drive shafts. I got Raz to make them for me, custom made, custom lengths, so that we can move this motor to the perfect location so we've got enough space to get the ESCs in. So massive thank you to Rash Shifrin for making me these. I'm going to put a link down below to Rash Shifrin's channel. He's got some of the world's fastest RC cars. At the time of filming, he's got 198 mile an hour. Because they're carbon fibre, they're lightweight, they don't flap about, you don't get any vibrations, just perfect. <laughs> Look at the quality of this machining, guys. If you want to know where you can get all this stuff from, the car, the motors, all the gadgets on here, I'm going to put a link to all of that lot down below. So now this gearing here was for the old ESC, but this time we have double the power, so we need to gear accordingly. I want to gear it to over 205 mile an hour to make sure we got that record, hopefully, in the bag. So let's ring the expert, Rashifrin, and... Ask him what gearing I should put on it and if he even reckons it's possible. Yo, what's going on? Yo, got Raz on the house. What's up, what you got? I am building my project World's Fastest RC car. So I want to see your reaction to the, the, the behemothness. You ready to see it? Wow, you actually made them fit. I have to tell you something. If you gear it right and everything works, this have 220 potential easy. Do you reckon? Well, the power is... There, if you can keep it on the ground, 220 guaranteed, almost guaranteed. And the tyres hold up. Yeah, but you have enough power for it. So we could have it in the bag. Or in a trash bag, depends on how it goes. It's going to be in some sort of a bag. <laughs> what gearing do I have to run? A 25 spool on a 60 pinion. And then we might have it in the bag, maybe. Or in a 
trash bag. Depends on yeah, the it's gonna it's gonna go in some sort of a bag. Some sort of a bag. That's a guarantee. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys, I messed up slightly. So I got these strife shafts here, custom made by Raz Schifrin. And my idea was is to plonk this down wherever it lines up and then just drill new holes into the chassis. However, look, look, look. The chassis already has holes which nearly perfectly line up with the motor mount, but not quite. And because the counter sunk, it's going to be very difficult to try and elongate those holes. I should have made this shaft a bit shorter, this one a bit longer. It would have fitted in perfectly, but out. Too late now. We're going to have to do some of this action. So here's roughly how much we got to grind out. That's the easy bit. The difficult bit is going to try and make that counter sinking again afterwards. So when you're grinding fiberglass, make sure that you wear a muzzle. Breathing that stuff in is not good for your lungs. And goggles, make sure you put those on. It's on there, it turns. Next, we've got to put this 25 tooth spur gear on there, but Raz told me to put on. Boom! Next, let's see if the motor's fit. Next, we've got to get this cover on, and because we've got such big pinion gears, we're going to have to trim a little bit out. I know, I've butchered it. Look at that quality engineering. Next, we've got to sort out this where it got pulled off. Here's the screw that come out of it, and we're just going to put in a longer one. Boom! Next, we've got to replace the splitter. Well, I've been running it too low. Look, it shaved all the way down. Also got cracks in there from where we crashed it. I've got a stock infraction one here, so I think for now we're going to stick that on there. So next, we've got to get some more LiPo batteries, solder it all up, and then we can take it out for a rip. See how fast it goes. Yes! Right, fast forward a few months. I've got my Onyx LiPo. So these LiPos here are really the Basher Series LiPos. So they should have loads of power, but they are not the Speedrun Series. So if we need more power later on, we can get the Speedrun batteries. So they're all going to sit like that. So all I've got to do, fit some battery buckles, some scorch parts, and some battery connectors. Wire it all up, and then we can take it out for a rip. Yes! Right, here we go. Get all this fitted. Boom! There we go, all wired up. Next up, I want to stiffen up the front suspension. There's a lot of weight there now, it's a little bit too soft. So, I've got these perfect pass springs. Compare that to the stock one, a lot stiffer. Boom! So I'm trying out a new trick on this one. This is standard whip tyre. I've really shaved it down to be a lot thinner. The idea is, is that there's less wind trying to make the car backflip. Trouble is though, thinner tyre, more wear and tear, they might end up being no rubber left. Also, with all this weight in here, it might still be a little bit too soft on the front. So we're gonna run it as it is, if it scrapes, andy has got an idea. Oh, that's fast. You nervous? If I was in it, I'd be terrified. Because <laughs> I'm not in it. <laughs> Good luck. Here we go. Oh no! Oh, game over! Game over! Totaled! What a mess! <laughs> oh, what happened? Did you just lose oh, sight? Like lose sight of it? Blue tire. Couldn't get the steering back. It just. One seven seven point one. That's so much more power in it. I was winding up, winding it, winding it up. As it went through the traps, it was still going faster and faster. The tires just. You could hear the RPM still climbing. And then it was just going into the grass. I tried to steer it out of the grass. No hope. Salvage crew, recovery vehicle. What a mess. That tumbled and tumbled, body off, everything off. That was a proper tumble. Uh, it yeah. blew a tire, had no steering. It just didn't want to steer. That was nowhere near full power. No, you blew up down the end, didn't you? I think it blew probably about here somewhere, didn't it? 
Oh, there's a goal, there's a car, there's the body. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, 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 whoa,
Oh no, the other lights come off. Oh. <laughs> oh, game over. Oh no. Stock pop metal gears, game over. So we're gonna take it home and fix it, but first I wanna show you a couple of beautiful Isle of Man locations. So that over there, one of the nicest coffee shops I've been to on the island. So we've been doing a bit of house hunting around here, and oh my God, this place is just so beautiful. Look at this. Imagine that, wake up in the morning, and you're still actually here. Hey, hello, Max. Hello. Got the RC boats out on here. I can sit here and edit all your videos. Man, I just cannot get over how beautiful this place is. Imagine that for RC content. Rock crawling, boats. How far the X-Max can go out there on paddle tyres. So this is our Airbnb. A little living area, dining room, kitchen. It's actually on a farm. We've got a bathroom in there. <laughs> Tumble rumble. Little toilet in there. My bedroom, another bedroom, another bedroom, Max's bedroom. If we look over there, we can see the sea. And on a bit of a clearer day, yesterday, on a sunny day, a perfect view. Man, I love this place. I've actually put an offer in for a house and it's been accepted. So if all the legals go through, I'm gonna be a resident here in the next few months. So we've got to do a little bit of RC maintenance. The X-Max has got to get some gears. Rob, RC man, bless him. He sorted us out with some gears so we can fix it. He also sorted Max out with a bulkhead to fix the Typhon. So we're gonna get all that stuff fixed and then go back out for another rip. Oh man, this cat is like the cutest cat ever. All it wants is cuddles. Right, let's get it in the X-Max and go bashing again. Oh, Ooh. look at that, it's, it's like gone gone. Have you ever seen that happen before? No. What happened? So Rob sorted us out with these steel gears, so let's get them in there. Boom! Let's go with So quick pit stop at Rob's, and then off to the next location. <laughs> so Lossy Mini B, what's inside? What's uh, the motor? Oh, it's, yeah, it's got brush, nice little surplus. 6,800. Little 3S ESE, but it's running 2S. Oh, Rob, Rob. Yeah, I know. That's not going to work anymore. Maybe not. Game, definitely not. Definitely get the other end of it. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Next location. Oh. Come on, look at that. Skate park. BMX track. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> uh oh! What happened? Oh, back me out. Plug it back in. I'm back in action. We've got to take a run up from over there, round the bowl, then flat out and hit that death wall. Oh! oh! <laughs> what a landing! I think your, your bag saved it. Yeah, I think it's all good. And again, this time, we're on this side of it. Right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Here's Max's weapon. Come on, Max, show us what you're made of. So this one here, flat out. Oh, oh my God. Oh! Hold on, next victim. Oh! X-Max loves it. Let's have a look at Max's victim. Oh! 
Oh! Oh no! What happened? Is it alive? Well, you challenged me to do something. Oh. Look where it landed! Oh, it landed right on there! Oh, did oh. This car has probably had less than an hour's worth of one time. Do it again! Oh, I <laughs> got a nice oh. landing! Nice! I don't care what anyone says, X Max best car, RC car in the world, hands down. Yes, 100%. <laughs> So this X-Max is completely bog stock, minus the gears. We put some steel gears in there from Rob, minus those, stock. <laughs> oh no! Oh look! Get it now! Straight on the chassis that cannot be alive. Oh! Oh, oh batteries are out. No way that took that. What? 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 Stock X Max is perfect. How can that take in it? I don't know, to be honest. I can't have taken it. Battery's out. These Onyx Lipos have got some power. This is on the stock low speed gearing and it's doing all that. These are the most powerful batteries I've ever had in an X Max. Inside might not be as good, take the lid off. Oh, what? It took Should you do it again? Yeah. yeah why not? <laughs> oh! It landed like that. It landed oh. like that. Does it drive? Not a mount. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Spare opinion. Ah. One thing left to do, send it once again. <laughs> Max could be worse. Oh, could be mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay, I think this is actually game over. That is a game over. What's better, nitro or electric? In this video, we're going to find out. So we got three Kyosho USA ones. The first one, nitro with a three-speed transmission. The second one, single motor brushless. And the third one, twin motor brushless. Oh, what a day. Challenge, who can get started first and the first to drive over that line? Ready, steady, go! So Tom Lee's got to put batteries in, I've got to put fuel in, and Andy's got to put batteries in too. Control Hello! <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't be. Why nitro is so good. This hasn't been managed about a year. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the first nitro disadvantage, they stall. <laughs> <laughs> but when they're running right, they sound amazing. Something that an electric just cannot reproduce. Jeez. So here's an advantage for electric, loads more torque. Next challenge, GPS, who's going to go the fastest? Tom Lee's going first with a single motor brushless. Forty mile an hour. Next, my go with the nitro. I 
don't think you're hitting third gear, so we might be able to lean it off and get a bit more out of it. 34. Oh. So Andy, next one is doing that. I'm gonna lean my engine off a bit and try and make it go a bit faster. We're not hitting third gear. Next, Andy's dual motor. Now Andy's dual motor has rear wheel steering and that is making it really unstable for speed runs. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no, off me. oh the twin motor and the rear steer in this instance not helping. Right, let's try my one again. So leaner means that less fuel is getting into the engine that should give it more power but if you overdo it you could have a meltdown. 37. Oh, oh I'm gonna lean it off a bit more. We are still not getting third gear. I'm sure if we did, then we might even be faster than the 40 mile an hour of the single motor brush. Oh, still 37, we're not hitting third gear. So here's one downside of nitro. Everything gets messy and covered in nitro. Nitro on that tire. <laughs> Location, we're gonna see how it handles the woods and the sand, and then we're gonna take it to a skate park. Ready, steady, go! Yes, we win! Time nitro twin motor single motor ready steady go 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 oh and the nitro's off <laughs> no who won Phil me no I won <laughs> comment down below who won nitro or electric. <laughs> Here's the next problem with nitros. Most of them have no reverse and you've got to go fetch. Oh, so they're in a the prickly bush. Oh, now we're out, now we're out. He's out. Oh, I've got to get prickled, look. Ah. Ah. We got it. So I'm pretty much out of fuel, but we can fill up and they have to charge. Right, next location. thumbnail <laughs> that's it out of fuel so now off to redfin models to get some more here we are redfin models got all the crew in the house hello we've done a video with nitro versus electric run out of nitro so have you got any nitro yes one of those oh perfect 25 percent yes, yes. Oh, oh my god <laughs> what's it's the whole thing made of metal all of it yeah Mobile axle. Yeah. Iron axle top trawler. I've you never know. really been into these, but after being to the Isle of Man and watching Rob's go, how capable they are, you I might tempted. have to get one. I'm getting tempted. I've got, I've um, got one yeah. that we might flog. I've got that one. Got RC4 drive titanium links, fully axles, and a carbon frame I got from a company, Euro RC, I think it was. Yeah. I've wanted that Formula One car for a long while, and now Jason said I can buy it. I'll do a deal on both of you. 
Okay. Whoa. <laughs> How much is this one? Uh, 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 no, I've just agreed to buy it. Yeah. How much have you agreed to buy it for? Uh, a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, is that, that is the actual engine, and that, the head, is the air filter. Yeah. And out of here, look, the exhaust comes out just like on a real one. Yeah, the wing on it, so that's like sort of last of the V. Anyway, get your fingers off of that. I'm having that one. Yeah, you're not a proper F1. There we go. That's mine. I'm having it before Phil gets hold of it. There's going to be a video on that soon. Waffle, waffle, waffle. I've seen something more interesting. That was one of my dream RC cars when oh, I was a kid. No. Could we have a look, please? My son's got Man, that was one of my dream RCs. I've got one, but it's nowhere near as nice as that one. Oh, look at that. When I was a kid, I used to look at the magazines and I saw that on there. It's a second hand body shell. We stripped the paint off and stuff again. How do you get the paint off? Nitro. Nitro. And it's four. supposed to be this one down That's there. Right. Oh, so you put that colour scheme on there? Yeah. 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 How much is it? It's, 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 um, put it away before you. How much is it? <laughs> How much is it? How much do you want for it? I don't, it's not. Oh, it's not for sale. Oh. Oh. I'll find you a so this is Finley's 8x8 that used to be a 6x6. Six six. How capable is it? Incredibly, it beat all the Tomp crawlers that went last time. Really? Guess what? In this box over here, I'm going to build one as well. Well, I'm hoping Jason's going to help me build one. Yes, we going to yes. do that at some point? Yeah, of course we can. Yes. Max! Yeah. Oh, Max is getting a makeover. Look at Max, he's a princess now. He's a princess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. He needs to be a lovely princess. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Get your fingers away from that. You're not going anywhere near that car. That's not for Max. No, definitely not. <laughs> he's going to start it up in his unit and he's going to go straight into one of his monster truck wheels and snap something. No, we're looking after that one. That one's not getting broken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see what other toys they have in the shop. What do you reckon? One of those on the skate park, 6S. What do you reckon? One million differential fluid. One million? Oh, Andy's cleaning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Guys, have a look in there. Stop the noise. <laughs> the viewers will not be happy with the noise. Yeah, she is. Oh, wow. Look at the exhaust. Look, that's a proper one, that one. So this thing looks brand spanking new. There's the exhaust system. This thing is super realistic. So video on that soon. And also, some of the guys at the local club are going to be racing these. So maybe I could build one as well. Are you joining in on this race? Yep, and I'm going to beat you Yeah, again. you're joining in? <laughs> What, 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 what? Oh, what? You almost got your spoiler cut. <gasps> there are some other stuff as well and that lot. So next we are off to have a curry, then we're gonna go do some RC racing. And if any of you guys wanna to come to Red Fins, then that is where it is. Come on everyone, grab a weapon. We're late for the curry, then we're gonna be late for racing. Bye. Thank you. Next, quick curry, then off to racing. Here we got all the professionals. That's Tomley there racing that green one. Bit, bit the old vintage. So I'm going to be racing my old car today. So this is my new car that my buddy set up for me. But at the club, look, they've got brand new carpet. It's a lot more grippy and it doesn't go as well anymore. So we're going to try the old one. Got Vinny racing over there. Look at that concentration. <laughs> we racing, Phil? Tamiya BBX, the BB01. So that is that a proper vintage? No, it's brand new. So Re-release? No, it's not a release, it's just a new buggy. Oh really? It looks in a vintage style, yeah. Ah! Oh. You are definitely not a Tamiya fanboy, are you? you know. I'm a little bit Tamiya fanboyish, mount arrays and top forces and stuff. You're not a proper fanboy if you didn't know that that was a BBM. No, no, not that much of a fanboy, no. So first we have the qualifying round and that dictates your starting order in the final. So, so far in qualifying, we made second position. Here we go, final. Let's have a look, see what position we've done. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do, Vinny? Third. There we go, third position. Okay, steady, go. Oh, let those off. Oh, double one ball. 
So this is a fixed pitch helicopter. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. Basically, it means that the blades are stuck in one angle. It, it can't go upside down. If you've got variable pitch, the pitch of the blades can move. So when you're upside down, pitch is the other way around. It can fly upside down. This one can't. Right, battery in. See what happens. How do you make it work? <laughs> Uh, oh. Ah, oh! 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 So that at the moment is fully hands off, look. That's just doing it by itself. Uh, where else have we got? Got speed set in, so we put that into speed set in three. Oh! What? Oh. That wasn't me. Let's try medium speed. Maybe high speed was too much for it. Mitch, want to go? Yeah, please. How do you fly this thing? So this is the first time you've flown a helicopter? Yeah. Coming back. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> Where's he going? I, I think he might be gone. All right, well, that's that one gone. <laughs> Next victim. Oh, somehow Andy has managed to recover it. There it is. Hey. Do you know what? For beginner, you want to learn all the controls that actually works really well. Thank you, Andy. No worries. There you go, Mitchell. Present for you. Thank you very much, Captain. Oh, check out Andy's toy. What you got, mate? MCD XR5 Pro Max. Oh, brand new, ever used? Not yet. Did you paint this? I did, yeah. She looks beautiful. Look at the size of that bad boy. Go on, then, let it rip. <laughs> Lots of moments later. So while Andy's trying to get that running, let's have a look at the next helicopter. This is a four-bladed... Uh, one of them. Turn it on, I believe, like the same as the other one. Press that, and then... I don't know how you arm it. Oh. Here's lock. Okay, unlock. We should put it on the floor. No idea how you take off. What do the buttons do? That's lock. So after lots of faffing about, we finally look at the instructions. Apparently you do this. So you go like this. Oh, we're off. Hey. Oh, that sounds scary. All right, we're off. That's it. Do you want another present? Yeah, please. Yeah. There you go, mate. Thank you very much. This is a bit more scary than the other one. You did well, mate. My first time flying a helicopter, you're doing good. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, they're still up. It's <laughs> definitely a lot angrier. Apparently, you can go upside down, but I don't know how. It sounds like if it hits you, it's going to hurt that one. Oh, 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 That bit. You definitely don't want to throw that one into yourself. That would hurt. <laughs> Game over. What is your son doing? Things. So now you can see what's inside it. So there's a brushless motor there, look. There's a the little servos. Reviewed by Mitchell. What was that? It was fun. There's AS. Very them. proud father. He's very clever. You blew a little boy. What you got, Andy? Kyosho NSR 500. Did you paint that? I did, yeah. Man, that looks wicked. Have you ever ridden one before? No. So what's going to happen? 
uh, crash. You do the steering. Oh, bloody hell, he goes. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to hold it. Um, Am I? Okay. Part. You can hold it on the front, so up a little bit, and then... What, and you, let it go. Can you give it a push, or...? Yeah, go. Right, here we go, ready? Move off! Oh, saw the, a chair hanging out the sky. Never! <laughs> no way! Ready? Yeah. Look at that, now we're finished. Now the sun decides to come out. There we are, on location. So we're gonna run it on the stock tires first to give you a reminder of what they do, and then we're gonna bolt these on and see how they go on them. <laughs> look at look on his face doing that, he's not happy. So driving it like this, this is what eats the tires. Here's a bit of tyre. More tyre. More tyre. More tyre. Yep, tyres, game over. Yep, I think that's time for the solid rubbers. Ready? Boom! See what happens. Oh! What? Steve? <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's a Thunder Tiger rally car. <laughs> it's got less grip than the stock tyres, but it drifts really easy. grip than like proper drift tyres, but less grip than the stocks. What's that smell, Stephen? Uh, that might be a speed controller. Oh no. What have you done? I, I switched it off and it did something really strange. Doesn't smell healthy. No, it doesn't smell very happy, does it? It's, it's, uh... Oh dear. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, why is it pink? <laughs> yeah, that, I don't think that's going to work now. Oh dear, he broke it. <laughs> but what happened? What happened? I, I think the Beck just died. Quite a lot. Let me, um, oh, mate. What are you doing, mate? Being an, uh, yeah, one of them. <laughs> That's not pink now. <laughs> Is that on fire now? Not yet. <laughs> that smells quite bad. Why is it pink? Oh, it's done now, look. It's just oh. taking take the wires off. Well, definitely game over now. Don't try and plug them back in, you fool. <laughs> Why not? Why not throw on my batteries? Ah, uh, what's Mitchell ruining now? Was that cool? <laughs> Brilliant. Well done, mate. Dad's proud. It worked. Yeah, you broke it. Let's see if I do a burnout on these and smoke. Man, 
this is fun. I mean, it doesn't drive any better or any worse. It's different. It's definitely more slidey. Still get all the tire smoke. And ESC's got too warm. Let's have a look at the tire condition. Whoa, look at that. It looks like there's barely anything come off. So we're gonna let it cool down and then I've got some foams to try on it, see what happens. They're probably not gonna last long. I wonder what these are gonna be like for drifting. There you go, got them all on there. And 8 Steve wants to give these a little go. Ooh. Oh, pretty cool. So Steve's gonna have a quick burn about on these. Then once mine cools down, then we're gonna smoke the foams. Steven's go. Pretty much another Steve. Yeah, good. second gear oh dear steven what did you do i pulled that off and i broke the arm but i have another one at home you know what steve it could have been a bit worse it could have been yours yes <laughs> so my infraction's all cooled down now so let's let it rip poor foams bye bye foamies oh it's got whip why no smoke overheated already yeah, it's putting so much load on that speed controller i'll just cut out gotta let it cool down again now oh yeah look chunks are coming out a few moments later <laughs> you know what them foams are actually pretty durable i'm surprised sticky oh what a mess <laughs> and you cigar man <laughs> the last video this happened so the foam came out i've put this giant great big motor into it with loads of horsepower and the stock tractor's tires just could not take it look at that there's only like a millimeter of glue holding it on actually less than a millimeter so i've got these wheels from my armor creighton to try out Oh no, look, the hole's too big on the wheel. And these wheels are a narrower offset. So when you steer, it rubs on the suspension. So M2C Racing has this, a wide axle conversion kit. Now look, we can steer without it rubbing. Let's get the rest of it all on there. Boom, there we go, ready for action. So this car's got a load of upgrades on there to handle the massive power from this giant hobby wing motor. So we've got M2C motor mount, heavy duty bell crank, ESC mount, hinge pins, and chassis stiffener. Then we've got RPM rear hubs, perfect pass servo hidden in there. Also hidden in there is the M2C drive shaft and steel gears. <laughs> Man, that's got some power. It's just wheelie at any speed. You can't do full speed, it's just wheelies. Nailed it! Oh, it's making a funny noise. So he's definitely clicking in there. My motto is, if you're not sure what's clicking, just keep going until it stops moving. Then you know what's, stop, what's causing it. Look at that, I got all the crew in the house. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, that was right actually. What do you reckon that noise is, Diff? Uh, Max reckons it's weird, Diff, so we're going to carry on with it till it stops working, then we'll get it back in the shop and sort it out. Oh, <laughs> where did that go? Oh, did it land on wheels? Jesus, look at Mark. Where? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, the same rip. I think you do that again. <laughs> I reckon I can hit that a bit harder. Oh. Man, this thing is taking a kick in. Body popped off. Let's have a look underneath. What's it look like? Everything's looking good. <laughs> Man, this thing is a beast. Oh, that like front flip. Yeah. I'd get a feel for it first. All right, front flip. MTC tough. That's M2C tough. M2C tough, baby. Oh, oh that diff. All right, guys, this is why front wheel drive sucks. Back to the shop and back in action. But before that, let's have a look to see what the crew have brought with them. Then we'll take the car back to the shop, sort it out, and then take it out again. So this is a Banggood special that keeps coming back. Oh, that's Stevens X Max. Mitchell with that is dangerous. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Backflip. Hey, oh. SM4S oh, yeah. going nuts. I'm surprised the beating is taking. <laughs> oh! That's <laughs> taking it. Oh, Lipo's out. Lipo's out. Oh, let's turn it off. Like a proud father. <laughs> Where's Tiny been recently? I, I think he's over there. Front end exploded. It's <laughs> just a body shot mainly. Bro! Uh, on the bumper. Here we are, on location. <laughs> oh! Oh, what happened there? <laughs> oh, what? It's still clicking. Oh, man, that's got to be the front diff now. Oh, rear diff. Fix now, front diff. <laughs> Oh. oh, I wasn't hungry, Kev. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I got myself. Man, these tyres are nasty. So here we got the log of doom. We just got to make sure that we don't hit this thing. If we hit that, it's instant death. Nice. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if that's a centre diff doing that noise. So the only way that I know to find out how we can find what the damage is, is just to keep going flat out until it fully gives up the ghost. And then hopefully, when we take it apart, we'll know what's up with it. Ready? Okay. Full, full power. Oh. oh I reckon it's that little input gear. I reckon it's got to be sent to diff. <laughs> oh! It's so oh yeah! Why is it smoking? Oh, that happened to yours, didn't it? Yeah, that just melted everything. Got to be sent to diff, I reckon. <laughs> oh, oh. Jesus, dude! <laughs> I thought you was over there! Bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> He's trying to kill me! He's <laughs> smoking now. We are off to Fam Jam, one of the best RC events that I've ever been to. They've got massive jumps, they've got a crawler track, they've got race track, they've got basher tracks, they've got a drift track, and this year they've made it even better. Here we go, we have arrived. Here we go, like we got crew, crew over there, more crew over there. Here we are on location, we've got the first bit, the sky jump. Hopefully it's going to survive, if not, we've got the new chassis and everything to put on it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> got here in the house, we got mate? 
It's about to have uh, broken already. It's broken already? Yeah. What's broke? The steering link. Check out the size of this monstrosity. Yeah, here we go, it's great in the way, flat out. Going, look. That sounds nasty. Next up, we'll try the smaller one. Oh, ah, buddy, off. Let's try a front flip. That's where it's going to go wrong. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> straight on the back. I think that's had it. Oh, look. Right, Marpo's out, that's out. Uh -oh, guys. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and bro. All right, Oh, that's broken. So that was a forward flip. What about a back flip here? What about a double back flip? Let's have a try. Oh, what? Back in the way. Sent a disc blown out, I reckon. Yeah, so he's gone. Can't it? Oh! The whole thing's turning and nothing's turning there. <laughs> oh! Look, the pin, see that pin there? It just come out and it puts all the drive to the rear. All right, we might fix that later, but next victim. To the moon. Oh! Still going? Yep. Whose is that? Is that yours? What are you going to do with it? To the moon? To the moon! Oh! Ah! Here comes the mama! <laughs> oh dear, it's not looking good. A minute ago, sun was out, blazing hot. Now it's raining. Next, we're going to rip this thing here. I can't see nothing. Yeah, that's my one, that one, mate. You not having a race? I'll race. Yeah, go on in, line them up. Crayton, we got, God knows what they are, but they're things. XRT over there as well. Ready, steady, go, 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 go. Oh, we have the lead. We got the lead so far. We're a little bit top heavy with this, so we've got to drive it scale, but we're in the lead so far. Oh. Oh, we got the XRT closing in. Can the lossy get the win? Here we go, over the line. Nice. <laughs> Here's Noah's rally car on the rally track. Here we got the soft car RC boys. Soft car? <laughs> Where have you been hiding? Oh, here, there, everywhere. So what are you doing here? What's, what's going on? We've got some toys to play with. Oh, so you've got, oh, these are looking flash. So what's this one here, Lossy 5T? Yep. And this one's a 30 degree north? No, both Lossy no? 5Ts. Two Lossy 5Ts. Oh, yeah. oh. Hello there, are they going to the moon? No. No? No. That one there has got to go off of. Look. Look at the beautiful body by Basher Skins. Oh, look at that. It's got a Taylor 50 in there. Is it a 50? 40. 40. GT. And that's got an OBR in it. Oh, and that, one, that one's a lightweight one. Yeah. Yeah, so that one can definitely go off the ramp. No. 
We'll see you about it in a minute. Are you, you going to foot we'll the bill? We'll try and persuade him. <laughs> <laughs> you're loaded. You're a bank manager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What the hell was that? Let's investigate. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Look. Oh. 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 Soft core. <laughs> 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 it legit looks like I've weed myself. <laughs> you got excited. <laughs> what happened? What was it? What is it? Oh, it's rocket car. Oh. So we just had a rocket on the back of it. It was a bit of a fail. So that was one rocket. That was one rocket. So this time, we're going to go for three and we're going to try it at the base of the ramp. Yes. To the moon! Hey, come to boss, health and safety. Oh, yes. <laughs> How you doing, mate? Good, man. Good. Now we've got Team Hardcore over there. They said they're not going to jump it off the big ramp, but I reckon a bit of persuasion by all the viewers, I reckon we can. So he's going to light that, and he's going to go to the moon! Hopefully, anyway, he might not. I don't know how close it's safe. I don't know where to stand. Not here. There we've got the driver. If anybody dies, that's who you send the invoice to. Well, that was an anti-climax. What's happened? I don't know. That should have worked. Oh, David's come over to have a look at his jump. Attempt number two coming up. Three, two, one. To the moon! <laughs> what happened? Elon, no Elon, nothing. Elon Musk. Absolutely nothing. Elon Musk's fault. <laughs> you ready for the first jump? Yes! yes. <laughs> big one, I'll pay for the damage. Go! Go, go! Oh, Fred! Here we go, attempt number probably four. I like that, I reckon. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need 10 rockets on there. <laughs> Next up, we're going to have a little crawler challenge. Here we've got the crawlers. So Max has got this TRX4 here, fully brassed up, loads of weight down low, really low center of gravity. Next up, we've got the RGT that you saw earlier. <laughs> We got racket. We got this jalopy. So over here, what we got? We got a custom Revo. Right, so this is nitro. We all know nitros are absolute pain in the butt, but not anymore. Come on, Clay, how do you do it? That button. Oh. That's what you need. None of this getting blisters. That is how it's working. For some reason, this one goes forward, but you try and go backwards. Doesn't want to. So you go in, you can drive that one. Reverse doesn't work properly. Oh, of course. He's setting you up yeah, for course, failure. Yes. If you know how to set up reverse, be my guest, set reverse. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Here is the start line. I got a DJ over there, so I'm probably gonna get copyrighted. So a lot of this video is probably gonna be no audio and just a little bit of my music. All right, here we go. Oh, so Max couldn't make it up that thing without a hand of God. We were the RGT to it without a hand of God. We're trying to do it one-handed here, so a bit of a disadvantage. Excuses, excuses. Ah. Oh. Right. Ah. Oh. So everything on here is struggling. Oh, 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 oh. I would have made it, but someone left the controller there. Hey! <laughs> Go on, you can do it. All right, there we go. Can the Red Fin Special do it? Hello mate! Up there we go, right cool. This here should now work with the dig function. So really tight bend, so you put it into dig. I've never done this before, so no idea 
But what you're supposed to do is drag the front round like that, which it isn't really. There we go. And then you turn dig off, put it back in the four wheel drive. Right, so now we want the back end, well, we want the front end to slide over. So if I'm doing it wrong, let me know in the comments. I probably am doing it wrong. Right, so, oh, so there you go, so that's slid the front end over. Right, so now you put it back onto four wheel drive. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. Look at that in here, they've got a little mini crawler track. So here we've got Paul, long time subscriber. Yeah. So what car you got, mate? It's an SCX10. So you made this out of biscuit tins? Yeah, it's all soldered together and all this damage is from driving it. Well, go on then, give us a bit of action. Man, this thing looks absolutely epic. What do you reckon? Should we do an Andy the Andy version? So this beast here is actually made from two tracks of TRX 4s. But just check out our capabilities. That is surprisingly capable. So what is it? Two TRX 4s? So TRX 4, TRX 4. Back to back, you know. Dog, hello dog. <laughs> Can a dog ride it? Sit. <laughs> Wow, that thing is so capable, it goes everywhere. How is it so capable? Literally, you sausage everything and it makes it 10 times better. Oh, servo. <laughs> We've got a crawler on a crawler. There you go, proof. All you got to do is sausage everything. So we had a little play on the drift track and then they got a monster truck competition. So Ian can use my LMT. We got the HBI. We got all these competitors lined up over there. More over there. Clod Buster Bigfoot. Isn't that nice? Is that yours? Good man. <laughs> nice, nice. Hello. 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 All right, here we go. We got the wheelie king going. Oh! It's not sounding too healthy. <laughs> Poor dips. There you go, backflip. I oh, don't no, maybe not. <laughs> Game over. Everyone's being kind. Don't like, kill it. Whoa. Oh, 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 he sliced it. Oh, no. Game over. Ian with a grave digger. This has got all the trill axles on there. Aluminium wheels. Don't bend the wheels. I So then to end the day, the heavens opened. Massive thank you to Polly Hapes and MHAP for putting on an epic RC event. Apparently, this giant radio controlled speedboat can do 120 mile an hour just by changing the propellers. In the last video, we did about 50 mile an hour and it turned into a submarine. Oh, oh, she's gone. That's gone. That's gone. Oh, 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 How did he come back? I don't know. But with these special propellers, we should be able to get 120. Maybe. Let's find out. So the new propellers are a lot bigger. They've been specially polished and balanced, and they're about $200. Let's get him on there. And then we'll take it out for a rip and see how fast it can go. Yes. This boat's got twin brushless motor, and it runs on 12S lipos. More S means more power.
So here we can really see the size difference. Boom! Nearly ready to go. All we've got to do now is do a couple of adjustments on the inside. So the servo that does the steering is not waterproof. So here we've got a perfect pass servo that is. This thing's metal cased, metal geared, 56 kilos of torque. I use these servos in most of my RC cars nowadays. In crawlers, x maxes and the Project World's fastest RC car. And oh, if you're wondering what happened with this boat, we had it out the other day. We had Stemp on the case. Stemp had a go and it all went wrong. So we're going to fix it. That's going to be back out again in a future video. Anyway, let's get him in there. Boom! Also put a bit of a glove over the receiver to keep the water out. So just to test it out, I'm running this on 6S. But we're going to be running it on 12S. Double the power. Right, let's go. We're off to a lake. We've got Max in the house. Hello. All right, here we go. See what this bad boy's going to do. GPS on. Here we go. Let's see if we could do 120 miles per hour. Oh, Whoa. oh no. It's upside down. Oh, maybe you got to accelerate slowly. I'll just give it a bit too much. Luckily, we got these jet ski guys. Are you sure this is already? Sorry. That can't be right. It can be right. Massive thanks to the guys on the jet skis for rescuing the RC boats. Right, here we go. We can't see it. Oh, what? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's the recovery team. Oh man, lucky we got the recovery team. Not driving it correctly. Oh, how do you do it right? Do you want to go? Yeah, I do. I'm in control now. All right, Max is go. I wonder if this will do a standing backflip. Probably, just run up slowly, dude. Oh. Well, that's part of it. Oh, it can't be much left of that. Oh, dude. What's your expert opinion? <laughs> oh, dude, let's have a look at it. Oh, man. Oh, this is as well. Oh. It could be worse. It could be mine. You did it. Is this a bit important? Uh, kind of. Oh, where's the other one? <laughs> where's the other lipo? Oh, my God. I was in there, the other oh, lipo. completely shattered to pieces. Oh, that's game over. All the... Get the lipo out, make that safe. <laughs> Dude, that was my pride and joy. Look at that, look. What the, the steering's f off. See anything like it? It didn't work. Oh, I didn't even get the next speed. One. There we go, next victim. Try and stamp your submarine it. That's it, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So this boat's got self-writing. It's not the quickest on 3S, but it can take 4S. We we'll might try that in a future video. Oh, Max has ruined it. He's got it in the weeds. Max to the rescue. <laughs> so we're gonna, so here we've got an extra 300, one of the world's best stunt planes. And here we've got Mark Jeffries, one of the world's best stunt pilots. It's going to take me for a little spin. It's going to be more than a spin, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> what have I let myself in for? So, Mark, can you explain a little bit about the G-forces and what happens at the different well, you, different levels? You said you were going for a spin, so uh, we can pull a bit of G as well. Oh, OK. Yeah, so when you pull G, uh, all the blood in your brain and so on and your chest rushes to your legs and that. Right. So once the blood has gone from your brain, you ain't got oxygen in your brain you pass out. And typically, you'll pass out at four and a half G. This airplane's rated up to eight G with two people in it. Uh, so I can easily easily get you up to seven, no problem. Sorry, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark's gonna be flying this from the back and there's all this equipment. Well, I've got no idea what it is. I'm gonna be sitting in there. I've got GoPro there to get my face reaction. Here you are, let me give you a parachute. Oh, oh God. Just in case. I'm <laughs> gonna need that. <laughs> Mark, I'm, maybe, scared, I'm maybe. scared of heights, you know. You're not gonna go too high, are you? <laughs> Very high. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I've got to do it. There you go. It's nice to know you. Get that on your bag. I've never it's used one of these. <laughs> right, what, you just pull a string and that's it? Like the best? Pull the string and that's it. 
That is the D handle. Uh, well, so you, you just pull it. Yeah, what you'd All do, right. you would. I'll jettison the canopy so it's now very windy. Yeah. You might. If you would, why would you parachute? Mid air collision. If you. Um, well, it could be with a bird and you can't see, for example, so you yeah. can't land, so you'd jump out. Yeah. And you'd have to know where your D handle is. So hand across your chest, quickly. And, and which way you just jump? It. Yeah, that's it. So, in the case of this aeroplane, you would uh, stand on the seat and then aim, dive for, aim to hit here, but you wouldn't because you'd get into the hole here because of the wind. So, you're not going to smash into that bit? No. If you jump out, aiming to hit here, Right. You'd definitely miss the tail. Which way would you go? Over straight it. down. Oh, you just go down? Yeah, that's it. Straight down. Oh dear. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so how are you feeling right now? I'm excited at the moment. Yeah, how are you feeling? Uh, at the moment, Anxious. pretty good. good. How tight are you supposed to put yourself in there? Like as tight as it will go? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Almost. Not on your shoulders, so. though. Get yourself sat down. It can't be worse than a roller coaster, can it? Much worse. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't like roller coasters. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, that one, that one, and then that one there. Good, there. good hard tug. Yeah. Good hard tug. I can't, can't move it. <laughs> it's not moving. <laughs> it will. <laughs> that is not moving. Of course it is. How come I've just done this side? <laughs> I can't move it. I'm not, give out, give out I'm, I'm not going to bend down there. It's on tape. I'm, I'm not going to look like I'm giving you a blowjob or something. <laughs> hey, it's not moving. There's something wrong with that. Right. Do you get ball squashes in there or is it all right? Just get the tackle up. Conveniently arranged. <laughs> <laughs> so Knobs in a funny position. <laughs> you feeling like right now? Ah. Oh. I've got no idea what to expect. He did just say you can put you to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm all mad. We'll see you up there, so. What are you? A weed. <laughs> Don't touch the controls. No, I've got to keep my feet away from all the controls. So here's my view. You've got the GoPro there to get my awful reaction. Where he passes out. Now what do you want to do? Uh, can I tell, <laughs> tell you me. on here when we're, when we're in action? Yeah. So I just do to give me like a mild first, then I can say more or less. Hopefully more. Didn't you say you want to go vertically up and let yeah, it drop out? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that sounds quite fun, doesn't it? Just vertical up and a prop hanging and a tail slide. That sounds that sounds like the best to me. Do you want to actually get have the controls yourself and have a go? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. Uh -huh, good. Can I do a loop? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a loop and talk you through it. And okay. You you do exactly the same. Um, yeah. I take it like a quick burst of cheese, no, all right, but when you hold it for a while is when it makes you go. So uh, anybody can stand any amount of cheese. Yeah. It's a high cheese sustain. <laughs> you really for this? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know what to expect. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to shut the lid if Max, you can uh, walk. Nice to know you, by the way. Okay. <laughs> right. All right, here we go. Boost pump. Okay, clear prop. Nobody about. Mark is asking me how extreme I want to go. Plug, plug me up to it and then I'll let you know.
going to start off with some mild loops and holes, and then we're going to get a bit more extreme later on. I've got, I've got the whole shot. I can get the whole thing. It's so hard to keep it in line. Yeah, that's Kev gone to sleep. <laughs> off with a nice smooth loop and next we go into a stall turn. This is all still really mild, we're going to spice it up in a minute. Oh, they're doing the prop hang thing or whatever it was. Now they've dropped. The camera just does not do this justice. This makes the wildest roller coaster. I just feel like a child's toy. And now it's about to get even more hairy. Hold on. but I actually had full control of the plane. At the time, I thought that Mark was kind of helping me out with it and I was just sort of doing it a little bit, but apparently I was doing all of it. And now with the basics out of the way, I was allowed to try a loop. First one not too shabby, Mark let me do another one. Next up with Mark back at the controls, we do a tail slide. You literally point it vertical up into the sky, keep going up, 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 up then turn the engine onto idle and let the plane fall out of the sky backwards. That is a weird sensation. Whoa! <laughs> and here you can see what it looks like from my perspective. We are coming back into land.
that was brilliant. That was amazing. It looked it, it looked incredible from I'll up tell there. You what, I got a bit dizzy a couple of times. Yeah. But oh my god, it just feels so good. You're literally up there doing wildy wildy things. I want exactly. one. I want one. That looked like a lot of fun. Oh yeah. man, that's crazy. That's the time you feeling, Kim. Uh, all right at the moment. He was okay all the time. He was shouting for more, so I just had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, that was brilliant. Get yeah, those lessons booked in. Yeah, you have to book them in, man. So when you let me do that loop, was that fully me doing it? Totally. You did two loops on your own. Really? The whole lot was on my own? Totally. You soon picked up getting the level flight. But anyway, guys, Mark's got a YouTube channel and an Instagram account as well. Have you got any other social medias? Twitter. No, no. Yeah, X now, yeah. So I'm going to put a link down below to all the stuff that Mark does. He does some crazy stuff. What he did for me there, was that still fairly mild? Oh, there's an awful lot more to go, yeah. Yeah. That was only less than one. I was only less than one, oh, God. <laughs> now, check out Mark's channel. I've got a link to all of those down below. I appreciate you, Mark. That was brilliant. Thank you. Really Thank enjoyed you. it. Pleasure. <laughs> Cheers. Pleasure. I'm still buzzing. That's nuts. Any of you guys get the experience of going one of those, you, you have to do it. It's just wild. It's mad. You can see why these guys all get addicted to it. Okay, what's happening? I'm not getting in there. It doesn't look like it's right. So there we got a gyrocopter. It looks like a helicopter, but it's not a helicopter. What's the difference? It's a gyrocopter. The rotor isn't powered. So that isn't powered. No. That just spins by the, the Air wind. Flow on the underside of the rotor. I wasn't told that. Max is going to go in it. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All good. Good luck. See you later, boys. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think I'd get in that. I mean, it just doesn't look like it should fly. What happened? Mucho bellio. Oh, Two big fatties on, on the conditions today. He's not getting off <laughs> the You've got going in it now. No, no. So this is the plane here that you learn to fly in. I've actually just booked some lessons to learn to fly, which is like in a few days time. Yes. They've offered me to have a little go in that now, so let's go. Got Tom, Tom's been on the channel before. Yeah, guys. So Jules is taking us out in this one today to let me know what I'm letting myself in for. <laughs> So this is a much slower and much smoother flying experience, perfect for learning to fly in and having a look around at the scenery. So this is the plane that I'm going to be learning to fly in, then later on we're going to work ourselves up to the stunt plane. Here we go, it's coming into land. controlled mud truck and today we're gonna to hit the skate park <laughs> So just a quick recap, this is my Primal Mega Mud Truck, it normally runs on these tyres here, that's what we're starting out with, then later on we're going to put the big monster truck tyres on, give it another blast. This is the world's biggest RC car, but with these tyres it makes it a little bit more nimble. This thing has been fitted with a high output engine to give it more horsepower. And just like on a real monster truck, we've got solid live axles, four link suspension, pinion disc brakes, engine and transmission in the middle, it's all exactly the same just like on the real monster truck. And these are just the small tires for transporting it. These are the big boys for when we're using it. Yeah. Max, what are you doing? Put a timer on. What, a timer for what? To see how quickly you can break it this time. Oh, so how long do you reckon can last? Uh, I reckon, give it four minutes. How long do you reckon can last? I think all day. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
so much fun. I'm going to need to get them out more often. Max, you got to get one. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> so far? 4 minutes 11 seconds. <laughs> now it's going to be like 1 minute. But you reckon it's got 1 minute? No, we've got another 5 minutes left in it yet. <laughs> These trucks are absolutely amazing. It is my favourite all-time RC car. Flip! <laughs> drive to the front. I think what happened when I landed that backflip, I landed on power and it's blown out the front diff. Burn out! <laughs> Here we go, flat out jump to the moon! Man, this shock setup is working perfectly. This is absorbing everything. What a but we have blown out the front diff so we're going to get it back to the shop in a little while and fix it Even though these trucks are quite expensive to buy, when you do break them, it's usually just really small, cheap, sacrificial parts. Here we go, flat out to the moon! The size and weight of these trucks, it's mad the amount of abuse they can take. And oops, the prop shaft fell off. So here we've got a Traxxas TRX-6 and sometimes they're more capable than a competition crawler. But Finley over here has made it even more capable. What have you done to yours? I have made mine into a fully capable four-wheel steering 8x8. So in this video, Jason and Finley are going to help me build one myself. Then we're going to take it out for a rip and just see how capable it is compared to these competition rigs. So doing these conversions is actually really tricky. 
let's have a look. So front axle, normal. Then we go to this axle and it kind of has to go through into the other one. And then kind of through into the other one and then onto the back. So being a six by six, you'd think you just add another one, but it's not quite so easy, is it? No, unfortunately, and also we brought the second axle forward quite a bit, otherwise there was still that massive gap between the front and second. So is one of these is like a China axle, isn't it? Yeah, the, the rear one has got a reverse diff in it, because we need a reverse rotation, but we still needed the hangers on top. We've got a hobby wing axe in there. We've had to get an extra lot of diff lock cables so we can diff lock the extra axle. So rear steer, front steer, this thing's going to be super capable. Oh, what is that? My weathered SnowRunner styly. That looks absolutely epic this is a Traxxas trx6 as well but with a different body on it so here's my one go on finley crack him open let's do it open well to keep the viewers from getting bored do it like turbo unboxing as quick as possible see how quick we can get it open come on faster faster who cares about this time hold on hold on oh my can we just there we go yeah <laughs> six by six eight by eight so standard six by six eight by i think every axle has actually moved so it's gonna be quite a conversion i would not have a clue where to start should we do it, Let's do it. so first of all we're gonna start stripping some parts off so the fuel tank things and the bed Whoa, 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 whoa. Get, nice. get, 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 get. Do we need the wires? Uh, I mean, if, you, if you want lights, then yes. So Andy is taking out the stock power system. Yes, right in the New power system. Come on, faster, 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 faster. Come, how quick can you get it out? Quick, 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 quick. Running out of fuel. Okay. You just take that. Oh, give it here. Method, but, um, it's, it's, it's not ready for shaking. No, <laughs> no not ready. No, okay. Hey, we're off. So we've got to go in there and just chop it out. So while these lot are being technical, let's have a little look around Redfin models. You doing your homework? Bit, yeah. There's Finley's homework station down there. We've got loads of wheels and tyres. All the Tamiya kits up here. By the way, if you see anything cool in here that you want to see on the channel, let me know in the comments and then we might buy it and do a video on it. More Tamiya's trucks, all the aeroplanes down here. So up here, Jason's got a model aircraft. Same one that I went out in the other day when Mark Jeffrey took me out. Can I buy it? Oh, that's a no. <laughs> We've got steering, normal steering, and then you've got rear steering, cab steering, and then you've got turn on the spot, your truck steering. After that, you've got your two speed, so you've got gear one and then gear two, cycle back to gear one. Front diff lock, and that's to lock the rear diff. So, normal steering is going to turn the circle, then pull the bits open, and an 8x8, and the side. It's still not massively bad, really. And now hit that rear steer. Oh man, that is a tight steering circle. That is probably just as tight as a stock TRX4. Oh, reckon we got to take it out in the wheel well somewhere. Definitely. Here we are on location. We've got crew in the house. Hello. So we have normal TRX4. It's Andy's. We've got competition crawler. This one here is Connor's. Yes, we've got some stuff going on with that. We've got my one, Finley's one. We've got Jason's competition one and Jason's six by six there as well. And whatever that is. HPI Venture. There we go. In a minute, we're gonna see the capabilities. He's got a 3D printed boat. So this one's a jet boat, isn't it? Yeah, man. And luckily, we have water. Well, we're going to have to use the hauler to get it in the water. Looks like it's not. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> no! Hey! 
Yeah, recovery. So this whole thing here is 3D printed, yeah? Yes. Look at the size of the motor compared to the boat. That's mad. That's a jet boat, look. It goes in there. And it comes out there. Oh, really? You are so Perfect. mean. You are so mean. <laughs> I know what you're doing. It's broken. It's got a crack yeah. in it. <laughs> Challenge number one. We've got a hill here and let's see who can get all the way to the top. So that is Max there driving my TRX4. Oh, this is actually the first corner that I've ever had on the channel. And he's made it all the way up. Nice. Connor next with the competition rig. Easy. Over there. We've got some really steep cliffs and it's going to get harder. Oh. Double here we go with the 8x8. Eight eight. Oh, hold on. We need to do diff locks. Diff lock. Diff lock. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, the next challenge is over there. Okay. Yeah. So what's the challenge? It's quite steep, though it's... Uh... Oh, oh. I haven't got any diff locks in yet. It's all open. No diff locks. Look over there, we got mountains and they're vertical. Competition crawler versus an 8x8 steering lock. So I'm going to go into full steering lock. Oh, look at that. That 8x8's got a tighter turning circle than the competition rig. <laughs> we need to keep on going forwards to go to that mountain. All right, hold on, one more jump. Oh! Landed! Step back. Yeah, it is vertical. That is actually death. Look at all that steepness. So up here, we have the next challenge. Camera does not do it justice how steep some of this stuff is. So diff locks all in, low range. Got the TRX4 doing it. Oh, we've got Jason's TRX6. We've got my 8x8 going up there. And we've got Finley's 8x8 there. And you can see young Max going up the hill gives you some idea how steep it is. TRX4's making it actually. Oh, TRX4's done it. So are you going to give it a go with that one? Uh, you can't fail if you like. It's going to happen, I think. We'll try. Oh, no. oh dude. Max, Max, Max. Dude. Max. Really? I don't know how. <laughs> really? And young Max crashes the TRX4. <laughs> oh, Connor's making it up. And he's done it. We have a slight problem that this axle here keeps coming unlocked. Wait, is it these ones unlocked? Yeah, all the other ones are locked, but that one car. keeps coming unlocked. I think it's a bit weedy that server, hasn't got enough torque. So these hills are getting progressively steeper. We still haven't got to the steepest one, which is over here. We've got an intermediate one here now. We've got Jason here with his TRX6. And the challenge on this one is to see who can get the furthest or even make it at all. Oh, oh no! Oh! Oh, that's quite smooth. Is the 8x8 going to do it better? I think that's it, man. That's it for the 6x6. 8x8 next. This is Finley's one. Exactly the same as my one. That's about the same spot that Jason got to with a 6x6. Come on, 8x8, you can do it. Oh, 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 here comes Andy's. Oh. Here we go, Finn is going for it now, more power. Oh yes, he's making progress. Come on, keep momentum going. And that's it. Oh, dude. Dude. <laughs> oh, Finn is getting higher. Oh, whoa, 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 look at that. He could make the whole thing. 
reckon that's it. But he's nearly made it. So that's the closest yet. Here's Connor with the competition rig. What, how are you feeling? Not great. It'll be fine, you're not in it. How far can he make it? So that is as far as Jason got with a six by six. That is as far as Finley got with the eight by eight. Oh, so he's actually beat the six by six. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Very good. Next up, Jason's competition crawler. So this motor on axle, so there's not really a gearbox inside. It's got the motor directly on the axle. Is that about as far as Connor got? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> so HBI Venture coming. Knob. Knob, 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 knob. Oh, 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 oh. It's fine. TLX4 next. Right, that's it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Kev Cern trying to get up the slope with his 8x8. Here we go. Blast out. Right up there. Again. Yes! 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 Oh, no, 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 don't move. Oh, tumble wumble. So I think that was a win for my one. Right, next hill, even steeper. So here is the impossible hill. Jason calls it the nose because of that. The schnozzle. Apparently no one's ever made it up there, so we're going to give it a go anyway. At the moment, oh, Connor and Jason have been fixing this because <laughs> the diff lock keeps failing. So we made the highest up that last hill with the diff locks off. So now with the diff locks on, it should be even better. So that's how far Connor's already made it. So Steve trying first. Oh, sh <laughs> Still going? Yeah, yeah. See where that big rock sticks out in the middle? Yeah. You go to the right, round that, and to the left. Big rock. No way. No way. If you stood close to the top, you'd see. Kev's now standing up the top. Catch it! Oh, got away with that one. Oh, Jason now with his one. So this is Jason's stock TRX6 with just a body change. Oh, oh. Oh. Can you do it? Can you do it? Oh, I think he's done it. I think he's done it. So it's not always about more power. No, this top part is very technical. I think you've pretty much done it, haven't you? I think you've pretty much done it. I'm not having that. <laughs> he's done it. Oh, he's done it. Nice. <sighs> Well done, mate. All right, Jason's gonna have a go. So now that Jason's got his six by six up to the top, he's now gonna try and see if he can get my eight by eight up to the top. Jason's got skills. If how steep this is. Oh, 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 has he done it? I think he's done the hardest bit. Oh, that diff's come unlocked again. Oh, man. Oh, that diff's come unlocked. 
Oh, and he's doing it. Look at that. We've unlocked ifs. Look at that, he's done it. So these two here made it all the way up. Connor made it halfway up and broke it. We've got one competition crawler left. Let's see how far that one's going to make it up. We got it. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Can competition crawler do it? That hill is now the benchmark of how good a crawler is so far. TOX6 is the only thing that's ever made it up there. <laughs> oh no! Oh, 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 oh. You okay? You took It went that way, that way, that way, leg and wheel off. Look at that, they both made it up the steepest hill and they're recovering all the victims. Hauler, another hauler, hauling that. Will it work? Yes. And now for the staircase of doom. So not many cars can make it down here alive. Can the TRX6 hauler do it? Oh, look at that, we've got control. Oh, look at like that, that is just too easy. What? Look at that, this is no drama at all. Next up, can we do it with a load? A lot more sketchy, but it's doing it. This time round, we've got the rear steering on, so I want to see if we can make it round the bend. Come on, Raminator, out the way. Come on, can you do it? Can you do it? Oh, look at that, it's done it. What a beast. So massive thanks to Jason for doing this conversion for me. There's going to be a whole load of people that are going to say in the comments, can you do me one? So, well, this is where you can come. Uh, but if someone else wants one, how are they going to go about it? Um, it it's a very long-winded project, so we can help you. and We'll advise you on various bits that you need and whatnot. Um, but yeah, some of the bits aren't even available in the UK. But yeah, we'll basically help you and advise you. So no definitive guide? No, I'm so sorry. So you can come in, you can take measurements, point you in the right direction, but it's not a turnkey kit. I wish I had time, I'm so sorry, but I can definitely help you. There's one of these lives here and you can come and look at it for your heart's content, take notes, take videos, whatever you want, and uh, bring a vernier calipers and we'll try and advise you on all the bits required. But, um, but you're yeah. gonna need probably one of those. We're going through that stuff. We're going through that stuff. We took a complete TRX roll apart. We took bits off the wall. We took just random bits laying around. Not for the faint hearted. You've got to be like a, a, a modeler really, haven't you? Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of tapping and drilling and cutting. Anyway, if you want to see this epic shot and see the epic people, that is where you got to come. So Jason's got this RC boat here. What is it? It's called a Dumas Swamp Buggy. It's got a supercharged engine, nitro powered. So Jason's got to run it in and then we're going to take it out for a rip. I've also got some toys. So I've got this jet boat here, 6S LiPo, stupid amounts of power. It's built for bashing. We've got this lake here to try it out on. Got Andy in the house. Hello. Andy's got this thing here, which is also a jet boat, but 3D printed. You might have seen that in one of the previous videos. Oh, what's going on there? You got Finley in the house? What you got, mate? I've got my more, right? Oh dear. Hopefully, none of our boats are going to end up out there and we can't get to them, but we'll see about that a bit later. So Jason is still running in this engine, so while he's messing about with that, I'm going to go and have a little play with my jet boat. A bloody racket over there. Can't make video here. <laughs> what we got then, Kev? You got me jet boat. Throw it in, Finn. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Is that upside down in the tree? Oh no! It's supposed to sound right or what? I think it's because it's in the tree. Look. There you go. Reverse. 
Right. Oh, we got it. We got it. Yes. She's out. And the bilge pump's working. When it goes upside down, it purposely lets water in, and then it goes round. Okay. And then it pumps it back out. Oh. Should we see if we can make it up there? Yeah. How far do you reckon it will go? I think you're going to get sort of halfway over here. Here we go, flat out. <laughs> Bit further than I thought. Wow. Wait, watch this. Oh my god! <laughs> what happened? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it just soaked my bag. <laughs> Unbelievable. Maiden for Jason then. Oh! Do many pushings. Have we got to do a recovery process? Recovery. We got to do a recovery. There you go. Perfect. Well done, Finn. Boom. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you hungry? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. 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 Not my person. Oh, no. Not person. Not person. Oh, person. Oh no. Where's the Lego man gone? No. Wait, he's floating over there somewhere. They dead, he's drowned now. Stempy submarine? Definitely. Oh! Oh, there, go. Oh, no, he's been soaked. Finley having a go on the old jet boat? You like it? Yeah. <laughs> when you get to something and you want to steer, you've got to floor it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Andy's in action now. Andy's one is fully 3D printed. Oh, look at something, mate. Line him up. Ready, steady, go, 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 go. Oh. Oh, dude! Dude! Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you. I mean, I'm returning here. I'm returning <laughs> yeah, right. I'll give you that one. Whoa! Go. Oh, no. Go. Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, no! Andy's Nice! Andy, did we wee? Oh, <laughs> Have you fun, Jason? Oh, oh man, a bit wet. You, you, no, he wet, is. Man. A bit wet? I am. Oh, yeah. oh. wet? <laughs> You've been swimming? Clearly, it seems like it. Will it go directly down into the water? What, are you going to go for vertical? Vertical downwards. Okay. Oh, you want to go for hand launch? Yeah. <laughs> I think you've got to go more vertical in. Lucky there's no propeller on there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's Menu. Is it? It's got a bilge pump, pump it all out. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, these guys can make it go faster. Um, Level off the drive a bit. So this little snozzle here, if right. you make that go down... That's supposed to make it go a bit faster. Oh yeah, yeah? of course it will. Look at that! Well, it's much quicker, isn't it? Look at that, look! 
Parked it. So now with the new schnozzle angle, let's see how it submarines. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a bit closer to the action, Andy. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no old sprinkler system. Oh, <laughs> Headshot. It goes down again. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to do 109 mile an hour. But that one's going to be a different video. <laughs> Look what Finley did to me. Have you not been swimming? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? So apparently, this thing there works on grass as well. <laughs> so, what you got there, Finley? I've got my Schwimmbad on. So, this thing is supposed to be amphibious? Yes, it is. Really? Yes. And what and what does this do? That comes down? Yep, that folds down. <laughs> Look at that. Can you get it back? Yeah, of course I can. Boom. So if you want to know where you can get one of these from and where you can get one of these from, where can they get that one from, Finley? They can get that from that one from Redfin Models. And this one from Thrasher. So Finley's little boat, this one actually did really well today. So where, where can people get that one from? This one from Redfin Models as well. It's water cold, almost no water in there. And this that was FTX as well. Pretty cool. So this is Andy's boat and this thing is entirely 3D printed. So where can I get that one from? You buy a 3D printer. <laughs> there you go, get a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> Here we got the Primal Monster Truck, the world's biggest RC car. Last video we had the small tyres on it. This video we've got the big tyres and we've got a brand new skate park that we've never been to before. Right, let it rip! <laughs> That means this has got a lot more power than the stock one. <laughs> Is. A bit later, we'll carry on around here first because if we miss and it smashes into that, it'll be bad. And we are parked all the way over there, look. And I didn't want to carry it back to the car. <laughs> that is loving it. That suspension is working so good. So in a minute, we're going to start jumping this truck a lot higher and stay towards the end of the video. It all goes completely wrong. <laughs> I wanted to go for a backflip there, but I don't think he's got it in it. Let's just try somewhere else. No. Oh! I reckon that one it might do it. That one there's got a possibility. The trouble is, if it goes wrong and doesn't make it all the way, it's going to land upside down. That's really bad. I've also, I've got to really try not to go throttle to pull it round when it lands. Because if you're on power and land, you blow the diffs out. Max's challenge, flat out across there, hit this, and if it's Max's idea, it's gonna break, in it? This is gonna be flat out. Ready? Mm 
Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my god, I thought that bench was gonna get it! You gotta do that again, that was so cool. Again? Again, yeah. Alright, one more, one more. And that thing is taking a beating! So this time let's try a different one. Full speed across there, through here, full speed into that. Oh, oh my god! Literally land under it! I think I've got to do it again, but I hit it sort of here, so I'm going to aim for more of this part here. Stick around because we've got bigger jumps coming up in this video. Right, backflip attempt number no idea. Done a rod end. I've got no spares on me, so back to the shop, fix it, and we'll take it out again in this video. Here we are on location. We was actually going to go to a different skate park because we went to this one a little while ago when we had the mud truck tires on there, but it was fully zombified. When the sun's out, zombies are out. So um, we're going to go to that skate park over there. Massive jumps coming up in a minute, and it all goes wrong. Rumble, rumble. drive it on two wheels, what do you reckon? Definitely. <laughs> oh. Tumble, wumble! I tried to pull out the power and it wasn't, it was nose diving. But I let off the power before it landed. I don't want to blow out the diff. Oh, that again. This is the world's fastest RC car project. And in this video, we're going to try and break that world record. Or at least get a little bit closer to it. And I think we might have found the perfect location to run this car. So in a bit, we're going to go down there and see if they're going to let us use it. Last video, this car did 193 mile an hour and the tyres failed. And that ended up in a crash. Been. This video we got a couple of prototype options that are top secret. Hopefully they're gonna work. Who knows? But in this video, we're gonna find out. So just to recap, we're running this on four great big massive motors, 100 horsepower combined, a custom made one-off long wheelbase scorched parts chassis, perfect pass drive shafts, onyx lipos, we got eight of them all the way down the sides, loads of other upgrades and other custom parts. If you want to see the full build and all the parts used in this car, I'm going to put a link to that down below. Right, let's go. 
So we are at Santa Pod for the European Dragster Finals. We're going to show you around, show you some of the drags, to show you some of the action. Then we're going to have a little chat with them and see if we can run the speed sausage on their track. Hopefully we can make it happen. So giving us these special media passes so we can get right up to the track side and give you the action close up. Check this thing out, it's got a jet engine inside it. So we're going to see that one, then in a minute they've got the top fuel, and if you thought the other car was loud, this thing's something else. It does not do it justice on camera. It's so like, loud, it actually won't break, it's got holes in my body. Actually, it's not even gone yet. These things are so loud, the camera does not do it justice. The floor shaking, the windows are shaking, your whole entire body, your internals are shaking. So these things run on nitro, it makes your eyes water, you can barely breathe, it's just absolutely mad. These things have got 12,000 horsepower. I mean, if you can ever come to witness these things, you have to do it. And to stand here in the middle between two of them, it's just absolutely nuts. I'll just about to say that's about 12,000 horsepower. I weren't ready for that. That caught me out by surprise. That thing is nuts. Here's another camera angle. Caught me completely off guard while I was waffling to the camera. So that was a 4.2 second quarter mile. Just to put that into context, the Super Impreza did a quarter mile in about 14 seconds. Lambo will do it in about 10 seconds. That was 4 seconds. So these are referred to as funny cars and the longer ones are referred to the top fuel dragsters. They both have exactly the same engine, the same horsepower, make the same noise, just different body styles really. So the exhaust pipes are actually turned up to give downforce. So much air flows through these engines that they push the car down onto the floor. If one of the pistons stop working, it can actually send the car sideways. Next up, we've got the top fuel. So these cars actually have no transmission, the engine is directly mounted to the rear diff and the clutches actually weld themselves together as they go down the strip. And something went wrong with both of them. Zero to 225 miles per hour in four seconds. They got motorbikes as well, and my god, these things look terrifying. We got the Swamp Thing crew in the house. What are you doing, Tom? We're going to do some car crushing today. We got Terry Grant and Lee Bowers doing their thing at Santa Pod Live Action Arena. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, how do you judge it? Just feel. It's all. How? If you let me have a go, that'll be it. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> How do you judge that? I don't know, I just knew I weren't going to win it. How often do you hit something? Yeah, quite often. Yeah. <laughs> we were just lucky. Let's go again. Yeah, go again, yes. More, more. Oh, 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 oh. That was close, wasn't it? Yeah, but we can get closer, I reckon. Yeah, you reckon? One more. One more. Yeah, yeah, one more, yeah. <laughs> what have you done to me, Ma? We bring him here because the day out of Santa Bond and hey, what's happened? Hey. We've got a massive storm and we're all getting soaked. Man, look at this, man. What's going on? So that was the car that we just went out in. Your go, Tony. My go, but there's no PA because the water has flooded it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we don't need PA, we've got a V8. Similar engine to what I've got in my monster, that one. Mechanic there. How are we doing? So Podzilla's all fixed again from last time, look. So they've got a fair ground up here as well. We had to go on the water, and if you ask them nicely, they might spin the cars faster and actually get quite a lot of G-force. Oh. oh my God, I'm gonna fall over. That was brilliant. Oh man, what an epic place Santa Pod. I've been coming here for years for all different car shows, Ultimate Street Car, Bug Jam, Monster Truck shows. All I've got to do now is ask them if we can take ERC cars on the track. So I've spoke with Santa Pod and they've let us use their drag strip. So we've got quarter of a mile of the actual drag strip itself and then we've got half a mile of runoff and it looks to be perfectly smooth. So this could be that perfect location. We could get that world record if the car and the tires hold up. So let's head on over there, run the car and see what happens. We've also got some other speed runners coming along as well. We'll show you those as well. We've actually got the official world record holder, David from Scorch Parts with his car. He's coming as well. He's had 219 mile an hour out of that car. Right, let's go. That's where the tracks has launched. Here's to where we ended the runway. Look how far we got, all the way down to there. Sun's out, the track's drying. Still wet at the moment, but it's gonna dry out. We might have some records in the bag, maybe. So here is our pit area. You got Chris here with his car. How, doing? how fast are you planning going today? Uh, I want 200 today. Have a look at your car. Habeo VTU2 dual motor. So TP motor, TP motor, XLX2. And he's got another one over there on the wall. We've got David in the house from Scorch Parts. So David's got, oh, he's got both his weapons. So this one, how fast are you aiming to get out of that? PB without is 183, so it'd be nice to beat 183. Yeah. Right, and then this one, that one's got the official world record, doesn't it? 216 through the traps, 219 on GPS. 219 mile an hour. We got a chance to go more? Yes! You got, you got a chance to go more? 250, definitely. So, we could, so you reckon we could get a world record? Definitely. Yes, right. Well, you, you might not because I've got my one there as well. Oh, yeah, probably yours, <laughs> obviously yours is going to go three or four miles an hour faster. And we've got this car here, which is a joint project with Rob from RC Man. Hello. Yes, mate. So Island Man Rob in the house, and what have you got? Same car as last time? Yeah, same car as last time, running the dual with two SCM motors. How fast is it going to go? So, I've got to beat 187, that's my PB. I'm looking for... What, what does PB mean? Personal best. Oh. I'm looking for 200 mile an hour. I've geared up, I'm ready to go, got the batteries. So two TP motors, XLX2s. Next up, we've got Warren with his contraption over here. Hi, how are you doing? You've gone over 200 mile an hour. 207. 207. 207 GPS. With this car? With this car. So how much are you aiming to get today? Geared it up, I've got to try and catch up with you, so 210. Yeah, right, you've done more than me. I've done 193. Yeah, but well, I'm three motors now. You've got the four. It could be world record, possibly. Never mind. All right, well, we've got some fast cars here today. Hopefully, we're not going to smash any up. Hopefully, we're going to get some records. Track is slowly drying out. It's 
going on here? My brother's stuck. What do you mean you got stuck? Is it sticky? I forgot. How are you stuck? How are you stuck? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the prepped surface actually has glue on it to help the car stick to the floor. What are you doing, Dave? Is it all right? Just a uh, make sure it's safe. You know. uh, is it? No. Who, who made this beautiful chassis? Best chassis manufacturer in the world. Yeah. Scorch parts. Don't scorch parts. They're big tall, dude. <laughs> You're not that tall, are you? <laughs> We've got the Santa Pod guys here. Massive thanks for letting us do this. Really appreciate it. We're going to put those links down below to the Santa Pod website. So many great events here. Back in the day, I used to do Ultimate Street Car. That was great. Bug Jam, Monster Trucks. I mean, it's such a great place. So, cheers for letting us do it. And a massive thanks to Carl for originally organising it for us. Well, we're already over there playing. Check it out. Look. And then the front one as well. Yay! 174 miles an hour. So Dave from Scorch is taking out the smaller car. Track is slowly drying out. We're going to give it a quick run on the prototype tyres to make sure it tracks straight. And then we're going to put on the gone banana prototypes and proper go for it. What's happening now then? What are you doing? Uh, we're getting ready to move to the Isle of Man. Oh yeah, look! <laughs> He's even representing us. We're all representing. Represent. Excited about moving, mate? Oh yes. Yeah, man. Beautiful place. I'm gonna miss my friends, but I'll be back. You'll the be time back into anyway. forwards, yeah, man. It's only a couple of hours. It's nice knowing your car. No! <laughs> Stop saying these things, Max! You just want to see everything just quiet. I know, you, just <laughs> you literally have a problem. He has, he has, hasn't he? Yeah, you really have a problem. He has got a problem. I just want to smash it up. I just want it to be dead. Game over. But people, people think, people think on my channel the goal is to smash everything, but it isn't actually. The goal is, is to push it right to the limit blah, and take blah, it home working. With this idiot here, goal is everything trashed. How'd you guess that? Well, one word, boat. <laughs> we don't talk about that video, guys. Why? <laughs> Everyone loves me for it. Everyone loves you, they don't they? Yeah, they do. You said about the hate you got on that video. And they love me. They didn't love you. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you think they love me? No. What no. do you think? <laughs> the viewers, the viewers, the viewers you for that. Kev, you're still quite new to this. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. He's not been speedrunning that long. I think Kev's been doing it. This is his second year. We're not proper going for it yet. I just want to make sure the track is right. Hey, always, hey, so that was just a quick warm up pass. The next, a little bit more power. Well, you said that's no throttle. That was no throttle at all. So playing it back in slow motion, it looks like there's bits of tyre coming off and then a whole entire wheel. Wheels off. It did kiss the barrier, but I think it might be alright. Oh, well, how did he go this far? I really hope it's alright so we can get to run it again. Oh, the tyre's gone. Oh. It kind of looks alright-ish. That's has come off. They've all come off, actually. Oh, something's... Oh, oh, that's... Oh, bits oh. are falling off inside. The whole lot's gone. Where's the wheel gone? I saw it bounce off like halfway down. So I reckon it's in along there somewhere. Oh, it's there. I'm just saying... come off from there? So we've just driven down the strip, all the way from over there, and that's where the wheel's gone. But the wheel come off around here, it crashed into the wall, and it still made it, with my brakes on, all the way from there, all the way down there where that windmill is. So Dave is finding bits of wheel. Oh my God, it's just exploded. Look, it's literally everywhere. Reed. I reckon 150. Well, 140, is that it? Exploded uh, 140, you're not happy, Kev. No. no. I really had high hopes for them tires. Hey, man. Oh well, fix it, foam, send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Let's have a look in here. Hopefully, everything else has survived. It might be game over for the day. We might be able to fix it. I have got a complete spare car in parts. Oh my god, look at that! Oh! <laughs> look at that! You brought half the food back of you. Look, there's these... Um... Oh, we got that. All right, cool. And then we've got the out cup there. I think we can fix it and go again. Yeah, it's fine. We'll get it back in action. And we'll go for round two on the foams. Some foams now. Oh, Full of Kev's here. breakfast in there. We've got all the parts, I think. So maybe just putting that screw out for me because I'm going to get it up too tight. 
Dave Guy now with his slower vehicle, not his world record hold up. We've got Warren back out again with his fastest car. Wow. And something sent it into the wall. Oh no! What speed did it get? That's the most important yeah, thing. It's the important bit. Yeah! yeah! Woo! Front bumper mount, by the looks of it. Lower left arm. The rest seems to be fine. Apart from the wheels and tyres, but as I think that happens every run near enough. Yep. So we got the shaft, we got the pin, we got this piece. The arm's all right. So literally all we got to do is get the pin back in there. New hub, back in action. So if you look in here, look, that pin in that side's come out. This little plastic space up hill thing, whatever it's called, that one's gone. This one here is quite worn out. I think what happened is when these tires blew, the vibration of it just shook it so hard, it just done that. Here we've got Chris having a run. You ready for this? All good. Oh, 160. Luckily, I've got a complete spare car, so we can pinch all the bits off of that. So we've just got to put this thing here back on. Yeah. Put a new hub on there, and we'll be back in action. There we go, all back in action, all repaired. All we've got to do now, charge the batteries. While that's going on, we'll put the wheels on. These are the ones that I think Dave... Dave, did you get the world record on these? Yep. Yeah, so we've got a chance. We've still got a chance. Oh, yeah. These were the top secret tyres. However, they didn't work, so they're not really secret anymore. All it was was a truggy rim, shaved down, and armour infraction tyre stretched over and glued on. I've got Rob's one. It's a little test pass, mate. Oh. One. This here is the main quarter mile drag strip and this is made from this prep surface. It's really super sticky. It's designed to make the drag tyres stick to it. But up here's a bit of a gap and that's for expansion. As this stretches and expands, it's got to allow for the gap here. But I'm not sure if the RC cars are going to like going over it. So we're starting from here. We've literally got about half a mile over that way. But be quite enough so what i'm thinking if i start more down this way if you're going fast enough it's just going to kind of skim over the top and you won't even notice but it might not it might dig in i don't quite know Let's see what happens. Ooh. rolling marks it left it did not spin once it just just went for it it just went like ooh, went away and then it just the it lost all everything it's already lost drive oh, yeah. where is it come on kev <laughs> yeah there's a big blue member it's there it's not it's not that far right. what? Oh, yeah. 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 oh no look that tire's gone oh yeah that one's straight oh, hold on yeah you've lost oh, drive lost drive Oh, it lost drive on all of it. Lost drive. Oh, I wonder what it lost drive on. 137. We've had drive failure. It cut out halfway down the strip and it was just coasting. No brakes, no nothing. What did you think when it was going down there? I thought we've lost power. So then I hit the brakes and there's no brakes. It just coasted the whole way. How far did it end up in the field? Quite far. So that grub screw's either come loose or it's done the rear diff. I'd say check that grub screw first, make sure it's tight. Yeah, she's tight. Ah, oh, it's done the rear diff then. So that's something in the diff then. And then, oh dear. Oh, the front. I don't, know if this was, I don't know if this was crashed though. No, that's why I was just driving. I don't know if that's crashed or if that's why it's But why'd that along. broken when you crashed? Oh, you've done it before it folds. But surely these things would have gone, wouldn't they? Not necessarily. Nothing major. On the good note, there's not much damage. It's literally just that splitter. All the foam's off of that tire. So I reckon what happened is we lost drive to the back. The front tire started wheel spinning. 
and then overspun that. I don't know if this broke off in you, so if it broke from the crash, I don't know. So looking back at the footage again, the car was hopping and skipping all over the place. That must put a massive amount of load all through the differentials and through the drive shafts. So I think what happened was the rear diff blew out first. That sent all the drive to the front wheels, and then that stripped all the foam off of the tyres, and then it overspun the drive shafts, and the front drive shaft broke. Now I'm not sure this drive shaft might have been weakened from the crash before. So now let's see that again without me waffling. So let me know in the comments guys, what do you reckon? Do you reckon this is what happened? Next up, Dave is bringing out the beast, the world record car, 219 mile an hour. Look at the size of that LiPo. That is a LiPo. Look at, look at that. That's crazy, there's two of those going in there. I'll tell you what, this little servo saver delete kit, that's a must. That has totally transformed it on this. This was a stock servo saver, it's just flapping everywhere. With that servo saver delete kit, it just made the steering solid. You ready, Dave? Yeah. Oh, tire blew. Tire blew out. Oh, can't go get a car. Oh no! Did he crash it? We went about 20 feet. Oh no! Oh. Should we go and investigate? <laughs> Max has just come, come along because he wants to see Carnage. I think I might win the long distance Ow. award. Do you reckon it's made it into the mud? Yes. Where is it? it oh, I yours. think it's there. Is it there? Oh yes, sir. It may be on the long jump. Oh no, that's a bit, huh? Oh no. Oh my god, it's so cool. Are you, are you happy now? No. You still want to eat this dish. Let's see what she did. 191. 191. And now we are on the Santa Pod start line and Warren's going to run his car and also Rob. So now for a bit of fun, Rob and Warren are going to run their cars down the strip starting from the actual start line. In future we may well come back here and have the actual starting lights working and have all the speed coming on at the end of the Santa Pod sign. <laughs> And now Rob's go. I'll tell you what, there's something making these cars bounce on this super smooth surface. I don't know if it's the prepped surface with the glue on it and the grip on the tires is just making the car hop. Maybe we're just accelerating a little bit too hard. Okay. So going forward, what have we learned? I don't know really, but we didn't get the record. I think it's pretty safe to say that all that power and all that bouncing and hopping is what blew that rear differential out. I think also getting some aluminium diff casings is definitely going to help hold those differentials together. So they do make some for this Hobeo, so I think we're going to fit some. On the rear, I've got no suspension. There's these solid links here, and the only bit of travel that there is is to flex inside that arm. Oh, maybe that flex... Maybe that's what's making it bounce. Maybe we can put a shock absorber on this part of the arm and attach it where it normally goes, but leave the solid link on there as well, because there is some movement. And if we can just dampen it a little bit, maybe it's enough. I don't want to get rid of these, because if these are too soft and you've got suspension there, this car is so heavy. If that back end squats down lower than the front, then that means it's going to backflip. Carbon fibre drive shaft wires, I'm going to give them another chance. I know these can hold an insane amount of power, especially these bigger, latest version ones. And, you know, there was a possibility that when I crashed, it flexed and it sort of crushed this, put a crack in it, then that's what weakened it. Or maybe there was a bit of stone left in there from all that debris that was in there that was rubbing on there who knows maybe it was a faulty one but i think i'm going to try one again 
All the other shafts in there held up perfectly. This Scorch part servo saver delete system massively helped this car. The stock system is plastic and when you got all this weight on the car, it was really flexing and the steering was really, really vague. Now, it works perfectly. Wheel wires, we have to think of something. A lot of you guys in the comments in that last video where we tested the speed of these wheels, you guys were saying, Kev, you've got to use aluminium wheels. The trouble is with aluminium wheels, or aluminium for you Americans, is that the glue does not really stick to them. Maybe there is a glue that does stick, but I don't know. But all the glues that I've ever tried sticking to aluminium, it doesn't stick. <laughs> Oh my god, look at the size of that. Is that a radio controlled aeroplane? Yeah, man. And it's got a real jet engine in there. It has indeed, yes. So we are at the BMFA headquarters. And over there, they've got a little flying thing going on. And he's brought his plane. Let's well, see what all this stuff's all about. You don't want to break that, do you? Uh, not really, no. How much is it worth? Uh, no, about £9,000. Oh! Real little jet engine in there, look. So these planes have an actual miniature jet turbine engine inside and they run on actual jet fuel. So there's the inside of it. It's got the juice in there. There's the engine. This stuff in there all looks a little bit technical. Do you know what you're doing with that? No. Oh dear. All working. So now you've got to slide the wings together, put a couple of screws in and then go rip. So I want to get myself one of these. So first, let's have a look to see what I'm letting myself in for. This one here is Steve's new plane. So what have you got, mate? Right, I've got a uh, Krill Aries XL. It's about three meters long. It's got a bloody big turbine in there. Let's have a look at that in there. Oh, yeah, it's got a bit of size to that bad boy. And what's all this equipment you got going on in the back here? Right, so it's got a wobbly uh, vector nozzle. So basically, it just makes it flows the aircraft everywhere. So it's a bit like. Um, Does that mean you can do a pot, mate? Yeah, we'll have to take it too easy. We'll do a little bit. We'll pop yeah? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll do a bit. Oh, all right, yeah. wicked. Yeah. Do some flat spins. I've been saying about getting one of these for a while, and I'm fascinated and haven't, but we're going to have to do it at some point. Different than you got. Yeah. That one over there is pretty similar to this. It's another manufacturer. They're basically compared to planes, so it's a bit like a Eco <laughs> one versus a infraction if you can't. So they're, they're different yeah. makes? Yeah, yeah. They look fairly similar, don't they? Yeah, this one's got loads of uh, movement. You can see the, these things here are called ailerons, but they're, they're huge. Some other planes are a lot smaller, and obviously the bigger they are, the more movement you get. You start up, Jet, press up, then that, and then it starts up. Uh, automatic start? Yeah. Camera up there, you'll see it later. That's gonna blast me in a minute, isn't it? Yeah, but we'll be getting to the third, you'll still be able to see the blades. There we go, Steve's go. things we're hard to get out of. Look at 
this thing? How can that be so fast? What the hell is it? So this thing here is actually a glider with a jet engine fitted. So next up is Andy's go. When's the last time you flew it? About a year ago. So are you a little bit rusty? Yeah, maybe. So Steve's on hand to lend a hand. Can I have a go? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, really? Bend it, you bend it. Oh, all oh, right, maybe not then. <laughs> Starting up, first time in a year. Pushing. That's it, ready to rip, yeah? Here's Andy's one. Andy's ready to rip. So here's Andy's first time flying in a year, so let's hope he doesn't break it. Landing! When Shane's landed, you follow him in the top the last one. Okay. Enjoy that? Yeah, man. A bit shaky after the first time <laughs> of the year, don't we? Oh, man, what an epic day. And I'm actually in talks with someone about getting one of these jet planes. It's a J10. It's got a real jet engine in there. And it's about the same size as Andy's plane. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Here we have the Armored Gorgon. So I think this thing here is aimed more at the younger audience, however, a lot of you guys in the comments told me that you wanted me to get one and put it through its paces. And also, my buddy RC Man from Isle of Man, he really loves the look of these, and he's ordered some, and he's really excited about it, and he reckons that I'm really going to enjoy it too. So I've got one, and I'm going to give it a blast and see what I make of it. So we've got double wishbone suspension, front and rear with oil filled coil over shocks, however, they do bottom out quite easily. Got a brushed motor, plastic drive shafts, all in all super basic. Battery looks like it goes in from the bottom here somehow. Yep, and it comes with 
one of these nickel metal nim things, whatever you call them. So that plugs in there, and then that just rattles about in there, I suppose. So controller on and car on. Don't be so mean. Right, so steering, not the fastest, but adequate. And power. For brushed, that doesn't seem too bad. But don't expect to be taking any skin off your grandma's rice pudding. So this body holds on really easy. It's just one giant body clip that just goes through here. And another one on the back. That means no body pins to get ripped off on the outside. Tires, really supple with no sponge in there. So this thing is supposed to replicate a real monster truck. However, real monster truck has solid axles, four link suspension, four wheel drive. This has none of that. So, eh, I find it difficult to get excited over it. However, I must remember this is supposed to be aimed at the young audience. <laughs> I think it just makes that little noise just to let you know that you've forgotten to unplug it. But anyway, if we look at this here, the lossy LMT Grave Digger, this one here, just like on the real monster truck, it's got solid axles, four link suspension, and it's four wheel drive. I know the X-Max hasn't got all that, but it's not really trying to. I think this with these sort of tyre design and the overall look and everything, I think this is trying to be a real monster truck. Anyway, enough bleeding waffle, you just want to see it rip. And I've got to pretend to be a younger driver, so... Um... <laughs> Staircase of doom! Oh, well, oh, ho, ho. <laughs> right, let's get it out in the real world. Here we are on location. We've got crew in the house. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, we've got 8S back in the house. Got 4S in the house. What up? What oh, toys yes. you got? <laughs> so oh, he's got yes. his <laughs> X Max <laughs> with the. Oh my god. Oh. Right, bigger than fist size motor. Yeah, it's a big lad. That is like the size of a Coke can, isn't it? That is. That's bigger. That's, that is. Yeah, the motor wires. Oh my God. That's, that's nearly little finger size, just the wires. Yeah, six gauge. Oh, that's daft. <laughs> that's oh, daft. Right, oh, you got it from the right angle. <laughs> it's hard to see because you've got wires in the way. Yeah. yeah. But that is wider. That, the whip for that is that. That's yeah. the whip for that motor. And that is... Yeah, so it's actually thicker than that. The plastic chassis brace is no longer yeah. there because it wouldn't go in. Oh. <laughs> so I trimmed it out there. I've still got that bit. Is it still going to be bashable? Yeah. How long do long. we think the tires are going to last? I These think it's just going to be like one throttle and then that's it, they're yeah, gone. Yeah, look, that's a pinion. <laughs> oh my God, that's the pinion. Yeah, 51 tooth. Anyway, next toys, he has, oh, the legend. This one's, this one's been around for a while, hasn't it? That's the first one I converted to electric, my Kyo show. That's got a Max 5 in it so as well. You've got to have had that for over 10 years now, haven't you? Easy. Here we've got Stephen's towing technique. Oh, look, more crew. Oh, waffling. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Look over there. there. More crew. Oh, yes. They're all getting excited over the Gorgon. It's bigger than I thought. That's what she said. <laughs> Ian's admiring this masterpiece, but this one's for a different video. Does he move? Uh, don't I believe him. No. no. I bet if you take that helmet off, it's just Action Man under there. Uh, <laughs> Do you reckon he's it's got just Action clothes. Man? He's, he's like, like Barbie, look, yeah. he's just stripping. Has he got anything in that area? Uh, no, <laughs> I want to see how realistic it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got pert buttocks. Oh, here we go. Let's see what it's made of. Here we go. Full power. Uh -oh. <laughs> Cute. Cute. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with that? Full power. Oh, look, Noah's mum in the house for the viewers. <laughs> See if there's like a punch setting on it. Oh, it's only all 50. Oh, there you go. Oh, here we go. 100%. Back up to 100. All right, here we go. Here we go. Full power. Well, they're not laughing anymore, so it must be all right now. Anyway, it is aimed more at the younger audience, so it could still be perfect. Let's see what it can do. By the way, you can win this RC car for less than $1 worldwide. See link in the description. He nearly 
made it. Put it. Here we go, full speed. Oh, we cleared it. Oh. What are you doing, Mr. Noah? So, we're going to hit this jump as hard as possible and try and land on the down slope of that ramp there. A suicide jump? Yeah. Watch out. Okay, I'm going to do it as well. Oh! I landed it! Oh, game over, son! Game over! Oh! Now, look, it worked perfectly on the glass. Do you know what? For a beginner, this could be the perfect car. Oh! So we got the GPS on there now. So now we can see how fast it can go. First speed run on grass. Right, let's have a look what she's done. Oh, 21 mile an hour. More than enough for a first RC car. Let's see how fast it goes on the concrete. So reset this thing. That is full speed. And by touch. <laughs> All right, let's see what she done. 23 mile an hour. Maybe in a future video, if you guys want to see it, we're going to chuck a brushless motor in here and see if we can make it go quicker. Let me know in the comments what motor do you want to see in this car. It's probably quite difficult to see the performance on camera. So here we have Ian's Minimax. What power system you got in there? 6S, but running on 4. All right, 4S. Stock nickel metal nim, whatever it's called, and this is Alex's X Max. What you're running in that one? AS full house. So you can see that X Max is a little bit bigger, or well, quite a lot bigger actually. Mini Max is about the same size. Are you all ready? Ready, steady, go, 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 go! Oh, the Gorgon got off the line the quickest. What? The Gorgon's in the lead. The Gorgon is in the lead, and now comes in last. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what? There's not as much in it as I thought because you've got so much power, it's just wheeling and wheel spinning. Yeah. I want to see if we can do a backflip. It hasn't got much power and it's only two wheel drive. So let's try, see what happens. Oh, ho, ho. round two. No. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nope. Recovery. <laughs> footage, footage. No. Oh, no, it definitely needs a bit more power. That's how you do it. Nice. Backflip. Go on in. <laughs> nice. Can Gorgon do it? Oh no! What happened? Yeah. Ian is fixing the Gorgon. He's gonna try. Monster truck mechanic and RC car mechanic. Supervisor over there. Yep. Through there. AS over here, got his X Max out. Is it pinion off? Is it not off? No, it's moved. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got a quicker way. You ready? Go on then. Boom! Back in action. That's quicker, wasn't it? Yeah, that's much quicker. Ian's go. What's it like compared to your X Max? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm trusting this. Go on, do something cool. What do you reckon, though, for a kid? It'd be like for a kid, wouldn't it? Yeah. Perfect first RC car. It's not too quick. So you're not going to cause a massive amount of damage with it. What are you doing? We're sending it to the moon. Oh, we're going to break it for it. To the moon. So they're going to try and take off from there and clear the railing. I don't reckon it will. You killed it! <laughs> you came over? Yeah, servo's died. Oh! No more steering. That was a good landing as well. Oh dear. We popped a link off. I think, is it, or is it gears done or servo saver done? Ooh. Servo saver's loose. Ian's going to go and investigate. What's your expert opinion? I think the servo saver's broke. Oh. Not doing anything. Right, so Ollie's fixing that. Oh. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh! <laughs> Here comes Alex with his X-Max. Come on, Noah, to the moon. Oh, in the tree. 
Oh dear. Oh. How's he come down, mate? Oh, that's properly perched, isn't it? Yeah. Both of your foot on brakes. Oh. Hey! hey. Here comes Gaz, bit of crate in 8S. Nice. Mini Max down there. RC crew in full force today. Meow. <laughs> so, Servo Saber is dead, and it appears. You might have to split the whole entire chassis to get to it. So Gaz has got his Creighton 8S. you got a YouTube channel as well, haven't you? Yeah, Gaz at RC Fun. What are they going to see on there? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, show us show us what they're going to see on there. Go on then, give us, give us a demo. Well, that launches, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Oh, now it's back and cut out. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Alex has made a new friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I bet I'll chase you. <laughs> <laughs> So now 8S has got his car show out. So what are you running? That's on 6. 6S. But well, this can do 8S, can't it? Yep. The Eco Boost oh. servo in there. Yep. How old's that servo? That's quite a new one. I've started to have troubles with a new Eco Boost. They used to last, but now everyone I put in seems to not last. 8S Kyosho Shruggy, but he's got it on 6S. Waffle, waffle. <laughs> You're waffling yourself. <laughs> oh. She's lively. Oh, really yeah, someone's sleeping over there. I don't know. Oh no, what's Noah doing? We're gonna flat out across the field and then hit this and just see where it goes. Oh dear. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> That's gone. Oh, here comes recovery. Yeah, go and check out Noah's channel. We'll give him a bit of love. He's building some crazy speed car as well out of wood and 3D print. Oh, that's a chassis bender, if you get that wrong. Oh! Oh, X-Max still going? Yeah. Right, we're going to go off the down ramp of that one and just... Actually, no, there are kids over there. That's not a good idea. I reckon, run up across there and just skim... If you do it at an angle, it should just go up it nice and then just hit that. Yeah, but then it might go into school and then we'll never see it again. Have uh, we got a recovery team? Rachel? If it goes into school, is it gettable? No, little... Yeah, he said yeah. <laughs> oh no, guys! <laughs> I don't know what that could have been worse. Oh yeah, it could have been yours, couldn't it? <laughs> there you go. What's that? Ten. 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 <laughs> there you go. Best crash of the day. You know what, guys? It's just that bit. Yeah, and I think I've got to stay on at home. Oh! <laughs> Was it a good landing? I don't know. It sounded like a nose landing. I think it's turned off. Oh. Maybe it's landing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is one of those lurking. Because your mum just stepped in one, didn't she? Yeah. Is there, is there poo poo? Poo poo shoe over there. <laughs> the car's yeah. going to be smelly for the way home. Oh, no. <laughs> You've got to be in there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I toasted it this one. <laughs> so I can see the problem is why it's went off. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I haven't got it yet. Oh, well, 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 I've been called. Why? What's going on? Dinner time. Dinner time. Oh, We're going for curry. Get out. It's getting cold. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Check this out. I've got a giant RC motorbike.
check it out, man. Look how realistic it all is. It's got working oil shocks front and rear, a working front disc brake. It's even made of metal. A realistic metal chain and gears. Even the dude, he's got actual clothes on. Now normally radio controlled motorbikes are really difficult to drive. This small one here was almost impossible, just kept falling over. This one here, a little bit better, but still really difficult. Right, let's get him working. So in the box in this one, it comes with a battery. So this battery here is a 2S LiPo, 7.4 volts. But you know, on this channel, we like overvolting things. So we're gonna see how it runs on the 2S. And then later on, we might give it more voltage and see what happens. So the battery goes in here, I think. And then that plugs in there. It also comes with batteries for the controller. And then I'm guessing this button here turns on the bike. The steering, plenty of speed and power. And throttle. You know what, that seems pretty quick just on 2S LiPo. But you know we gotta try it on more S in the future. All right, let's see what happens. Oh no, poor carpet. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, 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 look. Flywheel on. So the flywheel is what balances the bike. It sounds like it's going to take off. A few moments later. Whoa, that's weird. So inside there, there's a flywheel. And what I'm supposed to do is help it stay up. But if you try and move it, it's really got some resistance to it. Watch, if I move it side to side, it, it tries to twist. It's weird. That way it moves freely. That way is... God, that's really fighting me. Let's try again. Oh! <laughs> yes, that feels so easy. But we need a bit more space. Come on, dude, you got this. Oh, battery's gone flat. It's flat out now. Oh. Right, so we're going to charge him up. And make sure you stick around because you're going to be amazed what this little bike can do. Oh, look at that! Oh! And he comes with a USB charger. So that in there, and that in there. And a bit later, I've got a GPS here so we can see how fast he goes. Right, so while he's charging up, we'll have a look what else comes in the box and then we'll take him out for a rip in the real world and see what he can actually do. We're going to give it a tool bit test as well, see if he's actually got any durability. So in the box, you get a stand, another stand, instructions, chain lube, stuff, some more stuff. Battery, obviously the bike and the controller. Oh, and the charger. This thing still charging is probably gonna take a couple of hours. So let's have a look at some specifications. All right, that's that. So here you can see a picture with a cover off. So this here has got a flywheel inside it. So it's a separate motor for the flywheel. This is the motor that drives the back wheel. Here you can see the oil-filled shocks, how they work. It's got a little flappy thing on the back here, look. So that is when you do wheelies so you don't break it. Talking of wheelies, apparently it's got a wheelie button. And there you go, it tells you all that there on a box so you can pause that if you want to read it if you want to know all the detailed specifications and all the techno babble and where you can get one from i'm going to put a link to all of that down below and this thing is still charging i'll tell you one thing it does suck with this battery it doesn't come with a balance lead so you kind of fix by having to use their charger these are the chargers i normally use and that will charge that battery in probably half an hour to an hour but look these batteries here got a balance lead so those batteries in there can't use them on here oh uh, here we are on location we got all the so we got the GPS on there, and we got to see how fast it goes, and then we might hit the skate park. I don't know if it's a good idea. Here we go, fully charged battery. Here we go, full speed. That's pretty fast. All right, see how fast you went. 35 mile an hour. That was 35 mile an hour on grass, so probably on concrete. Probably would be about 40, wouldn't it? Yeah, I reckon 40. Yeah, all right, right. So now on here, it's got a dial for different modes. So if we turn this all the way that way, we'll see what happens. Should that make it faster? Won't wheel as much. I've no idea. Let's see. <laughs> wheelie mode. That's hilarious. Is that wheelie mode? Oh, they're supposed to have a proper wheelie mode. Oh no, not the motorbike. <laughs> oh, who just hit the motorbike? Don't hit that bike, Noah. I don't know why it's hopping. It's gonna break on them jumps. Do you reckon? Yeah, nah. That'll be alright, won't it? Yeah, it gets. Do you reckon that'll break? Yeah, nah, it's fine. 
Oh, we're, doing, we're doing a little one, we're doing a little one. Over there, we've got like a motocross style track. So I want to take it over there in a minute. Oh, what one is top? Oh, come on. I've just got to <laughs> Look at that. I want to see if I can take off on this bit and then like land really nicely down that bit. Oh no, the gyro stopped him. <laughs> oh, go on, guys, give him a rescue. Oh, the gyro stopped him. Oh. Well, we've got to learn how to use that gyro for wheeling. It's got a dial on the radio that says something. I'll do it all the way one way, all the way the other way. Makes no difference. It should be able to hold it in a wheelie, and mine doesn't. And also, when I'm going up jumps, it just kills the power. Oh, well, Gaz is doing some research. Got the instructions. So we're going to watch that, and then we're going to see if it works. Well, what does this button here do, young man? Uh, don't know. Let's give it a go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> it's actually letting off power, isn't it? Yeah. The wheeling. If you want to know where you can get one of these bikes from, I'm going to put a link to that down below. The wheel up the bank, across the flat and down the bank, down the grass bank, all right? Easy! Oh, I got one for the eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> easy! All right, so that's going to take a while to get it. This bike is just so easy to yeah. ride. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Yeah. I tried a different mode then, well. <laughs> yeah, so now it won't wheelie at all. What, so will this be faster this mode then? Oh no, oh. it's still. <laughs> well, that button, does it work both ways? Yeah, I'm not really and sure it's what. launch start then? I don't know. <laughs> oh. oh! That must be if you want to hit the jumps, so it doesn't, so it lets you go back more. Yeah. Oh. There you go. So now, okay, if you can do the box over here now. Well, we've got the gyro set now, so I think it can go up a ramp. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yes. Oh, nearly. That's the challenge. I've got to try and take off from that one and land on that one. Oh, easy. Oh. <laughs> All right, that was a little bit too hot. Let's try a little bit less. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god guys, this bike is so much fun, it is so much better than I ever expected it to be. So lots of you guys have been begging me to get this bike for a while now, uh, but this is the earliest that I could get my hand on one. I had to buy this bike myself, the same as you guys. Companies don't really like sending me stuff because I'll tell you how it is, good or bad. In this occasion, this thing is absolutely epic and you have to get one. $375 radio controlled race car. $1,500 race car. What's the difference? In this video, we're going to find out. So you want to start radio controlled car racing, but you don't know where to start. Well, this video is for you. So first of all, electric or nitro. Nitro is a lot more messing around. You really need about two people to race them. There's a lot more to go wrong with them. They're a lot harder to set up. So when you're first starting out, forget nitro, jump straight into electric. Next up, off-road or on-road. So on-road tend to be a little bit more finicky setting them up. People that race them tend to take it a little bit more seriously. Whilst with the off-roads, they seem less maintenance, uh, less to go wrong on them and people tend to have a little bit more fun with them but at the end of the day it depends if you want to be bumping and jumping or if you want to go on road so whatever looks more fun to you that's the one you should choose i'm going to focus on off road because that's what i find more fun next up two wheel drive or four wheel drive four wheel drive tends to be a little bit more expensive there's more to build because there's two differentials and sort of two of everything two wheel drive cheaper more basic less maintenance more popular and i find them for racing more fun so we're going to focus on two-wheel drive the 375 dollar car is ready to run it all comes built it's two-wheel drive brushless motor double wishbone suspension front and rear with coil over shocks comes with the controller so all you got to do is add a battery and go rip the 1500 dollar one is actually the same price 375 dollars the same as that one however this one is bare bones there's no electronics no motor no control Control or no nothing. That's going to end up costing around about $1,500 by the time you've built it. And also this one here 
you have to build it yourself. This one's also two wheel drive, also double wishbone suspension with coilover shocks, also gonna have a brushless motor, but at four times the price, is it worth it? Well in this video we're going to find out, we're going to build it, then we're going to take them both racing, compare lap times and just genuinely see what the difference actually is. Here we go, part one. Next up we've got to install the servo and for that I'm going to use one of these dash servos from Arrow Max. Speed is absolutely ridiculous, there's all the techno babble. My first time using one of these so I'm going to be interested to see how good it is. Anyway if you want to know where you can get it from and all the techno babble and everything else that you see in this video I'm going to put a link to all of that down below. Right let's get it in. So I've got the car from Yokomo, the batteries from Onyx, and all the internals of the car, all the electric servos, motor speed controller, all of that stuff from Rochester RC. So link to all of that down below in the description. So next I've got to put the ball joint on the end of the shock shaft. Now you've got to be super careful, it's tempting to hold the shaft with a pair of pliers, but you're going to damage it, it's going to scratch it, and it's going to leak the oil out. So here, I've got a set of these shock pliers. So you put that in there, that fits in there perfectly. This is made from aluminium, so it's soft, and then you can just wind in. Now if you haven't got a pair of these, you can use side cutters and hold it right on the end of the shaft like that. I mean, you're risking it, but at a push, you can get by like that. Or you can just get a wrench and you can just hold it on the nut on the inside and then wind it in like that as well. So here we've got the completed shocks and they move absolutely perfectly smoothly. So that's the chassis built, now let's fit the electronics. So I'm going to fit a hobby wing, speed controller and motor, 7.5 turns, so plenty of power and Sanma radio. This is some of the best gear that you can get for racing. If you want to know about all this stuff, we can get it from all the techno babble, all the specifications, link down below. So motor in there, speed controller there, receiver there, tidy up the cables. Boom! Also I got a set of these new Onyx LiPos in here. Man, that servo is fast. <laughs> right, well, let's finish off the body and the last few bits, wheels and tyres. And then we'll take it out for a rip. Yes. Next up, we've got to glue the tyres onto the wheels. Next, we've got to glue them on. And I always wear these now when gluing because a friend of mine, Craig, it flicked. It went into his eye, sealed his eyeball shut. What's happened here? Right, let's try again. That'll do. Next up, let's trim and paint the body. Here we've got the window masks. 
And here I'm roughing up the surface of the body so that the paint's got somewhere to stick to. Next up, colour-wise, I think we should probably try something different for a change. Next up, we've got to have the game over graphics like we've got on the monster truck. I've only really got red stickers here, so I'm going to have to carefully cut round it. So looking over both of them, they do both look very similar. Both the Pro and the Ready to Run are both fully adjustable. There's probably more adjustments to be made on the Pro one, but you can still make some of the basic adjustments on this one. The Pro one's got a metal chassis, the Ready to Run plastic. A lot of the suspension components look very similar, if not exactly the same. Pro one's got carbon fibre shock towers, Ready to Run plastic, also plastic shock bodies. This one's got metal. Suspension does feel a little bit nicer on the Pro one. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Well, let's take him racing and see what the difference is. Can the $375 one keep up with the $1,500 one? Oh, postman. Oh, it's Christmas every day. So I've got some new tyres here, and these are brand new, just released from Schumacher carpet tyres for the front. For a while now, I've been wanting more front end grip. It's always been understeering. These new tyres should hopefully fix it. So here's the tyres that I've been running before. And now these ones here, they've still got the same bit on the outside, but they've got more knobbly bits in the middle. Apparently, that gives you more grip on carpet. So how the racing works, you get three qualifying rounds, then you get the final. So race number one, I'll be racing the ready-to-run car on the stock tyres. Race number two, we're going to get these racing tyres and put them onto the ready-to-run. Race number three, we're going to be racing the competition race buggy with the racing tyres. It's going to be interesting to see what the lap times are. And then race number four, the final and there's normally like an a b c final a final being the best so whatever qualifying you do the quickest drivers they end up in the a final so i'm going to aim for the a final and then in the a final if i get into the a final i might not but whatever final i get into i'm going to be running these brand new tires and see if we can get more front end grip and see what happens if you've got too much front end grip the car's going to keep spinning out in circles it's going to be really hard to drive we're going to be crashing loads and do really bad Boom, here we are on location. Here we've got the heat listing. So I'm in this heat here. We've got Ben, Bruno, you and let's have a look at their cars. Here we've got Bruno that normally wins. We've got Ben over there, he normally wins as well. <laughs> so let's have a look at the competition. So what car is this one? Uh, it's a Chimaka lay down. Yeah. X run as a speed controller. Savok servo, X run motor as well. Probably not got much of a chance against Bruno and definitely not against Ben. What have you got, Ben? Chimaka as well. Yeah. The tires going on here. Oh, are these the new ones? They're yeah, the new ones. Just, I've done a couple of laps and the thing just spins around the circle. Does it really? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. So, I've actually got a set of these as well. We're going to try mine in the final. Yeah. Here we've got Mike, cameraman. We've got Ewan in the house. What have you got? Schumacher as well? Lay down. So is this is a lay down one or two? Yeah. Banger, 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 uh, servo. Oh, EcoBoost. Yeah. yeah, got the Banggood servo in there. All right, well, there we go. We've got more competition over here. So first race, we're going to race this one. So here we go, heat number one, first qualifying round. The car drives fairly nice. It does lack steering. It just tries to go in a straight line. That is to be expected because of these front tyres. It's also got a gyro that doesn't help. Power-wise, it's really fast, loads of power. However, the control isn't the best. There's a little bit of delay on the throttle, a little bit of delay on the steering. And you can see I'm getting overtaken by a lot of people. But for a ready-to-run car, for your first racer, brilliant car. So here are the results. I came last, so I've done 16 laps. Ben did 23, Ewan did 23, and my best lap was a 17 second, and their best lap is like a 12 point something. So what, we've got to try and put it up to there. What, no, it's a ready to run and it's got ready to run tyres. Oh. But next race, we're going to put better tyres on it. So this car suffered from understeer badly. Basically, that means you steer and the car just wants to go straight. So that's partially due to these tyres with no grip, but also it's got a gyro. So I'm going to take the gyro off, put the race tyres on and go again. And the rest of them. Boom! Boom. 
<laughs> so to get the gyro out, we just need to remove this wire. We pull the servo wire out of the gyro. Plug that directly into the receiver. Radio on. Plug him in. And hopefully now, no gyro. Yes. So we got the popper on, guys, in the in the house. It's been a while, Kev. You've got the new tyres on there as well. Yeah, I'm going to give them a go. So earlier on, we were on about maybe you're going to be spinning around in circles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. So there's the popper on car. Let's see if it quips or spins. <laughs> Actually, it looks like it's doing alright. That is definitely not spinning out. Well, final, I'm going to try it on mine. Here we go, heat number two. Oh, that's sweet. Straight away, loads more grip on these front tyres. With the gyro off, the steering is a lot more responsive. Basically, what the gyro does, if the car slides out, the gyro will automatically steer in the opposite direction to counter-react the slide out. However, when you're racing, especially on high grip carpet, you don't really need it, it just holds you back. Oh. So that time I still came last, but we've got an extra two laps in, a couple of seconds quick on the lap time, we're not quite as far behind. I reckon we have some upgraded electronics in there, the speed controller's got a slight delay on there when you accelerate, if you had a quicker servo, I reckon this thing would get even quicker, maybe we'll try it in future. Anyway, next. The racer. So straight away you can feel that this is a much higher quality kit, it drives a lot nicer, a lot more predictable, the steering, the throttle response, everything about it a lot nicer. However, this is just out the book setup. There's no setup gauge being on it, there's no tweaking, it's just as it was built, out of the box. And straight away it needs more steering, the front was under steering quite severely. So we're just going to see how well we do in this race and then in the final we're going to put on the higher grip tyres and see how we get on there. So because it's a brand new car and I'm still learning the characteristics, I did crash a few times costing me a lot of laps and then it took Marshalls a little while to put the car back on the track and then I crashed again and the Marshall put the car on the wrong side of the track. And then I pushed Both even sides. harder to try and make up lost right, time right. and crashed even more. So all in all, lots On of crashing side. and oh. ended up qualifying in the C final, which was the slowest final of the night. So we still came last. However, we got a little bit better lap time. I did crash a couple of times. James over there crashed into me. But then the marshal put me on the wrong side of the track. So we're probably about two laps down really. But anyway, next race, we are going to be fitting the new specials. So we could do definitely a bit more steering. This probably isn't helping having the camera on the back pushing down. Probably doesn't help that I've not cut the wing out properly. But with these new tyres, I don't want to change anything yet. Just chuck these tyres on and just see what happens. Right, so here is the final listing. We got into the worst final. The C final. However, with these new tyres on there, the car was handling so much better. It took me a little while to get the hang of it because the car was just biting in so much sooner. So I was clipping the apex a couple of times. Definitely a lot faster, but still not perfect. We're going to need to do a few little setup changes to it to give it a little bit more steering. Uh, so we're going to take it back in the shop after this video, do the tweaks on it, then take it out again in this video and race it again and see if we can make it into the A final and hopefully even win it. So way better on those tyres. We come first, best lap is nearly a 13 seconds. Now we got the A final. It's gonna be interesting to see how fast these can do. Look at that, pop along, have made it into the A final. They're off for the A final. The final that everybody aims to get into. Ben way out in the league with his new tyres. So we're halfway in the race now, looking at the best lap times, I'm not actually that far behind. We're gonna do a few setup changes on here. I haven't even done the cameras. Look, all the wheel angles are out. Bring it here again, hopefully getting that A final and do better. Looking at the best lap times, I'm actually only about half a second behind. So that was actually the worst result that I've ever had at that club. But the car's got a fully box stock setup straight out of the box and I've not really made any adjustments, but there's a few things that we can do to give it more steering then we're going to take it back to the race club in this video and see if we can improve so these new tires gave it loads more steering but we still need more so i can cut a little bit off of the rear wing it's got way too much on there everyone was laughing at me at the club 
I should probably cut it like they're ready to run one. I can take off the front anti-roll bar. That's going to give it more grip on the front. Also, the cambers are way off, so we're going to sort that out and just tilt those wheels in a bit. That's going to give it more front end grip as well. But overall, really impressed how this car feels. I really think it's got some great potential. In a minute, we're going to find out if it does. I've also gone into the speed controller settings and given more voltage to the servo, so now the steering's quicker. Also added some turbo to the speed controller, just a setting, gives it a bit more power, watch. Also, I haven't got my end point set correctly, so I'm not getting full steering travel. So we go on full steering lock, and look, we can go more. Right, let's go race. Here we are on location. Look at that, we've got all these famous YouTubers everywhere. Oh, who's hiding behind there? Put this thing down. <laughs> uh, here we've got little Max. Do you want to drive that one? <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to be racing this one again. I'm going to aim for the A final at least, bare minimum. There you go, Max is booking in with Vinny. So what's all this new system you got going on here, Mr. Vinny? It's just to uh, Thank you. make you look a little bit less, I mean, more professional. How old are you, by the way? Six. Six? Uh, there you go. Six year old is handling it perfectly. Yeah. And then we've got a transponder. So the transponder counts the laps. Plug him into one of these. One, two, three, four, five. Heat number one, the car is handling a lot better, but again, I've got to get used to the car every time you do a setup change. And even when you race on a new track for the first time, it takes a few laps to get the hang of it. So a few crashes in this one. Also, I've got an onboard camera and I stopped a couple of times to take the camera off and move it to a different position. So we got quite a decent lap time. However, overall position wasn't the best. So because of the camera changes and the crashing, I came last, but we're only half a second off the pace from the fastest car, so not bad. We got a little bit too much front end grip, but we can change the sway bar on the roll bar, that give it a little bit less. Next, next heat, we're gonna do well. So here's the front sway bar, and it's been disconnected, so if I put that back on, that's gonna give it a little bit less front steering. Boom, there we go, got it back on. So now it's Max's go, you ready? Yes. So in a minute, we're going to see if that is a perfect beginner car or not. So Max's first go, he's just practicing. Oh, long way around the track. Here we go, Max's first ever race. No, you're not, not yet. Oh, you've gone too soon. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right, we've definitely got a durability test going on with it. You're giving the marshals a bit of a workout, Max. <laughs> Oh, look, it's getting better already. By the end of the night, you're going to be a pro. Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll leave him to it. We'll check up on him again a bit later on. These elite athletes that they are. So second heat, car is handling really well, but with the sway bar back on, it was feeling a little bit unpredictable until I got used to it. But anyway, I crashed it, put me out of the race early on. But if we look at the actual lap times, I'm still only half a second behind Ben. And Ben is a really good driver. Not many people can really ever keep up with him. What's going on, Kev? I thought I was going to cut the corner. He didn't make it. And he went to a massive tumble and we'll snap that off. Uh, so look, Sorry. crashed again. Still got one of the best lap times on there though, almost. What I was trying to do was run up across there, hit this flat out, and just try and skip the corner a little bit, crashed into there and then rolled all the way over there and broke. So here we go, Max is doing his final. Let's see how he gets on after the whole evening of practice. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, and he's in the wall. So Max is getting a lot more confident with the Yokomo. So I think this is the perfect first beginner car. And with a couple of little upgrades, I reckon this car could even keep up with the top guys. So looking at the lap times, this car here is almost a second a lap faster than my older car. But anyway, we've got to fix it. So I haven't got any spares for now. I've ordered them. They're not here yet. But looking at the ready to run one, the arms 
look the same. I mean, these might be a little bit stiffer, but they do look like they're gonna fit. So let's see if that can fit on there. And then we're gonna take it racing again today in this video. And I wanna really try and see if I can win or at least get into the A final. Right, so let's get this thing off of here. Boom! Now onto this one. Boom! Well, it fitted. So now we've got to do wheels on, then go race. Here we are on location for the third time. So here we go again, heat number one. The car is handling absolutely amazingly. And as you can see, I'm getting a lot more confident now. I can tuck it in, get really tight to the apex. The car's really behaving well, not doing anything unpredictable. And we had quite a good one, a couple of crashes, uh, but all in all, really good. So first heat came in third place, but if you compare the lap times, best lap, we are only a tiny little bit behind the fastest lap. Loving these new Schumacher tyres. Servo is ridiculously quick. Motor and speed controller and the battery combo. Plenty of power. And here we've got heat number two. Same as before, really. A couple of crashes. So come in third position again. Loads of crashes. You and the winner. Are you a proud man? I'm very proud. <laughs> so this time I'm going to take these tyres off. And I've got these ones here. Exact same tyres, but these ones have got foam inside. These ones, they haven't. So let's put the foams on and let's see what happens. <laughs> you finally noticed. Not enough doing it now. <laughs> so here we go, heat number three with the foam inside the tyres. So it's given a little bit less front end grip. So I didn't really like it and a couple of crashes. So come second in that one. Marshall did stand on the car and it went a bit funny. Got our secret mechanic over here just making a few changes on the car see how we get on in the final. So we're standing the back shocks up, standing the front shocks up one and changing that. Just made it into the A final. Didn't get any clean runs in, but hopefully we can try and work our way up there a little bit. Got a set up changes on there, Let's see what happens. So here we go, the A final, the best final, the final that everybody wants to get into. Cars handling great. We are sort of midfield, trying to catch up the leaders. The new setup really is making the car feel confident and precise. I had a couple of little crashes that cost me a little bit of time. So we didn't win, but we did do well. And if you compare the best lap times, I was almost just as fast as a top running car. So this car's got some great potential. Yeah, really liking the new handling there from the stick mechanic. <laughs> but anyway, we came fourth in the end, a few crashes there, but pretty good. This radio control boat is really expensive. It's also the fastest radio control boat that you can buy. So in this video, we're gonna see how fast it goes and see if it's any good. Inside, we have two water-cooled brushless 6S motors, two water-cooled speed controllers, and it's made almost entirely from Kevlar carbon and carbon fiber. That means lightweight, super strong, but also really expensive. So in the box, you get everything you need to get this boat to run. You get the radio, you get the boat, you get all the insides, but you do need to supply your own batteries, and I'm gonna use these Onyx 6 6S batteries, two of them. 6S for this motor, 6S for this motor. So on here we have some specifications, but I'm not gonna bore you with all the techno babble, so I'm just gonna put a link down below we can get the boat from and we can get all the specifications from. Anyway, that's enough waffle, let's go rip. Hey, got Stemp in the house, we're gonna take the boat out today. Let's do it man, what we've got here? So this twin motor, 6S, 6S, carbon Kevlar, it's supposed to do. 109 mile an hour on the stock props. Here, I've got some special racing propellers, and with those, it should go even faster. All right. right well, let's give it a quick rip now, see if it works. Make sure we've got it all set up properly. There's six on bolts, baby. Still got that ponytail going yeah, on there. Yeah, I think it needs another <laughs> trim, doesn't it? <laughs> Are you going to tug on it, Kev, and see if it starts? Yeah, yeah, we'll give it a little tug. Use two hands. Jesus. <laughs> it's painful watching you do that. Oh, yeah. One hand on the camera, one hand on the thing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steph's got it. That's the third year we've been doing this for the boats. Yeah. You guys keep saying you want to see Stemp back on the boats. 
managed to get hold of him finally. <laughs> I'm not that rare, bro. <laughs> so down the river there, just around that corner, there's actually a really long straight. If we're going to get 109 mile an hour, this is the place. That motor going to work, Sam? Come on, Kev, get involved. Show everyone how you tug your pud, Kev. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, it works. Should we attach it? Yeah. So we've got the speed meter on there. Hopefully, we're going to see 109 mile an hour on that. So here's our little launching system. No idea what's going to work. Now I've got to somehow try and get in this contraption without stacking it. Oh, we're off. Oh, no spiders in there. Oh, spiders. Oh, get me out of here, man. Tony Manning, can we go oh, yeah. that way? Oh no! No! Get oh, out of here, right, man! Okay, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Alright, so, controller on. Technical there, Kev, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's no... This is technical business, all this. Yeah. There's no joking, no not, laughing matter. It's not when really, it comes to us, mate. It's really serious business. <laughs> all I want to know if it dives. What? So you want to submarine it? Yeah, that's the technical I get, mate, with <laughs> these things. You ready? Go for it. What are you doing? Adjusting your nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go easy, man. Is that running right? <laughs> what? It's not steering. Just steer it while you're driving steering. it nicely. Oh, steering's the wrong way. How do you reverse steering? It's got dual weight, expo, and speed, so there's none of them. Why has he not done it before? Oh, here we go. We've got reverse, channel one. Come on, why are you not steering it? It's not doing what I'm telling it. It's not steering, dude. <laughs> I can't steer it! Oh, can't. It's a full lock one way, you won't steer it! Oh. Oh, wow. It's going in! It's We're not... better rescue it, man! <laughs> it's not steering for some reason! You got it? Go. Ah. Oh, hold on! We left that on! Oh, come on, man! Get that cold on off! We put that on there so it doesn't rip the boat! No wonder it wasn't steering! Yeah, look, we've got steering now! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's got some delay going on here. I, I fouled it, it didn't do nothing, then it went a bit later. Yeah. Oh! Why did it? <laughs> He's done that by himself! Oh, mate. Oh, we're filming the wrong way, Steve. Oh, oh, sh. Jesus. <laughs> 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 what a mess, Ken? What happened there? I don't know, you shot off. It's on his carbon fibre, or whatever it is. Oh, that man. was going a bit better there, but then it just took off. Go gen gently there, man. Oh. Get that away, Kev! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it, is. it is responding a bit better, but sometimes you let go and it just keeps going. So the steering works now. However, we've got a big delay on the throttle. When you accelerate, nothing happens. Then when you let off, it still goes for like another two seconds. <laughs> What the heck? I'm literally it's giving it a little water. squirt and it's just doing it. I'm gonna just run it up. It's not me doing that, it's just doing its own okay, thing. Well go slowly then. I can't go slowly, it's literally got no steer. It's just got a mind of its own. As soon as it goes, it does its own thing. You got the aerial out then? Yeah. Hell Stem, you have a go. <laughs> oh, that out. I told you it's going to kill itself, didn't I? No, it doesn't work when it's upside down because the aerial's in the water. Does it? I think we've got trouble with the radio. It's just cutting out. It is like a two second delay. You accelerate, nothing happens, and it goes. So I think we're going to have to get in contact with customer services and get it working. Oh, What's okay. next, Dem? Whoa! Whoa. 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 That's done that by itself. That wasn't me. Oh, you hold that. Jesus, man. This thing's dangerous. <laughs> Gosh, Dem, do your thing then. What? You hold it down the nose and I'll throttle it. Yeah. Oh, shit. No oh. way! Shut up. Oh my god, no, I said, Kev, no way, don't throttle that. That was getting oh, in my face. Jesus. That was that far off my face. Dude, I said, no, don't do it. <laughs> just cut the face. God's sake. I told you, I feel like I got that feeling, man. That thing's lethal. No, it's dead. Batches are gone. Have you gone flat? Yeah, I'm out. Next victim. 
So this boat here is the Oxidine Marine Carbon Kev. And I wanted to show you some more of it after Stempy used it, but unfortunately Stempy sunk it. Now here's all the techno babble. I'm going to put a link to the website down below if you want to check it out. Here's a couple of pictures here. Really nice build quality and, well... Yeah, I wish I could have showed you more, but here's what happened. That's bad news, that is. Well, that, that's yeah. self-writing. Really? So that means I haven't got to keep going and get it. What happened to the last time one? It sunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got all this stuff on it, all throttle and stuff. Oh, Jesus, I'm not really sure cool. how that works. The battery is a bit too big for it, so that could be bad. So that one there. So you're supposed to have some proper marine tape for this, but I forgot to buy some, so we got to use duct tape. <laughs> right, you ready? Mm. Oh, look at that one, look. Yeah. So the boat's got a GPS inside of it and it shows you on the radio how fast it's going. Man, this thing's lively. It's like a quarter pole. Oh, get it going then. <laughs> oh, it's moving. <laughs> it's dead. It's sunk and gone. Signal lost. <laughs> no, 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 that's it. That was it. It's coming back. Oh, it's coming back. It's waiting. Lucky bugger. So the boat was starting to sink. Get over there, get the engine started. <laughs> <laughs> It's sinking, quick! <laughs> oh, oh, it looks like a shark tail, bro! Got it! <gasps> oh, careful, bro! Man, these are like knife edges. Nice filled up, bro. Is it? Oh! <gasps> well, how did that get in there? <laughs> Is that getting in that hole there? Yeah, here I'll go. There, yeah, what's that? Uh, I don't know. Let's try and not sink it. So I think the battery was a little bit too heavy for it and where we taped the hatch down, I think some water was getting in. Oh, go, go, a bit easy on us, Stem. Anyway, Stempies go. Here you can see the voltages and all the miles per hour and all that technical stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Ship's are down. Should self-right. I'm over, yeah. Is it self right yeah. Sweet. The good thing with self-writing, you don't have to go and recover it yourself. Go flat all the way past. <laughs> Man, that thing moves! How fast do you reckon it is? It's got to be, what's the sound of the box how fast it's meant to go? That's got to be a good 50, isn't it? It's said 30 on there. That's got to be more than 30. Where's he gone? Uh oh. Have you sunk it? Yeah. Stem, where is it? I wasn't, I wasn't looking, I was looking at the screen. Why are you doing that? Where is it? Oh, down there! I can't see it. Uh, let's go back there then. Down there! Where? Here! Where? Down here! Where? Here! What, here? Yes. Where? <laughs> Dude, there. have you lost it? It's around here. Where? There. Here. Where? Dude. Dude, it was around right here. Was. Kev, do not accept these things again with holes in the bottom of the hole. They just don't work. How many boats have we lost now? <laughs> Two now, or three. The little boat's gone. The big boat's not really quite behaving, but we've still got the big boat. We'll get it back to the shop and we'll, we'll try and get it working good. All right, Stem, we'll take that lid off. Oh, hold on, I'm smelling a bit in there. What's smoke coming out? Look at that smoke coming out. Is it hot in there? Why is this? Oh, look. What? Oh, what's this? Oh. Shorting out on the carbon, isn't it? I don't know. It smells like electronics in here, bro. Oh, man. I think it's burnt out. Well, we'll get it back to the shop. We will get this thing working properly. Look at that injury. Look, Stem, what do you reckon? You get that when you're shaving your balls, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not with the Manscaped. That's got anti Nick. Oh, shit. Yeah, the Manscaped keeps your chicken skin safe. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, back in the shop. I rang up Oxidine Marine, the manufacturer of the boat. I've got a solution, so let's show you, fix it, and then go out again in this video. So the problem was this carbon fibre plate here. The holes inside it are not big enough. Carbon fibre's conductive. All these terminals on the motors were all shorting out. So look at that. You can see that all burnt. So this plate should have been removed before they shipped it to me. But no big deal. They sent me a couple of new ESCs, so let's chuck them in there and try again. There you go, look, you can see where it's shorted out on all six of them. So next I've got to faff about all these wires. Look, the wires go around there, under there, all through into here. It's gonna take me a little while, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. So luckily I know a quicker way. So two brand new speed controllers. Boom! There we go, got them all fitted. I didn't bother with all these carbon fiber plates because it just covers everything up and like this, it makes it easier to work on. So now let's pop the batteries in and see if it works.
Right, well it works. Let's go rip. Right, here we are on location. We've got this little lake here. It's nowhere near big enough to go like over 100 mile an hour, but we can see if it works properly now. Go down the lobby in. So the boat is now responding perfectly. No more two second delay. The steering was working perfectly. So the ESC shorting out must have been what was causing all that interference. We've got a boating expert here that does loads of boating. This is actually an RC boat club. I've got no ideas with these. I don't know if it's right or not. So do you want to have a go? And... Oh yeah, go on. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> it's gonna sink! So Finley's trying to recover it. If water gets in, it's going down, it'll be gone forever. Jason's got a recovery beacon as well. Can Jason recover it? The concentration. Oh, Finley's got it, look, with a little one. I'm filming with an iPhone 14 here and it does this annoying thing that when you zoom in, the audio goes all muffled. Anyone know any fixes? Hey! Well done, dude. Now it runs perfectly with these new speed controllers. The throttle delay that we had, I think, was caused by the ESCs being shorted out. Now that we've sorted all that out, it's working perfectly. So here I've got these high-speed propellers. So in the next video, we're going to chuck these on, get the boats back out onto the lake and see how fast it goes. Oh, Christmas every day! Got a new toy and it's massive! This is the brand new Armour Outcast 8S EXP. Check out the size of it. Check this out, double wishbone suspension, front and rear with coilover shocks. Let's have a look inside. So there's the double wishbone suspension, 8S power system, it's four wheel drive, and we got a 7075 aluminium chassis. In the past, I've bent every single aluminium chassis that I've ever had. So I'm interested to see how this one gets on. It says on the box EXB that stands for extreme bash, massive steel strength, full metal strong, bigger and stronger servo, new speed controller, bigger motor. In this video, we're gonna put it to the test and see if it's as good as they say it is. Here's the older version and this one had quite a lot of problems. So hopefully in this one, they've solved them all. In this video, we're going to find out. So on the old ones, the arms were very weak. If you jumped it and landed it at even the slightest of funny angles, they were so brittle they just exploded. <laughs> oh, armour. Nah, man, you guys have got to make some better arms. These suck. The steering servo was super weak and needed upgrading almost straight away. The shocks were really weak and just bent the shaft. The newer ones got much stiffer shafts, apparently stronger arms. The chassis on the original one bent really easily. So this one here has been upgraded with an M2C one and all these custom RC upgrade top braces. Almost every time that I use this car, it used to strip all the screws out of the bulkheads. So I had to drill bigger holes through the bulkhead and put in bigger screws. Look, you can see it poking out there. But even then the bulkhead just broke so easily. So hopefully on the new one, they've fixed it. The tyres on the new one look bigger. Here's more techno babble. More techno babble. More techno babble. More techno babble. But I'm not going to bore you with all that. So I'm just going to put a link down below where you can get all those specifications from and where you can buy it from. Anyway, in the box, you get everything that you need to run this car. So you get the controller, instruction book, this little packet here with some tools in there and stuff. But you do need to supply your own battery and charger. <laughs> Right, here we are on location. Look at that, those Gens Ace are fitting in there perfectly. We're gonna see how fast it goes on this field. And we've got a little skate park there and a few little jumps over there. Andy's brought his XRT. I prefer the XRT, I think. I haven't used this yet, but Andy prefers this one. He thinks, but he hasn't seen it go yet. So we're gonna see after the video if we still have the same opinion. Oh, wow, look at that. That new servo's got loads more power. That old one would never have done that. Power test. Whoa. I reckon that's going to be really good at stunts.
doing is so much better than the early one. That's nice. So this here is Andy's XRT. Can we have a look inside? Yeah, go for it. That's one thing I like about this XRT is the way the bodies come off. You just got four clicks under there. And then oh, got Max 6 stock motor. Max 6 stock motor, hardened dig gears, your favourite servo. Oh, you got Savox. Savox 46 kilo HV servo in there. I'm not really a fan of Savox, but you do a bit of steering. Uh, seen better, I've had worse. So next up, a little race, see who's is quicker. Now this is on the stock gearing and it also comes with high speed gearing. So later on, we're gonna put on the high speed gearing if it's not broken by then, see how that goes. <laughs> For edge. There we go, both lined up. You ready? Yeah, man. Ready, steady, go, 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 go. Oh, I'm wheeling. <laughs> Back again. You know, you all just got the acceleration because it's longer, not really in, but top end, there's not really much in it. Oh! <laughs> it's not durability test yet. <laughs> what a landing! Oh, but the chassis still straight after that. Beautiful. So here we got a GPS and that actually talks to this little box here because people always ask. So this stock gearing, this one here slightly geared up. Andy reckons that this one top ends a little bit more. So let's check it on the GPS and see. All right, let's go. Flat out. Oh, that's full. That's flat out. 50 mile an hour. That's 50 on the slow gearing. But anyway, I want to see how fast Andy's XRT goes. Shove that on there. Reset the app. It's not much in it. I'll say 45. What do you reckon? Oh! All right, about 46. 50! <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> Well, I'm going to set myself a challenge with a raminator. We went flat out across the grass there. Then we hit this ramp here. Then it went all the way across and then landed on that ramp. Let's see if the outcast can do it. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. That went further than expected. But it does have a funny noise coming out of it. Should we investigate? I thought it's gone in the field next door. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So, servo started making noises. What do you reckon it is? Oh, you know what I reckon? It's getting it now! Oh! I got the sun in my eyes up there and I couldn't see which way round it was. Oh, but what a landing. That, that's got to be dead. That has to be dead. There's no way that's alive. It can't be. Oh, it's not driving. There's no way that could be alive, surely, after that. Oh, has the battery come unplugged? Plug him back in. Oh, servo's a bit noisy, but I think, I think we're good. <laughs> So far, this car's an absolute tank. It's taking it. Let's do it again. The trouble is, when it was coming across there, I thought, better quickly look, just to make sure that there's nobody there. And then it hit the ramp monkey. Then I went like that, and I had the sun literally in my eye, and I couldn't see. <laughs> she took it. I try the same again, but a backflip? No. What about a forward flip? Or a front flip. Man, when you do a front flip, it always goes wrong. It always twists and goes funny. I don't really know why. If you guys know how to do it nicely, let me know in the comments. Let's give it a go anyway. Oh, yes! Nailed it! Nice. Next, we're going to try a backflip. I think for doing really backflip, it needs gearing up. It's a little bit lazy, but let's give it a go anyway. It's getting noisier. Oh, oh, 
Just, only just made it. We do it, Andy. Trying to up the punch on the outcast, but it's been trying to look at the manual. So you can do it with a program box. However, we haven't got a program box on us. Andy reckons once the punch is up, it's going to backflip easier. But about the program box, you've got to press this and press that. Too complicated for me. Right, there we go. Hopefully now we've got full punch. Maximum power. Isn't that? Right, let's get you in there. This is how I do my filming look. Have a little phone mount there so you clip that in. Now I can film and drive at the same time. You blow the diffs out now, won't it? Right, here we go. Back flip. See if it helps. Oh, not really. <laughs> Good tree back flip, though. <laughs> <laughs> Shot me in the belly. Nailed it. Hey, Andy's off with the XRP. Nice. That dog wants it. Look. It's stuff to the moon. That was to the sun. I've got a challenge. It's probably going to go wrong. What's that? Do you reckon you can take a run up from there, hit that, and then clear that railing? Oh, no, what do you reckon? Not with this one, I don't think. Shall so I give it a go on my one? We'll both give it a go, shall we? Yeah, all right. Not in it. <laughs> not in it. <laughs> Andy's learning. You ready? Yeah. Ready, steady, go. Oh, I completely missed. Oh! <laughs> Still going though. Yeah. One more go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh! Oh, no, 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 that wasn't good. What's that? Oh, you made that on your printer, didn't you? Yeah. What is it? It goes in there. Oh! Absolutely fine. That landed like on there. Let's try it once more with the outcast. One more, one more time. You know, it's always the one more that finishes it, but one more. Look at that, XRT loves it. Oh! Yeah, that's pretty standard for XRTs. Right, my go! Oh, 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 oh! Ooh! 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 What's this? What? What is this? That? It's like a shock housing. Oh, it says armour on it. Ah, oh. should we investigate? That was such a nasty landing. Oh! Oh, you know what that means? Oh. Maybe Ben Chassis. Do do, do do, do do. No, it looks all right. You have to get straight edge on it, but it looks fine. So it needs a back to be sticking out. Oh, I don't know. That could be the bulkhead. The old one had a problem that the bulkheads always used to strip out. The chassis is looking straight though. Oh, it's Christmas every day. It's been a while since we've done a Banggood special and you guys have been requesting it. So here it is. Now the controller has got a few special features on there. So we're going to show you what these do in a minute. I don't even know what they do, but we're going to figure it out in a minute. I've been doing a lot more of these high-end RC cars recently, but a lot of you guys want to see some of the cheaper stuff. So this channel, you're, you're going to get some more of the cheaper stuff. Not only cheaper stuff, but more cheaper stuff. And then the main channel is going to be more of the higher end stuff. So first of all, battery's in. Then the truck's got the battery under here. And that plugs in here. Haven't charged it yet, so no idea if it's going to work. So we've got headlights. Six wheel drive. Solid axles. Leaf sprung suspension. Tyres that come off. Might we'll have to add a bit of glue to that in a minute. If we look down the chassis, it's got these wires that go into here. Then this has got a little linkage thing that goes to this thing so i'm guessing these go up and down so steering plenty of speed and power throttle there you see all the four wheel no, six wheel drive system working so let's see what these buttons do nothing 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 how do you make the ramps go up hmm uh, ah, English. So this here is trim for the steering. Steering dual rate. Headlight on and off. Right or dual rate. Auxiliary output. No idea. But we want this to go up. Let's have a look on the internet. Aha. Ah. Yes. I am a man-child. 
So reversing a real truck with a trailer is actually pretty difficult. I wonder what it's like with a toy. Here we go. Oh. All right, let's try and reverse this trailer into that gap there. It's not working. Now back. Oh, oh, oh no. Ugh. This is more difficult than it looks, you know. Get it straight and then reverse. And then, all right, you gotta see it the opposite. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, ah, oh, no. All right. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> man, this is impossible. Oh man, this is so hard. Here we go, we're gonna do it now. Oh, here we go, look at that, we're a pro. Who said truck driving was difficult? This is too easy. So next up, I want to see how much weight we can carry on this trailer. And then later on, I want to take it off-road and see how well it can perform off-road because it is six by six, so it should be able to do off-road. So far, this thing is actually quite a lot of fun. And if you want to know where we can get one from, I'm going to put a link to that down below and then you can learn how to reverse with a trailer or at least with a toy trailer as well right here we go we've got to deliver these two corners somewhere Oh no, we've got a bit of suckage going on. I think we have reached the limits. Anyway, let's see how much weight we can get on there. One and a half litres of water. It's quite heavy. Is it going to do it? Oh, <laughs> wrong controller. Here we go. Oh, look at that, easy. I'm getting better at this reversing. Let's see if I can reverse it next to the Ravenator. Let's see if we can get an idea of the size of it. This thing is pretty long. I was getting better at reversing, not anymore. All right, hold on. Look at that. It's almost the same size as the Ravenator lengthwise. Right, more weight. Da -da 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 -da. We've really got a heavy load now. But I reckon we can get more on Raminator tyre. You know what? I reckon that'll take all four of them. Right, here we go. Still doing it. Let's really overload it. Let's get all four of them on there and see what happens. It can't move with all that, can it? Surely. I'm still doing it. Look at that. Still moving it. All right. It's doing an important delivery. It's not wanting to steer with all that weight on there. I'm struggling now. Come on. Come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. Oh. I'm not going to steer. The trailer's scraping on the floor. Oh. I don't know if it's my lack of skills or the lack of steering power, but we've done it. All right, let's get the speed going. Right, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Uh oh. Oh. Ah, oh, and we're stuck. I smell a burning smell. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know if it's that. Maybe it is that. Hopefully it's not something in here that's caught fire. Oh, round about here smells burning. What? That's not good. We have a sprinkler system, so hopefully that's not going to go off in a minute. Hey, could it be in here? <laughs> no. Probably is that. Yeah, it is that.
Yeah, we overloaded it. It still works though. Right, give that a minute to cool down and let's see how steep these can go up there. And then I want to see how steep that can go as well. So here we go, this is a Fui Tech. Oh, look at that. Let's go a little bit more. Oh yeah, look, subscribe. So in here somewhere, 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 I've got a angle device, but I can't remember where I put it. Oh, where's he gone? Found it! Right, let's shove him on there. 51 degrees. Right, come on, you can do it. Yep, 51 easy. Let's get it up a little bit steeper. 55 degrees. Oh, no! <laughs> this little Fui Tech crawler is actually quite epic. Look at that, it's got portal axles, brushless motor. Watch how slow you can go with this. That's crazy. Let's see if we can make it up there with a the lid off. By the looks of it, it's feeding it automatically more power as it's getting to a new obstacle. Right, I know you can't be asked to wait, so right, start from here, see what happens. Is it making it up? That's making it up as well, look at that. Right, enough of that. Next! So this one here, I've actually given it front and rear wheel steering. So this one here started out life as a SEX24. It's also got the Fury Tech brushless motor in there. This one's a bit bigger though. Got a whole load of true upgrades on there, portal axle upgrade kit, actual steel rims. So we've got front steering, rear steering. We can crab it. If I remember correctly, this is not so impressive on steep hills. I think this, the weight is quite high up on this one. So I think it's gonna have no chance of getting up this. Yeah, there we go. But in a minute, I'm gonna set up an obstacle course and I wanna see how well these cars can go, especially this one here. Next, the big boy. Uh-oh, that tire's coming off. Yeah, get him back on there. Should probably glue it. All right, trailer disconnect, so that off. And we pull this here, and now if we drive forward, it should come out. <laughs> Something like that. Let's get our trailer out of the way. All right, let's see. Will it do it? We've got the bumper digging in. I mean, this is definitely not designed for this kind of extreme off-road. What we did earlier outside was probably perfect. Oh, postman. Oh, it's Christmas every day. A bit of Amazon going on here. So this is a bicycle inner tube. So these monster truck tires here, the air's come out. So if we try and pump it up again, look, it's got all that gap there. So Tony from Swamp Thing, he reckons if I get an inner tube and get that round there, like that, then pump it up, that's gonna bridge that gap and then I can pump up the main tire. Now all the monster truck content is gonna be over on the main channel. Oh, new plane, that's on the main channel as well. And here I've got a jet plane and this has actually got a real jet turbine engine in there, look. So subscribe to my main YouTube channel. Anyway, we need something here to bridge that gap. And now hopefully, come on, can you do it? If that can get up this deepness, I'm gonna be surprised. Oh, look at that. Oh, hasn't got, oh, hasn't quite got the power. If this had more power, it could, look, the long wheelbase is really helping it. Let's take a run up. Full power. Burnt out. I think the battery's gone flat, so let's charge him up and then try again in a minute. And it comes with a charger here, so we just plug him in there, and then that end into a USB. So while that's charging up, I was gonna have a quick look at these drive shafts on here. So on Tom Lee's one, these sort of popped out and they broke, and I've had some other similar crawlers, similar design, where that happens too. So over here, I've got this fibre tape. It's literally tape with glass fibre in it. Get a bit of this tape, and then just wrap it around the joint. Might work, it might not. We'll see in a minute. Might be better off doing it with two smaller bits. I'm not really sure. I don't know, what do you reckon? Better like that or better like that? All right, let's do the rest of them. Boom! And while we had it, might as well put a bit of glue on these tires. Get a bit of that on there, makes it go off quicker. It does leave a little bit of a white residue sometimes. It's not quite strong, but yeah, not in it. And now down here, look, we've got the world's best RC off-road course. And oh yes, look, battery's charged. Oh, I think we might have burnt out the motor with all that weight on there. I don't think this motor's too happy. I wonder if we get a bit of oil in there. Oh, I have to give it a little push. <laughs> no, I think it's game over on this one. But anyway, we've still got the other two to play with. I'm going slow here. It will obviously go a lot faster. Here's full speed because we're crawling. We're gonna try and do it as slowly as possible to have control. Oh, look at that, making easy work of it. Oh, look, that's just too easy. I thought it was gonna struggle. Oh, it is struggling. 
Ah, look at this fully grown man playing with a little toy car. What a man child. Come on. Come on, get the grip. Get the grip. A little bit of a bump. Oh, 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 just hanging on for dear life. And oh, come on, let's get a bit of rear steer on there. Oh, all right, and now we need a bit of rear steer that way. Come on, come on. Yes, yes. <laughs> it did it. Look how small it is compared to the mighty Raminator. Run up. Oh, oh, oh. I wonder if you can put the trailer on here. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Challenge. I've got to reverse it from there, all the way around there, around there, and into there. Got rear steer. That's going to help get it round a bit tighter. All right, here we go. And we got to swing him round there. Oh, look at that. They should put rear steer on real lorries. There we go, look at that, in, we're in. We're getting too good at this. Will it crawl? Oh, will he make it? Look at that, he's eating it up. Ah. Oh. Here we go, furry tech time. It's a lot faster, but will it crawl as well? So far, so good. It's longer wheel base, so it shouldn't tip back as easy. And oh, look at that! Oh, oh, oh! And just so that we don't get accused for clickbaiting, let's see if it works. Oh, oh look, it's moving! Ah, oh, and it stopped. Come on. Come on. Subscribe. This is gonna go to the moon. Here we go. Flat out. <laughs> oh, I missed. Oh, I think it's game over. Let's investigate. It's not looking good. So up until now, the Traxxas X Max has been the king of Basher RC trucks. But that could be about to change with this, the Armour Outcast 8S EXB. Version two. In the last video, we gave this truck quite a beating and it took it surprisingly well. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. The only thing we broke was this and the servo started clicking. So I've got these chassis stiffeners here from Custom RC Upgrades and the upgraded Eco Power High Torque Servo. Apart from that, everything else appears to have held up perfectly. On the previous models, the chassis used to bend relatively easily, but on this one, it's actually stayed straight. So maybe they've made it out of a better material this time. The arms used to be really weak on the original one. But now, they're all perfect. Speed-wise, it was fast. It did 50 mile an hour on grass with a stock gearing. However, it wasn't the best for stunts. I think because this rig is so heavy, it just needs more power or more wheel speed to be able to do backflips better. Nah. But luckily, in the box does come a high-speed pinion. By fitting this onto the truck, it's going to make it a lot faster. Make the wheel spin faster, which is going to make it better for stunts. Now, gearing up your truck is risky business because you're going to put more load on the motor and the speed controller, and it could even catch fire. So hopefully, that's not going to happen to this one. So we're going to chuck on these upgrades, and then we're going to take it out for a rip. Yes! Oh, and while we're at it, we've got all these upgrades here from M2C Racing. More on that later in this video. I see a few comments in the last video where people said, meh, you spend a thousand dollars on the truck and then you got to spend another five hundred dollars on upgrades. Well, you don't have to spend any money on upgrades at all. I just want to. You know, these trucks are perfectly capable as they are out of the box for the average basher. But when you want to go extreme, as with any RC toy, you have to make some upgrades. Just with some more than others. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get wrenching and then take this truck out for a rip. And one of you viewers is going to win this truck with all the upgrades. More on that later and link in the description for more info. Right, let's get stuff fitted. So we're going to start off with removing the wheels and tyres and taking the chassis off. And it's going to give us more access to the other parts for upgrade.
So the new upgraded shocks got thicker shock shafts, makes them a lot stronger. However, M2C have an even thicker shaft, and that makes it even stronger. So stock shaft, six millimeters, M2C, seven. I'm just putting a little bit of shock hole in here just to lube it all up a little bit. Now we just need to get the piston out and then put the shock back together. Next up, let's get this heavy duty steering rack in. And while we're at it, we can get the hinge pins in, the hinge pin blocks and the heavy duty drive shaft. Boom! Stock drive shafts, 5.7 millimeter, M2C, seven on the end, but when you go to the center, eight. So you might notice that this new steering rack, it's on the angle, it's not straight, and we're getting more lock this way than that way. That way there, look, it's hitting on there. Now they did this on purpose so you can fit in a big can motor. So where the back of the motor sits here, often when you put a big motor in, it will rub on this piece here. So the smaller bell crank moves that in. So all we gotta do is just grind a little bit off of this so it can clear it. And there we go, steering both ways. Next up, these hubs can come loose quite easily. So M2C has a solution. So stock one, plastic, M2C one, metal, and it's got this shoulder here that wedges into the plastic. So now look, that's gone tight. So now we can tighten that all the way up. Nice and tight, and this moves perfectly. Next up, we've got to do the same to the back. Now with the front and the back done, let's move on to the servo. Because this one here has got noisy. So next up, let's get the high speed pinion fitted. Then we can put it all back together and take it out for a rip. Here's the stock one, here's the faster one. That is gonna go so much faster. You wait until you see this. Now it says on here, do not use the high speed gearing for off road or high load. But the Outcast is supposed to be a stunt truck and under stock gearing, it doesn't really do stunts very well. So we need the extra wheel speed, but hopefully it's not gonna catch fire. And now we can fit it all to this M2C 7075 chassis. So one of the problems on these Outcasts is that these bolts here can strip out of the bulkhead. The stock ones that are in there are really short, but you can get longer ones in there. So this, is how long we can go. Look at that compared to the stock one. So we can easily up it up to this size. M5 by 25. Now at the very front and at the very rear, you can't go quite as long. If you shove that down there. You've only got this much. So you can still go a little bit longer. However, I like to get a four mil drill bit and just really quick this up. Same in the back. So now we can get an M5 by 25, the same size as we used before, and it should go straight in. Then if we look here, look, you can see where we drilled through, it's just showing the head of that bolt. That makes that whole front and rear end so much stronger. Otherwise, when you bash hard, you always rip these bulkheads off of the chassis. The longer the screws you can get in there, the stronger it's gonna be. And all that we need to do now is get these beautiful custom RC upgrade chassis braces on, get the wheels on, and then we can go rip. Boom! There we go, ready to rip. Oh, so we did 50 mile an hour on the stock gearing on grass. Oh, 
that's full brakes, it's non-existent. The brakes are non-existent and we can't even get the program box to work, so we can't give it more brakes. So here's full brakes, you ready? Full. What do you reckon? 62, I reckon. 58, how can it only be eight more? 58 mile an hour. But still, that's quick still, but... All right, skate park, see if we can get some stunts out of it. Oh! <laughs> it goes to GPS. <laughs> Here we are, next location, skate park. Andy's got the X Max. Reckon a backflip? Should do. Right, ready, steady, go. Oh. <laughs> nope. Footage. 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 Glass, no lit, ah, say no to strangers, doesn't say anything about no RC cars. And if a stranger comes and says we're not allowed, it says don't talk to him, so we're covered. Here we go, skate park action. So you can win this car with all the upgrades on it, it's worth well over $1,500. You can enter from anywhere in the world and I'll ship it to your door for free. Check the link in the description and pinned comment. Let's make the most of this night. Come on, baby, take my hand. And we don't need to do the things we don't want to do. Oh! Oh, oh. oh my God, that was savage. That landed on there. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's a little plastic in there. So we have to drill those out and put in longer screws. That's where it hit. It's perfect. Yeah. Right, get the body off. So that's what normally breaks when you do stuff like that. And these are all perfect. That screw that came out is out of this thing here in the middle. So we just drill them out, put longer screws in. And well, it's holding up well. Impressed. Back it Oh, just. Oh, the X-Max does it a lot better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! That was an M2C chassis tester. Oh! Oh! On the nose. Right. Let's have a look at this chassis. Perfect. Spot on. Oh, now it's... Yeah, that went round. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Oh! Uh oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, she's not sounding good. Oh, we'll be done. That front arm snapped, didn't it? Oh, pins come out the bottom. Oh, tracks is tough, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> right, so next up, we can go flat out across there and hit that over there. This is gonna go to the moon. Right, here we go. Flat out. <laughs> oh, missed. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> oh, you broke it. I think it's game over. Let's investigate. It's not looking good. I was not looking good. Oh, this is all collapsed. Oh, shocked and everything in the stack. Oh, no. Hold on, hold on, we get that off and we'll have a look. Ah. Are you ready? Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, I want to rip the arm out. Oh, and the top arm's done. And that's done. Oh, motor on that gearing is cold. I guess I'll take it back to the shop and fix it. So Andy has poorly x max But it still works. So what are you going to do now? To the moon. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> x max tough, baby. Oh, to the moon. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. That was just a bad landing. No idea if it's all right. Let's have a look. Do you think it's going to work? Yeah. X-Max tough baby, of course it's gonna work. Normally the thing with X-Max is no matter how bad they are, they normally still work. Oh, look at that, still going. What are you doing now? 
Oh. oh! Nice! What, so you want to go across there and then skip that one and hit the bigger one? Yeah. Okay! Uh oh! <laughs> it nearly speared itself on that pipe! Uh oh! It's got to be a chassis broken in half. It's got to be. What? Yeah, Max Max is a something else. They just keep going and going. It's got to be broken from that landing, isn't it? It's fine, isn't it? It looked like it landed across here somewhere. I think your popped out, though. This RC car is heavy and... Massive. And it's supposed to do 60 miles per hour. But I want to put this giant motor in it and see if we can make it even faster. Look at that, it's bigger than a soda can. Here it is next to a Red Bull. But anyway, let's first unbox it and see what we're dealing with. This is the brand new Armour Creighton 8S EXB version 2. Man, this thing is a bit of a beast and it's supposed to be extremely durable. This one here is a new Outcast EXP that I did a video on very recently and some of you guys gave me a bit of a hard time because I gave it some extreme upgrades and you guys wanted to see how it performed stock a little bit more. So we're going to run it stock first in this video. We're going to durability test it stock in this video. Then I want to fit a bigger motor in this video and then run it again also in this video. Now the Outcast is shorter and more for stunts while the Creighton is longer and more for stability. And just like the Outcast, the Creighton version 2 has got quite a few upgrades included with the truck. We've got a bigger motor, so that should give us more power to do 60 mile an hour. Now fitted in the truck is the slow speed gearing, more for bashing. However, in the box, you also get the high speed gearing to hopefully hit that 60 mile an hour. We've got a new speed controller there to take the extra power. We've got a stronger and bigger servo. It's supposed to have 47% more torque. However, the Outcast had the same servo and it started clicking. Maybe unlucky, maybe dodgy. In this one, we're gonna find out. Now, this Outcast has been severely modified and you can win it in a competition that I've set up. You've got Eco power servo, custom RC upgrade, heavy duty chassis braces, M2C steering rack, hinge pin blocks, M2C drive shafts, heavy duty shock conversion kit, pillow ball conversion kit, super durable M2C 7075 aluminium chassis. Here's your take no babble. So if you want a chance to win this car, there's a link down below in the description box. Anyway, the Creighton being extreme bash, it's got an extremely durable 7075 aluminium chassis. Now, in the past, these have been prone to bending, but being the version 2, I'm hoping it's going to survive. In this video, we're going to find out. Anyway, they've got a whole bunch of other upgrades on the version 2, stronger plastics and more techno babble. You've got all these specifications on the box, more specifications here, more rounds here, more there. But I know most of you just want to see it run, so I'm not going to bore you with all the techno babble. I'm just going to put a link down below in the description box where you can buy this car from and also where you can get all those specifications. Now, I'm going to be running it on these Gens Ace 4S Live Posts, so two of those 8S. Now, to Fit it in there, we've got to undo some screws, open out the battery box, and then it should fit. Now, it's a bit of a controversial subject. What is better, Traxxas or Armour? Both of them have got pros and cons, but ultimately, the best one for you is whichever one puts the biggest smile on your face. So, I just watch some videos on this channel and in YouTube in general, and just make up your own mind. You're going to have fun with both of them. Right, that's enough waffle. Let's go back. Do a speed test with the GPS. Put the high speed gearing on. Then another speed test. Then giant motor in. Then another speed test. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Here we are on location. Got Andy and AS in the house. What choice you got? Oh, Steven means business. Only five. Rustler, Granite, Savage, X Max, and Amp. Boom. And what's Andy got? Just X Max. Beautiful. How long So let's get him on and see what it's all about. Steering. Yep. Plenty of speed and power. And nothing fell off. Yet. Oi! Oi! You fell 
and stones and water. <laughs> we got tiny in the house. <laughs> Here we go, first challenge. Success. <laughs> How easy, look at that. Can you, Andy, do it as well as that? Here comes the X Max. I feel the crating might have done it nicer. Who can do it the slowest, side by side? <laughs> That's a win, surprisingly, for the crater. I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> you know what? This handling lovely. That is handling really good. On my first crate in version 1AS, we took off from that and it landed on that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Instantly bent the chassis. I want to try that a bit later, but first, let's see how fast it can go on the stock gearing on grass. There we go, zero mile an hour on the GP of S. <laughs> oh, in the face. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, don't forget, this is the slow speed gearing. Oh, that's moving, that's fast. Let's see what she did. This thing handles good, man. 47 mile an hour. 47 mile an hour on the stock gearing. That's pretty good. I have a challenge. What you gotta do is take off from there, hit the brakes, and then land on the front wheels, and then the back wheels are not allowed to touch until we get back onto the concrete. Who do you reckon can do it first? Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, let's give it a go. So you've got to go fairly slow. Wakes on. Ah, oh, didn't do it. Next. So Steven's got his Savage there, and he's got his X Max. No. Ah, oh, no, too fast. Too fast. Ah. Oh. oh, new body. Footage. <laughs> It didn't quite manage it, did it? No, too fast. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'm gonna try the chassis bender. Take off from that one and land on that one. Here we go. Oh! Oh! Got guys in the house. What you got, mate? He's got his, oh, XRT. XRT and the X Max. X Max over. Um, a Max 5 on this now. Yeah? Stupid power, yeah. Oh, what do you reckon? Did you take it? It's fine. Dead straight, look. Perfect. Oh. That's what killed the original one. So, yeah, that's a plus point for that one. Full power. <laughs> look at that, this thing's a beast. Well, I'm going to try the suicide jump. This is bad because if you don't make it, it crashes into that. Here we go, full power. Oh! Let's try it again. Oh, I missed again. Where is it? Ah, oh, steering's gone. Game over. Steering's done. No, we've got a problem. No steering and no power now. Yeah. Oh! oh Button's gone. Oh no, look, broken. That chassis brace is broke. Steering wise. Oh, it's broke. Yeah. No, servo's fine. Oh yeah, it's quite broken. We've got broken steering components down there. Plug it back in, see if it works. Upgrades, people, upgrades. Come on. Uh, dead. Well. Nothing. Oh, I think, oh. I think it did. Oh. No, here, game over. Yeah, the motor has gone. There's no steering, no nothing, it's all died. Oh. The lot's on in there. No lot on the AC. Nobody finds the weaknesses as quick as we do on this channel. So back to the shop, 
bigger motor, fix it, back in action. So let's take it apart, see if we can find out what's wrong with it, then see if we can fit this giant motor into it, then take it out for round two in this video. When you're doing those massive jumps and landing on concrete, the chassis comes down, hits the floor, puts a massive shock wave through like everything electrical and can just ruin it. So maybe that's what's happened to the speed controller. Let's investigate. Jesus, that speed controller is on there. How's that gonna come off? How is that held on there? Can't just be tape, can it? Look at that, that is some good stuff. Oh, oh my god. Sometimes when the ESC stops working, it can just come unplugged from the receiver, but it's still in there by the looks of it. So while that's out, it's gonna make it easier to fix the steering. So the part that's actually broken is one of these bell cranks, goes in there somewhere. It's the quickest way that I know how to get that in. Boom! I should really put an M2C1 in like I have on the Outcast AS, but I don't have one, so plastic's gonna have to do for now. Also, look here, look, this center support brace thing, got a bit of plastic missing there. That means it's gonna start flapping, so I've got some M2C1s here to put on it. So next we've got to take the motor mount off of the old motor and fit it onto the new one. Oh. We have a problem because the motor is so tall, look, it will not fit in the chassis. And even on the other end here, look, it's going to hit on all the suspension. There's no way this is going to fit. But luckily, I've got this brand new hobby wing combo here. Hopefully that one's going to fit. This is the brand new Hobby Wing Max 5 G2. Now this speed controller can do 12 S LiPo. The original can only do eight. And more S means more power. So hopefully this motor's gonna fit into here and it doesn't. It hits onto there. Now M2C's version two belt crank system. It's shorter on one side to allow room for the motor. So I've ordered it up. So now we just gotta wait for it to turn up. And while that's happening, we might as well have a little look to see which component in here failed and made it all stop working. So first of all, we can check the receiver and the servo by plugging in a separate battery pack. So controller on, and then we get this battery and we plug it directly into the receiver. That's powered up. But nothing's happening. Now that could be a dead servo, so to iron that out, we can pull this servo out. So I've got a different servo here that I know that works, and we can go ahead and plug that one in. Look at that. That servo moves. That means the receiver's good, the radio's good, the servo's bad. So here I've got a servo tester. So that all works. So now let's plug in this servo inside the car. You plug that into there. Yep, servo dead. Look, nothing's happening. Let's check it the other way around just to make sure. Yep, game over. Luckily here, I've got an Eco Power servo, and this is the same servo that I put into the Outcast, and that worked perfectly. So you can stick that in there in a minute. But anyway, I want to see if the speed controller and the motor's faulty. So we've got the motor, speed controller, servo tester, power for the servo tester. So now all we got to do is plug in the speed controller. Hopefully no fire. In here, the little button's gone, so we can just turn it on like that. We've got flashing light there. Don't know what that means. You turn this dial. That is supposed to make it work, and it isn't. So it appears the speed controller is dead. Just to make sure, we can try this plug here the other way around. And oh, it doesn't like it. It just completely turns off this. See what happens if you turn it on. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So that last jump killed the speed controller and killed the servo. Landing these cars with metal chassis directly onto concrete, it just completely ruins the electronics. On a car with a plastic chassis, the absorption of the plastic kind of saves the electronics. Well, this metal one is just directly smashed straight onto the concrete. So if you want to go onto concrete skate parks, you're probably best off with plastic chassis. Luckily, I know the quick way of getting it in there. I've only just shown you the exact same job on this car, so no point showing you the same one again. Here we go. Boom! That fitted in there perfectly. So this is the stock pinion. This one here, the high speed pinion. So we're gonna run with the high speed one. Now with this pinion here, it's supposed to do 60 mile an hour on the stock motor. And on ATS, with a bigger motor and more S's, we should be able to go a lot more. So we can't put this in yet until we get the M2C steering. And while we're waiting, we can mount the ESC. So to get it to go onto here, M2C make a nice little adapter plate. So that goes on there. And then that goes on there. Then here we've got some EC5 compatible Onyx connectors. Uh, 
And now we can install it all into the car. It's been a few days and it has arrived. So you see how this one sticks out here. This one here's got one shorter bell crank and that's going to bring it in. I've already shown you how to fit it on the Outcast video. So we're going to put them on a different way. Boom! There we go, got it all in there. So now if you look at it, the steering rack is at the angle. So now, go ahead, slide the motor in. There we go, look, just enough clearance. And we still get full steering both ways. Oh no, look, it hits on the new motor. So we have to grind a little bit out of this piece. Or snip. There we go, ready for action. some new microphones we're testing out by the way so if the audio works happy days if it doesn't unlucky it's gonna be voiceover we've got the batteries in we've got the gen zace in there look got gps on there track start oh it's got some power do you know what now that i've got microphone i can stand to the other side of the road and you can still hear me oh that's got power man here we go flat out whoa oh that diff didn't sound good Oh, go then. What, what speed have we got so far? 56. 56, is that it? All right, we've got to go again. Here we go, flat out. Well, that's full. That's full power. Whoa, car coming. <laughs> Here we go, full speed. Oh, that's full. Full power, that's full. Oh, those diffs, man. How can that be killing the diffs already? Oh, i tough. Slows down quick though. You know why? That is why Spectrum put such a low brakes on their stuff to save the diff, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Tumble one ball. Next location, skate park. And this is one of the roughest skate parks that we've ever been to. We've only been there a couple of times. Oh, before we go, we've got to see what the speed is. But GPS is gone. GPS has fell off somewhere. No idea where it is. You found it. You got it. What's the speed say? 57. 57? 57. So we got a slight disappointment there on the speed. We was hoping for over 60. Different motors, different gearing. God knows. But anyway, skate park next. Let's go. <laughs> Boom. Here we are on location. We got crew in the house. <laughs> This place is voted as one of the Europe's best skate parks. The thing is punishing. Look at this, man. Bowl there, bowl there, bowl there. Nothing survives this place, like nothing. If this Creighton survives, I'll be surprised. Right, let's go. Oh, hey. Forrest Mitch in the house. What up? <laughs> what up? What you got? I got Big Rock. Big Rock, skateboard. Big rock. Yep. Oh, ASD's got his scent on. Hello, Stephen. Oh, guys in the house, we got there, mate. XRT. XRT, and I got an X Max in the car. Yep, yeah, nice, nice. Let's get a little montage of this thing down there. Oh, screws backing out the bulkhead. I've got myself a challenge. I've got to take off from this piece, over the top of that, and then land there. Oh! Oh! <laughs> right, I'm going to try that flat out, see what happens. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Oh, oh, oh! How severe! Still going though.
Oh, 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 oh. Oh, this looks so... Oh, oh my God. You're not going to believe this. Is that a chassis You're not... Oh, it's crippled. What, what has happened to it? Oh, look. Front bulkhead off. Rear bulkhead off. Getting it now. Oh, oh. It stopped working. Why did it stop working? Oh, the body's had it. Oh, my God. Oh, this has come out. Look at that bulkhead is completely off. Oh, my God. And the back one the same. All right, well. What about the chassis, though? Chassis all right. Oh, all the screws are coming out everywhere. Look at that. Oh, the, oh one missing. Okay, right, let's plug it back in and carry on. Later on, if it survives, this ESC can do 12S. I want to try it on 12S and see again how fast it goes. <laughs> Steering's not very good. All right, here we go. To the moon. Flat out. How's it still going? Ah, oh, sick. Game over. Careful, you bend it. <laughs> what have you busted? Oh. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. Man, that's oh. wow. Oh, damn. Uh, you know what? That's I broken. don't think that's quite right. That brace wrong. is only holding together now, isn't it? I'm a tough baby. <laughs> Pick it up like that, and it looks okay. You put it down like that, and no. <laughs> broken. No. Oh, Back to the shop, fix it. Then I want to run it on 12S. Here we go, guys, for the XRT. Steve's got his savage. Oh no, Steve's off. Oh, he made it out. Uh oh. Oh! oh. How did that go that way? What happened? Lost control, guard transition. <laughs> 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 it's slippery on there, dude. <laughs> We've got a new toy. The world's smallest radio-controlled lorry. You guys in America call it a semi. Here in the UK, a semi means something a little bit different. So it says tractor and trailer can be controlled independently. So this is the tractor, and we can turn that on. And this is the trailer, you can also turn that on. No idea what it all does, but in this video, we're going to find out. By the way, want to win one of my RC cars? See the link in the description. So we've got a load of techno babble on there. More techno babble on there. It's got 10 channels on here, so we're gonna figure out what all that lot does. It's four wheel drive, really, for something that small. It's got horn different speeds. Blah, 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 blah. Enough techno babble. I'm just gonna put a link down below where you can get all the specifications from and where you can get the truck from. So here comes a container that we need to assemble. So while we do that, let's charge everything up. So USB-C, USB-C. Next up, bit of double-sided tape on there. We've got to get that on there. And it doesn't stay. So we'll just get some elastic bands on there. Boom. Why are you not working? Ah. Look at that, we've got an indicator. It's even making the noise. Yeah, see what it all does, so... Look at that, it's four-wheel drive. Not sure what that does. Oh, they're steering. No idea what that does. We've got some stuff here. Go that way. That way. And off. No idea. So next, we've got to try and get this to go onto there. Now... 
The hard bit is going to be trying to reverse. Oh, it makes a noise. Right, I'm going to try and reverse it into this gap here. Oh, yes, look at that. Oh, no, we crashed. Oh, look. So if we go up, does that mean we can drive forward and... Oh, look at that. Make it drive around, do whatever. Let's see, we can load it back up again. So we go in like that and then... Ha! Look at that, we're off. Get Vinny back in the video. Where you been? Is there any illegals in the back of your truck? Oh, I don't know. Is there any in there? No. No, we're, we're good. Lucky. We're lucky. Right, challenge. What? You've got to try and park that in there. Try Backwards. In there. Backwards. Yeah, Alex, have a go first. Right, Alex, we got all of associated professional team pilot. You'll <laughs> get it in there easy. Hey, Vinny's go. Look at the skill. I think I've jacked nice here. Uh, He's smart. Huh? Oh, no, I reckon Max can do better. I'm trying to fly it. Yeah, I'll try and reverse it in there, Max. Come on, Max. Just drive it forward, Max. It'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> that nice? Hey, I've never seen that over there, though. Oh, well done, Max. Well done, Max. Hey! Jacks, go. Go on, go on. Go, 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 go. In there. My dad would be able to do it. Oh What's yeah, your, your dad used to be a lorry driver. Right, where is he? Can I just go front in? Look, there you go. Ah, did you used to be a lorry driver, Steve? Yeah, I did. Right, here we got a professional lorry driver. You've got to reverse it into there. Oh look, he's did it like a. Oh, he's a, he's a pilot. You've got to reverse it into there. Okay. I thought he's a professional. I'm trying to work out how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, we're running out of film here. Oh, All right. Oh. I had to pass the caravan license. Oh, all right. There you go. Down, 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 down. Hey, you've done it. Bit of YouTube in going on over there. <laughs> Jack has just discovered something. What you, what you found out? This button here. Yeah. Does all the lights. Look at that. Mains and high beams. <laughs> and interior. Oh, look at that, an underglow. Everyone here just wants to play with it. Meow. We just got the instructions out and learned a few more things. We learned sound switch, which will give you the volume. I right, got it, Max. Give us some volume. That's it. And then if you push up. <laughs> and if you press this button here, you can, take the as well. you can hear it now. <laughs> What's more fun, that or your Xbox? That? Yeah, there you go. Next up, we have some more contestants. First up, we have Andy. Hello. Then we have Chris. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> and me. So anyway, what we got to do, we got to get the truck, drive over there, pick up the trailer, put the trailer back in there. If you hit anything, 10 second penalty. If you have to do a shunt, and a shunt means when you've got to go forward and backwards, five second penalty. Who's going first? You are. Ready, steady, go. Right, so this is me doing it. We've got to pick up the trailer. Does this count as a shunt like that or not? Does it? All right, someone's, someone's counting. Oh no, someone's booby trapped me here. The trailer's down. All right. All right, we're in, we're in. Oh, the battery's gone flat. <laughs> the battery's gone flat. Cut. Here we go, plugged into the Tesla supercharger. Right, supercharging has been done. Go number two for me. Here you go. So is it a shunt if I do a shunt now as well? Nah, I don't think. Oh. One. <laughs> oh, you can't do it, all right, fair enough. All right, that's got to be in, isn't it? Right, we're in, yes, we're in, here we go. Boom, so what was that, including shuntage? I think that's 36. 36, including, so 46 seconds in total. All right, 46, all right, who's next? Not really. Come on, look excited for the camera. I'm buzzing, mate. Ready, steady, go. What? 
<laughs> Over the supercharger is not working properly. 16 seconds, I think I won that one. So we're back on the supercharger. And while we're doing that, we have this. It's a really strong hyper chili. Chris reckons he can do it. <laughs> what am I dabbing in my finger? Whatever you, whatever you dare. How much have we got? Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot hotter than the last one you gave me. Don't touch your willy. I need to wash my hand now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you want to go? No. How bad is it? It's not that bad. I'll do a bit if you do a bit, Andy. No. <coughs> Still in the back of my throat. Did you like that? Yeah, perfect. Oh my it's getting God. redder. <laughs> oh! Shit, that is awful. <laughs> God, I spit it out. No way. No, you're not, you're oh. not allowed. Oh. Man, what is this stuff? What does it say on there? Oh, no, I've got ghost chilies. We've got the right stuff in there. Yeah, I've seen it, you all, man. Oh, my No, I ain't eating one of them. Stuff like that. <laughs> That's not as bad. I reckon it is. Try a tiny crumb. Tiny crumb. Tiny crumb. Just pick a bit off of one of them. This could destroy me. That was hot. I don't know, that's hotter. Nah. Yeah. That's hotter. There's a Carolina on the Reaper. That's definitely hotter. Yeah. That's <laughs> the hottest <laughs> thing on the planet. It can't be that hot, can it? That's definitely hotter. How bad can it be? You ain't, are you? A little bit like that. How bad can it be? Nah, there's nothing that one. This was miles worse. How much to do a whole one? I've done half one before, it was horrific. It's a slow burner, isn't it? You can check it out, love milk. Alright, I won't then. <laughs> You have some milk. I'm not checking it out. No, I'm alright. I'm going to do it. Another bit? Only if you have another bit. Whole one. A whole one? Go on. No way. What is a whole one? Quite big. Oh it's got God. the seeds though, isn't it? Yeah, they're the worst part, aren't they? <laughs> God, it needs to be off. Make sure you wash your hands out after, for God's sake. Oh my God, you're not going to do that. You do it as well. I can't. No, you got to. Not that much. Yeah, you will. No, more than that. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, 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 on, I've done half before Lily died. That's not half, that's like quarter. Oh, I, I can't. I'm going to win. You win. Oh, what do I win? Uh, it's the YouTube prize. Oh, great. <laughs> YouTube prize. Oh, he's done it! Don't know, it's nice, is it? <laughs> you got a bit red, mate. <coughs> you can swallow it or you... It's gone. Oh, mate, that's not as bad as swallow it. Oh, it, trust me, it is. I'll spit mine out. <laughs> no, you're not. You can't spit it out. <laughs> <coughs> what about a hot drink? Does that help? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, that's bad. <laughs> I buckled. I gave up, I buckled. All right, back to the challenge. So, we've recovered and the lorry is charged on a semi for you Americans. Can you explain what a semi is in uh, a friendly, family friendly way? A semi? <laughs> yeah. That's how babies are made, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nearly, yeah. That probably sums it up. Right, okay. Ready, steady, go. Yeah, there's you see. I would better put it there the way. I thought I was allowed to shunt. Oh, I weren't. Yeah, I am, because I'm not very really good at this. <laughs> Why is it? Oh, just reverse. you got to do it twice for reverse, because the first one's brakes. Where, you, where did you get your license from? I didn't. Cornflake packet? Right, we're in now. You're not. It's I'm not on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking, so... <laughs> Yeah, I've been drinking, I've been on the bailey. <laughs> 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 so I would put a bloody phone in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're driving forwards. There we go. That <laughs> so to try and get rid of the chilli, we had a bit of that mixed with a bit of that. But well, now he can't drive, that's the excuse anyway. 
Right, Andy Sko, have you been drinking? No. Are you ready? Yes, please. Ready, steady, go! Let's go for a shot at it. Yeah, that's one. That's one. I think I did one, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. that's gonna be two now. Yeah, that's over another one. Two. Oh, he's, he's oh, and he's hit, he's hit the load. Oh, he's he's hit he can't take the loading bay, can't you? Yeah, right. but he has run oh, over the side stop. of the uh, cream cheese. Is he? Well, oh, there's a wheel on the cream oh, cheese. Oh, oh. I don't know about that. It's right on the edge. Well, it's like curbing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you cur if you curb it, you fail your test, didn't you? Perfect parallel, fuck that is. I think we'll let the viewers decide who won. Comment down below. About two hours later. You are down there, mate. No. What's the matter? Yeah. Stomach ache, poison. So I put long travel suspension on my X Max and it all went a little bit wrong. Oh, by the way, want to win one of my RC cars? See the link in the description. This is the Traxxas X-Max ATS, the world's best RC car. Along with the Raminator, that is as well. And in this video, we're gonna make it even better. Hopefully, anyway, might make it worse. First up, we have a special servo. Next up, modified suspension and modified steering. And if we have a little look inside, this X-Max has already got a whole load of upgrades. We got a giant hobby wing motor, max five speed controller, trill aluminium knuckles, more upgrades, M2C stuff, RPM stuff. So let's get all these upgrades on there and then test it out. Yes. So first, let's start off with a shock shaft kit. So here we've got some O-ring grease. If you put a little bit of this on the shafts before you put them in, it just helps seal the O-rings a little bit. So I've left these screws here loose to get the shaft in, and now that the shaft's in, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. It just makes it a little bit kinder on the O-rings that way. And a bit of lock tight on here, rod end on. I'm gonna put a washer on here just to help protect the piston. I'm using these special O-ring pistons from M2C. I've got a link to these down below, but they've got all grooves in there and O-rings and slots to do something special with damping. You can read it all there. There we go, one completed shaft assembly. Next up, we've got to take the X-Mac shocks off. So here's the stock shaft assembly. This one here is the M2C one. Now you'll notice the M2C shaft is a little bit longer. Look at that. So these are some prototype ones that I'm trying out and they should give it a little bit more suspension travel. Now we can go ahead and put all this back in here. So here's the stock assembly. And as you can see, if you line it up, the piston only makes it that far up the body. So with these longer shafts, the piston is now going to make it all the way up to the top. So this side here is the modified chock. This one here, the stock one. So if you push it all the way down, look at that. We still get full up travel. Exactly the same as stock. But now if we lift it, check out all that extra travel. And we're right on the limit of that drive shaft, so we should be good. All right, let's do the other side. Boom! So there we go, there's full suspension travel. So there's all the way down, and there, all the way up. Look at that, look at the ground clearance. I reckon we can get two fists in there. Look at that! Next up, steering modification. So this is a new H-speed servo. Check this out. It's actually made to be a direct replacement for the stock servo. You don't need any adapter plates. It's supposed to fit straight in. Look at the quality of it. Full metal cased, full metal geared, 72 kilos of torque, waterproof. Here's more techno babble. That's enough waffle. Let's get it in there. If you want to know more about this servo and everything else in this video, I'm going to put a link to all of that down below. Also, I've got these upgraded bell cranks from M2C. Now, the stock ones, they're good anyway, but... These are supposed to be gooder. Let's get it all in there. So I'm gonna get the wheels off because it makes it easier to work on. Now to get the servo out, we need to split the chassis. Now here we've got an M2C chassis brace. Although the X-Maxes are one of the toughest RC cars that you can buy, when you start adding big motors and metal motor mount, it does put more stress on the chassis and it can break them. So this ties the front and the rear together, makes the whole assembly a lot stronger. That's what it's supposed to do anyway, we'll test it later. 
Now, if you look in here, we have the M2C center drive shaft conversion kit. The stock shaft is all one piece and it can bend when you do big jumps as the chassis flexes. Because that's got a joint there and there, it all moves with it. Now, whenever you put metal to plastic, you run the risk of weakening the plastic. So now, the chassis break point could be where this metal ends. So, M2C do this one here. This one's made of plastic, a little bit more flexible, and it should be a bit more careful on the chassis. Anyway, we'll get that in later. So now we should be able to split the chassis. So there we go, this whole assembly can flex, this one can't. Now if you look in here, I've got one of these perfect pass servos in here. It works absolutely perfectly, I cannot fault it at all. I use these servos in most of my RC cars nowadays. However, it is a bit of a faff to fit it onto an X-Max. You've got to cut off these little lugs here, and you've got to fit this little adapter plate here. You've got to cut the chassis out, and you've got to mess about with a horn. This should be a direct fit. Also, it's got more power. <laughs> Look at that, fits in there absolutely perfectly. You wouldn't even need to cut the chassis. The stock Traxxas servo horn fits on there perfectly. Now we can put the front end back onto the chassis. So with this little M2C centre mount thing here, I want to just chamfer off these edges slightly here, just so there's less of a sharp edge, because in my opinion, any sharp edge anywhere digging into the plastic could break it. Now this piece here might be a little bit fiddly. Oh. <laughs> Boom! That was too easy! Yes! But I've got to take it apart again because I forgot to fit this. No! Now one's metal, one's plastic. No idea why. If you look on the website, it'll probably tell you. Here's a little upgrade that I'll do to X Maxes. If you look under here, look, I've added a nut because this screw here can back out, makes the steering go all floppy. And now we can go ahead and put it all back together. Hopefully this time we can put it back together for good. Man, that steering feels so nice. Man, that lands so good. Check it out in slow motion. Right, let's go for it. Oh, actually, before we go, we've got Andy in the house, and Andy wants to plug in the program box to make sure that we're running full voltage to the servo. But anyway, we've got it all plugged in. Check this out. Look at the speed and power on that. What? For an X-Max? That's mad! Go on, then, plug your box in. Oh, we have to turn it off first. Oh, it's already on 7.4. What does that sound there, look? Hobby wing. Yeah, this one works. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Which one doesn't work? Uh, the poopy Spectrum one. Oh, yeah. I don't know why you can't just use the Hobby Wing on the Spectrum, because it's pretty much the same. They well, just is. want you to buy their Spectrum one. All that steering power, all that shock absorption. Let's go. <laughs> On location, and first of all, we're gonna try old trusty. So this is my first 8S X Max. It's relatively stock. We've got a Max 6 CSE in there. One of those is perfect pass servos. RPM hubs. We've got the Sen hinge pins in there holding all the suspension arms together. Steel gears, stock motor, Max 6 CSE, power hobby lipos, and that's about it. None of there, look, we got a little camera getting on board footage. All right, go. <laughs> Now we've got a funny clicking noise going on, probably the front wheel hitting the suspension somewhere. No idea. Uh, tumble, tumble. Man, X Maxes are so much fun. Oh! oh. My God! the face i felt the wind did you see that yeah it's crazy one. Oh my god i felt it i felt it in the eye <laughs> my god where's it, where's it even gone I don't know, I don't look for it. my god look at that man that is dodgy that could take an eye out i felt the wind off of that <laughs> oh. <laughs> footage oh 
Well, she's dead. That's it, sounding good. Is that full power? Ah, <laughs> oh, she's all right. Oh, no. Uh oh! Uh oh! Worse than that. What? Have we done to it? Oh no! That's carnage. That's some proper carnage, yes, sir. What happened? <laughs> Look at that. I don't think these new X Max chassis are as strong as they used to be. I went through like three, four, five years, only broke two chassis. Now it's getting more often. It could be worse, couldn't it? It could be my one. Ah, oh, no need to be like you. that. Same to me, young man, we're not. <laughs> exact same thing. I know you would. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yes, I wouldn't do such yes, a thing. I wouldn't. Okay. I thought it was just a tyre. And then I noticed. What happened? <laughs> I thought you broke it. <laughs> You're not supposed to see that bit. Ow. Did you know that? Are you not? No. If you take the screws off before you take the back end off, it tends to go back on better. Okay. Here we go, next victim. So I've just put the camera underneath so we can compare how the suspension moves on this versus the other one. Oh no, look at that. Oh my God, that's completely exploded the whole thing. I've never in my life seen a wheel get wrecked that badly. Look at that, that's done. <laughs> Oh my God, that is all the leftovers of that wheel. Armour oh, stuff, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got spare wheels. We got the Armour Creighton 8S. We had it on this skate park as well. That's on a different video. The thing got absolutely totaled a bit too early on. So hopefully those wheels are going to fit on there and they're going to be even better than the wheels that are on that one now. Oh look, we got the pit team already on the case. Did you ugly this? Might have done. I might have aggadagged them on, that could be a problem. So here's the outcast, it's gone completely trashed. Under there somewhere. Right, oh, one, oh. one jump, look at that in there, it's completely done. You have to see that video. Everything's hanging off. Right, hold the tire. Jesus, God, how could it be so tight? Someone aggadagged it. Oh look, got more crew in the house. Hello. Now we're in the house. Now it's dad in the house. I know you want the mum, but you have to live with the daddy today. <laughs> but anyway, now we've got to get one of these wheels off of this Creighton. We've got 4S Mitchell on the case now. Oh, oh no! Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I think they're tight. Whose was that? That's mine. Oh. Uh, I might have to owe you one then. Yeah, I think it's broken now. I think it might be. <laughs> Wow, that's hardcore. That was some force on that. Yeah, wow. Oh, no, well, I think we're going to have to go back to the shop, fix it there, and then take it out again, but in this video. I don't think snap on the covers either. No, snap off. <laughs> <laughs> snap off, tough baby. <laughs> so, basically, with your X Max, it was the armor bit that let the Traxxas down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might have done, yeah. Over there, we have 4S Mitchell, and that is the bang good that I gave to his dad. <laughs> Oh, and it's... Oh, he landed. Is it going? Still it's yeah. going. That thing's quite a tank. I've got a challenge for you, Mitchell. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> that corner. What are you doing, Noah? So we're going to go flat out of that corner. It's your challenge. Right? All right. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, he's quite lucky. It landed on the down ramp. Okay, 4S Mitchell. This is the car that just went to the moon. It is indeed. It's a Banggood Special. ZD Racing. Those shocks look a bit... Yeah, a bit poorly. Do they still move? Yeah. Oh, kind of. Is yeah. that chassis still stay straight all along? Yeah. 
Well, wow. I'll tell you what, ZD metal is really tough. Yeah. The plastic though. Back in action. Hell yeah. Let's have a look at this thing then. <laughs> so ZD Racing MX07. There is a video on the channel. So what, what are you doing? Yeah, same. Try and jump from that one to that one. So you're going to try and take off there, clear this one and land in that one. Oh! And, and land in that one. Oh! <laughs> it's got one more jump in it. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that didn't sound good. It's still going. <laughs> it's broken. Yeah, it's dead now. It's not doing too well. Game over. Oh dear. No, it's not done. Oh, that's gone. Oh, that's gone. That's gone. How long did it take you to get here? Two hours and ten. And how long did the car last? About ten. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so for now, I'm just going to borrow a wheel off of here because it's broken anyway. Boom! Here we are. Next location. <laughs> So here we are at the world's best skate park. Challenge number one, can you take off from there and land on the concrete? Yes. Yes? Okay, first to do it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Completely cleared it. You reckon? Then we're going to destroy him if we hit the corner of the concrete. Well, there? Yeah. That'll be all right. Not in it. <laughs> right, we'll try one more, we try something else. <laughs> oh! 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 Oh no! Oh! <laughs> I told you! What happened? Uh, it's broke. I think that. <sighs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Bus. Oh, man. Uh, how? Why did we wait till later? Oh. Oh dear. That's not good. Uh. Yeah, they're supposed to be. Oh no, oh no, it's ruined that as well. Oh, the whole motor's on the wrong, look. Oh, Michael, what, how? The only thing holding it is the MTC centre brace. Game over. So now that mine's broken, Andy's feeling a bit left out. What are you going to do, mate? Try and clear the hoop over there. So he's got to hit this mound here and then go all the way across there and over that. I don't think he'll make it. <laughs> Under it! <laughs> oh no, he's going again. Oh. <laughs> At least it lives. Whee! I got a challenge. If you can jump there and make it through this, I'll buy you a new X Max. Here he goes. No! Oh! Headshot! Uh oh! Uh, slightly game over. It'll still move, but. It's hanging off. Oh my God, that was total carnage. Look at that, destroyed this top plate here. Chassis done, bulkhead's done, top plate's done, skid plate's done. The only thing holding it together, look. The long travel shocks, I really like them. They seem to absorb the jumps better, but it makes the truck a little bit more unstable and it rolls over a little bit more often. <laughs> The servo, oh my god, absolutely amazing. The best servo that I've ever used in an x mac Guys! In this video, we're going to build this radio-controlled racing truck and then take it racing. Yes! So this kit is about as cheap and 
basic as you can get. And it's going to be completely underwhelming compared to a dedicated racing buggy. This one here is worth about $1,500. This thing here under a couple of hundred dollars. So it should keep us all on a level playing field and keep the racing fair and more importantly, fun. Now the rules that we all stick into is that we have to keep it fairly stock. So all we can do is fit some better shocks and some ball race bearings. Servo wise it's got to be cheapo so I'm going to use an eco boost. And the quickest way that I know how to build it. Boom! There we go, got it all finished. Check it out, we got all the game over graphics all over it. So I got this car from Redfin Models and I actually built it live on this channel. There is a replay to that video down in the description box. We've got the mighty JX EcoBoost Servo. Brushed motor, these things super basic. Look at that, completely all plastic construction. Keeps the racing really cheap. And also, everybody's on a level playing field. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's go down to the local club for a quick practice run. Here we are, on location. There's my one. Here we got the competition for the practice day. Andy's got this jalopy. That boy's got this jalopy. And Dan's got this to lopy. So who's going to win? All right, well, it's my first time, so in a minute, we're going to see. Here we've got all the professional people. We've got to be really quiet here, like in the library, oh, yeah. this department. <laughs> uh, they've got all different tyres, they've got all these little glues and compounds going on. Really serious, big business, all this stuff. <laughs> Look how serious he's taking it. <laughs> Are you racing eight trucks? I am. So you're with us? Yeah. All right. Thanks, are you cheating? You got a touring car? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Look, and he's got racing tyres, and he's got all the additive stuff on there. <laughs> exposed. Ah, oh, exposed. Just, just exposed. <laughs> got one of the bosses over here. He's really serious with his equipment as well. Look. No seriousness here. <laughs> you know that. All for fun. No, it's definitely not a serious club. Any of you guys want to come down here? This is a club where you can have fun. That's how professional it is. Look, even Lego. Here we go, this is practice day, and then we've got the full race day later on in this video. So originally, uh, some other YouTubers were supposed to come along and join us for a YouTube race. However, they were all under the thumb and not allowed to race. So we did it without them. Andy came first, I came in second. That was really close though, look. Not bad for first go. For a cheap car, these things are actually fun. Sometimes they're actually more fun than the expensive stuff. What do you reckon about, boy? 100% loads of fun. Yes, all right, next race, we're gonna win. Here we are on another day, and if we look over here, the cheaters. Yeah, we've got some cheating going on here. This is supposed to be the official race day, even though all the other YouTubers failed to turn up because they, they were scared of getting beat. But anyway, we've got Dan, and you're not cheating, are you? No, I'm not no, no, no cheating there. And then we've got Andy. He's hidden it. That's how he's guilty. Look at that. Look at that look of guilt. So, first of all, cheating body shell. It's not even a Tamiya body. He's got a low centre of gravity body on there. Let's have a look inside. What's he done in there? Now, let's have a look. Has he cheated? He cheated. Has he cheated? He cheated. Yeah, yeah. He cheated. You're allowed shocks, didn't you? Yeah, we're allowed we're shocks. Allowed we're allowed bearings. Did he turn the wall thing out? He, he oh, yeah, back, back. That's a cheat. Uh, 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 hang on, there's still more. Wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. So anyway, in a minute, we're going to see how well a cheater does compared to a non-cheater. <laughs> so another cheat. On, on these here, these are actually quite restrictive and it makes the suspension not work properly. So let's have a look at yours. Ah, oh, look, he's got adjustable ones. A few moments later, Vinny has given me a modification. What have you done, mate? I've done the cheat. Oh, he's given me the cheat. Wait. The only trouble is now, if he beats me, I'm going to run out of excuses. Why? Always late. Always bloody late. We've been waiting for you. Here we go. Waiting for you. Well, it's that standard, is it? Right, first place is Andy, then you've got Kev. Then you've got Dan. Where's all the other YouTubers? They were bottled it. They couldn't make it. They were scared, aren't they? they That's it, yeah. yeah. What's up, Nathan? Ewan. Ewan? Yeah. What's he playing? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Moving obstacle. For some reason, my iPhone threw a wobbly and he was getting these funky <laughs> images coming out of it. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, oh the moving obstacle. The lunchbox gone, Mullard. We're a bit short on marshals. Andy in the lead. I think Kev's going to struggle to keep up with that one. The cheating car. That is a, a prime example of marshal there from committee member Paul Thompson. Very light on his feet. Andy getting a bigger lead. Not really, you can set up 
much on these things. There's a big gap between Kev and Andy. Look at that. In truck racing, that's about four wheels. Andy crashes, giving me an opportunity to catch up. Oh! Andrew, multicoloured. Kev, red, Dan, green, blue. Oh, vicious driving from Kev, spinning him round. Sneak his way into the lead. So here we are in the lead. The question is, can we maintain the lead for the rest of the race? Across the ground, down the start finish. Minute and a half in. It's Kev from Andrew, and they've pulled a slight gap away from, from Dan. Unlucky. Unlucky. So a little crash there puts me even further into the lead. So far, so good for the non-cheater. Oh, he's got a healthy lead now. He's got a good full length of the straight ahead. Vinny, the cameraman, getting all the action in the middle of the track. Another couple of hundred grand in Kev's pocket from this one, I'm sure. Although he's he crashed at the end of the straight, that's where Andrew throws up a bit. Although here comes Andrew, he's right close on the back of Kev. Can Andrew put a clean pass on? Can Kev do some clean defending? So for the next few laps, I was battling to stay ahead and Andy was pushing hard to try and overtake. Right, 30 seconds. Here comes Andy again. Closing that gap. Well, they're closing up on you and to put a lap on you and this could be interesting as you and... Uh, he's let them fairly cleanly through. He made that Andy drive hard to get... Oh, he's up and over a bit recovered onto his wheels. Right, down the track. Kev's leading from that and... Oh, Dan's in the mix now. Right, there goes the buzzer. So this is it, final lap. Round they come. Far end, round the hairpin. Into the middle. Now and past the camera, through the zigzag, down the straight. Kev wins the truck race. So after five minutes of tough battling, I managed to just win. Never mind, Andy. Who's it, Daddy? I was root. <laughs> I was rooting for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> this scumbag won. <laughs> Here we go, the final position, and I won by under one second. Oh man! Ah! <laughs> oh. Oh. So most people know that the Armoury Infraction is the best on-road radio-controlled car. It's fast, it can drift, it handles good, it's durable, however, it's big and expensive and not everybody wants big and expensive. So here, we've got a selection of RC cars that are smaller and less expensive. This one here is supposed to do 56 mile an hour plus. We'll see about that. I've got a GPS here so we can check it. I'll tell you what though, it does look epic. Let's have a look inside. So it's four wheel drive, double wishbone suspension, front and rear with coilover shocks, brushless motor, brushless speed controller, plastic chassis, diffusion, splitter ridge, metal diffs and bearings and drive shafts and more techno babble, more specifications, even more techno babble. So if you want all the techno babble in full detail and you want to know where you can get this car from and all the other cars in this video, there's going to be a link to all of that down below. So this car here has got rubber tires but in the box look it's also got a set of drift tires now I've got these other cars here as well that are supposed to come with drift tires too so in this video we're gonna see how well they drift indoors see how fast they go outdoors and maybe give it a good old staircase of doom treatment because before you buy a new RC car you want to kind of know how durable it is don't you battery wise you need a 2 or 3s with a Dean's connector I'm gonna go with 3s because 3s means more power battery wise for the controller you need four double A's not included so on with that in with that Let's see what this baby's made of. Steering, plenty of speed and power. Lights, I cannot see any yet. However, there are buttons, so maybe... Hmm. Hey, there we go. Lightage. Look at that, we've even got that... What are they? Devil eyes? Demon eyes? More lights around the back. Let's check out the power. Here we go. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. I think this thing's going to rip. <laughs> That's definitely way too fast for in here. We can try the staircase of doom though, as promised. Oh no, I don't really want to do it. It looks too pretty. Look at it. We'll do it slowly. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see what the included drift tyres go like. Look 
second of other tyres, the rear ones are actually wider than the front. Anyway, let's see how well it drifts indoors on carpets. Here we go. Oh, look at that. And polished concrete. Ah, oh, who put this in the way? We're definitely running out of room in this shop. You used to be able to do drifting in here. Now, not so much. It's becoming more and more challenging. Do you know what? With all that power, I'm thinking that claimed speed is probably going to be possible. Later on, we'll get it outside, see how well it drives outside, see how well it drifts outside, and we'll see how fast it goes. But for now, let's unbox the smaller ones. So this one here looks quite similar, but it is quite a bit smaller. It's also four-wheel drive, also plastic chassis, also got headlights by the looks of it, also brushless motor, also double wishbone suspension with coilover shocks. However, I don't know if there's any oil in there. It's quite springy. Also comes with rubber tyres and a set of drift tyres. And although you've got to supply your own batteries for the radio, the car does come with a battery. Very similar lightage and rear lightage. So steering. Ah, look at that. <laughs> when you steer, it goes up again. <laughs> Don't know what that's all about. But anyway, we've got plenty of speed and power on that. And motor power. A little bit of cogging going on there. What that means is when you pull the trigger, it doesn't instantly go. Oh, who we got here? So we'll try that outside in a minute. So for now, let's try the drift tires. Boom! So it's got a lot of cogging going on. So we'll get it outside in a minute and give it a go. So next up, let's have a look at the brushed version. Brushed motor should have no cogging, so it might be better for indoors. So it looks to be exactly the same in there, just a brushed motor. Oh, for indoors, that is way better. We've got a much more instant throttle response. So drift tyres. Oh, one little difference I found is the wheel is actually held on with a screw. On this one, we've got wheel nuts. Let's see what this thing can do. I'll tell you what, for indoor drifting, the brush is definitely the way to go. Here we go, staircase of doom. Oh, 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 so this thing comes with drift tyres already installed. It's got these funny wheel nut screws. So brush motor, double wishbone suspension front and rear, coilover shocks. Don't think there's no oil in there though, it's quite springy. Got plastic drive shafts. Let's compare it to this one. It does look fairly similar, but it is a completely different car. Ah, see what it's made of. Where's the on switch? Ah, there. Come on. Warning, do not move trigger before binding is fulfilled. All right, so let's try again. Oh. What? Oh! It's got a mind of its own. What? Let's try and turn it on and off and see what happens. Right, that stopped flashing, so hopefully now it's going to work. Let's see what it can do. So we've got headlights on this one as well. If you steer that way, you got that way flashing, and then you steer that way, and that way is flashing. On the front look, you steer that way, we've got a green one flashing. What a gimmick, some people might like it. <laughs> it does look pretty really good though. For an indoor one, we're doing it one handed, and with a little bit of practice, we're gonna get better. So here we've got another one, this one's Andy's one. Put the plug of lights in. Oh, oh, what's going on? <laughs> Plug it in quick. Right, who needs lights? The Mojo, bro. 
And channel five, all the way round. Oh, look at that. So it might actually drift as good as the infraction. Probably not though, but it might. Boom, here we are on location. It's a bit windy, so we're gonna test out these microphones. I worked pretty well last time. So we've got two identical cars. We've got two GPSs. We're gonna have a race, see who goes the fastest and see who wins. Oh, Jesus. I don't think he's got the best servo in the world. Ah, no, the servo's pretty terrible. Right, so this is Gyro off. I think it's got too much power for its own good, really. <laughs> no, definitely not infraction quality. Right, which one's Jaro on here? There's a little one down there. That, what, what is that on? So that's off at the moment. What, and then? If you turn it like halfway, that'll be like. So now, oh, whoa, that's doing it by itself now. I wonder if one of these switches here, you're supposed to have it for the gain to go the other way. This is making it worse. So the problem is, the gain is going the wrong way. So look, it's steering it the wrong way. It's correcting the wrong way, and I don't know how you can make it go the other way. So we turn this all the way off. It's right. You're not going to be able to use the gyro. And here we go. Let's see if we can get the 50. Oh my god, that is uncontrollable. Oh, well, we got 38 mile an hour. I thought it looked really good that car. It's supposed to be well, it doesn't anymore. Maybe mine's faulty, or maybe there's a switch somewhere that you can make the, the gain go the right way. But it's supposed to be ready to run. What so you would have the thought. Switches on? We haven't even looked at the instructions over. What I've the tried every switch. But like if I move the car this way, it's supposed to steer that way, but it isn't. It's making it worse. Look. So it's going the wrong way. Messed about with all these on here, it's still going the wrong way. Let's try Andy's one. Wrong way as well. So I've got 38 mile an hour. It's supposed to do, I can't remember what it's supposed to do. What's it supposed to do? 56 mile an hour. Oh, I've got 38 mile an hour. Upside down. It's not very controllable, is it? Well, you've got more than me. Is that full speed? Yeah, but it, just, it does what it's like. Don't kill my GPS. I can't control it. Well, I think it's a combination of the gyro not doing what it's supposed to do and the steering servo just being a really cheap crappy one i think i don't know let's have a look at the instruction book so here is this gyro so that's just the sensitivity these are just trims if there's no physical setting of doing it the only way you could do it is put the whole gyro in upside down all right well after reading through that sort of i don't think you can change it maybe i'm wrong i don't know but I'm not standing out here in the wind and cold reading through the stupid instruction book when it's ready to run all right let's race them anyway as they are as long as my gps don't get destroyed i don't care <laughs> We're gonna have a race, they're completely uncontrollable. Go! Oh! That's the only way to keep it in a straight line, have it going across the curb. Next challenge, who can actually hit full throttle? Oh! <laughs> you gotta wind it up to full, and then you gotta do a stamp and just leave it pinned. And even while it's crashing, you gotta still leave it pinned. Well, that's it, pin, keep it. Oh! <laughs> you let off! <laughs> Look, I'll do a stem. Just pin it. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> Go, <on>, finish it. <laughs> okay, it's better now. <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. Can you see what's right down the end there? Yeah. So here, we've got these concrete block things. We're going to take a run up, flat out all the way down there, and hit this full speed up. <laughs> Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Right, here we go. Oh, there's no control over it! This, how are you supposed to drive this? It's just... Why well, you can't drive it! You know, this is why you get expensive RC cars. You know, buy cheap, buy twice. People say, oh, in fact, it's expensive. But you can see why it's good. You cheap out and get this, you can still have to go out and buy an infraction anyway. So you might as well just skip all the cheap junk and get yourself an infraction. It's, I can't wind it up. The steering is so terrible. Look at it, it's just, I can't drive it. Look, he can't drive it. This thing is junk. You give it a go. What a load of crap. Go on, nail it. Wait. <laughs> this thing is so bad. I really had high hopes for it. I really thought it looks good. But this thing is shocking. We're trying to crash it and we can't. Give it here, let's have another go. <laughs> Dual rates down, I've tried everything. Oh, and it went to the bit where we didn't even get the shot. What a lot! <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn the camera off and get a thumbnail of that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. I think it's done, but we'll give it another go. Completely stopped working. Let's have a look to see what is going on. We're still plugged in. Oh, we go. 
Oh yeah, burn out. Do you know what? It's not that bad considering this car weighs like three ton almost. I reckon you could. What do you reckon? Give it a go, shall we? So there's your challenge. Take it both away and see if you can get one working one out of the two knackered ones. So Andy's actually got a YouTube channel as well. The rules are you're not allowed to buy anything. You can use hot glue and tape and stuff like that and zip ties, but you're not allowed to buy any spare parts. Andy's channel, link down below. Right, next victim. So I'm driving the brushed one. Andy can drive the brushless one. We can have a race and see who goes the fastest. Brushed, brushless. One thing I did notice actually was when I put these wheels on, if you do them up tight, yeah. it goes tight. Hey, steady, go. Brushless in the lead, and the brush is not that much slower. In a minute, we're gonna get the old drift tires on there, but that's what it can do on the normal tires. Well, 16 mile an hour, brushless, 21 mile an hour. Got one more here. So there we go, got it back on zero mile an hour. This one's got drift tires on it, so don't expect too much. Here we go, full speed. Neo. <laughs> 10 mile an hours. Here we go for a little bit of drifting, and all the other cars have got the drift tires put back on. So here we got the slider, it drifts okay, but the other two cars drift even better. Here we got the brushless beast, it drifts a lot better than the slider. However, the brushed model, it seems to drift even nicer. The brushless one, it really cogs a little bit, it's not very smooth. The brushed one is cheaper, only a little bit slower, but it does handle a lot nicer and a lot easier to control. If you want to know where you can get any of these cars from, the link is going to be down below in the description box. Oh, oh no, that looks a bit familiar. Oh, nice. Back in action. So we've just seen the Tomley video where he did the FTX version. Just one thing to note though, before we do go and drift it, the inbuilt gyro was round the wrong way. I.e. when you turn in that direction, the wheels were turning in that direction. So all, all it was doing was sending it all the way around. Really easy to change. You just double tap, there's a little button there. You just do a double tap in there and it reverses that gyro. New project, episode one. So here we've got a miniature V8 engine with a supercharger. I want to see if we can fit it into this Armour Infraction RC car. Imagine that, supercharged V8 in the front and doing a rear wheel drive burnout. But first, let's rewind and unbox it. By the way, want to win one of my RC cars? See the link in the description. Check this out. This is a miniature working model V8 engine. And here we've got a working supercharger unit to bolt on top of it. It's like a miniature version of my real monster truck engine. Also, I've got a little miniature nitrous oxide system, so we're gonna try that on there too. But anyway, let's first try and get it all assembled and see if we can get the thing running. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to put it all together. Let's look online and see if we can find some instructions. So I'm on the Toyan website, here's some downloads, and it won't let me download it. Anyway, I got the engine from Engine DIY. I'm gonna put a link to that down below if you wanna get one too. And Johnny Q did a video of how to install it, so I'm gonna try and do the same. Wish me luck. So first of all, Let's get the carburetors off and the inlet manifold and try and fit the supercharged ones. So here, look, we can see the starter motor and the supercharger kit comes with this intake manifold here. So off with the standard belt and on with the longer supercharged belt. So that's the supercharger all fitted, so now we've got to fit the carburetors. Next up, I've got to fit eight glow plugs. So that is the 
supercharger installation complete. Now, it was a little bit of a faff. If you want to build one of these, you're going to need to know a little bit about hobbies and model making and that sort of stuff. It's not just plug and play. We have to mess about a little bit. So in here is the water pump and with the supercharger kit, it comes with a new plate. However, with this plate on there, it made the water pump seize up because it just wasn't machined properly at the back here. Also, you see those four screws that hold it on. That one down there, I had to countersink it because otherwise it would rub on that belt. And even with all that, the water pump was still seizing up. So we had to put a little paper gasket in between the water pump and the housing to bring it away a bit and free it all up. This thing on the top here, I'm not really sure how it's supposed to hold on. It's got a couple of holes on the bottom here, but there's nowhere on here to screw it to. So this engine runs on glow fuel, kind of similar fuel to what the real monster truck runs on. The monster truck pretty much runs on neat methanol. The glow engine runs on like a mixture of methanol, nitro and oil and other stuff. So the monster truck's just got regular spark plugs, pretty much the same as what you find on your street car. This engine here runs on glow plugs. However, I can put spark plugs in there and I've got these distributors here that go on either side and the points box here so we can convert this to petrol or gasoline for you Americans. Anyway, next up, we've got to temporarily mount it. Then we can see if it will start up. But I've just had a brainwave. What about taking this engine and dropping it in the front of the armor infraction and turning it into a burnout truck. It's almost perfect size. That's gonna fit all the way down there. We're gonna have to supercharge a poking out the bonnet or hood for you Americans. So engine there, but lower down, then we can have a gearbox in the middle, a prop shaft going to the rear differential. Just imagine what that's gonna sound like. You're gonna hear the supercharger whine, the V8 engine, the tire smoking. What do you reckon, guys? Should we do it as a project? Comment down below. So next, let's mount the engine onto a piece of wood and see if we and get it running. There we go. That should now be ready to get some nitro in there, get it started up and see if it works. And then we're going to feed it with some nitrous oxide and see how much power this thing can put out. So first of all, we've got to fill it up with water or water for you Americans. Next, we've got to add some nitro. So for some reason, there's no switches. So we've got to plug one of these in for the glow plugs and another one in for the starter motor. So first of all, we've got to prime the engine and get the fuel into it. So hopefully any minute now, it's gonna oh. start. Oh, right, I reckon this for now will take it off. So I'm pretty sure the top of the engine is just there for show. So to make it easier to mess about with the settings on the carburetors, we just removed it for now. It's very difficult to figure out if this engine is running rich or lean. Rich means too much fuel, lean means not enough fuel. So here we are trying to figure it out. I think we flooded the engine, so I've temporarily disconnected the fuel lines, turning it over a few times, get all the excess fuel out, and then try again. We tried so many different mixture settings. We tried lean, we tried rich. The only time it tries to sort of start is if it's running rich. It's spitting fuel out the breather down there. It's spitting out the fuel out the exhaust. It's got no startage, so I don't know what's going on. So we're gonna try a flush carburetor setting, see if that works. That could be a bit temperamental getting these engines going, but hopefully once we get it going, it's gonna run well. These are the things here for the glow plugs, and it's not firing anymore, so I think we're gonna whip off one of these. So we removed the glow plug, and I'm just holding it onto the engine, and we have no glow. <laughs> So it's been a few weeks and we've got a new ignition system. So here is a new wiring harness. This one here, it does the eight glow plugs, the starter motor, and we've got a start button. So in theory, all we've got to do, plug in the battery, hit the button, and it's going to run. Trouble is, we don't know what voltage it wants. So we've got it up on the engine DIY website, and it says on there, two to three S LiPos. So we've got a three S LiPo there. We've got one problem where this is the starter motor and that it was supposed to go on it there. So we can have to get this and solder that onto there. That in there, start button. Hey. So next, we just got to wire up all these glow leads onto the engine, quickest way that I know. Boom, there we go, all wired up, that side, that side. I'm trying to make it half tidy. Are you ready? Ready. Sorry. Is it gonna work? No. <laughs> Hit this. Oh. Oh, we're on, we're on! Bloody good! Oh, 
Rebecca, next up, uh, nitrous oxide. So here we've got a nitrous oxide system. So if we hit this button here, look. Just runs on these things here, really. There we go. N2O, nitrous oxide, baby. So when you're running nitrous, you've actually got to have the engine running a little bit richer. So I think we'll get it running again, see how rich it will run, then feed it nitrous and hope for the best. So we've got two carburetor holes, and to get that nitrous into both, we're going to put this little fake supercharger hat back on. So I think we need one person to run it, and one person to do the NOS. Right, okay, two-man operation. Yeah, she's a two-man job. So what are you going to do? I'll connect that, get her running. All right, and I'll be the NOS man. You'll be the NOS man. So what we're going to do is, for now, we're just going to get this NOS here and just aim it here. It's probably going to go lean and conk out, and then we'll just switch in it. So I'm going to show a little logo up here every time the nitrous is on. Oh, what? It makes a proper little supercharger noise, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Need more power. You killed it. Yeah. Is that it? Game over. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Man, these things are thirsty. If we can get it working on that in a minute, I want to try the monster truck fuel. This 1500 horsepower monster truck engine runs on 100% methanol. So we're going to take some fuel from that. Try it on that in a minute. That is, um... Oh, look at that. Look, oh. look it's oh. firing all that stuff out of there. Right, hold on, let me get a tube because it's firing nitro out of there <laughs> and it's caking. I was caking everything. <laughs> oh, look at that. It. Oh, man, I'm wondering, I'm standing here and getting completely drenched with nitro. Right, there we go. Got this tube on there now, going over there. Hopefully no more mess. Ready when you are. <laughs> now we've been messing about with this for ages. Cannot get it running right. I mean, it went for that little bit that you saw on camera. Now it doesn't want to go again. So we've just got through like another two or three tanks to try to start it. We're trying all different mixture settings on the high and the low. Won't work. The only way we can get it to work is if you sort of suck loads of fuel in, it works for like a little bit and then stop. We're going to go through that one last tank, then we're going to get the methanol. We're bored of this now. I've been messing about with it for another half an hour, getting through loads of nitro there. So let's just go straight for the methanol. 100% almost, about as pure as you're going to get, see what happens. This stuff is highly toxic, don't want to get it on your skin. So where's your gloves, Chris? You're in your cupboard, mate. It might blow up, it might catch fire, it might do nothing at all. <laughs> Bit of nitrous oxide now, come on. Oh. Proper windy out here, and I'm quickly running out of motivation. How long have we been out here for? It's got to be like an hour, hasn't it? Yeah, it feels more though. <laughs> oh no, look. It's gone really tight. I think you might have seized it up. Whatever we did to it, it didn't like it. Anyway, if you want to get yourself one of these, link down below. Oh man, look at that. All that stuff coming out of there. It's got all bits of metal in there, so I think. We've killed it. So guys, I don't know what to do with this engine. Do we take it apart and see if we can get it going? Do we send it back to the manufacturer, get them to have a look at it? Or do we try and find a different V8 engine to put into that? If you've got any ideas, give me a note in the comments down below. Do you want to see this project come alive? If you do, then we're going to get on to part number two. Oh man, what a year that was. If you made it all the way to the end, give us a high five in the comments. And this year, hopefully, is going to be even better. Really want to get that world record with this speed car and even get it up to 250 mile an hour. We got this radio controlled jet. And if you look around the back, look, it's got a real jet turbine engine in there. This thing is massive. We've got this truck here, which is supposed to be scale and really geeky. However, 
We made it 6S. I want to try and make that go 70 mile an hour. Got some videos coming up with these motorbikes. This one here, I made it 6S LiPo. It was absolutely insane. There's going to be a video on that soon. This one here, we modified it with a whole load of aluminium upgrades. Here on the bench, we got this classic bug. So this was one of my Dream RC cars and still is when I was a kid. And this one here is an old one that I got off of eBay. And I managed to get my hands on a brand new one. They've stopped making these, these many years ago. We've got more stuff coming up with the monster truck. I'm working on a few upgrades on it to make it a little bit better. And there's another show coming up this year. And possibly we've got some American stuff coming up with it too. I've been learning to fly a real aeroplane as well. And I've got my eyes out on a stunt plane, an extra 300. I actually went and looked at an extra 330 the other day. And um, unfortunately, the guy decided not to sell it. So thanks for watching. Here's to an even better 2024. <laughs>